Oh god, here we are. Oh, oh. oh, oh Spider-Man. Swing this your web, you're a Spider-Man. Spider-Man. <laughs> 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 Oh no, wrong thumbnail. Ew, it didn't let me change it again. It's doing that thing, Jay. Oh, I hate that. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> Gross. Wait, are we not, does that mean we're not live yet? Not I, quite yet. I, I, oh. Are people going to miss out on my singing? Well, no, this well, will come up in the re-upload. Yeah. You're okay. Oh, poor souls. Oh, good. Poor, uh, poor souls. Well, you, why would anyone ever watch it live if they're going to miss out on the goodness that is here? Yeah, I know, right? The fucking. <clears throat> All right, we just. I need actually like two minutes to solve problems. That's fine. That's fine. That's fine. It's that's not fine, right? Yeah. I'm. I'm, I saw I'm gonna submit complaining. some form of complaint to HR. <laughs> uh, had enough. HR don't give a fuck about you. <laughs> <laughs> Ever true word. YouTube. Uh, YouTube's like fuck them. Fuck. YouTube's like. We got. <laughs> we got whatever it is we have. Did you guys see that thing? Nikocado Avocado was like edited in a little video into saying he distrusts the Holocaust ever happened or something. And it's oh, like no. the most obvious thing ever, yeah. where he's chopped up. Finally, then, something um, good. So, <laughs> no. Someone, like, <laughs> tweeted it out, and then YouTube were like, we're gonna look into this. Like, as, uh, as, if, as if he actually said it. Six million calories died in the Holocaust. <laughs> <laughs> That's a small meal for any regular Jew. I don't know, I'm mixing up my jokes. Uh, yeah, I'm trying to get them references in there. Good old Bob. Alright, thumbnail yeah. correct now. Bob and Steen. Yeah, for some reason, if I if I try and change the thumbnail through a different window, it works, but not the, like, the main window. It's really weird. It Still don't know what do you mean by dumplings? that? Hell yeah. If these are virtual dumplings? Oh. Finally. Why is there a before Finally. and after for virtual dumplings? Like, what? <laughs> what is the well, process it's... here? Turds and dumplings. Black and white. One is less colorful, and the other one is more colorful. I guess it's if you say rags, name a colorful food. I go chicken well, dumpling. Rags. If you have, okay, I'm gonna not gonna lie. Rags. Have you ever tried a colorized dumpling? Because they are delicious. I've never tried a colorized <laughs> dumpling. I've tried to digest them and succeeded. The thing is, like, a that dumpling dumpling easy, sounds like a baby toad. I think about it. Oh my goodness. Dumplings 2021 colorized. We <laughs> are live and Dear public. God. Oh, when everything works. Isn't it wonderful? Yeah, first try. No problemo. No problemo. I find it more entertaining when things fail. Wow. Well, that explains <laughs> your channel. <laughs> oh. Uh, yeah, that's oh, why, that's why I keep the mistakes in. That's, you know. oh. Hello, chat. It makes me feel more down to earth, you know. Oh. I dare you make a joke at my expense. I'm going to punch <gasps> you. You're a bad person and a hateful bigot. We're all here with Splat as well on screen. Look at him. Jay, you'll appreciate oh, that. I, I want to see him. I want to see him. I've not got the stream open. Look, uh, uh. It's, it's not new, but it's amazing. All right. So that's good enough. That's pretty um, good. Guys, let, let, me, let me see him. <laughs> oh, there he is. Oh, I love him. Look at him. He moves. <clears throat> oh. oh, there he is. Let's see, I gotta open up my... Oh, he jumped! Yes, what a good lad. The power of his jump makes the presence on the other side boop. The with secret it, of his jump? With did great you, oh. jump comes great responsibility. I don't like to talk see about the, the secret uh, of Did you see the 9-11 EFAP? What? The 9-11 EFAP cover that someone put in the subreddit where the, the pause was the Twin Towers? I and think instead of every that. frame of pause, it said never forget. Was it? Oh, no. <laughs> that seems <laughs> which, appropriate. Which of, the, um, which of the Twin I... Towers was your favorite? The, the left one. Because I don't, I just don't know. Right I never, I never really thought of it. They're always, they're always grouped together. You never hear, you never hear about them individually. It was probably because of that tragedy, but you only hear about them together. It's never like this particular tower of the twin towers. You know, they're always, they're like Sam Narek from uh, Lord of the Flies. I like the one that lasted longer. So that Spider Man movie, huh? How about that? <laughs> You know, oh, it's actually mildly related. I mean, well, that, well, wasn't, weren't the Twin really... Towers in one of the, like, the promotional materials for Spider-Man 2, uh, yeah. sorry, for Spider-Man 1, but then yeah. the movie actually it, came out in 2002? Yeah, they had to cut it out. It, there was they a trailer out, like, where Spider-Man's he... appearance, because it was, he was supposed to web up, like, 
uh, some criminals between the twin towers, and then it would be the big reveal of like, yeah, he's in the full costume. If and only they... he could have stopped those criminals at the twin towers. Ugh. Many <laughs> lives just webs up the plane. <laughs> You know what? The Twin Towers should have, like, they should have done the Wonder Woman thing and they winked at the camera at the end of the movie in the post credit scene. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> That's not how towers work. I so, think. I'm just going to redirect this once again. We're on the Spider-Man movie. We're going to talk about it. It's going to be great. We're going to have to start up sooner rather than later because we've got a bazillion people at a whole big chungus movie as well as referencing a whole bunch of other movies it gets into. And Rondo. we've got Multiverse? someone here who's Are all never the been here before. Not Shut the fuck up! We got someone here who's never been here before. <laughs> How about that? A new guest. Ooh. We haven't done that in a while. Wonderful. Um, it's good to be that here. That is exciting. <laughs> He's Alvin the Chipmunk. Wow. What's up with that? What's up with that? Yeah, everybody chooses their own, you know, like Jay Longbone's got like Judge Dredd. I never really found out why that was a thing. <laughs> this is around. We, we'll, we'll do Let's her next. We'll do her next. So why, why Alvin the Chipmunk? Um, Christmas. Oh my God, it fucking Christmas. moves. Christmas. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Jesus yeah. Christ. I was going left and right. Oh, ca ca me. Carry on. My, sorry about the ejaculation there. What, mm. what is, oh, what, no. what's the reason for your, um, for, for the chipmunk, uh, Alvin just, the chipmunk? Just propaganda for the best Christmas movie of all time. Oh. Alvin and the chipmunks three, uh, the monkening. Oh, chipwrecked. Chipwrecked. Oh, is chipwrecked Christmas? Nah, that's the first one. Now, which one is the squeak wool? Is that two? That's the second one. W which one okay. do you think it is, Rags? <laughs> I don't fucking know. Rags is the squeak no. chipmunk's expert. You know, I was have, supposed to know these things. No, because we have Matrix Revolutions, we have Matrix Resurrections, and I don't know, I, and I think that they're, I don't know which one's the new one. It's one of them. New one's Reloaded. You, there you go. Reload. <sighs> fucking hell, man. <laughs> it, it makes me want to re- no, no, so right. now, hey, 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 why hey, hey, long bone? Why are you judged? No, we got to introduce the, the guy who's new. <laughs> <laughs> hey, long bone, why are you judged? <laughs> I'm so sorry. <sighs> Shit, I don't fucking know. I like Judge <laughs> Dread. I just He's like pretty cool. Aesthetic. Yeah, cool. Judge yeah. Dredd's pretty great. Yeah, that is pretty true. Do you like Carl He's Urban a big too? fan of the law. Do you like Carl? Yeah, oh, that's that's Carl that's Urban really the now. one. That, uh, Got me into it unironically. <laughs> the, first, cool. the first one I uh, liked, I ironically, was the, the uh, Sylvester Stallone movie. <laughs> I love that, that film. That's what we got to watch for about movies. Uh, yeah. That's the movie. It's Dread 3D was the first movie I watched in 3D, and it was pretty good. Mm. Everyone wants the a sequel. Holy shit. Maybe we'll get a I saw Netflix TV show. He'll be integrated into the MCU. Disney will do it. Oh, I love oh, it when no. established properties are made into Netflix TV I can't shows. Hear yeah. My headphones Yay. stopped working. Yay. <sighs> I saw The Rise of Skywalker in 3D. I accidentally bought a 3D ticket for that shit when it came out. I'm so sorry. Oh, an extra dimension of Rise and Skywalker. <laughs> Rise <laughs> and Skywalker. <laughs> If they right don't know which go. way's up in 2D, they sure as hell don't know which way's up in 3D. <laughs> There's so many extra options. How, how did it feel to experience cringe in three dimensions? Um, I don't I don't think that movie I don't I don't know if that movie's like cringe. Maybe in yeah, a meta sense, but I I didn't cringe at the movie. I was just like sad and I laughed at it. Ray Shadow Legends? Yeah, I remember not no. being sad. I remember being happy. It was just... I remember when I could go to the theater I thought and watch it was my funny. Dad. It was funny. It was such a yeah, sad I attempt. Like it. At... <laughs> if I wanted trilogy. to take it seriously, I think it would have been cringe. Yeah, probably. But you did. Um, anyway, yeah. what I was trying to see was... Like, if you, if you expect... Like, you never cringe when you expect something to be yeah, cringe. Yeah, You're just yeah. like, yep, that's what I wanted. That's not true at all. I watch cringe compilations sometimes and I expect to cringe, and boy do I. No, I never cringe at cringe compilations because I'm not weak. You know what gets me? It's the fursuits. The ones in the fursuits are always the cringiest. Ewoks? Well, then you're not invited to my birthday party. Oh, are you having a fursuit birthday party? I was born no, in a No, I just, a I just already didn't want to in, in, invite you because you're a bad person. Is it a birthday party? Birthday huh. nice. suit, yeah. Um, so the easy way for me to make all this go smoothly is to simply be like, new guy, Alvin Chickman guy, his name is Dr. Skipper. Um, and welcome to EFAP for the first time. You do, um, 
what what, what, what even would you describe the genre you're a part of on youtube is it commentary or is it something else um oh i guess hello and um <laughs> hello hi i guess a mix of just variety things i guess i'd bounce between whatever i really want to do well yeah fair enough because i've seen a couple of your iceberg ones as well those were uh fun to make i assume they, you get lots of Wait, uh, iceberg ones yeah you know like the the thing what that is? the iceberg of a thing is, is like the things everyone knows and then you go lay it down so things less people know until you get oh, to the bottom of the most... iceberg Oh, so most of it's hidden behind, uh, underneath the surface, yeah. that kind of thing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. All right, okay. And then you get to the depths where it's like, did you know this big secret that, like, three people found out about? And then you're like, woo! No! I didn't. Um, yeah, that's the one that's in chat. Ah, uh, stop making the eyes move. They're kind of creepy. That's fine, though. You know, it's fine. We have all kinds of different things happening here, and, and we accept all kinds of people, even ones with creepy eyes. Wonderful. Uh... <laughs> What, uh, we, I guess, because the way we'll, we'll do this, is a uh, nice tab you want, by the way, is to, to do one at a time, I guess we'll just do the classic left to right with this one, and starting with our brand new guest, um, if you want to tell us in, you know, within like a, like a two minute block at most, what, what did you think of Spunderman No Way Home, the movie, uh, from Disney's Marvel's Avengers? Oh, um... I guess overall, it was a fun experience to watch, but I still think there's like some issues of explaining things. Um, there's a lot of <laughs> stuff that clearly was kind of made just to make things move on, and some things that were kind of skimmed. Um, uh, like um, the whole intro, like the Mysterio plot thingy of, um, you know, oh, he's revealed, I guess. Like there wasn't even a court case, really. It's kind of just at the table of like, oh yeah, you're free, you're, you're free to go. <laughs> I just kind of moved on. I was like, okay. Mm. I, there was a couple of that in the movie though. Where I felt like some things were kind of rushed to progress it, but overall, it was pretty fun. Very well. I guess um, as, I guess as this continues, it'll go more into details of certain, like I'm guessing this is going to be like a ten hour longer. Oh so, gosh, every yes. individual little piece. <laughs> Believe me, oh, for any one yeah, so, statement. So this, this is yeah, this is just the intro of it. I guess it's going to get complicated and more in depth. I guarantee you, for every one statement you make, someone here is frowning. Like that's not true. Oh, what, frowned. What I frowned already. Yeah, you, you see, Jay's already frowning. I'm pretty sure Fringy's already frowned. <laughs> how does how does Spider Man No Way Home relate quality wise to the Alvin and the Chipmunks franchise? Mm. Oh, not even comparable. Damn. Not one hula hoop in the film. Oh no, not the hula hoops. Oh, what if um, what if I showed you the scene where there is a hula hoop? Would that change your mind? <laughs> uh, <laughs> what if this hula hoop was yeah, see for the movie? A giant hula hoop. Desperately scrubbing through the film, looking at the extras. It's yeah, a hula hoop deleted hoop. scene. You're like, this is this is what it needed. Can it be any hoop? Can it be something that could be used as a hula hoop realistically? You does, wish. Does hulaing does hulaing any hoop make it a hula hoop? Yeah, it's just the, <laughs> just the principle of the hula hoop. Just yeah, it's something hula, it's hula going around it. To is hula it? a hoop? Yeah, to hula a hoop is that is that how that works linguistically, or is it? Just... I've never questioned it, but I'm ready to accept it on a whim. Like I, I, I've never heard anyone just because hulaing is like a it feels pretty unnatural, it, like to just conjugate that verb. It is a. Have you seen people hula hoops? It's very is that unnatural. Conjugate or is that a different mm -hmm. thing? Well, conjugate would be like ah, I, I, am ah, I, R, M, is, as, is, you know, like insula, insularum, that sort of thing. Yeah, we, we don't really do that in English. That's so true, much. we don't. Not as much, ever. I'm sure there are some words, maybe, somewhere. It's gonna so, be a long uh, night. Bringy, <laughs> Greenman, what did you think? What's your blib? I really liked it. Um... And I'm, with one exception, uh, very, very, very happy with the character writing. Um, I feel like the plot is uh, not going to hold up well under closer inspection, because <laughs> even just sitting around thinking about it and having conversations about it, it's like, ooh, I, I wonder. Um, but in terms of character payoffs, I'm quite happy. If this were the end for MCU Spidey, I wouldn't be unhappy at all because it feels like what we have now is basically a completed like origin trilogy about how a kid who got spider powers basically had the lessons of like responsibility instilled in him over the course of several films um 
and then like finally like hammered home and reinforced here. I I really really enjoy this movie. I like it a lot. Sweet. Um, Indigo Gaming, what do you reckon? Uh, interesting. Yeah. So I alluded to this a little bit over a DM to you earlier. I felt like the film, like to use a racing analogy, I felt like the film basically tripped and broke its neck in like the first act, but somehow like almost win one first place by the end of the end of the movie. It's not perfect for sure. It's got some like the premise, I think, is the biggest problem. Like the setup of the of the entire story is the biggest problem. But I, I think there were some good character moments and I was expecting it to be like a cringe fest. And there definitely was like a lot of meme like 20 2016 meme references and stuff uh from the various characters and the morality was pretty weird in terms of weighing the multiverse the fate of the multiverse versus a couple of villains it's very weird decision to making there but weirdly enough i think that andrew garfield kind of stole the movie and that's probably a hot take but i thought andrew garfield did a fantastic job in the movie and there was some pretty good payoffs not not the payoffs that i expected to work some of the payoffs i, I thought were kind of uh fumbled like with Aunt May and whatnot but uh yeah Andrew Garfield did great for most of it and kind of became a meme toward the end but um otherwise yeah very 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 flawed premise some really really rough uh character issues at the beginning but it was enjoyable I had a lot of fun despite some pretty staggering plot issues but I I think again closer inspection may prove me otherwise but I think that uh main peter parker and marvel uh, mc peter parker kind of redeems him himself toward the end but again we'll probably have a lot of discussion about that but yeah very flawed beginning pretty strong finish i guess so all righty jay of house axie what is it that you think or like so, how sexy oh nice. well, thank you <laughs> so i think that um in terms of plot issues, most of them come in, t in the uh, form of setting up the actual story that they want. Like, they really, they really, like, fuck with magic and, like, break the world to engineer this story happening. But once it's in motion, most of the things that happen within the actual story itself, I think, are pretty good uh, in terms of plot beats and character. At least if there are major issues within the course of the story, I haven't found them yet. Um... And in terms of character, I think everyone's very solid, except for Doctor Strange. Uh, the, I think the story film also spends exactly uh, the time, it spends time on what it needs to spend time on, uh, really. It, I, there, there are some other places that could have been more fleshed out, but I don't think they're really important to telling the story that it is telling. Very well. Um, Jay Longbone, next up, what do you think? It was kind of shitty to me. <laughs> I was never really, I was, I was never really on board with um, MCU Spider Man to begin with. So it was just a, I my my expectations were low. Like to be fair, this is better than the other two than the other two uh, Spider Man movies, in my opinion. At least they give, uh, you know, they give Spider Man, you know, MCU Spider Man, more to do. They. I like how they strip him down of everything I did not like about him by the end of the film. I actually enjoyed that. That was that was that was one of the things I really liked about it. Like, okay, you did something with with the garbage, <laughs> like the previous hour and thirty minutes. Like you did you did did something with it and you reinvented it, and now you can actually improve. Fine, that, that's good. But then um, uh, <laughs> the first thirty minutes. And I was on Twitter, like, talking shit about this. The first 30 minutes is to set up the rest of the movie is just complete shit. And it, <laughs> it, uh, uh, like the way Peter just is dumb to further the plot and the way Stephen Strange is dumb just to further the plot. I wasn't with that. That was like, do you think the people watching this film are fucking children? Like, we know what when something is stupid. We know what we're, what we're looking at is like it's just it's not it's not good. This, what are you doing? Stop! Like it do, it doesn't work. Like Stephen Strange, Stephen Strange is trying to do this 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 spell for Peter, which they don't workshop before he starts. By the way, they don't workshop it. They just go right into it, and Peter keeps throwing shit at the spell like oh, and keeps talking even after Stephen Strange tells him, "Shut the fuck up! I'm trying to do this spell. Shut up." 
shut up. And he just keeps talking. And then, and then after, oh God, I can't even explain it. Like and after that, he says, well, you know, this sucks. Well, we'll fix it. You know, as long as you exhausted every option to get into college, we should, you know, I understand why you came to me. And then, and then, uh, uh, Peter says, oh, well, well, I didn't, well, there was like, there was this whole thing where he could go to the MIT people and plead his case and blah, blah, blah. And he somehow just didn't know, like college is the most important thing to this kid, intelligent kid, love science and all that. We established that. And he does not, does not <laughs> take the opportunity to track down these MIT people and, and plead, plead his case. That's the only thing he didn't, he just went straight from getting rejected to do like, oh, now I need a wizard to help me. This is because this is so dire. My life is so dire. I've, I died for five years, but like, this is the worst thing that's ever fucking happened to me. And I need a wizard to help me out. This is bullshit. I didn't like it. I didn't like this movie. <laughs> No, it seems there'll be plenty to talk about. I guess I'm next. Jesus Christ. Um, <laughs> I adore this movie. I thought it was fantastic. I enjoyed the fuck out of it. Uh, there's plenty of problems, and obviously it's been highlighted so far by basically everybody. Doctor Strange is my biggest criticism for the whole movie. Um, but I think that we've got, once again, following in line with the other two in the trilogy, we've got the uh, complications of, of a child superhero trying to solve his problems and eventually causing things to get even worse and learning a lot from those experiences but uh the through line carrying him from homecoming well arguably from civil war all the way up to um no way home as far as i'm concerned it's complete and he is uh he's probably the strongest built character now in the mcu and i would happily True. Uh, i already know that plenty of people have huge issue with that that's totally fine i'll argue it till because the end they're of wrong. The <laughs> Hey, if everyone starts shout out, it'll be totally unfair. Gosh. <laughs> so, um, as for the individual pieces in the plot, I'm more than ready to start talking about whether or not these are actually stupid things or not, because I'll concede on plenty of them, but I'll also uh, defend the shit out of plenty of decisions a lot of them make. Um, I have done several times over the past few days, but none live. This is the first time we're going to have all this fun. Um mm. The second half was just payoff city uh, with with mm -hmm. variables in play that are actually pretty hard to nail. And I feel like I'm just going to say John Watts, for lack of knowing everybody involved, nailed it um, with all of these different characters, all these different set pieces, all these different uh, people and places and dynamics all involved. He managed to clash them together and create what I think is a really respectful uh, iteration of not only MCU Spidey, but basically everything that's been involved instead of being more specific right now. Um, and I was very satisfied. That ending that's my, was easily my favorite ending for a Spider-Man movie ever. Uh, Peter, again, we were already in spoilers, so I think everyone just probably figured that out by now. But um, <laughs> he's the Spider-Man that gave up absolutely everything in order to, for the world to be a better place and for the people he loves to be safe. He is uh, quintessential at this point as far as I'm concerned. Um, yeah, big fan of this movie. Uh, nice and flawed. Can't wait to talk about all those things. Metal! Go right ahead. Yeah, that's me. Hello. Uh, yeah, I really like this movie as well. Um, as you already said, second half, Payoff City. That's what I thought about it as well. I uh, think they did a really good job of that. Uh, but yeah, plenty of questions and things to talk about, especially, I think, in, in, in the universe, in the MCU, like everything that's happened so far, considering that I don't know how everything that's going to work out like this, how it did, but I guess that's what we're going to talk about. Huh? No, sorry, that, I, I cut out? I, um, I, sorry, you just going, I got confused. Continue. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I cut out. Okay. Uh, but yeah, I think the character work is pretty darn excellent. Uh, except the, the exceptions that have already been, been said. Uh, and just, just, I think that's it. Just to keep it short, we'll have plenty to talk about. All righty. Um, well, Mr. Rags, next like up. It's, it's up to me. This is my favorite Spider-Man movie that I've seen. Uh, I was thoroughly impressed. I enjoyed the movie immensely. It does so many things right. And I, I feel like there's a huge weight of concern that's been dropped off of my, my little shoulders. Because we've seen Spider-Man trilogies get fumbled in the end. Or not even make it to the end of a trilogy before. So... Seeing this 
end as good as it did was legitimately satisfying. And I really, really love this movie. It does. It does so many things excellently when it comes to Peter and the respect that it shows to the other, you know, Spider-Man out there. Um, I, I really love the, the ending. I adore this uh, Peter as a character. I would pro- I'd probably agree with um, Mahler to say he's the strongest written character through and through when you take everything and put it all together. Um, super, super pleased with this movie. Enjoyed it immensely. Uh, it's definitely got a lot of problems with plot. No doubt. Doctor Strange being the, the sore one that sticks out pretty obviously and clearly to everyone here for really good reasons. Um, the, the terrible price that they paid for a lot of the payoffs, at least those payoffs are really, really excellent. Um, and, uh, Really, really like it. Good stuff. And finally, Meme Repository. What did you think? Well, I had an absolute blast uh, watching this film. Um, it was, it was interesting because um, when I was, I was in the film. I was I, when I was watching it in the theater. I was just having just the time of my life, and I almost just had to keep track of. Um, I, I was, I was, I would only turn on the brain every couple of. Uh, every uh, every few minutes just to see how the plot was holding up and i think there are definitely plenty of plot and world building issues um i've kind of gone back and forth on a few of them just as i've thought about it more but just as far as like the characters and uh, my just enjoyment and just the um everything that um all the payoffs in this film i just um i was just i was smiling ear to ear um just throughout it was uh it was a fucking great time of a film and um i've i've kept a good track of um i've I've tried to keep a good eye on like everything that doesn't work as well because i think um i think there's a lot of stuff that doesn't add up as far as the plot and the world building goes like especially with the multiverse and the um all the doctor strange stuff um but man it was just it was not only cool to see all of these characters return but it was good to see them return in proper form because i'm so used to just bringing back characters from these older movies and then they're not actually the same characters they're actually something completely different but this one not only brought them back they had a i would say reverence for 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 what was done before and they really just hit you with the payoffs and um it's funny uh, molly you mentioned the ending because i think the very first note i have in my good section is the somber ending was very well done. And then I um, I think I later on put this Peter is easily the one that has suffered the the greatest loss um, in the, in, out of all the live action Spider-Man. And I think this has just been such a fantastically done film. I, um, I, I think uh, one, of my, one of my notes is that I just, I, I would have easily watched like a three to four hour version of this with just what they've already done, but even more, even more detail, even more um, expansion on the character work that they've done. But I've just, I've, I am, uh, that, with that said, I'm still incredibly pleased um, with what we got. And uh, I, um, yeah, I'm looking forward to going through it. Um, I, I, there's a lot, I've got to kind of split up my notes into kind of uh what are what are my legitimate criticisms so the measurable more objective stuff and then there's like more subjective stuff that i would have liked a bit more of and then there's like um i kind of split up my praise into the same so there's the stuff that i really like almost on a subjective level and then there's the stuff that i think is just really well done on a script level and uh there's a lot of there's a lot of like really neat like oh my god there's that character and that character oh there's that cameo there and then there's other stuff like oh but I would have liked to have seen that and that but it's not necessarily objective and then there's it, it, it was it, I, I think going out I was just like man this is going to be a web to untangle um, because there's like separating my feelings from what's actually happening because feelings wise this this hit me really really hard so I'm I'm excited to to go through this. Oh, and yeah, uh, worth clarifying. Nobody's given any numbers yet, chat. Calm down. You're fine. Yeah, I, <laughs> yes, please do. You're going to hear much more hot takes than these over the course You're in of for the right. street. I, so, I do like how yeah. varied chat is You're right ready. now, though. There's plenty. Of, there's yeah. a lot of anger already. Well, it's like, oh, beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> no, I like that we're not all in agreement either. I like we have a yeah. pretty different. Fight, fight, opinions. fight. It's all good. Yeah. We'll fight. You'll fight. Everyone will fight. Is this movie good or shit? 
we'll find out. Um, is there anything else anyone wants to say before? Because I'm essentially just going to act as like an anchor of describing the scene, an event, and then anyone who wants to say anything about it can then go from there, you know? And we'll just go Sweet. one by one. You know what? I think that'll be a, that'll be a good format, I say. Yes. I also yep. think so. Um, in which case, like I said, if there's, if there's nothing else for anybody, I'm willing to start that process up. Go for it. Let's do it. So exciting. Um... um they kind of do a little bit of an infinity war, whereas the credits are rolling in. We're getting like, like a, the the oh, yeah. the setup, like noises, yeah, and it's just like it, they're almost trying to do it in a spooky way. Well, it was way spookier in Infinity War, but uh, yeah, we got us the the aftermath of Far From Home. It essentially just takes on straight away from Far From Home. The um, his identity was revealed by Mysterio, and he was framed for Mysterio's murder, which did they did they actually confirm explicitly that Mysterio died ever in either of these movies? Um, no, yeah. I think, wait, did well, they show Because like, they call him Midra. Uh, well, I mean, but yeah, but... Are, we, are Mysterio, you asking yeah, if they but, confirm Mysterio died? I mean, we, I mean, we they, can still... They, they confirm died. that people think Mysterio died. Right. Well, I guess that's enough, because I was just curious if they've okay, locked the door on the bringing him back. Not, not the question. In the interrogation scene, wasn't he like, I wasn't the one who killed Mysterio, it was the drones. Didn't he say that, or was it shot? Um, I think you, you're right, uh, but yeah, to be I'm fair, sure. I'm asking this to find out if they might bring Mysterio back, and I just realized, like, well, they can bring it back I, anyway, so. Yeah. I kind of feel, I'm guessing that he's actually, like, proper dead. Not faked it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Was, uh, I don't yeah, know, they never right. showed it, like, that... Well, it feels like, it feels when, like a... he died, when he died in the other movie, they just said all illusions are down. So he had to have either been acting, but then what, did he run away? Like, no, I, he's got to be dead. I assume yeah. he's dead. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, well, th th that that's happening. And uh, old Peter grabs up MJ because uh, lots of... There's, there's a lot of people just doing their pokey grabbies because they're like... And there's some people being like, you're a kid? Like, oh my god. Mm -hmm. um, I kind of, uh, I guess I have my first criticism. Is that the crowd just kind of parts to let Peter out? And I'm like, I don't feel like that's happening. I don't know, because like the... I mean, he is Spider-Man. He's really strong. I don't know that I want to stand right in front of him. He's running. So I think any... any one guy took the leap. To to... One guy tried to get <laughs> yeah. him. Well, two people tried to, to attack him physically. <laughs> the uh, I, don't, I don't feel that like... Fear of him is what's moving them out of the way. It was certainly not like maybe some of them, but uh, all right, I feel Jay, like... let's let's nip this in the bud right now, okay? If I go to New York City and a man in an animal costume is in front of me, <laughs> you, I, I'm gonna assume he's dangerous and I'm gonna get out of his way. That's a great joke, Rags, but <laughs> I don't feel like it. Uh... It was Jay about to be like, "We're being serious, Rags." Okay. Yeah, this I don't. There's no. Sp okay, that's a great joke, Rags, but uh, it's not an appropriate time. For as long as game, listen, okay? as long as it's acknowledged, that's fine. Okay, yeah, it's like, all right. Are you a furry? No, I'm just a super villain. Oh, okay, cool. Oh no, are we robot. <laughs> I'm just a super villain. A little bit. Damn. Well, wait, are we in? Um, uh, in automatic, automatic right reason, now. I think. Oh, if anyone wants to throw What's us that? in there, let's pray for the best. I can click it and press single. Do you wait? Hopefully, Singapore. we will be less robot y. Singapore. Hopefully, Singapore will help us out. To Singapore! Yeah, so, like, what you're saying? Yeah, there's like a Chungus so, later tries to grab one of them. One, yeah, uh, it just look. I think if you look at it, it's, it's good enough that Peter seems to be trying to push a way to be. Formed. I guess you're saying they should have been more aggressively trying to grab him. Um, more so, just everyone moves out of his way. Like you, you, you from one shot he's surrounded, and then the next shot there's like a clear pl uh, passage for him to move through. It's like everyone just kind of politely gets out of his way. When I feel uh, the uh, the moods of all the people there are going to be very different. Um, there'll probably be some people. <laughs> it's just like that, that's a hell of a coordinated effort, even if the people there aren't uh, all. Like they instantly all just move out of his way. I feel that's not happening that quickly, even if everyone there isn't like uh, conflicted and, and all different emotions flying wild. I don't think they would have been able to stop him anyway. Well, no, that, I, don't, I don't think they would have. I think it's. I think this is a very small thing of like it's just sort of they don't want to have to deal with the crowd being in his way, so it it moves rather than uh, the the full like ugliness of the scene potentially taking place, as in like the. The awkwardness of him actually getting out is sort of glossed over, I think. 
but it, it wouldn't be any more than awkwardness. I don't know that if you look at the crowd, I don't know if you, you it's like they seem pretty just the average normal people. Yeah, they've confused. just been announced that this is a thing. I don't know what you do with that information when you've just had it and you see Spider Man sure. there. Just how do you like, hmm. did they ever explain how they so quickly knew that um, MJ was his girlfriend? And they just well, she was just swinging around with him. Off. She got yeah. dropped off with him like a minute before I think... that happened. Oh, right before this happened. Yeah, I... I remember in, in Far From Home, they she swings oh, okay, around okay, with him, okay. and then they yeah, yeah. She, he drops her off there. Oh, okay, okay. Um, yeah, they do some swingling in, and they end up on a little. Uh, I don't even know what bridge. it is. Is it, is it a bridge? Yeah. Is, a bridge, for a second, yeah. I thought it was like under construction or broken or something. I wasn't quite sure because it only oh, shows shit. it quickly. Um, no, that's a bridge. To uh to answer the phone to Ned, and they exchange dudes until uh, uh Peter gets hurt out of there by they they come up with like we can avoid everybody by going through the sewer and then come back out and get him back to the apartment. Subway. Oh, is that right, what a yeah. sewer looks like to you with trains in it? Yes. Um. Yeah. Subways are dirty places. <laughs> we have with... very advanced sewage systems with trains. Actually, take where the, poop. the trains also pass through. They ride the poop to get to where they need to go. <laughs> they just slide. Mm. Listen, it yeah, <laughs> that that many people. Very oh no, I, it's system. it's more interesting than that. It's it's just trains riding on tidal waves of poop. Yay! Let's, Ooh, let's go. And All that. aboard to the next station. Poop, poop. And then There's not a lot of space left. <laughs> you, gotta, you gotta you gotta do what you gotta do. That is human ingenuity. Uh, yes. So <laughs> yeah, they head back, and um, I think we're given. Like the start of the next scene is like a it's like a wanna. It's a it's a good a old fun wanna. And it's um Happy and, and May are fully breaking up, which is makes sense just right after Far From Home where that was a thing anyway. Um mm -hmm. and uh I, I don't know, I just thought it was funny that it, it seems normal behavior would just be like, Okay, gotta go, okay, gotta go. This is a noise. He's like, I better check that out. She's like, No and he just like comes into no. the house, like I'm doing it. Um <laughs> It's, it's, it's happy, I, you know. Like he's an interesting character in terms of we've had little of him in many movies, so yeah. he's yeah. pretty much a character. Mm -hmm. Um, I feel like we yeah, get I to know him so. more in the Spider-Man movies than in Iron Man. Um, I think we yeah. do too. Yeah, um, yeah. Because especially by Iron Man three, like Happy kind of gets dropped. He he just gets hurt, so that he's like a person who was a victim of like extremis, and then that's yeah. it for him, really. We don't see much of him again, but in the MCU Spidey stuff, he has a more prominent role. I like him more because of these films. I, yeah, yeah. I barely I really... remember him in Iron Man, to be honest. Like, he's just uh, yeah. I have any significant memories of him in those films? He's the driver he's and the helper. And... Yeah. Um, American cheeseburger. They think right. they'd if, if someone if someone said, "What do you mean, Happy wasn't in Iron Man?" I'd be like, "Yeah, yeah, sure, I I, I buy that." <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I feel like he got a little bit hooked in this movie. He kind of became uh, comic relief. Where I mean, I'm assuming Iron Man saw a lot in him for him to like be his right hand man for all this kind of stuff. So it, it seems like he's a little, a little moping and incompetent in this movie. Was anyone else getting that vibe? I kind of get. I kind of got. Did he actually do anything incompetent, or is he just a funny man who who says funny things? That because I don't think well, he's incompetent. Well, I think he's just kind of silly. When when uh, Peter Parker is revealed to be Spider Man internationally, all over global news, and also to be the alleged killer of Mysterio, Happy is like, "Oh, we broke up. Cry, sad." I just kind of feel it's a little bit unprofessional. That's before he like, has a way to find out. Yeah, that was before yeah. he knew. Uh, I guess. I mean, I, I, that, it, you no, can say it, it, it happened quickly, but like, <laughs> yeah, it was. I, I guess the only thing you could say that was really incompetent it was him not lowering up, like from also. The... Thing. Yeah, not well, lawyering to up. To be fair, also, he didn't lawyer up because um, he didn't know that he would need a lawyer. Even he thought. Oh, he was that lying. is true. Yeah, yeah, he didn't. He didn't know. But it's also yeah. like the the stealth helicopter thing, where it's like the there's news, there's people shouting all around, and there's helicopters outside, and and people are like, "But we broke up," and they didn't notice anything was going on. I thought that was a little obviously well, it was done for like kind of communication. They don't just he arrived. Already, he, was he was already. Yeah, he was. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. He was in the building before the helicopters arrived. Yeah, right? they, they were having that discussion, and then the stuff yeah. arrives. I mean, that may worth talking. Yeah, I just like if you had three helicopters outside, you would hear it absolutely. 
like it, it'd be like what's going on there's three there's helicopter it's like really really well, loud okay, when i i mean i, I mean like when i hear a helicopter outside like, I, don't I don't always go to look like well, i, I don't assume that there are helicopters me. outside me sometimes i don't assume that i've become yeah. most wanted i'm just like, also, a helicopter. like like in new york where they do like place. helicopter yeah, tours yeah. and stuff yeah, yeah. it's like and yeah like, i spent I'm ages sure cleaning up the way they're for me yeah, I mean, I've not lived in New York. I've lived in the city like half my life, country other half, and I've definitely heard of helicopters. But these were pretty, pretty low to the ground. Like I've seen helicopters fly well, well above the city. Like, the kind of you know news. Well, I, I guess, I, I guess, like, I've never lived anywhere as um as as big as New York. And to me, that yeah. uh, hearing a helicopter, like even if it's quite nearby, isn't like whoa, what the fuck is going on? It's like oh, a helicopter. Yeah, like I, I might I mean, be bothered to go outside and look what's up with it, but again, I Indigo, might go. Indigo is a time traveler from medieval <laughs> ages when they didn't have helicopters. Whenever he hears <laughs> one, it's still an incredible magic no, right. event. That they did. Like, oh, what, what are these? Just that they were always you know. What the, are these spindly uh, sp uh, spinny birds up there? Uh, I don't know what this is. <laughs> they must be for me. These are the demons coming for me. <laughs> <laughs> go get me. I'm I'm just saying like uh, I think I think there's actually one shot where Peter opens up the blinds and it shows like uh, a helicopter within uh, eye level, like meaning they're really close to the ground. So like, and I think there's multiple helicopters. That'd be pretty loud. I'm just saying that that, that yeah, was a would little as a little bit of a stretch. I don't for me, know that it, it didn't helicopters it, going past for me. buildings pretty close by is probably something that happens every once in a while there. I'll I'll, I'll t yeah I'll tell you like um. A helicopter once landed next to my uh, house when I lived in Germany, and uh, it wasn't like, it wasn't like crazy fucking loud. What the hell is going on? It was just like, oh, that helicopter sounds kind of nearby. Um, but, like, I feel like it's also worth like noting that if you're focused on one thing, you'd be surprised by what you can miss. Yeah. And they were focused oh, on yeah, the conversation yeah. that they were having. Like, well, yeah, I, they, yeah, that's I think it's really... They were having like they were having an, a conversation that was an important, important conversation. To him. Yeah. He clearly ahead, like cares a lot about his relationship with me. Yeah. Yes, I, I guess I yeah. Like I can I can believe that he didn't hear them. Okay. Oh, well, uh, I can believe he did. He may have heard them, but didn't think much of it. Heard them, but didn't. Yeah, yeah. It was a bit of a uh, like, for example, uh, Army of the, Army of the Dead, whatever that uh, terrible movie was. Um, the whole like out, outside of line of sight, the helicopter is silent. When you see the helicopter loud, I think it kind of did that. Maybe it was maybe I'd have to watch it again to get 100 percent confirmation. No, I think you, you hear the rising noise. Uh, I think you, you do. You hear it a little same. bit, but 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 then like he pulls up in a blind, and all of a sudden, boop, 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 you know. Uh, Someone yeah, in chat is saying the copium is strong. I'm sorry, like. Wait, on which so. side? I, <laughs> like, I, I don't even know. I was like, everyone's just making arguments, man. I don't know why. Yeah, chat and, behave. Uh, all right, we're just having a chat. Don't be mean. Otherwise, I'll turn you yeah, off. Yeah, and, and it's, it's not, it's not, it, doesn't, it doesn't ruin the story for me at all. I just it was a little bit of a uh, theatrical for me to like. Okay, they don't they're too caught up in stuff to not hear the three helicopters that I level outside. But probably bigger for me, and I don't know when you want to broach this, but uh, Edith and Karen, we don't really they're not they they're shown in one shot. Uh, they confiscate the glasses when he's arrested. This is jumping forward a little bit, but uh, we don't. Like that never comes into play again, and that'd be a pretty big advantage for Peter to have those. I could so. see them not coming into play if it's still part of an investigation that's happening. You see, all yeah, of they that, they that talk about her stock take tech a long time to... is under yeah. investigation, and they take like, the glasses. The charges as well. against Peter were dropped for sure, okay. but that but they I think it was even said explicitly that there's still like an ongoing thing with the with the mm -hmm. stock stuff, and even if there wasn't, it can be like bureaucracy and things like that mm -hmm. to just make it difficult to get these things you know and, yeah, and I mean, would they, they necessarily give them to him just because tony did doesn't mean that the government yeah would give them back i don't to feel him. like he's getting those back to be honest yeah to be fair, i don't want him to have them back <laughs> yes. i don't want him to have them back no, no. yeah yeah it's i mean i didn't get him out I, of there i think it would have complicated the plot like tenfold but at the same time i think they should have probably destroyed and or completely disabled them uh um, because i think the, the fact that that there's there's an army of drones intact drones out there in edith and like laser cannons and satellites and stuff that would have become in a lot of handy well it's more complicated than that right if if yeah. you've got like stock and they made them, stock industries is going to like fight to make sure that stuff doesn't get destroyed and they're a big company so i, I yeah. know at this point they're like separated from the plot like they're gone they're not something that yeah mm -hmm. they didn't want us to think about that because that, that opens up a whole other box of stuff i just I well they've addressed it i'd rather put it that way yeah. 
Um, they addressed it enough, I guess. It just it, it, it did it did seem like whoa, okay, I forgot about Edith and all those things. That could have been pretty handy when searching for all these super villains, but okay. That's, That's the thing, and you, as a writer, it's your job to write it out, and it's been confiscated yep. as part of the investigation. Stark Tech, like, I don't know that those drones are in the clear because of the amount of damage they've done. Even if mm -hmm. Mysteria was controlling them, that's still a matter of there's going to be so much time and I guess to tear them it's apart. Worth of. Noting, yeah. right, that, like, I feel like this is an example of the stuff that happens more often in these MCU films than in a lot of the other ones, where it's like acknowledging that there is a world that exists in this universe that has an interest in these types of things. Yeah, we don't you know, usually get yeah. zero acknowledgement of, uh, from Spider-Man. Damage Control movies. is back. Yeah, yeah they're this back. This does a pretty good job at doing that. At least try. Compared to yeah. the rest of the MCU, yeah, it definitely tries more. Mm -hmm. And I don't blame the other them films for doing are just that. Like, fuck it, we're our own thing. Yeah. To hell with it. Because they're introducing two whole new franchises into an already like super huge and bloated and, and uh, complicated world already. So I don't blame them for getting rid of Edith, you know, just kind of boxing and shipping off. But at the same time, I was like, uh eh. You know, I th uh, I think that maybe having like a couple scenes that to deactivate the either system to completely take it off the table, I I would have felt a little bit more. I would have felt a little bit more like okay, that wasn't an option at all then. But as far as I know, they took away his glasses and that was it. So that just yeah, well, he's not going to get them back. He can't get control of them back. I mean, the government and the feds, probably at the highest level, now have control or confiscation of these kinds of things, and they he just flat out. But he's also a superhero. He's also a superhero, and he broke yeah, out of a, like, the most secure facility in the world, I guess. And uh, I mean, he's not omnipotent. And if he's especially well, after well, the events well, I guess, of the film, when he... what are you what are you saying should have happened? I I, I would have. I, th I they they I they obviously show a quick cut of them confiscating the Edith glasses. That's fine, mm -hmm. but they, as far as we know, that system is still uh active those drones still exist yeah maybe a and and that's all a potential asset when he's trying to fix the unit the multiverse right and the glasses so, access I, I i i would have appreciated them that like okay after all this destruction the drones and stuff whether or not it was peter's fault this all needs to be completely deactivated shut down dismantled i would have kind of liked to see that that way it's completely off the table right now it just seems like he just needs to get his glasses back to have access to it again that's that's what I got. Maybe oh, I, I never even thought that he was going to go try and get the glasses back. I thought that they were totally out of play. Uh, okay, I mean, all we saw was them put into a box. They, when and he's arrested, seen... they, confis they confiscate the, the glasses and put it in a box. That, that's Will like be that, Moodle? Chat. Don't we get, late, we get later on, when, when he's on the bridge trying to talk to the MIT lady, we get like a little blurb from inside his suit where it says uh, the... Oh, yeah, uh, the, that's right. The suit is still offline. Like helping him out. Yeah, because yeah, the, the suit, suit says really quiet. Uh, Stark Network is offline. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Right. face recognition ah, is offline. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah. Because yeah, yeah, right. it's under investigation. Yeah, like I said, this is all very yeah. deliberate at the beginning. They need to knock that out because he needs to not have it yeah. as an ability. And they put effort into yeah. knocking it out. I would yeah, say. I mean, it, it, it's knocked out as a very logical progression of the events in the story. Like, yeah. I feel like yeah. if they wanted it to not be knocked out, they would have to put in more legwork to justify why he still has it. Yep. I think so too, actually, yeah. given what happened yeah. with them I, in Noah in Far From Home. Yeah, I mean, if they, if they, if there's a scene where it says Stark Network off offline at the beginning, and I missed that, then that's my bad. Uh, if there's a scene at the end, does that mean that it was always disabled? I'm not. So, I'm not oh, so it's sure. It's in. It's, 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 the the end. it's when he's on the bridge. It's when he's on the bridge Fine, after the Stark, uh, the strange scene. Oh, Voice, uh, at, yeah, at, that start... at that point, at that point, it's disabled. That, that's well, when we, we know, know it's that. disabled. Yeah, that, that's, that's confirmation says, that it is. Stark network oh, is okay. Yeah. If it's that early, yeah. then okay, I'm fine with that because that's before he gets it all uh, confiscated, right? I think so. No, this no, is when he's fighting. This is much lighter. Yeah. Okay, but that's well before the whole multiverse capture everything. So that's fine. Yeah. Okay. If if that's what they said, I missed that. That scene was like so fast paced that I must have missed that. But yeah, if that's the case, then that's fine. I'll retract my my complaint there. Um. So yeah, the, the, the I think one of us next. Get the yeah, there's like the Daily Bugle report where someone's thrown some yeah, green Alex green Jones. goo on uh, <laughs> on old Spidey. It, and... It's not my goo. I know, I know. Yeah, right. of course <laughs> it isn't. Similar. Brand. I, would, I wouldn't allow my goo to be used in such a uh, such a malicious <laughs> way. 
<laughs> I'm sorry, did I miss a green goose scene? What are you talking about? Yeah, I don't mind. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay, green yeah, green goose. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yes. <laughs> but I don't mind. <laughs> like, you're like, did I miss a green goose? He's like, yes, the green goose scene. There is only the... one. <laughs> well, to, to me, I thought oh, that, that was pain. So I, hearing it described as goo threw me off. What's it your, probably wasn't hate. But I mean, I mean yeah, it was it was Nickelodeon it was slime. Mm -hmm. In a certain sense, <laughs> paint is goo. Because everything's goo in a certain... And, you know, from a certain point of view... <laughs> everything is goo from, from a certain, from point, a certain of point of goo. <laughs> the goo goo. Goo Sounds like the villainous line he would deliver in his movie. It, it took me, like, a second to realize that what I had on my hands, and I blew it. <laughs> anyway, it sounds like something I'm, uh, it. I'm an ooze would say. Oh yeah. From a certain <laughs> point of view. Yeah, just... <laughs> from a certain point of goo. The Power Rangers right. are evil. <laughs> from uh, my point of goo, the Power Rangers are evil. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the power of the goo in the palm of my hand. No, how, do cool. feel, how do you all feel about uh, them turning J. Jonah Jameson into Alex Jones? I was kind of oh. not really feeling uh, no. it. He was so one-dimensional. I'm, I'm, I'm fine with it. Too. I don't prefer Wait, him how, to how, the how, Raimi version, but I don't know that it's a yeah. problem. He is he is perfectly I, representative I mean, like, of what a reporter would be in this world. If you want to talk about like one dimensional, he's like got two scenes. He's not like really a character <laughs> in this. He's more so uh, just a yeah, he's, he's just, just he's just a, a standard entity that represents. He's the a device. Portrayal of Spider Man. He, he's a yeah. plot he device. Doesn't really. behave... Well, he doesn't oh, behave I'm happy reasonably for him to be based based on more in future feeds. installments. Like, is, well, yeah, to, to, I, want, I want to make sure we get this out really early. He's not a bad guy at all. He's completely normal. No, no. he's not a bad guy. He's not a villain. He, he clearly it, is acting off of the information that seems to be... Well, I mean, he's like, dude, look at what's happening. What the fuck? What's yeah, the Spider-Man and all this stuff happening? Like, geez, this guy's a mess. Dude, they, they the, the whole, like, selling supplements thing as well. I thought, are they going to make a joke about <laughs> this? It's like, no, they just have him do it. It's like, look at me, I'm Alex Jones. And then they don't do anything with the joke. Yeah. Like, they don't... Well, yeah, what's he just has supplements. They, 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 they introduce him as the, the controversial Daily Bugle, and it's obviously Alex Jones, even down to the supplement hawking, right? But the weird messed up thing is that he's pretty much completely right from the public's perspective. Uh, I not only you does says the, Alex Jones is right. No, 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 no I'm, I'm, I'm uh, J. Man, Jonas. Because, because, because per, the, per all the publicly available information, Spider-Man was involved with the drones. He ordered this, et cetera, et cetera. And at the very end, um, he's like, he's like, he's like uh, just let me finish real quick. At the very end, he says, what are you going to do? Destroy another monument like you've done before? And what do they do at the end? <laughs> they destroy the, <laughs> the statue dude, that's of true. <laughs> So yeah. he's kind of right. You know, you can't really uh, fault him for that. <laughs> that one wasn't finished yet. It doesn't count. <laughs> Boy, um, and Mysterio was well reported as being a hero that saved the world yeah. and so he's obviously invested in him and not in Spider-Man and yeah I, I find it all he, he has like three scenes and um, I, I liked him I, I liked you, like uh, the portrayal I, it, but he's just not a secondary character he's absolutely tertiary as fuck he's barely in it yeah um, which is yeah, yeah, I didn't though. really, enjoy, I didn't really enjoy watching him it was like, yeah, like he was like, Jay, like you have J.K. Simmons reprising this character and you don't make him at least a little bit as, as enjoyable as he was before. Well, it's, so yeah, it's like, what, a, what, what, like, what, like, I don't feel it's really practical to extend, expand his role in this film, like beyond just Especially, the presence of the media. Well, I quite like his, his speech that Spider-Man watched. Yeah. It was a good yeah, scene. I like it too. Um, yeah, yeah, I like it. And that's like the most of his yeah. screen time. Yeah, and I assume he's. I assume he's probably going to be getting a bigger role in one of the next three movies, which we're almost certainly getting. I don't know, maybe. Yeah, I think maybe talking, I, I could definitely right now, see what that they doing next. I think. Yeah, I'm really excited about. I mean, that, I mean, Spider Man uh... might work for him in one of the next <laughs> ones, right? Exactly. Uh, there's plenty they could do there. He's gonna be working for Al he's gonna be working for Alex Jones. Well, so yeah, but <laughs> the, the, way, the way you can write that is that he is the one that will pay the most for Spider-Man pictures, which makes a lot of sense, right? Yeah. Or so even it could like be that Peter Parker ends up working point. for him, and we do end up learning there's a lot more to this guy than just what we've seen in the three scenes that we got. Yeah. Well, I like, I mean, like you say, definitely ball. is because they were three scenes. Exactly. That's the yeah. <laughs> he's the 
very very so, yeah, it, it, does, it, was... it does show him, it does show uh jay jonah jameson making like money off of it though right because at the beginning like you see his, like yeah. really shitty setup Green and then at the game. end he has like a whole studio i thought it was kind of so, like he, he, they show... he is profiting off of wait Spider-Man. why did they show his studio at the end so, i don't so remember that so at the be- yeah, the, early, yeah, so yeah the not the end in the middle when he like when he does the phone jump, call yeah. yeah at the beginning he's got a big square green oh, right. screen a basement and then loads of like post-it notes and notes on his wall and stuff it's very like it's probably in his own house you know Mm-hmm. And then later yeah, on, he's very much a full studio think, yeah. that's, uh, you know, it's just, uh, to yeah, me, it's just like, um, that's a really nice detail. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah it is. That. You see him, make, yeah, you see him, like, he is making profit off of Spider Man. Well, he's, he's, I mean, if people want him as a nude source, nude source, wow, news source, uh, <laughs> 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 make it happen. I, I would donate to a JK Stevens only. Um, I don't know about you guys. It's just, <laughs> yeah. Just how Live it works, and uncensored. Yeah. And um, yeah, you've got your potential there for him to end up hiring Peter Parker in the next movie. It could be we've got plenty of fun potential there. Um, but yeah, he's just go ahead. Oh, and uh, something I found interesting is um, they do go into a tiny bit of detail as to why he would specifically target Spider-Man in this shared superhero universe, and it seems to be uh, at least a little bit focused on the fact that he is. The, the like the one hero with the secret identity because everyone else is pretty public and meanwhile he's going like if he really wanted us to trust him why would he not just unmask himself and show us who he truly is and I think that's um uh, that was just a neat this little detail right, not to, to mention that you know yeah. the fucking the Mysterio shit like I feel like that's the biggest detail that he's got going he liked Mysterio yeah, was, clearly like he was I, yeah I was, I was I was fine with him like he's, he's taking a side and like what I assume is a partisan issue for a lot of people is the Mysterio thing and it's um, realistic too people tend to take the side of somebody who died like people who die instantly become revered so I definitely see the whole Mysterio angle definitely yeah, except for Hitler <laughs> <laughs> and we got another one there it is. Um, <laughs> boom, boom, rags boom. Hitler counter <laughs> People will stop collecting like, that from meme video. Peter Parker in the next Spider-Man movie becomes like uh, Hitler. Well, he, Peter Parker to uh, to <laughs> Joe Jenner Jameson in the next movie is going to be Paul Joseph Watson to Alex Jones. It's going to be the same relationship. You say Joe going to call Jana in Jameson sometimes. just then? Did I? Is that what I said? I think so. <laughs> don't, Jay, don't question Jay, me. You just said you just said nude sauce. I'm not taking this. <laughs> I refuse to be criticized. No, we're both taking this. It's funny that we both said those things. Equality. Marvel Studios Hitler. Um, <laughs> well, Lex Hitler Snyder is a Marvel Hitler. villain. Yeah, he's. I mean, canonically, yeah, in the universe, he is. I mean, yeah, he is a Marvel villain. Technically, that's true. Um, mm-hmm. he, you know, if you think if they adapted him for a Marvel movie, he would have quip like yes. Judaism, more like Judaism. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, hey, the is Mao. Hitler canon in Marvel? Because he, because Red, uh, Red Skull was part of the Nazis, right? He worked for Hitler. He was. Uh, he was Hitler, mega. The, he was a mega Nazi. Hydra was like a, a, a faction Nazi. underneath. Um, well, the, the, the they had their own devices, I guess. Like in terms, they broke away from uh, Germany in that film, right? I think. Yeah, I think so. They were they they were sort of their own thing. I yeah. feel like Red Skull was just using the Nazis for his own end, mm-hmm. but he was a dick too. Um. So yeah, the the DODC Department of Damage Control raid his apartment, and they uh they show us a picture of the um the suits container, but it's empty. The glasses and uh, I think a Tie Fighter because he got one in Lego. I can't remember, but um, yeah, just letting us know the glasses are out, but the the suit is in. Um. And then he's in jail. And this is the thing. This movie, I, upon rewatching it, I, I understand, like, a lot of people think that um, there's lots to say on pacing. But my god, the amount of things they had to do in two hours, I really feel like they yeah. did a pretty good job of balancing this, considering every yeah. single event we've got to deal with. Uh, um, you could have easily added another hour of content, I think. You know, yeah. I really watched it. Take time for everything. I feel like it was paced I, well. They're, they had to do I would a have lot. T- yeah. I mean, maybe there is a, a non-theatrical cut out there, but this was easily the most uh, ambitious we'll get an extended MCU cut. film since Event or Endgame. I would so, be... yeah, I, it, I, it was tough to put all this in here. So incredibly on board with an extended Dude, cut look, of this look film. At Holy shit. That's... Pacing is great. I think... Pacing is fine. Yeah. I don't think the pacing was. I think an, pacing an extended cut was actually <laughs> needed though, because um, I think the biggest thing I didn't like about the the whole jail sequence was um, I think. Like, okay, Matt Murdock gets introduced and he's like, 
oh yeah the charges are like nothing's gonna happen but then he talks about the like public hearing and we just don't get to see it like i really i really wanted to no, see the court, the court of public i yeah, think you say of... referring to the... yeah that's just, that's not actually that's, a court that's not a court hearing yeah, so oh, it's Twitter, not. basically. No, oh, he's okay. yeah, he's talking about he's talking about like he's public. Right, man, you're gonna get canceled yeah, on Twitter. Yeah. I would yeah, like, the court of public opinion seen, is actually seen, uh, like, oh no, he's probably Have specifically seen referencing J. Jonah Jameson, honestly, as well oh, as yeah, other people. Yeah, yeah, the court well, of public yeah, he's gonna opinion be is not an actual court. It's, a lot it's of actually the furthest thing from a court that you can get, probably. What about a burrito? Um, I still think that a burrito could be used as evidence within a crime <laughs> or an investigation so i have burritos today Wait, your honor exhibit a yeah. the burrito <gasps> now is order Spider order or is spider-man 4 about uh, peter being tried oh. in the court of burrito opinion um <laughs> yeah no, i uh huh? I was I was a little bit annoyed when I saw the trailer that he would be in trouble for the stuff in in England when there's just so much d uh, evidence to the contrary of what Mysterio is claiming. But then this film was like, well, yeah, the, the charges aren't going to stick, and I was like, good, the charges shouldn't stick. Yeah. yeah. However, and that's, that's all you need to spend on it. Yeah, I agree. Like yeah. The, the main issue here isn't that um isn't some legal implication. It's public implication. It's what um yeah. There's no way that these murder charges were going to stick. We didn't need to see a trial or anything. And they but definitely public... do spend a fair. They do spend a fair amount of time showing a lot of people don't like Spider-Man. Well, yeah, that's not going to change, even if which is like, inevitable, the, right? Yeah. Even if he's exonerated, there's going to be people who are still. Yeah, I'm saying they give. Uh, yeah, that's yeah. the the important part. They give the most. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. We're uh, a wonderful, you know, fun little media part. podcast. So all I'm going to say is describe what happens in this film without referencing anything from real life by saying. Even if a court case went through for Spider-Man, he was exonerated completely and given the innocent verdict, we'd have a shit ton of people saying he's guilty, a piece of shit, and should be killed. So, yeah, um, yeah, I think I think that oh, the, the movie the movie nodded toward like the modern sense of justice pretty well in that regard. Like, even if he was completely exonerated, it doesn't change. Hang on, are we gonna do are we gonna do a secret? Oh, hang on, are we gonna do a, like a, a conservative read of fucking hmm? fucking this no. film? Because no, 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 so far, no, that's just a normal a person read. Doesn't need to be that that what happens. No, in I know, I know that. I know, I, I know. But it's in just like, um, just taking partisan issues, and we've got like Alex Jones, and now that we can do a lot of stuff. <laughs> I suppose. I just want to. I just want to see like the opposite of the remar the repar remarkable Republican video. Just uh -huh. um. No, I, no. Actually, you know what? I want to see the remarkable Republican video. No way home uh, yeah. is a conservative masterpiece. <laughs> <laughs> Um, um, like, does the does the public opinion really matter? Though, like, does it really yeah. reflect? Does it really does it really convey that well when they let him back in school the next fucking day? Do you see what happened well, when he went to school? Public opinion God. doesn't get you kept out of school. Well, his his friends got barred from MIT. And this yeah, teacher, yeah but like he's allowed a, back in just allowed back allowed in a high school. school. Why wouldn't he? Well, yeah, they can't establish him now. And he's not yeah. a criminal. It would be illegal to keep him out of school. Yeah. Well, the school, the school wants their their hero. This, well, he's like basically the a rock star. Yeah, two of, the, two of the two of the yeah, two of the school board like him. One of them, well, one of them likes him. One of them doesn't. The well, other ones. Neat right, detail: okay. the two that like him were there in Far From Home. The two, yes. the one that doesn't That's wasn't. Right. Yep. Um, oh, yeah. So Hannibal well, uh, was Hannibal Buress was in the first film. Uh, he, no, he was. He, he wasn't yeah, there. He wasn't on the trip. He wasn't on the school. Yeah, he wasn't on the trip. Oh, he was on the school. He was on the like, trip. I think the logic there is that they saw what Spider Man did, they saw what Mysterio did, and they know he's a hero. Oh, that's a good detail. Yeah, but catch that. from yeah. what I from what I remember, there was no bullying. There was nothing. <laughs> like he's just in school, and people are kind of just taking photos of him, and like, okay, that's it. That's, that's all. Right. What, what, bully what are people? Do, what would, are people going to do to like someone that they think killed an Avenger? Like I'm. Well, I'm not. If I Wait, thought that one of the one of the people I went to school with killed an Avenger, I wouldn't be fucking with him. I'd well, say, you, is it is it Captain Marvel? Please tell me it's Captain Marvel. To be fair, lots right? of people are. <laughs> Remember when he tries to enter the school? You've got like he's like a pariah. You've got some people with yeah. signs saying like hero, yay, good guy, and then some people with vigilante, and then some people with like murderer, piece of shit, and they're all shouting and stuff. Like I feel like that's a yeah. lot, isn't it? And then of course the big well, one, yeah, yeah. his but friends not got his not at his school though like no i'm not talking about like physical well, confrontations know, but, yeah, but that wouldn't happen but like no 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 vandalism like secret well, vandalism was, of his locker it, he goes to the roof to escape everyone and that's basically all we get of him in school isn't it is that he just leaves to avoid people 
Yeah, yeah. to avoid being photographed. But not <laughs> right. Yeah, maybe they don't one. need to show anything. Like, I don't, I don't know. It's important to I show much like more harassment. To understand that, like, pretty harassment. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, if you're especially if you're 17, and you just want to go to school and people won't leave you alone and they keep taking photos. Yeah. And Lord knows what they're probably saying. And then, of course, the big one being that, yeah, all of his, his friends don't get into any universities so because they know him. It's fair to say as well, a brick was thrown through his window. And a brick. That Daredevil caps because yeah. he's a really good lawyer. <laughs> are, are, <laughs> I, did, I, did, I, did very much, I did very much. I was quite happy when I saw him, but uh, of course now I'm I'm just like, oh, what are you gonna do? Oh, to him? Yeah, what are you yeah. gonna is do this, to him and Kingpin? Is, <laughs> is this boring. foreplay to his funeral? What is this? Oh no, because well, that's, that's the thing is, it's like he was. I liked him in this. He was cool and yeah. he was in character, and I'm glad that he's here. But I get worried about what's next. <laughs> that's all. Yeah, I, yeah, I I love Matt Burdock and I love that seeing him here, but I I am a little worried too. I think this was basically just say like nodding yes. Matt Murdock, he's still Matt Murdock, and he's in the MCU. I think that's yeah, but the problem is really like, good. I'm not sure if you've seen, but like, there are interviews where like the people who are making Hawkeye that has Kingpin in it, they don't even know if the show is canon. Like, well, I don't. Yeah, know. I was gonna say, as much as I like what? seeing him, it is a huge problem, plot and will yeah. that he's here. Uh, uh, yeah, the uh, history of Daredevil as a show cannot coexist with the MCU's history. Uh, yeah. That easily, it, it's like you, well, well, no way. Be, uh, um, what the blip, I would the say at is... this point is that, um, thanks to the MCU being really shit now, it absolutely <laughs> could. I could believe, that, like, that, that I could believe. A reprieve. That, well, yeah, it's what I would say is like because of how like MCU stuff now is like starting to fall apart, it could fit in and not be acknowledged, and I don't think that well, the people behind it would like notice. You know, well, like, I, don't, I don't know that most people would I care. Mean, the Daredevil could it show not just would... be the same actor playing the same character though? Like, um, so, so that's we have well, that, we have. I assume they're not going to want to do Simmons. that though. They're going to want the season to be canon because people I think, love them. I well, think they could just leave it ambiguous. Do, I guess. I think they're going to do that. I think they're going to leave it ambiguous. I think it. Works that is easier. I think it works up until Endgame. The blip is the real big problem, obviously, for anything connected well, to the MCU. Because, because uh, if you if you watch the show. They loosely reference the Avengers here and there. They talk about cleaning yeah. up New York City after the attack. They talk about all this other stuff. So, it, it, so it is Batwoman. It is. It is oh, no, that's Batwoman. No, she Batwoman does. Batwoman shows up in no. the MCU. So, like, so the more meta issue is that those shows were by Marvel's television division, which is not Marvel Studios. So they're not technical. They weren't made by Marvel Studios, and that's mm. the reason why, like. There's no there way Kingpin quite... hasn't been on Doctor Strange and Iron Man's radars, like. He's uh he's done a lot that has changed a lot. I think the hand would be on everyone's radars. The Punisher would have been someone who would like. How does that not come up? And Jessica well, Jones, I... obviously, because she's super powered and yeah, and uh, Luke Cage. Luke These Cage. are people that are of and interest. Danny Rand. They're all I'm... like Daredevil. I could believe would be more under the radar, but yeah. even then, there'd probably be some acknowledgement. This isn't like uh, to reference. I'm not like saying this is catastrophic. It's just like you're, they're not going to put any effort into doing that, are they? They're just going to be like, here he is. I don't have think fun. They are. I think. I, yeah. I would actually argue that it kind of goes under the radar of the Avengers because their Avengers are finding like extraterrestrial threats and stuff like that. And like the thing is, yeah, extra, extra Jessica Jones is really strong. There's an, She's very yeah, I'm not strong. saying they necessarily get involved, but there should have been an awareness of them and then a desire to possibly call them in with certain uh, events happening. Uh, but I would argue that uh, that it kind of falls in the same category as uh, the original problem or the original conflict in uh, the Homecoming, where like the guys that that uh, Spider Man was going after, the Vulture and his crew, they were like too low level for Stark to even worry about. He was off like in Dubai or something like that. So I kind of well, felt that that uh, like normal humans without any superpowers who are just are kind of doing crime crimey things in new york would be kind of under like jessica jones low their, has low their pay grade. Though, that's the thing like jessica jones luke cage and iron fist all have superpowers yeah they do i'm just i uh as far as the like the big bad villain guys i mean uh, probably jessica jones villain would probably be the biggest threat just because his well it should be ridiculous i'm OP, glad but... you mentioned that because i i they I think I didn't watch season three of that show, but I watched season two and they explicitly referenced the raft in relation to a character who's got superpowers too. They want to okay. send there. And so at mm. that point it's like, well, wait a minute. If they want to send yeah. a character in this show to the raft, like, are we not? Jessica Jones is very strong. She can jump over buildings, my dude. <laughs> like she's very strong. 
Yeah, I, it would definitely, there's definitely some inconsistencies and they weren't developed as perfectly coherent, but I did, I did remember that they acknowledged that they were in the, the Avengers universe. Yeah, I, I just want to acknowledge yeah. that um, as much as it's awesome, I love seeing him, I love the little scene with him, I just think that uh, there's, if I was to rewatch the three seasons of Daredevil, we'd probably be able to find a lot of things where like, they're going to have to address this, right? And this, and this, and yeah. this. Yeah, and I wonder... And I guess as well, the big thing will be, so Kingpin is back in play. What's Matt doing about it? I guess we'll find out. He should... uh, yeah, I, I guess we will. Yeah, I don't know. The Hawkeye, I haven't watched any Hawkeye, so I don't know how that messes it all up. But from what I recall, um, the Daredevil show kept its distance from Avengers, but did acknowledge that those events did happen. So it was mm -hmm. it kind of kept like a it, like a kind of moderate distance away while still acknowledging. So I don't know. That might mess it up completely. Who knows? It's all kind of really shit, by the way. I, was I don't know. I've only watched the first episode. But I didn't Chat, like it's it. Hawkeye shit. I trust you <laughs> Chat, with my life. life. <laughs> oh, no, you're full. Yes, no, yes, no, yes, no. Oh, yes, you know no. what you could do? Uh, Molly, you could put a poll in the chat. I you do that. Hawkeye, uh, How about... The build-up of Kingpin does not compare to fucking Daredevil. It's so... Also, also I was going to bring... I don't know when to bring this up exactly, but at one point, Peter says, I'm an Avenger and I'm broke. Um, I remember that being a really <laughs> sore point in uh, what's that terrible show? Falcon the, and the Winter the, Soldier. Uh, Falcon, yeah. Like, mm -hmm. it, how is it possible to be uh, Tony, Tony Stark's uh, protege, an Avenger, and broke? Like, I don't get it. He had all of his stuff taken away by the police. But like, he was his money too. He's, he's not <laughs> eighteen. So, um, so well, yeah, he doesn't that... like. I don't was 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 start like sharing in money. Well, and we we just, now know like, it's equipment. canon that he wasn't giving money to anybody. Um, yeah, so... I guess mm. I guess the Stark's a big ass. Thanks, boy. Falcon and Winter Soldier. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> cool. Uh, there you go. Is Hawkeye so, good? Uh, Everyone, vote now. The, well, for some those reason, I just it. saw that and like instinctively voted yes. <laughs> like I don't know, my brain was just like click yes, and I did. Hawkeye is morally good. <laughs> I guess, I guess, you know, if the plot continues as it did in the first episode, where a string of insane contrivances managed to get the, the our character in a place where she can be for the plot to happen, all while Hawkeye just so happens to be in New York, if it continues to be like that, then I doubt it's good. But at least it's better so, than everything else in Phase Four, right? Except it, it, this. <laughs> except now for Spider Man, <laughs> yeah. Like, or maybe that remains to be seen. Who knows what we'll conclude by the end of this stream? You know. Mm, well. Um, okay, so guess, where are we? I guess, uh, I guess Stark was canonically egalitarian about his uh, uh, not sharing his money. <laughs> he didn't share any money with anybody. Well, I, I mean, that's it's, not being egalitarian, it's just being greedy. I fucking hated oh, I, I hate Falcon and Winter Soldier's show for the most part. It's, it's a oh, yeah, shit show. Um, yeah, and when they established that Tony didn't give a fuck about any of his Avengers, I was very unhappy. Mm -hmm. No fun. Very unhappy. Like, wow, yep. really? Gave money to a bunch of MIT graduates. Uh, gave money to some random kid in Iron Man Three, well, but so doesn't take care of his own his own people. That doesn't make any fucking sense. Guarantee you, when they wrote Civil War and that he was doing that with the MIT students, if you said to them like, "Is he is he giving like stipends to um you know his, his Avengers?" the the Russos have been like, "Of course he is. We don't need to address that." Of course, uh, like, yeah, like, like yeah, it's we? not even. Yeah. Oh shit! Crazy. But, um, and someone else also, said no. I mean, obviously he wants to be in a school with his friends, but I also thought of, I'm trying to be as critical as possible, so don't, don't hit me for this, but basically... I hate you. I hate you. What, wouldn't, wouldn't MIT kind of be like <laughs> baby's first school compared to anything that Stark Industries is involved in? Or am I just being dumb? Like, MIT, MIT is one like, of the best like universities a, in the world. Yeah, it is, but also Stark is like a freaking mega genius. Like, there anything is no that they Stark make University, way, though. But... Well, like if, have, you think, if you think about it, with Stark that. involved in the world, MIT is just on steroids compared to our MIT, if you know what I mean. Yeah. It's going to be a better MIT, I, probably. It's, it's clearly shown to be a very prestigious institution Dude, that it's smart MIT. people want like to go to. It's, it's yeah. Ivy League. It's like one of the best universities in the world. Yeah, but I mean, like, I, I my GameStop, uh, my for, a former GameStop employee used to buy video games from, he worked at MIT, and he, he, uh, okay. woefully, woefully <laughs> told me about that story. I'm like, okay. So, like, so, like, so like as good as it is, There's like, a lot of people at MIT, like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 for, for sure. No, I'm, I'm, not ba I'm not bashing at MIT. I'm just saying that, like, wouldn't, like, what, what else does, if, 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 uh, Peter Parker is a super genius already, he can outsmart the greatest wizard in the world. 
with still math needs a degree. Like, stuff, like, I don't like, know, to get a job. You well, still I, know, I, don't, I don't seem I that smart in a wizard in Doctor a Strange dimension. at magic. Like, yeah, I just, I, these aren't, uh, to be fair, he's probably not doing as great as he could be. Isn't that a Peter Parker thing because of the fact he's so busy crime fighting and stuff? But he's also like doing really well in the test. Whenever, whenever he's actually present in like Homecoming, he's super smart. Well, I'm, what I'm is pretty sure his grades start I'm failing in Homecoming, and he has to shore him up. Isn't that something that happens in that film? No. I don't. I just everybody's it. mentioning I that Stark he... went to MIT, which would probably explain why he wants to go to MIT. Oh, yeah, I think he's more wanting that to go and... because of his friends. But well, that yeah, is I was... like one of the best universities in the world, especially if we want to do like science, engineering, tech work, stuff like that, which we know that he wants to do. I where should he go more... i guess where yeah where should he go would be my question i guess well my, my, my point was why bother with mit when he's already an avenger he has stark laboratories what? connections he could just get because he has he a normal a life job. he wants to lead he wants to yeah, he wants to be with his friends degree, and he wants don't... to get a degree like degrees are pretty useful yeah i'm just uh, i this is not necessarily an argument to wanting to be an mit it's an argument like why is that your only option to the point of where you want to reach well, he had two other schools but yeah, declined schools, yeah. yeah they all declined to to MIT. yeah the two yeah, of them yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 getting rejection letters yeah. so oh, it's ambiguous as to whether he just didn't get in or if he didn't get in because he was spider-man Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. So that, that that scene went so fast. So every one was like, "Oh, that was my backup school. That's fine." It was, it was like a montage okay. of Aunt May yeah. with the letters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't, I didn't get immediately that they're all declined. That's that was my bad. Okay. Yeah. Um. So. Yeah. Well, was there anything else for the Matt Murdock scene? Anybody? Um. It was I, funny. It's funny. I. I <laughs> yeah. well, my, I'm assuming you guys' audience. My audience was like, <gasps> "Yeah, I, yeah. I, Our yeah, I, those I, people. yeah, they were. I got a reaction." <laughs> That's one of those people. I, 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 I was just happy. in there like, oh my god, I'm surrounded by people who even know who he is. That's cool. <laughs> like, yeah, I, yeah, I was uh, I was really yeah. happy. It was like, yay, you all like Daredevil. That makes me happy because he is a great character. <laughs> Yeah, really... like I, I think I gasped a little. I don't know why, because I've never watched that show. I just know who he me is. Me neither. And I was, I was like, like, hey. I think hey, uh, I know who that guy big, is. I think there was a big awareness of who he is, which um, yeah. which again makes me happy because <laughs> and I, I, like, I think people know who Daredevil is. I think on a, on a massive sense, people probably understood like the significance of a non-MCU character showing up in the MCU in the film that it was rumored. You know, everyone knew, everyone going in knew what the rumors were. Uh, mm -hmm. I think, I think for a lot of people that was significant just to mean, oh, they are oh, bringing characters from other yeah. properties in. Yeah, that's true. It was, it was really yeah, yeah. which is what uh, it was for me when I saw him. My, my so he's the first one who shows up, right? Yeah, the first. Yeah, uh, yeah so that's yeah, that's the. It it's like Garfield showing up before Tobey Maguire. It was very just, it just happens. Like the scene begins. You said like, Garfield. <laughs> yeah. What? When you He's said Garfield, Garfield, my brain definitely went to a very different place. <laughs> you, you have that scene where he <laughs> runs through the portal and takes off his mask and it's Garfield. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, John. My yeah, favorite I just have a small question about this scene. So he catches that brick. Like Daredevil's not like super durable. So would that brick not have broken his hand if he, um, reached out to catch no. it like that no no, no. Depends, if he, no. It depends if no. he catches by decelerating his hand right because a because a person threw the brick and it went through a window and there was distance yeah, so it's probably going slower at that and he's point. um uh, yeah he's a strong boy for even for he's a human right strong as a guy yes yeah. well he's not super he's not like superhuman but he strong. trains he's a lot a strong boy yes he's yeah. like a that's right boxer yeah um, so he's strong and he's got the reflexes and he's got the super sense. So he would have been able to sense that well before he well, got the glass. It, it's probably it's worst case scenario. He has like no yeah. nerves in his hands either. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, that would boxer, be masturbating right? like, like, better though. Oh, his dad was a boxer. Yes. His dad was I, so like, I feel like I feel like you don't even have to be that strong as well. Just by just to if you actually manage to catch the brick by matching its speed first and then decelerating your hand. Yeah, that that would work. I don't think it's a problem that he catches the brick. Yeah. <laughs> I yeah. agree with Rag. Um, also, also oh, you can make the take. argument that the glass would have uh, decelerated at some point. Yeah. Just that was, the impact. Yeah. yeah. This is going to be the part that's clipped and taken out of context to explain why we're a bunch of loser turbo virgins. <laughs> Virgo turbans. Uh, turbo a turban. I don't wear a turban. Turban virgins. <laughs> anyway. I've never fucked a turban. <laughs> Yeah, that's what I said. You're a Anyway, common. so because of the heat, they're moving in with Happy to avoid the because everyone knows exactly where Peter Parker lives. But um, 
they don't know that he's with Happy Hogan living in his apartment, oh. in which uh, he's taken himself some stock tech. The uh, what is it? Like it's it's called like the materializer Fabricator. or something. The fabricator. 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 Um, which is funny. Like in we, we could talk about that now, or we can talk about it later as, as an entity. Uh, it's up to you guys. We can talk about <laughs> it later, because it comes into play in a very significant degree in the story. Very well. So, we um, do then. And so then we get um, MJ and Peter talking to each other, which I think it's be hard to deny this is the movie that does the most work with their relationship. Um, Easily. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's definitely trying to make sure we understand what it is that those two find meaningful about being with each other. Uh, yeah. And, uh, you know, a lot of the compliments he gives her are all very, like, sarcastic. And so the, the sub subtextually, it's like he's saying what he actually likes about her is not the things that he's saying. I thought it was a decent bit of dialogue conversation, and um, I like Happy's injections of comedy, but it sounds like we might have some different opinions on that. I don't know. I'm leaving it open. I I'm fine he's with the least that. funny comedy character in the film, but I don't dislike him. I yeah, I don't. I just, he's fucking bumbling to me. Yeah, sorry, sorry. So, uh, I just I liked his You're comedy. I thought, it, I thought it worked. I just felt like he was a bit more emotional slash uh, bumbling, where he's also supposed to be basically like the essentially the underdog CEO, you know, under this uh, Tony Stark like. Sub CEO type type of and guy, and he, gonna just be, seemed like, he seemed a little incompetent. You remember what I mean, he's they do with him? But he doesn't do anything incompetent, right? Do you remember what they do with him in the yeah, other movies? Yeah, I mean, he's always like, I mean, in Homecoming, he doesn't realize that the stealth ship is taken by Vulture and a lot of stuff. He's not particularly competent throughout those as well, but. The reason why I didn't know that the vul He's... the vulture had taken the ship was because they made the high vacuum seal, and then once they got inside, they were able to deactivate the system. He's yeah, and I wouldn't say he is well in the position he's in strictly for high competence. Rather, he's like a very caring person. He's, he's... been good friends with Tony for so long, like for that's a long time. Yeah. The role, yeah. yeah. And um, he's not he's not he's not like incompetent or anything either he's like, I, well, just I certainly wouldn't call like, him come bumbling. on man um bumbling's a, i think of, when i think of bumbling i think of like mr bean like whoa just get the oh we've got to move to this oh, yeah it wasn't oh, that oops. bad i with happy it's just that he, he's often lacking information um but he's still trying to do his best sort of thing uh, yeah go like uh, he, he can be kind of he can be like I don't know he can be sort of he can give off a, an energy where he doesn't carry himself as if he knows what he's doing, but I don't find that he makes any stupid mistakes. Yeah, I agree with that. Yeah, because um, if you remember, the, he gets he, he really... gets haha. He's beaten up by uh, Scarlett Johansson in Iron Man Two, right? And he's like, "I'm yeah. gonna take you on." And he goes, "Oh, like, ow, e like 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 you could argue Iron Man Two is using him as a like... punching bag." At the same time, it's like, yeah, she's black. Well, yeah, I was gonna say, it's so... like, to be fair, <laughs> he's not gonna be able to beat her. Um, like, you I could do that comedy scene with point. any character who isn't also an Avenger, pretty much. Yeah, I mean, even at the end of uh, Iron Man 2, uh, they both go in and break it, and, and Happy beats one guy, whereas yeah. uh, a Black Widow, like, took out, like, 30, <laughs> and he's like, yeah, I did so well, and then she's, like, completely cleared out the rest of the entire complex, so it's not too inconsistent, I just... It would have been kind of cool to like have him pull through and do something really, really smart or really, really key to the plot. He just was kind of background noise for the most part. It seemed like, but I don't know. I mean, he's me. he's very he's very caring and helping to our protagonists. Like he lets them live in his home. Like that's not a that's not something to be overlooked. Mm -hmm. but he's yeah. a very useful presence to have around. Well, and uh, I I mean we'll talk about it later. But there's, a, there's some looks he gives at a certain scene that I find. Uh, was very meaningful considering his role in Spider-Man's life, and uh, makes you think for a second that you know it's, it's, it's a, there's a bit of a surrogacy that could have happened there had things gone differently. Um, yeah, he could have been like a stepfather at one if things had gone differently. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So then they find out. Of, well, they go. That's when they go to the school, and then they end up on the roof, and they're just talking about their future plans. Everything's pretty chill, and he said that. Um, the happiest he's been is when everyone he wanted to know that he was Spider-Man knew. Um, but now everybody knows, and it's just uh, it's, it's giving him the old stress. Uh, um, but still dealing with it. And then I think we get to the uh, the scene where they're opening their letters, their final letter, because we do the montage of getting the letters and being denied, but they've got the final one. And all of Ned 
uh, Peter and MJ get denied. And I think it, it does imply it's to do with their association with Spider-Man. No, it's explicitly their, their yeah, association Ned with Spider-Man. Yeah, he reads it out. Oh, yeah, he okay. reads it out because, uh, because of your recent controversies. Some, yeah, it was a reason. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and like, unless he got his dick out on a train or something, I don't know what other recent <laughs> controversy that's going to be. <laughs> <laughs> the dog, the no, dog backstory of Ned. <laughs> oh, God. They killed 17 people while nobody was watching. Um, <laughs> and comes in the first bigger criticism that I have for this movie. Uh, Flash's entrance in the middle of this somber scene, realizing their lives have been ruined because yeah. of, for doing yeah. nothing wrong. Flash is like, lol, I'm funny. Marvel Look at me. I'm funny. I'm funny, Flash. Look no, at me. I'm funny. Flash shouldn't have been in this film. I didn't. Sure. I fundamentally believe that, yeah, the MCU has a joke quota, and this is one of those ones that they had to force in. Yeah. Um, yeah, which is yeah. weird. I have because a novel of the out of nowhere. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I, I that think the movie, for the most part, juggles the tones really well. But I, Flash yeah. needs to go. Yeah, get him out of there. Yeah, yeah. When he shows up, it's like I just know. Are you just like some desperate running gag attempt? What is going I on? I mean, you're, he he's supposed to be a bully. <laughs> Why isn't he a fucking bully? Jesus. Well, I mean, I mean, it's pretty cunty to like basically write a book to try and profit off of an association. Yeah, but that's one. just uh, like, the, like, look, the MCU's depiction of bullies is a little different from the bullies that I had to grow up with. I'm just saying, none of them like maybe, tried to be my friend and write a whole maybe, book on me. Okay, that's, that's not how that works. Yeah, maybe that's well, what Jay Longbone, but, but with all due respect, you're not Spider Man, as far as we know. Yeah, I was gonna say, as I didn't know that. <laughs> But Flash is also not a bully, so <laughs> not a very effective. I don't know one. if people no, yeah. if people were writing books. If I got famous, um, and people started writing books full of lies about how we had a personal relationship and I'm making it a lot off of money me, off of it, yeah. I don't know. I wish you just. I wish you just called me a slur. <laughs> how relevant. Um, anyway, never yeah. heard you use the call so, you a slur. Peter spots all Halloween direction, uh, d the decoration. Sorry, is the little uh, good old good old wizard type of thing, and it's like, oh, I could probably, and I'm pretty sure he's like explicit. He wants to just undo what Mysterio did, and he thinks that Doctor Strange should be able to pull that off. And then, and it's just important to note, it the damage will be undone. The damage being what's been done to his friends and family. It's not even specifically about him. Yeah. Yeah. He when he goes to Doctor Strange, and because this is right after you know they open the MIT letters, and you know things aren't looking that great for him. That's when it happens, which I think is really, really great for his character to establish that. That it's once his friends are affected by it, that's what pushes him over the um, yeah. over the edge for going to get help like this. And uh, so we find out, out that the Sorcerer Supreme is now Wong because, of course, it yeah. is because Strange was disappeared yeah. for five years. And um, it was brought up on yeah. Friday Night Tights, I think, that it's like, yeah, but it should go back to him, right? And it's like, I don't think so, actually. Um, I don't know how, Wong, yeah, I don't know how that how it works, honestly. Wong's pretty powerful. Well, um, let's just think about it as any normal job. He's been doing it for five years. You come back, it's like, well, I mean, I, I know I'm in the job. I'm doing it every day. I know all the people. I know what I'm doing. Like, you know, just passing it over. After this really film, sense, I'm certainly it. happy he's the Sorcerer <laughs> Supreme. Fuck it, I don't want Doctor Strange to be the Sorcerer Supreme. Yeah, fuck that. Fuck that. Um, I just want to point out that uh, Halloween is directly responsible for nearly ending the multiverse. Hey. Oh my goodness. <laughs> comment there. Halloween's responsible for this movie, so I'm more than happy to know. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, what, that. Would he, what would have happened if the film took place at Christmas? Who would he have contacted then? The Christmas Santa. wizard. The snowman wizard. Santa. Yeah. Santa. <laughs> Santa. <laughs> Santa. Like Santa's immediately like, like well, my boy, you have to accept sometimes that you don't get what you want. <laughs> Doc Strange is like, oh, that's that's a way better. Yeah, yeah, that's actually way better. Santa, <laughs> you're so wise. Do you want to be the Sorcerer <laughs> Supreme? It's like it's like, what do you want for your Christmas miracle, young boy? It's like, oh no, make every the entire world forget, and through the magic of the multiverse, he's like, that's a hell of a Christmas miracle. What do you think what I am? Fuck? A wizard? Can I get you honestly, some Legos, maybe? <laughs> I honestly can't fucking wait for Santa's solo film, and then for his inclusion <laughs> in the Avengers, where we see him in the group shot with all the others. I would love that. Bam, 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 Santa's bam. public domain, right? We can do it. Yeah. Santa Imagine Santa domain. not cool. being public domain. Imagine like <laughs> Warner Brothers only or something. Oh my god, <laughs> <laughs> Disney would totally buy that shit. Yeah. yeah. Well, Happy Birthday. The song is not is not public domain. That is actually a copyrighted song. You That's have to true. pay for it. 
That's true. By the way, uh, speaking of public domain, uh, the the public has uh, voted twelve hundred times on our Hawkeye poll. You could uh, maybe oh. you could take that. Take a look yeah, at I that. Yeah, I suppose we should. Let's Ooh. check out the results, shall we, everybody? Um, oh, how do I how do I do this? End poll. There we go. Rags, would you like to read the results? I'd love to read the results. Is Hawkeye good? After one point two thousand votes. 72% of participants said, no, it is not good. Mm. That's pretty overwhelming. Well, there you go. 74, 74%, yes, 74% said no. The funny thing is, someone might say, like, well, that's a biased audience, isn't it? And I'd be like, well, I would prefer to ask the audience in favor of saying Phase 4 has been shite, instead of the audience that what says Phase 4 has been good. What other audience can we poll right now? Well, I'm just saying, even if we had access, I wouldn't necessarily want... The, the Twitter folk who love every single thing MSU puts out. Because you can't tell the difference. 1.2 hundred billion. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway... Um... I, heard, I heard someone recently say that the T'Challa episode of What If was good, or at least the episode 2, I don't know if he gets any more episodes. And I remember thinking, I... It's much less meaningful to me when you call things good now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I don't really know how to do this other than for me to summarize the events pretty quickly and then we'll go back, okay? So that we we, we got a basis for those go listening for without it. any context. I know what you mean, so, yeah. yep. Peter wants Mysterious Damage to be undone. Doctor Strange says he could do a forget-me spell for the whole world. Wong says leave me out of it. Doctor Strange conducts the spell so quickly uh, that Peter, while trying to explain the parameters he was after, fucks it up, quote-unquote, and the whole spell breaks and then Strange says, get the fuck out of here, with lots of bits of dialogue we will talk about, but that is basically what happens. Yeah. Who wants to go first? <laughs> Let's talk about how fucking retarded that is entirely, please. Because <laughs> no one, no, you cannot, I don't want to hear a fucking thing from anybody about how that was in character or anything. It was shit. It was yeah. has to agree that it was shit. Yeah, it was really was say, stupid and out of character for, for Doctor Strange, not for Peter. Yes, for Doctor Strange. It was for Peter. Like, what? No, it wasn't for Peter, you're wrong. Fight, fight, no. fight, fight. You should, <laughs> why didn't they talk about the spell beforehand? Yeah, they both should, have, should have. Yeah, Doctor they Strange both should have. Doctor Strange okay, should have so, told them yeah. about so that. So if Doctor Strange says, I can just make people forget and then goes downstairs, Peter's probably just going to be thinking, oh, this is probably pretty simple then. He's doing it right away. He didn't tell him anything. Exactly. Like, like they're both Peter, idiots. Peter just says, oh, I need you. Peter just Peter says, I need you to Dr. fix this Strange problem for me. Doctor Strange is like, sure, and then heads downstairs. Yeah. Like, I don't, like see, oh, see, I don't see what the assumption is. Like, like, wait, hold on. Spider-Man like, barely has no, any first, time to process first, that. First and then, he turned like, I don't him see down. First he turned him down. Yes, and then suddenly he came up with some idea because of what Wong said. Oh, let's just erase their memory because that's not also... Like, like, gonna cause grave fucking issues. Uh, it, like, well, that's because like going back in time or some if shit. Doctor Strange grave tells issues? you that it can work. If Doctor Strange tells grave you issues. that it can work, yeah, but if, oh. Strange, but if Doctor Strange <laughs> tells you that it's gonna work and he's the Sorcerer Supreme and you don't know anything about magic and then he just immediately leads you to the dungeon. Oh, well, like, what does that have himself? to do with him talking during the spell? And Strange so clearly there, yeah. telling him to after, shut yeah. the fuck we're, up. We're not, so, so, <laughs> so what you're saying is that Peter should just accept this circumstance that he's now in of having yeah. everything deleted because he asked uh, for some help. Do you know? Like he just has to accept that. Um, I don't know how how relevant this will be. We'll see how it goes. But once upon a time, I I noticed one of my fillings wasn't quite stable. When I went to the dentist, they were supposed to be looking at something else. I was like, oh yeah, one of them, um, one of them might need some work. And she was like, okay, sit, sit, sit down. And I was like, oh, yeah, okay. And then she went, which one do you say? And I was like, oh, it was like bottom right or whatever. And she went in there with a little tool and started, uh, I don't know, flicking at it to get it out. And I was like, whoa, stop, 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 stop. What are you doing? She was like, getting the filling out. Then I was like, are you replacing it today? And she was like, well, no, but if it's loose. I was like, no, it's not that loose. I don't... And, and like, she looked at me in a sense of like, you're about to hurt yourself by moving. And I was like, yeah, but I didn't know that, that we didn't talk about any of this. Like, we, we just started it up. I don't, I don't know what's happening. Like, I was like, no, 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 I'll keep it until uh, you're able to replace it on the day. Because I mean, I don't want it just to have a gap. Um, I think the same thing happened in this scene. He was like, give me the spell. No, give me the spell. Yes. Uh, oh, 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 really? And he's like, follow me down the stairs. Like, oh, okay. And then Doctor Strange just immediately is like, this spell is going to make everyone forget. Blah, 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 blah. And then he's like, well, wait, sorry, what? No, I don't, I don't want everyone to. And the idea that, like, 
I, I really don't think Peter's out of character here at all. I think this is all Doctor Strange's fault. He's a kid who's asked for something that goes beyond his scope of understanding. Um, yeah, I, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not against that. I'm not. Like, I'm saying Stephen Strange is definitely one of the. Like they're both idiots in this scene, though. He oh, like no, Stephen, Stephen, is Strange, not an idiot. Stephen Strange is wrong yes. for sending him down there in the first place. He should yes. have rejected him mm -hmm. and just throw him the fuck yeah. out immediately. Agreed. Agreed. Now, yeah. now that's, yeah. that's 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 part then, one. That's part one. <laughs> okay. That's part okay. one okay. of my problem. Hang on. We agree there. That's part one of my problem. The that's second the part problem. of my pro problem. Stop. No, it isn't. No, go ahead. Stephen Strange tells him to shut the fuck up during. It tells him to shut the fuck up during the spell, and he doesn't. He keeps so fucking talking. To... Like, right. well, wait, wait. So I just like to ask you. It's in the moment, though. He's about to like. Wait, wait. wait, 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 wait. Jay Longbow, yeah, would you? Would you shut up? Would you? Yes, I would shut the fuck. Like, so really? So then, when when like, you're this, about this, to? Wait, 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 wait. Like, my power, wait, wait, my wait, powers could possibly ruin the space-time continuum if I don't. First of all. You don't, you have no idea that that is the consequence. You all you know is you're just going to stop the spell. But um, if you were just yeah. you found out that all the people who love you are about to forget you ever existed, potentially, or the or parts of your life that oh, even no, no. exist are significant. You're going to lose. Yeah, you're going to lose the memories of you. Not it's, sig it's significant, right? Like like but let's Peter, say it's also it's also Peter's responsibility to specify. Like Stephen Strange, like he's wrong too for sending for even so that's, considering it. But that's a strange Peter should have been like, look, though. all right, all right, look, look, look. I, you know, what, let I still want people I love to know, but everyone else, because yeah. he was on. Remember, he was that scene on the roof where he was talking about, oh, it was the the best, best, best time of my life was when all the people I loved knew. So why the fuck? Didn't he say, oh, I still want people, the people I love to know. Well, he's getting there. If, if you watch the scene, he, he, so the first thought he has goes to, is it Aunt May? Is the, no, is it Mary Jane is the first one? That's yeah, first thought, right? MJ. Yes, MJ. MJ. Yeah, and then he starts oh, cycling through, well, well, actually, yeah, there's, the, fuck, there's, there's all these people that I, I still want to know. Like, he didn't know this was happening. Doctor Strange went way too fast. I don't blame him. And the idea that it's like, you're disrupting the spell. It's like, yeah, I'm disrupting the fucking spell. Are you kidding me? I like, don't want you to cast it. I why want not people just to say remember stop? Me. Why not just say stop? Stop for a minute. Well, I don't right, understand. Here's what, what I want. Well, you also have to remember. I feel, I don't know, just tell him, ask him to stop the spells a little bit much. I think because he doesn't know the talking it and changing it completely. That's fine. Yeah, not he telling wants him to, to change stop it completely. He seems minute. intimidated by Strange as it is. Yeah. I, I I completely yeah, understand him change. choosing <laughs> to ask for like, Strange edits. is pretty authoritative. I, I don't know why you're I don't know why you're laughing at the notion that he would be intimidated by Doctor Strange. He went there anyway and asked. Yeah, yeah. He, 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 but he was he so intimidated. He was so intimidated. Yeah. He went there to, no, to ask him to. No, yeah, and he was, and he was very cautious and shy the whole way there through. Are, like, there are yeah. different. El yeah, like when when He's I calling him fucking sir. Like, yeah, like intimidation. And he, and he was like weird. Mean, respect. He, he felt strange right. calling him Stephen. Like you could see, like you could see that he it, it felt a bit weird for him to go. All right, Stephen. Like that wasn't natural for him. Well, re respect is also making sure people know what you want before you. That's ask a Stephen problem, though. That's yeah. A, yeah this is a magic. Uh, he just, uh, he's uh, just uh, it's magic. No, he doesn't know anything about magic. That's how magic the works. Problem. That's so, half the problem. He is. He is the. Uh, he's the competent. He is the authority figure in the situation. He should have known better. One hundred percent. Like I'm not denying that. That's not what I'm denying here. I'm just, you guys yeah, are no, denying we, we, we Peter's responsibility in the situation. Yeah, no he one is defending Doctor Strange. No one is defending Doctor Strange. So we can move past no, that. No, I'm saying I'm saying you're like he's the only one who's taking the brunt of this responsibility. He should be like, the only yeah. one who takes the brunt. Street. Peter didn't do anything wrong street. here. Oh, Peter, he specify. Peter just so he waited until he was in the middle of the fucking uh, thing. I guess, I guess to just like... Well, that's when he found out. Of, so, well, I guess, I guess to just like make it more clear in terms of the sequence. Hey, can we go back in time and change it? No. Oh, but, the, uh, but there's a spell that I could cast that will fix it. And Peter doesn't know anything about magic. So it should, Doctor Strange should explain to him the nature of the spell. And he starts casting it immediately. No. He, all, all the, the the only thing he had to explain was is like don't talk during the spell because you will change the spell. Like he oh, said, yeah, no, no. you yeah, change my spell six times. He, he knows that he wants the spell to be changed. There, yeah, that's why. Well, yeah, there's no going he back if he makes power. everyone forget. Who's imagine the amount he loses with Aunt May, MJ, and Ned if if all of them forget anything interactions to do with him and Spider Man. Yeah, that's huge. Yeah, but like, yeah. keep in mind he loses it at the end of the movie anyway. That's like, not they relevant. Lose their movie. <laughs> that's <laughs> meaningful. Even, he doesn't that's know. Why that's why it's a sacrifice, because it's something that he doesn't want to happen. <laughs> if it was something he was cool with, it wouldn't be a sacrifice. 
That's yeah. what, I, that's what I'm saying. Someone in chat just said, why is this lady so angry? <laughs> <laughs> We're all that's angry, what I'm damn saying. it. If it's, that's, what, that's what I'm saying. If it's so important to you, why didn't you specify? Because you didn't have a chance. That dumb kid shit doesn't work He said, he said I want to undo the damage that Mysterio has done, problem. right? Which is actually more specific than what Doctor Strange does. Doctor Strange is broad. He's like, the world's about to forget that you are Spider-Man. He goes, wait, what? Because that's not what he asked for. That isn't what he well, asked for, that's to, right. To, to, be, to be fair, I don't think uh, Peter says anything about his relationships or family, and Doctor Strange and him were both blipped for five years, so I don't think that Strange assumed that he had many connections, and that, that's yeah, probably yeah, yeah. on Strange. Doctor Strange has oh, no reason to believe that people Man. know he is Spider-Man. I'm not going to defend Doctor Strange then whatsoever. He's, he's, then right. Peter well, yeah, it's, well it's not a defense him of him, it's just it's not as bad as it could be. He I wouldn't have known. If Doctor Strange went into this knowing exactly how important all of this stuff was to Spider-Man, then it would be but, worse, but it's not that bad. He should have asked, I, though. No, yeah, I you agree. Know? Yeah, because this is a very, very powerful yeah, and yeah. important it's, spell, not to mention insanely yeah. unethical. This is what we the, refer the, the, to the, when the, we say that Doctor Strange was sacrificed on the altar for this movie. Uh, everything doesn't happen unless Doctor Strange is a fucking moron. Like, that's how it has to go. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, like, I, I don't think that Doctor Strange should have known all about uh, Peter's relationships, but the fact that he's so flippant about a, a universe... Uh, rewriting spell. What if it was is, like it's really bad? What if yeah. it was fucking Wong who did this? Would that have fixed it? No, no Wong's um, not supposed not to do this either. Then now Wong's on the altar. Yeah, yeah. Wong's I, yeah I guess. I mean, can, we I, could I, I guess I guess I'd prefer Wong to be assassinated than Doctor Strange. It might be. I guess. It might I be guess, worse. Yeah. Of, it might be even worse if Wong did it because Wong is like cautious. Whereas no, that's true. You're right. A lot more willing to do things that are like. A bit more risky, like doing the first in time right to stop uh, the the D Dormammu. Yeah, it's more in character for Strange to do this because he fucked up with time in the but first. I still, still think it's too. drastically <laughs> out of character. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's still stupid, but he's more in character than Wong would be because Wong would be more. Well, I mean, I book. guess I guess the way to fix to not assassinate any characters is just to have a new wizard for this scene. But like, it should have been Mephisto. Yeah, that's that's, that was the fix. Well, that that overcomplicates the story, doesn't it? No, no, no it doesn't. Make, we can make no, it all work. No, because no. if he does it and he wants to fuck with things and make things. In fact, crazy, it'll help a couple of other things later yeah. on too. If it's Mephisto, it's kind of like wish. Uh, be careful what you wish for, kind of devil. Yeah, we can argue that exactly. Mephisto yeah, was the true yeah. villain of this thing, just trying to make people, yeah. you know, give people what they want, but not what they want. I I still don't like the idea of mixing super tech suit Spider-Man with magic. I think that's kind of weird, to be to be honest. I think but it's cool. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I think it's ahead. Cool. Jumping ahead. Yeah, we are jumping. That's okay. way further ahead. We got so much more to talk about first. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I, I don't know if we need to talk about it more, but like my stance is Peter does everything I would expect Peter to do in this scene, and Strange is a complete moron. Uh, <laughs> I, yeah. I don't yeah. take it. Um, yeah. College bound kid doesn't know how to ask for something. Okay, he, he literally like, does. So when you go to get when, when you go to get something you know. when you go to get something done when you go to get something done do they you expect them to just know what the hell you want? Does you didn't get a chance. No. This is this is if why I brought up the dentist, tells, right? That's I'm like, because they cut to another scene, Walter. What you, they didn't. I mean, it's they didn't. It seemed as anxious as it was. Scene. Just ask me. I'm going downstairs. They're going downstairs. What do you mean? Exactly. Like, the, there's no scene. He has no idea. Peter, like, okay. hey, all right, look. The point. The point of bringing it up. He says like there may that, be a spell, and then he walks off. Know. He has no idea what to tell him yet. Cause he doesn't even know what spell's being cast. All he's been told is by Doctor Strange. I've got a spell that'll fix this. Like I told you with the dentist yeah. story, it's like, well, it's on Mola's character to have explained exactly what he wants to fill it. I was like, well, I didn't even know what we would, she just told me to do the stuff. I didn't know what was happening. I was just like, oh, well, this is the case right now. And then Dr. Strange just doing all this bullshit. And he's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. I don't want to erase the memories of all these people. By the way, can I? I don't well, then, Peter doesn't even have that's confidence what I'm saying. Ask like, before. I originally thought the time stone was going to do something. Someone that's in right, chat he... said, please stop yelling, Nessel. <laughs> I mean, hey, that's I could what just I'm yell saying. with everyone and still and no, no. Metal yell. Just, uh, I'm, just, I'm just saying, like, why did not why not just uh, tell them to stop after you hear that and just say, oh, well, I did. I still want these people, all these people, yeah. to he know who I am. Except for all, the, but he kept talking time. while the spell was happening. He did not tell. Yeah, them that's to how stop you convey completely. information. That is on strange. That's not on Peter. Yeah. Well, I feel like the big thing that shouldn't be ignored is like, okay, now we've just started casting this crazy super duper spell, and now you've told me something that's kind of shocking. Like, I don't know that you immediately are going to make like the best decision in terms of, yeah, okay, stop. Like, 
because you kind of want <laughs> some... I, I don't know I don't know why you're laughing at that. Why are you fucking joking yeah. laughing with me? This is like, yeah, when, when something really important and grave is suddenly introduced to your mind, you're not going to instantly just accept it, know all the consequences, and react and to the most perfect react, react the best yeah, decision possible. Yeah. Say stop. Does he even know if it could be stopped midway? I, I don't Do know, you know that, that he knows I don't that. know that, yeah. yeah. He's, and he's panicking. Yeah, like, he doesn't, like, he doesn't say, he doesn't say stop. Drop. He voices his immediate concern, right? It says, yeah, I think it's a very natural cool. thing to do when, when yeah. that. It's like, it's not, it's not just saying, okay, right, stop everything. It's like, wait, no, I'm concerned about this. Uh, maybe, maybe slightly later on, it would become more reasonable for him to say stop, but I don't think it ever became unreasonable that he didn't simply say stop. Yeah, I mean, as far as you know, yeah. I think okay. Doctor Strange yeah, should have done is stop the spell. That's what that's what Doctor Strange Absolutely. should have done. Yeah, if there were any questions. They should have talked about. He it, should have, Yeah, he, sh he should have said, "I'm going to cast a spell that makes it so that everyone forgets you are Spider Man. This yeah. will affect and you, you. Cannot talk. Yeah, yeah. This will have grave effects on many anybody who knows that. Is there anybody you care about that you would like to be excluded from this spell? And that, by the way, is where I'd like to include an additional criticism of Doc Strange. He puts himself in the lack of memory too, group. Yeah. He's going to erase his own yeah. knowledge, which is not only out of character, what the fuck are you doing? You need to explain to Peter what's going to happen at the end of this spell, which is, oh, hi, Peter Parker, why are you here? And he's going to yeah. be like, yeah. uh, no what's reason. What's he going to tell Doctor Strange? Well, I, 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 think, I think what we're supposed to believe is that, um, I think that as an audience, we're supposed to believe that Strange thinks Peter... And knows that that's going to happen, which is really which dumb. Is absurd. Yeah, yeah. Well, to be uh, fair, I didn't what, know. I guess that's why he's not explaining it until um, I started thinking about the scene more and I rewatched it. That that was—I I thought Strange wouldn't include himself in the memory erasure, but he does. Now, see, you put in all caps, chat. Strange told him he couldn't stop well, after he started it. It's like so that's why they should have had a conversation beforehand, and Doctor Strange needed to initiate that because all he did was lead him to the dungeon and then just start yeah. it before he had a chance to protest. Especially it's... because apparently it's super easy to do it if you know what you need to do. And he if very easily... Um, do, yeah, yeah. Just, he like, very blah, 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 easily... And... Like, like, if it was, like, really difficult to, like... If it was, like, like maybe even impossible to have exceptions, like, it just erased everyone in the world's memories, then I feel like we'd be getting closer. Uh, well, we would, uh, would, and he fixed, edits the spell really easily. Like, you ask him for an edit, yeah. and then he does it, and then we carry on. And it's like, well, now I want <laughs> another edit. It seemed pretty easy to do, and he's like, stop it. And it's like, look, you, you're about to erase the memories of the people I love. Like, I'm gonna try and stop you, Saws. Mm hmm Because you would think after yeah, we... the first correction, he would just go, okay, we're not continuing this spell until you give me a list of exactly. exceptions. I'm not yeah. offering this spell six times. Go home, think about it. This is important. I mean, you think we're at least Unless the spell can't family. be cancelled halfway like, through or something. In which well, case, like, it's time for him to start it. So, yeah, yeah, but yeah. it's not. That's, that's what I just said a minute ago, is, yeah, this, the spell can't be stopped when it starts, which is why they shouldn't have started the spell without yeah. having a conversation. Yeah, absolutely. But more specifically, Doctor Strange shouldn't have started it because Peter didn't know anything about this spell. He, he does stop anything. the spell a little bit before uh, he, he starts back it. up he, again. He, he and that's when it, like, the problem starts. Starts. It seems yeah. like he pauses it and he can't, like... He I can't, thought he was like, editing it, I didn't think he was pausing it. Or yeah. yeah, I thought he restarted it, like he didn't drop it. I'm not sure. Yeah, because he, like, spins the circle and then carries on. Then he, circle, yeah, like, there's two yeah, circles like instead of one. Like a refresh. Yeah. yeah. It is bad writing, but it's Doctor Strange who gets ruined, not... Peter. Yeah, we're just clarifying Peter's in the clear as far as we're concerned. Yeah, Doctor um, Strange is dumb, though. Uh, well, I'm not worried about it. He does dumber shit anyway. All right. <laughs> we'll get to it. I'm sure we'll, we'll get, get to, to it. <laughs> um, so, yeah, then comes... By the way, one at, of... this point, at this point, the spell is only that they forget he's Spider-Man, not who Peter yes. Parker yeah, yeah, is, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. that's okay, right. Okay. Is that well, to, so, issue? I well, to address no, common, I was just wondering, I just didn't remember. To address a common criticism people have, and I feel really bad that they make this criticism, but it's fine. We just kind of have to get it clear and address it. Some oh, people no, say, you're not going to talk about... Some people oh, say, all Peter has to do is oh. retell him that he's Spider-Man. There's literally no consequence no! for this. Oh, no, 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 no. Don't say this. Well, you know, don't if, say if any of you please. guys want to take it, then. <laughs> the oh. criticism, go ahead. Imagine... So, okay. Go, Rex. Right. Go, 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 go. All right, all right. Imagine all of the people who visit nursing homes and hospice care every day on this planet who have to remind their parents and tell their parents, I'm your son, I'm your daughter, you're my parent, we've had generations of time worth of experience together. There, I've reminded you. Problem solved. 
It's the experience that makes the uh, knowledge meaningful. Yeah. Um, um, a lot of their experiences together as people are like, like how much shit have they been through together? Um, post that knowledge. Like existing. Ned and Peter, how much, how much have they been through together? Where like Ned is helping Peter as Spider Man, or they're talking about the fact that he is Spider Man. It's like a huge aspect of their friendship is gone. It's not simply all a right. piece of knowledge. Oh, yeah, all the associated. Okay, all right. Gonna be let's, deleted. let's let's pause. Right, we've already got a couple of people saying that's totally different, and that's it's Alzheimer's. We're talking about magic. All right. So first off, all you guys who said that you're fucking retarded, get a goddamn life. <laughs> so let's go through this. Right, you are having people's entire memories a completely wiped out as it pertains to a very important person in your life. If you can't see how that is a very clear and direct, so, par direct parallel to Alzheimer's and losing your memory of a like a, a son or a daughter or a loved one, you're fucking retarded. I don't know what to say. You're insane. So you're Rex, people are going to say people are going to say that they're not losing their memories of Peter. They're just forgetting that he is Spider Man. To which, which we can clarify uh, a lot of memories. Wow. Yeah, um, the everything that's important. So, Everything that, that a lot of their shared experiences require the knowledge that he is Spider Man. Like, yes. Like, yeah, remember all the time. Like, wait, like Ned describes himself as Peter's guy in the chair. Like, that's a huge part of their relationship. Well, I feel it goes like, away without the information like that he is Spider Man. To make to make it more clear, throughout all of Homecoming, Ned knows and deals with the Spider Man aspect of Peter. And all that, that's gone. That, and all of that's gone. You can't just re-explain that to somebody. It's gone. No, all of the ahead. meaningful. Yeah, their their relationships are fundamentally are different because yes. he is Spider Man. Exactly. Like like um like you know imagine uh, imagine someone that you know that you share like a big secret with, uh, and you erase their mind of all information pertaining to that secret. Right. Your your relationship is going to be different. And like let's say, you, you know I, I don't know if there's if, if many people are going to have like a, as easy as a parallel. I know like um. No, I, it's hard to think of an easy parallel for this kind of thing. I think I might help. I think I can help you out there. The, the only reason that I know Mahler and I know Fringy and I know Jay and I know other Jay and I know all of the people that I've met through EFAP is because they know me through my alter ego. That's, That's true. That's it. And if we that got rid true. of that, um, that, that would go away. Well, I would never uh, know Mahler. I would never know Fringy. I'd never know J and J. I'd never mm -hmm. know everyone, anyone. And he would it's not all, be able to re-explain all of this to yeah. us. No, you can't that just re-explain that. Um, I, I was going to say, what? It, like if someone said you'll erase all interactions post knowing which state slash country everyone in this call is from, the second I found that out, everything post that is gone, I'd be like, holy shit. I don't actually know how much or, I'm about or to at lose. Least, or at least, um, yeah. at least, maybe not gone, but at least like irrecognizably altered in a way that it means yeah. you no longer know. And in right? a way, it's almost scarier in, like, in the in fact like... that I now know that this we've got loads missing. I don't even know what's missing. Yeah. So like, if I if 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 someone tried to erase um, the memory from me that you are the host of EFAP, right? Like that's that's the context under which we like first met. Uh, that's yeah. a context under which like we spent loads of time together. Like if I if the memory that you were the host of EFAP or that you were on EFAP was gone from my mind, I would be losing a lot more than simply that information. And you couldn't yeah. simply retell me, yeah, I host um, EFAP, by the way. I want to address someone who said, Do you expect me to believe he thought about it to that extent and didn't have that clearly stated immediately when he speaks to Strange? What he asks Strange to do is undo what Mysterio did. That's different. Yeah, and then and then Doctor Strange says the world is gonna forget that you are Spider Man. It's like, man. That's, That's not what, not asked what for. I asked. <laughs> like, Let's pull back our aim a little bit. Yeah. Oh, oh. Let's also be clear. Yeah, I am. I am really a dog. I meant like the the name in my alter. The name, I'm, right? I'm, yeah, I'm yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just mm -hmm. that. Yeah, I'm still clearly a dog. Yeah, it's just. Now, this might be jumping ahead a little bit, but I had a question about that. Um, in the end, uh, we probably don't want to talk about the end yet. But um, the original, the original wish or spell was for everyone to forget that Peter Parker is spider-man but at the end everybody forgets everything about him is that yeah. an extension of the spell or is that the same spell because that was a, i was a little he says cast a new spell that. it's a whole yeah. new spell new spell yeah, okay, fundamentally good. different it's because, um, because erasing all knowledge of peter parker from the universe basically yeah i'm also okay, pretty sure yeah. the first spell is just earth localized yeah, because also because the like, whole world his best friend and MJ yeah. knew him before MJ and his best friend knew him before he became 
uh, known as Spider-Man. So huh, that's that's, an, that's you you raise an interesting point there, Metal. Because if it was Earth yeah. specific, does that mean exactly. maybe if the Guardians came back, that they would know who he is? I was about Thor? to bring that up. Yeah, mm. Ooh, that could I, be I wrote that down while I was while I was, I was watching it. I was like, oh, I this is only Earth localized. Well, but then is at it, the end, is it specifically Earth, or is well, he says the whole? He just says the, the whole, whole world. world. I mean, that doesn't necessarily mean planet, right? Well, that's the, point, that's the point. That's the Meadows making is maybe it is just yeah. right, 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 right. But it doesn't matter at the end, anyways, because we don't get that spell. Because at the end, it says everyone is going to forget who you are. So it's like okay, cool. well, so we yeah, don't have that I, anymore, I anyways. Hmm. I don't know if it's intended to, to be just Earth, but it, obviously it doesn't because other everyone from other dimensions comes for Peter Parker, including all of those weird extra dimensional beings at the end so i don't think it was localized it couldn't be oh yeah the, the, the last one certainly isn't be, i think uh people like people from earth from other universes because you see like scorpion so like scorpion from another universe i guess rhino was also there rhino yeah so hmm. still people from earth <laughs> but the tva let's like not them. shall we no let's let's mm -hmm. not yeah no 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 are we not mentioning? Are we not mentioning them at all today? Okay. I don't think we've, we're ever going to look at anything from the MCU in future and judge it with knowledge of Loki. We can't. Of the TVA, we oh, can't. Man. It's <laughs> irreconcilable. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, it, a, also a, the back up the argument against um, people not being able to be told about their relationships being that's that's flies in the face of the critique that you guys had about. Um, uh, Loki, like episode one, where he's like told that he becomes yeah. a Goodman, yeah. Goodman, and everything like that. That's yeah. the same idea. Like you can't be, you can't be told your experiences and become the same person. Like, oh well, yeah, it's all the experiences playing. Um, yeah, it, yeah, all those experiences that crafted the relationship between Peter and MJ and everybody. If those didn't happen the way they did, they might not even even fall in love at the end <laughs> because th those was a very specific sequence of events with very specific emotional moments that led to them becoming you know together but without that they may not even like each other who knows yeah um all but... knowledge of peter's erased how does he even apply for college at that point yeah it's quite a sacrifice to make yeah mm -hmm. yeah we, we can talk about that as well he's lost um... everything and i i guess um so because th that comment was sort of in relationship to it but i assume that part of the nature of the spell is that it also changes evidences in the world of this character's would, existence, it like their yeah, yeah, numbers, yeah, yeah, so I, to, yeah. yeah I, I assume that is part of the spell. So I'm, I have no issue with that being a part of the spell. Yeah, that's um, the one thing. Like uh, all the records and personnel records. Well, I mean, in terms of too. in terms of world building and the power of this magic, it is fucked. That that's part of the spell. That strange can just like do holy that. shit! This is some incredibly yeah, and, powerful magic. Yeah, yeah, it, magic it's, to it's remove issue... all physical or mem remembered evidence of something. Yeah, like, that that's that part. Fuck, it just, yeah, don't piss off Doctor I, Strange. I, yeah, yeah, I believe it's part of the like, spell. Yeah, Doctor that's... Strange is a fucking god. Well, and like, I yeah. do wonder about the implications of it. Like, I wonder how that looks if you have a files just missing information and certain things, or is it changed to account for the fact that it never existed necessarily? You know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, it's, I mean, do you have like a Star Wars situation? Like, yes, yeah, the I don't effect know. of gravity remains, but the planet not there. Mm. <laughs> so there's like this let me ask the younglings <laughs> yeah because like just, the, just yeah. his, his effect on the world the knowledge like you know me, me and Rags send text back and forth we're like oh my god can you believe that guy Peter Parker was Spider-Man the whole time no way that conversation has to either change or disappear right yeah yeah yeah, yeah spell, it's it's, it's part of the spell I can buy it but that just creates all the problems of oh yeah. you can oh. do this because it it has to fo logically follow that if everyone forgets about Peter Parker, then all of his information disappears. It's it one of those things where we could yeah. speculate for a long time trying to figure out any system that might work because that is the system Don't they're using, one. the one of you guys figure it out, we're not telling you how this works. Yeah, yeah the spell is um, easily my biggest I, complaint about the movie because like every single photo, every single record, every single video, MJ's phone has to be magically wiped of very specific information. No, no physical belongings of Peter's could could exist in any of these places. Like photographs, photo, photos on the wall, uh, a picture of Peter in oh, just MJ's like wallet, certificates anything, and birth certificates, yeah, yeah, backups, stuff. digital information, uh, physical files, all of that had to be gone. If Doctor Strange that, that, had that spell, pretty... he could have deleted Ultron from like. That's the one. Of the, it makes to. me wonder about yeah. villains, man. Like, <laughs> what, yeah. what if you erase a villain's memory? Wouldn't that like make them inert, basically? Yep. Yeah, yeah, you can essentially erase their evil, right? 
Just make him a vegetable. Erase, the, erase everything in there. And like, what are the limits yeah. of this universe-altering ability? Like, it, it seems pretty useful. It seems either it's, it, it's fucked that it exists, pretty much. Is, I think so. Yes, it is. It is totally and fucked that it exists. May I it just say, it's insane. Uh, Team Mordo, take down Doctor Strange before he destroys everything, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Do it, buddy. I believe in you. Um, yeah, it's an interesting perspective uh, with this Doctor Strange movie that you're like, oh, Doctor Strange clearly cannot. He's like a villain, mm -hmm. a super villain, a horrific <laughs> super villain. <laughs> well, I mean, I guess with... when we see when we see evil Doctor Strange in the next movie, um, <laughs> well, like, well, if he doesn't use that spell to totally fuck everything up, he's probably missing a trick, huh? And this, this is... also has bigger implica implications because, like, the the fight between him and Peter, Doctor Strange should have wiped the floor with Peter. I'm sorry, there's no way that hey, fight hey, goes hey, away. Hey, 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 skip uh, it hey, way hey, too hey. far ahead, way too far. <laughs> It's like the next scene, isn't it? Do you know how much Eddie... Anyway, no, it's not the next scene at all. No, no. <laughs> We're far okay, away from that light. Um, <laughs> oh, yeah, you're the, right. Yeah, all you're of right. us are itching to make some points, okay? You gotta wait. You gotta be in a queue <laughs> the British way. Um, <laughs> also, as for that tweet, uh, Rags, that comment... I couldn't find that on his Rotten Tomatoes thing. I'm not sure if that's real. Let me take a look. If you can find <laughs> I, the original, uh, let me, let me then uh, we can, well, we can yeah, read yeah. it out. Because I don't, I don't want to read it out if it's just fake. Let's see here. Um... Well, you have. You have oh, I've seen line. that. I think I. I think that is real. I've seen. I've certainly seen it around before. Need proof, evidence. I couldn't find it on Rotten Tomatoes. That can't be looking. real. Well, it I, can't I be. could. I could believe oh, you it. No, like, I could now. Come on. I yeah, that's the it. thing. Um, does he have a? Does he write things for anyone, or does he just? I think it's I think, a, from his own. I think website. it would be taken from his own review. You would just go to Rotten Tomatoes and then look at critics. That's what I did, and I saw his, and it wasn't that. Uh, I think Sophia Nowitz shared that, so I guess and she's see, like. Rotten I think she's a pretty tomatoes. reputable source for that kind of thing. Yeah, but why would you take that screenshot with a Nokia phone? True. <laughs> uh, it is like awfully distorted. Uh, yeah. Let me go to. Yeah, that's the best way bit. to find it's... it would be to go. Maybe, to maybe he deleted it in a, in a shocking moment of self awareness. <laughs> Maybe. Yeah, oh, no, that shit. Didn't so this is this this movie has a ninety four percent from critics and a ninety nine from audiences. Yeah, I'm not surprised by that. Yeah, right. I, I, of course, I don't think people, I am people, surprised. I've seen a lot of adoration uh, for this film. As a big crowd please on that one. Definitely. Uh, well, just just because I, I got it. I was gonna say you don't need to just just have a look if you find it. Let us know. Uh, we'll just carry on. So. We got sure thing. the uh, the then then Doctor Strange says something that possibly annoys me more than I, I'm not sure which annoys me more about him in every single scene he's in. He he pisses me off consistently, but he says, um, "Wow, Peter, you came to me to brainwash the world before even trying to make an appeal with the board." And then Peter's like, "Whoops, yeah, I, I guess I probably should try that first. And then they shuts the door on him, and I'm like, "Bro, you're the one that fucking did all of this. You're you're the yeah. one that brainwashed the. Are we going to talk about the ethical implication? No. So okay. Like... Um. Yeah. Just to make sure, because I'm not sure if we mentioned it explicitly. Ethically, it was really fucked up to change everyone's minds about a thing because someone's life's getting hard. Like to literally yeah. alter what our memories are. That's really fucked. I think it would have been really cool if Strange would have t uh, taken like a like a mentor figure and just helps him out dealing with all of this. That's like a plot device yeah, but that for doesn't Strange. Get us a story instead of making... allowed. I I I know, I know. You I think know that would have been mean. in character too, because because Strange probably feels partially responsible that he led them in Endgame to the correct route, which led to uh, Stark's death. So he probably feels you could you could wind that in, yeah. That. And the fact that he didn't show up yeah. for Westview or for Far From What was even Strange doing? I don't know. Yeah, doing something with. Uh, I guess they had to clear all that snow. But not like they're wizards or anything. They had to clear all that snow in their place. Yeah, yeah they had to use a little yeah, snow shovels. <laughs> Shang Chi. Uh, he gave Shang Chi an eight out of ten. Doctor Strange. He gave two. He Dr. gave Doctor Strange, Strange gave Shang Chi. Doctor Strange. Movie yeah. Bob gave Shang Chi an eight out of ten. Mm -hmm. He gave the Suicide Squad a seven. He gave Black Widow an eight. Oh boy. Okay. Jeez, what a. Are those the only the two numbers Evan. he knows? No, I'm just that's, reading that's some it. of those them. Are just, those are just the only two numbers he knows, that's why. 
Makes he sense. gave Mortal Kombat a three and Cruella a six. <laughs> He's very reliable. He's a very reliable critic. <laughs> what a what a fucking bizarre person. Um, he has the best way I've ever seen of like making adding a bunch of words to a sentence and making no sense whatsoever. Like, <laughs> I can't read a sentence. Well, a lot of people have that sense. skill, to be fair. <laughs> well, this is his real quote. It's Hollywood's most awkward co-parenting exercise concludes for now in an overstuffed but no, by no means uh, unsatisfying feature that's one part payoff <laughs> machine for 20 years worth of Spider-Man history, one part way too meta franchise management exercise. What the fuck does that mean? He <laughs> gave Sonic a two. Really? He gave I mean, Birds I'm... of Prey a nine. Ugh. Oh, fuck's sake. <laughs> a nine out of ten. I don't know if there's many nines uh... on here. There's a couple nines, but well, of he, it, can, you, can you sort by his highest can rated you, movies? Can you please is that link something this? To do? I need to see this. Uh, <laughs> this is just going. This is going from the blurbs because the the read mores they link to his YouTube videos on them. Yeah, that there's is. The, there's his, link to all his uh, videos. Let me see if I can rate by. I can. So. I just linked to all of his reviews. If you want to look them? Yes, thank you very much. Yeah, Birds of Prey is a nine. Eternals is an eight. Shang Chi is an eight. Black Widow is an eight. Man, he, he like gave Sonic Free Club. Guy a nine. He's the perfect what? Disney mark, huh? Free Guy a nine out of ten. Fuck I'm... that! He gave Army of the Dead a seven. No. What? Why would you? No. What? Uh, Could be a holy fat. Listening to Movie uh... Bob's opinions and just <laughs> com confusing inside. Yeah, I'm gonna skip uh, that one. I guess what? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, guess what? Guess a quiz. Guess what score Movie Bob gave Ooh, this movie? Ooh, that could be fun. Everyone, stop looking! Everyone, yeah, stop, stop looking, everyone! Um, what? We got Spider Man to talk about. We're already at two hours. Yeah, yeah actually, you know I, what? I, 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 I tried, but it didn't work. Yeah. We're, Are we we're, we're not even, we're like a sixth through the movie at two hours, guys. Yeah. Sweet! That's a sixth We're doing well, guys. We're doing very well. But yeah, I think it would have been would have been cool if they would have worked together from the get go, and not with this weird spell shenanigans. <coughs> make some outside force makes fuck something up like the yes. spell they do. Just and then, all of this. I think they could have just had man. like cool banter with with each other because the few scenes they just normally talk to each other later. I think they're like pretty alright. I yeah, there's some there stuff some, there I don't hate to work with there. I don't hate everything about Doctor Strange in this movie. Not everything. Yeah, we'll get there. Um. Yeah, so, but I think that, 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 that's the way I, they I would, joke. It's like, ugh, it's not. I not would good. argue that uh, per Doctor Strange the movie, um, he is kind of characteristically reckless. If you see, like, well, I mean, his whole mm. his whole entire arc is based on him being reckless. He's a little reckless as a as a surgeon. He's he's arrogant. He drives way too fast in the mountains. He almost loses his entire reason for existing because of that. So I would say that that's kind of. There, I think that's a I, I think too far at that too point. Far. The um, what we see in Infinity War seems to me more definitively Doctor Strange at that point in his arc, which is, I've been tasked with taking care of the world. I will not risk anything happening catastrophically to the world for any one person. That's not happening. Yeah, I would agree that he's evolved past that. Like this, if this happened, let's say halfway through Doctor Strange, the original movie, I'd be more on board. But he's mm -hmm. definitely changed um, since then. Because in Doctor Strange, he gets to choose between going back to the surgery life or becoming someone who protects Earth, and he chooses Earth. So, I just from that point on, I don't believe he's like, hey, hey, let's do a spell. This will be fun. No Ooh. way. No, no way. Yeah, I. Oof, it hurts. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I, 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 I know. I know. I know we said we weren't going to read any more movie Bob quotes, but I have one more that I think you all enjoy. Uh, <laughs> Rachel Wise has a little farm with several adorable Kunik, uh, Kunikune pigs. Film of the year thus far, 8 out of 10, Black Widow. <laughs> <laughs> well, when the man is right, right, the man is right. Of course he loves pigs. <laughs> he, loves he relates to them. Oh, <laughs> he relates to them. Five people. I'm waiting for Friggy to be like, hey, pigs are cool. He's not. I, like... I was actually wondering whether or not I was talking about pigs are cool. Um, but they are. Representation. Pigs are I'm smart, oddly, that pig they... from Black Widow did look like him. No. Oh. If you <laughs> go back to no, no, Come on. And, and just like Black Widow. <laughs> pigs <laughs> alone. Poor pig alone. <laughs> no. He, he got choked out. He got suffocated by a monster. Like, he's suffered enough. Maybe, no, maybe Black Widow. Up. 
Right. Right. Maybe Black Widow was like my commentary on how like you know Disney can just flip his uh his review on and off uh from you know fresh to rotten just like the pig was able to turn on and off from breathing to not breathing. You know, it's meta commentary. Seems um, sense. You got we we could we we carry on. We're doing it. Let's continue. Or go ahead. So. Uh, Spood decides to try and contact the admissions lady and appeal to her himself. He gets the information through Flash, who just says she's just left to go to the airport, I think, from presumably yeah. wherever. Uh, so on his way, he contacts her, get a little bit of a startup of an awkward conversation, and then the spider sense starts tingling, doing its little lingly flangles. Bum, bum, bum. Uh, now I want to yeah. highlight... I ain't nobody specific, all right? And if this applies to you, don't worry about it. It's fine. But a lot of I saw a lot of criticism being like, fucking shitty MCU Peter once again activating and deactivating his suit right in public because he just doesn't care about his identity. It's like the whole world knows um, who he is. Wait, but what? They, <laughs> yeah, it's like out. clearly they already that. know. It's, so I don't know why that movie. got said. <laughs> I, I know a few specific things. There's no point in me saying them. I just when I saw, it, I was like, I don't understand. <laughs> why, why would he bother at this point? Uh, <laughs> I, one I, one I little like detail I like. Little kiddos like Peter Parker. That's cool. One little one little detail I really liked. Possible deniability. Um, one de one detail I really liked about that is that um, when he was in his suit and then he got out of it and he was like trying to be Mister Interview Man, uh, his like suit was all wrinkled and his shirt underneath say, was all wrinkled yeah. for the rest of the day. I thought that was a good detail. It's a great detail. Yeah. Also, this is the first time we get like a spider sense sound effect in the MCU, which I, I thought was a neat. It's just a little neat well, pick there. It's like a bit of a callback to the Raimi films. Without going into more detail, I love the spider sense in this film. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. a bit more. Do we know if um, it's a fun way of adding think, If we're talking about who arrives, is it contrived that they end up in the same place, or is it um, I think is Doc Ock only was there as a down, result right? of Peter being there? Right, okay. That was, I wanted to check. Um, I do have a question about Doc Ock because he is not aware that this is what Peter Parker looks like in this film. But it, wouldn't his face be everywhere at this point? Or presumably, um, is there... we have Doc Ock got disoriented from having teleported, went to where his machine should be in um, the location from the Raimi films, found it's not there, nor is his like hideout, and so immediately started hunting down Peter as the person who's stolen his machine. Um, you could argue. But he didn't see his face on the way over there. Well, you you could argue not only that, but also shouldn't he just be looking for information in general because everything will look different. Yes, this yeah. is a new universe. So, surely he would have tried to get some information somewhere along the way that would have given him quite the realization, you know. Um, but he seemed, yeah. They they treat it as though he's just arrived from having been teleported, and I guess that's a possibility. Um, I'm trying to think of how that would make sense, like in terms of does it follow? Um, because the I, other people I just mean, teleported randomly, because like wasn't Venom in Mexico or something or South America? I don't know how that. Follows. Yeah, that was something. Definitely somewhere um, south. It's of the probably border. fair to imagine there was a couple people who got teleported in that we never even saw because they're just so confused, you know. And. Mm -hmm. Doing normal because I, I think Venom had a what you could call a normaler reaction than a lot of them. They all seem to be like, Yeah, rawr, just well, had another drink. Yeah, he just goes to a bar, he's like, The fuck is happening? <laughs> Do all the people, did all the people from the train in Spider Man 2 did they come through the oh god, <laughs> uh, oh no, <laughs> may, well, the thing is, maybe you know, maybe. Well, yeah, they could have just I, been going assume... around. Like, what, how, what's going on? What, where am I? Oh my god, what's happening? Uh, well, <laughs> how were the story they... of those people? Because I know what he looks what is... like, that doesn't mean that they know who he is, right? Yeah, they don't know that he's Peter Parker. Oh, uh, yeah, I, su they don't yeah, know I suppose. Peter... Unless yeah. one of them managed to find they know, they know Spider Man is a guy like a white guy with brown hair, that's what they know. Yeah. In New yeah, but, but they, they might not the... even recognize him if they saw him on the street, to be honest. Maybe. I Maybe. guess it depends. Some of them might. Like, if they could put a face to well, the it, spider -Man. It depends how good a memory they have for faces, right? Because, like, if I yeah, saw I a dude one time on a train, even if it was, like, an important experience for me, I probably wouldn't be able to pick him out again from a crowd. Uh, that's just not a skill Maybe. I have. Whereas, you know, I, I guess some people probably can. It, it depends on the individual, but like I, said, just, I, I feel that's probably not enough for them to get in this spell. They might have walked around the world. Knowing Peter Parker is Spider-Man. 
They might have walked around the world for 12 hours, they went to a police station, or maybe try to contact their versions of themselves, you know, shenanigans might have happened in the 12 hours they had, or 12-ish hours. Yeah, there could just be like, there could just be a fun side story where a guy yeah. meets an alternate universe version of himself, like... <laughs> Um, oh, it could be like a tragedy where his life is terrible in the old universe, but in this new oh, one, he meets a girl, they fall in love, they're really starting to kick things off, you know, he he's just, he, he finally, things are starting to look up, and then he disappears and go back to it, back to his shitty universe. He's like, no, I want to stay. Cool that would actually be a really interesting uh, subplot, is if one of the characters that the uh, alternate universes fall in love with, like, say, uh... What was the girl in Amazing Spider-Man? I forget her name. Uh, yeah. Gwen Stacy. Gwen? Gwen Stacy, yeah. Gwen like, what Stani? if she was alive in this universe and then he didn't want to leave? That'd be an interesting subplot. I mean, I don't want to be backseat writer, but that. Would yeah, I, feel, I mean, I feel like they wouldn't be able to fit it in, but it could be the uh, kind of interesting thing to do in a story, right? Yeah. I don't feel it fits in this movie, but it's it's a neat concept to work with. Yeah, this, said, the story's already very full, but that would have been kind of cool to explore. I'm sure, I'm right sure something like that's been done somewhere. That's ringing bells for me. Yeah, like like someone like, butterfly butterfly effect, oh butterfly oh effect, it's um it's doctor who season two cybermen one uh they do that that's a plot line in that yeah that, 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 that's the story you can watch that if you want fringy what's the simpson episode that does this uh, <laughs> it wouldn't be, be simpson uh, yeah, uh, it would be simpson unless it was treehouse of horror or something maybe we we need to invite mike stoklas over here to tell us which star trek episode this is too <laughs> yeah <laughs> Oh, I, I it does feel like a very natural Enterprise. premise. I could believe it's been done a few times. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, oh, but like because uh, there is that one episode in season one uh, where the people from the past are awoken from cryogenic slumber, and one of them only cares about his business and his stocks, and then he has to come oh, to yeah. grips with the fact that all that stuff doesn't exist anymore. Well, there's yesterday's Enterprise where Tasha Yar falls in love with the past version, with that past guy on the Enterprise C, and then he chooses to go back in time with yes. um, him. Yeah, so that yeah to stop the the uh, the Romulan uh, yeah war with uh, yeah yeah the hey, so Federation. On, yeah, I, this is a bit of a tangent, but I just pulled up Twitter. Oh, we're there. <laughs> we're there, Fringy. <laughs> tangent. Fantastic Four was on the tab trending and i clicked on it and i'm happy because it's all people like oh hey john watts is doing that that's gonna be a cool movie yes yeah. finally it makes appreciation me finally for the man more creative yeah, yeah. finally I'd say i'm right underrated at this point i mean yeah i, I disagree with that uh so this the, the doc ox theme starts playing with the spider sense and just Raimi Raymoids start to coom. Which is fair. Raymoids. Oh no. Raymoids. Hey, I could I could be considered a Raymoid. I was really happy to listen to that theme coming in. Cool. Um Sam and theme come back later too. And like I love a lot about Doctor the well, Doctor Octavius, I guess. The um I guess this the sound effects of all of the tentacles and the the clanking the like how consistently we'll have at least two of them focusing on movement and stability while the other two are like attacking and then the different ways mm. the tentacles make use of uh the environment and just everything to do with the person he's trying to attack like uh this the the interesting ways he'll use the tentacles to do all kinds of different things um obviously Molina and his commentary in the fight is just fun to listen to as well. And uh, yeah, I mean, we can't deny it's just like, man, we haven't seen him for like twenty years. Yeah, he's like sixty-eight now. He did oh. pretty good. Like, I don't know <laughs> if they did time. a bunch of de-aging or whatever, but like, yeah, the oh, there's shit coming out. They did de-age him. It yeah. looks pretty good for the most part, I think. Yeah, I was surprised. Oh, yeah. he, he's, he doesn't um, look like he missed much time since Spider-Man Two. It's a good reminder of a really fucking cool Spider-Man enemy. Um. Yeah, Doc Ock is awesome. And, uh, and I liked how he's like the one that was actually being able, was able to be redeemed at the end, pretty much. I mean, I guess Sandman mm -hmm. too, I suppose, but he was like the really strong redemption arc there. At the I end, think everybody I think. wanted that. And Everyone, I mean, yeah. Yeah. We'll, probably okay, talk, yeah. we'll probably talk about it more I, later, but like Molina, yeah. the acting, or like the immediate awesome. switch in Molina, the immediate switch mm -hmm. that it's so clear when he gets yeah. fixed up later, like that he's a different person. I love it. So good. Yes, uh, and uh, yeah, we'll talk about it, I guess. <laughs> um, something relating to the tentacles is that um, we almost, um, I would need to rewatch a little bit more thoroughly, but uh, there's almost like an excuse here for why the tentacle blade is not. You say almost. Um, that implies, <laughs> yeah. Is it almost or is it just definitive? John Watts has it answered just, the tentacle is. blade question. 
It doesn't yeah, work on the it don't Iron work Spider. On Iron Spider. Yeah, and I'll sue everyone really hates. <laughs> 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 uh, and also, um, he has to restrain Peter from using his own arms before he can get a good shot in with the tentacle blade, so he can't just press Peter down and activate it to begin with. So there's like mm -hmm. two things going there. Yeah. I was really impressed watching him fight people and his tentacles. It They really did seem like a natural extension of his body at this point. He was yeah. clearly used to having them and using them. It was yeah. really cool. It was I just also, cool to watch him. Yeah. yeah. Dude, I'd love, a, I'd love a set of Dr. Octopus tentacles. I'd like them I too. That'd yeah. be cool. Pop them on. I love like how he's... I also like how, how Use them to grab really... my bread. <laughs> I love bread. Really... Look at all the bread I could carry. <laughs> uh, that's what I want to see a movie of Doc Ock doing just getting, buying shopping, bread at the store going shopping and just being able to more efficiently get stuff than everybody else yeah. of his, his look at this bread a graph. <laughs> look at this bread <laughs> bread a graph <laughs> uh, India what were you going to say oh no I was just saying that I really like the detail where not all the time I think but a lot of the times especially when he got more flustered uh doc ock would start uh talking in like the royal we we're like we won't let you do that yeah like, yeah because it's actually the tentacles talking and i thought that was a great detail as well like yeah he, yeah he really show and as soon as he gets fixed up he stops that he's talking from the first person again so it was just like it was a cool detail because you could tell that of all the of all the villains that deserve to be redeemed he was just messed up because he's under mind control rather than uh you know, something of their own. Like a motivation or, or of power or, yeah. or uh, going to his daughter, that sort of thing. Yeah, he's like... He's... Uh, uh, yeah, so it's like um, his tentacles yeah. corrupt his existing motivation into something more sinister. Yeah. 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 Though admittedly, when he wasn't under the super duper control of the tentacles, he did not Peter out of the way when he tried to unplug the machine. <laughs> so yeah, so you can that. argue that it it is that's what Jay it kind of boasts what Jay said, right? Like it's uh it's already it is there. It's just not as loud. Yeah. 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 Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. It it it, it kind of it's almost brings like out the, worst the inhibitor thing. chip yeah. removes his inhibitor his chip oh, from his yeah. brain. Oh my, oh my god. god. Bum, Thank bum, you. Bum. I'm here all day. Uh, <laughs> I also like that Peter's like not fully engaging with this fight. He's mostly trying to plead to them and explain it until he mentions I should have killed your girlfriend. Like, mm. okay. yeah. And then he's like, it's personal now, you know? <laughs> okay, mate. No, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> You've taken this too far, sir. I think um, it's funny how like, he takes it personal when it just wasn't. He just <laughs> yeah, it's not even about him. <laughs> It's not even about his girlfriend. Um, and I do want to appreciate, it is so much fun to think about, but Peter's POV here, there's this guy with four leg things coming out of his back, <laughs> trying to attack everyone, kill me, and he finally gets me in a really good position, and then it says, you're not Peter Parker. It's like, what? But I am. Yeah. <laughs> <What's> actually. <laughs> well, and I think he says, I am so confused right now. It's like, yeah, he would be. Um, you and me both. So, uh, with highlighting a criticism, I know is is a thing, but I'll I'll talk about it anyway. The um, <gasps> oh wow, how convenient that that uh, that that sorry, I need to say Tony's, which technically it is Tony's, but uh, Peter's uh, nanotech syncs with the, the 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 claws and manages to get them all onto his side by pairing with his uh, his AI. It's like man, if that didn't happen, Peter would probably be dead. Um, would he? I don't even know for sure. I guess you could argue that. Because um, Peter is kind of vulnerable right now, if you watch that scene. Right up until he gets control. Yeah. The thing is, um, Otto is actually... He uses nanotech for the for the the arms in the Raimi films. He's explicit. He says there's nanotech in them specifically about the way they're controlled. And so he's... Which explains why he's not only aware of nanotech and not surprised by it, but interested in it. And that's when, when it wraps around... Um, it's just the, the, the devices are pairing, that's what the suit says, and that uh, the AI is more powerful in the uh, Stark suit, which is in line with what you'd expect, because the technology of this world is far more advanced than the Raimiverse. Done and done. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I feel like that follows cause like and effect pretty well, um, in a way that that's I'm kind of impressed. Really nice detail. Yeah, it is. It is impressive. I wouldn't have... I just kind of went along with it because I don't remember that line from Spider-Man 2. Nobody people um, would, I don't think. It's the kind of, it's the kind of thing like, where, okay. um, like, it, it, it's only the kind of thing that's going to bother you if you start asking questions about it. And if you start asking questions about it, then you'll probably be able to find the answer, right? 
Well, I, th I um, think this is an opportunity where you go, you don't need to find out all those details, but they are there. You can find them. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is kind of neat. Uh, you could probably ask more questions and maybe get less satisfying answers, but I feel like for sci-fi, this is good enough, is it not? Yeah, I think the only thing to really ask is it, yeah. if if this hijacking ability would have come into play with previous conflicts. So I think if there's as long as there's no contradictions there, you, you're pretty much in the clear. Yeah, yeah I mean, we see the much. Iron Suit, the Iron Man, uh, Iron Spider suit is like so powerful, and it can basically immediately within a snap cloak somebody in and is fairly impermeable. So you could assume that the armor could also do that to other shapes and sizes, right? So it's not it's not too far out of the realm of possibility that it just wrapped itself around a new object and basically, you know, with, through somewhat similar technology, took over. I guess. I mean, it's really really advanced stuff. So, it's I I, I had no problem with the nano suit stuff. And just as Otto is defeated, um, the admissions lady obviously sees all of this, and so she's like, "You're a hero. You're a you're a straight up fucking hero. I'm gonna talk with the people and try and get you and your friends in." And he says really to like, them, by the way, sorry, uh, do you want to? Well, I was just going to. I, 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 I had to comment on stuff that had already happened. I'll, I'll just end this. It's just that he says it wasn't about me. You, like, as, as if she's made a mistake. He, he wants to clarify, no, 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 get them in. Then she's like, no, all of you. Uh, which is kind yeah, of yeah, yeah. as well. But go ahead. Uh, I really, really enjoy the character interactions um, and the, the attitudes of uh, Peter and uh, Octavius when peter has control of the tentacles like it's very peter is almost amused by it um the 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 attitudes are very i mean they're, they're very characterful do you want to you, you learn a lot specific, about these or? people as you're seeing them uh i'm trying i'm trying it's just <laughs> not coming out <laughs> i have the movie peter, in front of me that's the problem peter's um, always been very curious he has he's always been lead to him doesn't he yeah, he's My very curious and very interested. Yeah, he's like, he completely deflates the drama of it in sort of an interesting way because he's so fascinated yeah. by this, these Waldos. Yeah. They're like, oh, this is like um, a got your nose kind of moment. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, seems like he feels belittled and Peter is very much amused by it, but it's not, um, it's not like, it's not the most serious high emotion stuff. It's, it's clearly just fun for Peter, I guess. Um, now that he knows he's safe and that um, he's pretty much got this in the bag. Yeah. Um, it, it, it is but fun that Ark acknowledges it's like, almost this is fucking terrible for him. Like, I think one of his lines is like, will the humiliations never cease? Because like, it's just... It's yeah. almost um, appreciation of... I, I get the sense that Peter understands that he's lucky in that scene. It's like, it's like the kind of thing that I get when I get like a fucking bullshit victory in a game because I get lucky. It's like, that's the same kind of attitude I see in Peter there. Uh, it's very human. Yeah, I mean, it kind of ties into the whole Edith thing. Even dead, I am the hero. Or even in death, I'm the hero. Like, a lot of this really is due to the long shadow that Tony Stark has left. I mean, a lot of this stuff was uh, absolutely due to Stark tech. And that fight would have gone very different had he not had the suit on. That's true. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, this thing, I don't hate the Iron Spider, and I feel like it was used pretty well here, and uh, in a way that made sense. So, a little chill with me. Um, and the, mm -hmm. the continuity yeah. was pretty cool, too. Like, after the chest piece was taken off, he had, like, to duct tape it back on, and then later it was fixed. I don't quite get the logistics of that, but it, they did keep it. Was it fixed, or was it that, that it wrapped around a. Di I can't quite remember exactly how it worked. Yeah, somehow it got merged again um, in one in one scene. I I thought maybe Aunt May fixed it at one point. I think he thanks her for it. Uh, I don't know. I have to watch that. She cleaned again, the goo but... off the suit. Oh, that's probably it. Oh yeah, the goo. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. He. Yeah. He before he gets that's out of the, the car. That's where the goo went. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What, what are we talking He's... about? <laughs> Peter thanks Aunt thought, May. I thought that was legit. Just a hole that the goo disappeared. No, no. no. Aunt May cleaned it up. Um... And Peter says, thanks for cleaning my suit before right. he gets out of that the car. Says, okay. Yep. There you go. Um, Precisely. Well, well, glad we put that one to yeah, rest. We, <laughs> thank goodness. I was... The goo was a big deal. Um, so with uh, with that done, the Green Goblin shows up in the background. He's about to throw... Well, he does throw a pumpkin bomb. And before we can really understand Green. anything about what's happening, they get Doctor Strange portaled out of there. Both of them. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, it's pretty like, oh, Bastard. schnizzle. And then, yeah. Um, and before Peter can understand what's happened, Lizard fucking roars at him from his little cell. And it's like, oh my goodness, there he is. Oh my lizard. goodness, he wants to turn everyone into Lizard. By the way, um, Doctor Strange being able to throw portals again is like super OP and it's yep. an ability that he doesn't use enough at all. Like no. he can, he can basically put any yeah. person anywhere he wants. That's huge. That's yeah, the portal uh, ability. If that was yeah. a superhero's only ability, that would be incredibly powerful. He would be like, I mean, like literally, he could like just teleport anyone he wants to the center of a sun, right? Like that's, I guess, I guess opening a portal to the center of a sun kind of complicates. Like, oh, you would some probably die. There. Yeah, you would, you would yeah, probably die your on your. Bunker. But like, he could send them, you know, near a sun or just middle of space. Just a little vacuum. Space well, the general. vacuum of space would go <laughs> yeah. through the. Uh... Uh, in even non-lethal well, yeah, like, okay, yeah, yeah, like air would get sucked out a bit but if you have it open for just like a second that's not a crazy amount of air you're losing like you're fine that's not a problem but like, even create, like, like a sonic boom or something i don't know how would that work and I'm, I'm not a i'm not a physics guy but if you suddenly introduced a a circular vacuum inside of earth's atmosphere like that what I don't no, know. I think I think it would probably just be a big, big gushy wind for a sec as it was open, and then it would stop when it was closed, right? Any, yeah, yeah I, I guess I any physics, yeah, it, physicists in chat. Yeah, let us know what would happen. Even then, <laughs> though, like, you can send anyone you want, like underground. I guess you could send them. You could send them to like some distant planet. You could send them. The moon. You could also like as soon as uh, Peter gets in one portal, you could send him to Fort Knox. Like you could you could absolutely take him out of the picture one portal. So that's a little underutilized by Doctor Strange. Like as soon as they get, I mean, no, we're skipping ahead. But as soon as there's any sort of conflict, Doctor Strange, one portal, bam, you're. We'll in yeah. a, talk in about a, that in portal. a moment. We're almost getting there. <laughs> you know, while some of my talk about the funny occurred. Um, uh, when when um, MJ falls off the scaffolding later, I was thinking, what if you put a portal, two portals beneath her, so she falls through a portal and just shoots straight up, but she slows down, and then she comes back and she goes through the other and slows Not down a little like bit more. Just just like you do portal. portal. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, kind of, yeah. You don't need to because there's no fall damage in that game. Yeah, well, yeah but you do boots, need to complete the missions. By John Jameson, remember? That's, he yeah. designed some boots. But you don't. You never need to do it to slow your rate of falling. No, you do. You do for specific platforms. From doing that, um, in do you? Yeah, like if you're aiming for a particular platform, you got to get your. I guess. Oh yeah, I guess that's true. Yeah. Anyway, um, I play Portal Two. Good. Portal Two is better than Portal One, but it's they're still both good. Uh, Yeah. So then we get another fantastic line from Strange, where he says, "That little spell you botched went from wiping your uh, spider info just general memory to pulling everyone in who knows you," and it's like. Well, Peter botched. Who who botched? <laughs> who botched? Mm. Was it? I, I didn't realize Peter was a magician. I, he was a burning okay. strange. Well, yeah. and uh, and MJ makes it clear later you fucked it up, and uh, I think some people didn't like that she was being that sassy with him. But at this point, like I just be like I would be way more sassy with him than her. I'd be like, you're like, a, yeah, an so idiot like, that's costing us everything. You have an issue with that line. Um... Is like because I don't think that line is out of character for Strange. I think that Strange probably would believe that Peter fucked that up rather than him. I don't think that that's the issue. More so, just the behavior beforehand is. The I guess issue. I just we yeah, should like, I guess we I should not be <laughs> in a position where we shouldn't be in a position where MJ should be able to say something like that. The Strange and no, have it yeah. make sense. Yeah. 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 But uh, I think that the characters are acting with that line. The characters are acting in character in the position that they're already in. Yeah, in the assassin be in, that's out of character. Him yeah, lying there with a bullet in the back of his head. Like, like you know, let's say, let's say the characters different. like the characters were teleported into that position against their will, and they all believed they'd done that. I think that's what they'd be saying, but they shouldn't have been doing that in the, at and all. So, yeah, I think so. Well, this is this is it. We find out a lot of villains are getting pulled in. We need to get them all jailed before they hurt anyone, um, and then we can try and sort out the spell. So Strange is going to go work on whatever he has to do for the spell, and he wants uh, Peter to capture the, uh, the things by giving him this this tech that uh, like it's like a spider suit add-on that he can shoot a portal at people and they'll be sent into the prison cells. Um, now during the movie, um, you, sorry, what's oh. that, Alvin? No, <laughs> I think I was, I was I was confused on why Electro was there though. 
Did he ever well, know Spider-Man? Well, wait, 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 wait. Um, don't you, don't you know? Well, so, so this <laughs> might know, be right? black, to be fair. <laughs> nice no. it, might, it might be worthwhile. <laughs> There's actually probably a few things. Maybe, maybe this would be an opportunity to note that the information that the villains have access to seems to be conflicting. Like, did did Doc Ock know that Norman was was Green Goblin? Did he know that? He Could, would. I think he must have known that, right? No, no. Wait, was that public? Why would no? I don't remember, think that was public remember knowledge. Remember Peter, don't tell Harry. That was the big secret. Oh right? yeah, that, I guess that he didn't was... tell Harry. He told the news organizations. It's, you know, it's, a, it's a workaround. It's so. Hmm. So there's that, and it's like right. we're not going like, to kill so, Paul per se, and uh, and I mean it's you you just brought it up right. Electro didn't know that Peter was Spider Man. That was something that Harry in that universe didn't know yet either. They, Are we supposed to then assume Electro being killed? that these aren't from the places that we know them specifically? The places they're from alternate versions. I feel like I feel like hmm. that's not what we were. I, I think I was going to yeah, think that at first that. until we saw that Electro was blue and then got converted into like little or you know normal Electro. I think that was meant to be like no, these yeah. are from they're they're from like the ca the other Spider Man films in canon. I don't know. Maybe, about maybe why, not, why would that maybe be? Because they're going to be close. So if the idea is that they are from universes that are what we saw in those movies, but variations and stuff like that would still carry over, right? But then, in the in the ending fight, didn't um, Electro's like he still didn't even know who he really was. Like he didn't know that Peter was Peter. Yeah, he yeah, died before or anything. Well, so like here's, here's the big thing. Uh, one of the first things me and Jay talked to each other about was how like why are we're in spoilers? Who cares? What, we've said this already. Why are the two Spider Mans getting drawn in? How is the logic work? Is it because they they're aware that themselves that they, they are Peter? So why would? And if that's but maybe the MJ could be here. I'm gonna question. The narrator, why do we think the Doctor Strange is 100% correct about the nature true. of the spell having gone wrong? Oh, he says, true, true. He says everyone's getting drawn in who knows who you are, when it's like, could it could it be something else? Could it just be people who are related to versions of Peter in any way? That probably is a better explanation. Um, it's not the one that he gives, but maybe he's wrong, yeah. I don't know what, yeah, because like, mm. it, it, it seems like there's too many variables that go against what Strange is saying, so either and, Strange and is wrong... Be, yeah. Um, I think while, while I think while I think we're probably supposed to buy Strange's explanation, well, Strange isn't omniscient oh, within the universe, so like it is completely plausible well, that he's wrong. Here's your big counter: Venom in yeah, the Venom Tony is... movies has no idea who Peter is because the, the yeah. like there are no superheroes as far as we're aware in that universe. So him being oh, there okay. has to either that doesn't make any sense or Doctor Strange is wrong. Some people are saying that's right um, in the movie. It's literally not. Whether a strange is wrong is up to us. We got the content. Decide. Because the context would seem to indicate yeah. that so, like, we don't add true. anything there um, to the story. No. There's like two into like you can interpret any line of dialogue as not true. Like that's like what <laughs> anything that any character says, unless you're explicitly showing that event, you can think, well, maybe that's not true. So, like. So just to because someone said that's head canon. So what we see in the film is that people who didn't know his identity were there, and Doctor Strange said that that was why they were there. So there is something here that is irreconcilable. Either he's wrong or it's a problem. I think that's yeah. uh because mm -hmm. um, Os Osborne definitely knew about Peter at least toward the end. Uh, we don't know exactly. So did we find out exactly when Greek Goblin was snatched? The other guys told their stories and when they were when they I were think, nabbed. But... I think we're meant to assume it was before he impaled himself on the glider. I think the right. I think the reason why we got told those stories was it's about you know within a few minutes of them dying. Um, yeah, obviously before they're dead. And if you interpret, you have to dead, give but... evidence. Well, that is the evidence that well, people yeah, who it, didn't know. I think identity they've forgotten. There. You guys have to counter it. And good luck with that, because there's nothing in the film that can counter it other than in well, Doctor Strange said it. So. You know. So in both cases, it's a problem. It's like one is much bigger than the other, though. Um, it's a, it's less of a problem if Doctor Strange is just wrong. That that would be a lesser problem than it doesn't make sense, like as in a universe. Yeah, I, I don't know something. why people are so averse to that with how much of a fucking moron he is in this film. Like, <laughs> why we we, we treat that, that we treat it like it's an impossibility? Like, it's like how is that? Why wouldn't that be the more no, reasonable assumption? Sorry. Now I'm very confused. Venom at the end of Venom 2 sees a newsreel that Peter Parker is Spider-Man. Yeah, but like, what is, so is he, then why did he get teleported out of the universe then? That means he lives in the Marvel Cinematic Universe if he saw that newsreel. Unless he saw it and then got teleported in, but that wouldn't make sense. 
Does that mean that there's? A... I think like a portal opens up and he sees it, and I I don't I don't I get don't it. I don't understand that at all. That's... And also, and also, Spider Man Three Venom. Why is everyone saying Spider Man Three Venom when we're talking about why... like, Tom Hardy? Venom? Also, why is everybody saying Venom has multiversal knowledge? What does that mean? And let's to bolster. I guess he knows uh, about things that happen in different multiverses. If, why, if we're like deciding to go multiverse. with everything Strange says is now canon, and he can't be wrong about anything, he also says we know frighteningly little about the multiverse. Uh, apparently, he has yeah. access to the multiversal hive mind, so Venom tr Venom okay. transcends all universes. Okay. Okay. Is that uh, a movie okay. though? A comic book thing. Yeah, that's that, probably, that I th like. I think that you're talking Morgan. about comic books. <laughs> that's uh, well, apparently it's in Venom yeah. 2. People are saying that it's in Venom Wait, really? 2. Really? Yeah. Okay. Well, I haven't right. seen Venom, um, so you guys are going to have to. I, yeah, yeah. I mean, too. Venom, I didn't we... want to watch Venom 2 because okay, I th so... it was a sequel to Venom. That would still be <laughs> um... Electro then. Ele I feel like Electro is still the one. He didn't know. Um, he definitely didn't know. Unless yeah, he, he thought Spider Man out. was black. Like. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, Peter Park. He could have could have been a black Peter Parker. Maybe he thought That's that true. Like, he could have known Peter Parker's name. I guess. No. Well, so it's the not, the pro, the it's pro, not a very black name is it? I don't think they ever met uh, with Peter. I think he met Gwen Stacy, but I don't think he met Peter. Yeah. Um, yeah, and, he, yeah and there was no like re, like because remember Harry, Harry deduces it out later. Yeah, yeah. after right. Electro's already gone. Yeah. So I still feel like that's got to be the uh, the. Yeah, so I, I think that it still stands right. Either Doctor Strange is wrong or that doesn't make sense. And I think it's way more reasonable to infer that Doctor Strange was just incorrect in his assumption of what brings him here. Now. And yeah. that's, so all we have to do to counter the idea is like you're writing for the writer. It's like, well, you're writing for the writer too uh, by establishing that that is definitive. So that it doesn't make sense. Yeah, you're like, saying it doesn't make sense definitively when we've got... Both of these reads are entirely plausible. Like, there's nothing... I feel like people just get the sense that oh we're supposed to believe Doctor Strange and therefore yeah it's like okay that's that's the, that's like just reading authorial intent into the work that's not the um, same as it being written into the work that's your interpretation I, I guess what I would say though to to give the the counter argument a little bit more credence is if 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 you are writing this story you should probably keep that in mind and think about other alternatives that you have uh, to avoid this kind of confusion. Well, that's, that's pretty much what Jay just said, though. Like, you, it, it doesn't matter at this point, because we're just talking about what it is now. I'm not talking about the creation yeah, yeah, of it. Yeah, but I, I, sure, but what I'm saying is that I would, I would advise somebody, if they were writing a story and this was part of it, to think about that, and whether I, there are other ways... There is so much already that we've covered that requires more clarity, but we have to deal with what we've got. Yeah, yeah, no. Well, yeah, but all all I'm saying is if somebody was writing a story and they had this kind of thing presented as like a potential problem, a potential reading that people might have, it's like maybe think about other options that you have uh, in terms of getting this across, you know? I'm assuming they thought it explains everything and moved on. They didn't think about how it doesn't make sense with several of the people who are here. Um, mm -hmm. And so it's on us to decide if that is simply an inconsistency or if Doctor Strange has misunderstood the nature sure. of the spell. Which, and uh, it's kind of like you're assuming bad writing uh, over Doctor Strange. Well, being it's just wrong. dealing with uh, storytelling in good or bad faith, right? Because like some people yeah, will be like, "Well, yeah. what if this character just forgot this hugely important thing?" And you're like, "Oh, but well, what if the character made a mistake?" You're like, "Well, yeah, that's fine. People make mistakes a lot yeah. of the time, especially like, with it's, a like, it's magic that he's spell. never really dealt with before, and like going wrong this way. Like I, he's never breached the multiverse before. He explicitly says he doesn't know much about the multiverse. Every, it's now." It's Mola, plausible you, he makes mistakes about it. How do you feel about everybody saying, so it is bad writing then? Because a lot of people are saying well, that. Well, this one guy is repeating it over and over again. That doesn't make it true. Oh, it's <laughs> one guy. No, it's a couple of people. <laughs> no, I'm I, I didn't <laughs> deny that. I'm saying there is one guy repeating it over and over again. Um, ah. uh, we, we've gone over... So, inference is a huge part of storytelling. Uh, if you want to call it inferring stuff bad writing, then I got bad news for you about a lot of films and a lot of stories. Um, but, but I'm cool like, with inference. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's all about reasonable like reasonable. yeah, yeah. The idea Trying that uh, justify bad writing. I explicitly said that you might want to try a different explanation than what's in the film. Like if you were writing it again, holy shit! I don't, I don't think it's good writing, but I don't think it's trying it so hard to justify the unreasonable it is bad writing. Shaking my head, simp you. Yeah, I mean, like like everyone's very desperate to describe it as right? bad writing. I'm not seeing many arguments yeah. there. Um, hmm. tell tell me why it's impossible for Strange to have a misunderstanding of exactly how this spell works when he's the one who fucked it I up think... and he said he has limited understanding of it anyway. 
I like, think this the, is best best, faith, yeah. the best faith argument for why it's bad writing is it's the only explanation in the film of why all of these people are being pulled in from the biggest source of authority that we have. Therefore, it can be inferred from an audience that we're probably supposed to buy into it. But that is still an interpretation rather than an objective event of the film. I think that I think the film leads you towards the interpretation that it is that is flawed. But I don't think that it is objectively the only in, uh, reasonable interpretation of the events. Yeah, there's a wiggle room here. Doctor Strange believing that that's the case would still be a flaw. It's like no, uh, if if he no. if he believes wholeheartedly that that is the case and he has no reason not to think that, that's okay. Would have to be contradictory to his character to believe that, which would be very difficult to prove. Yeah, like, mm -hmm. um, it's it's not clear why exactly he believes that. It's not clear what's brought him to that conclusion, but, um, then again, like here's the a, here's multi a multiverse breaches well, are not something that he's an expert in. He's never seen one then before. Then again, here's something to think about because at the end of the movie, the concern is specifically everybody from every universe who knows that your Spider Man is coming. And the way to stop that is to delete the existence of Peter Parker. That's true. That is if, true, actually. If that works, does that not mean that what he said is true? Well, would it or not also apply no. if it's simply to do with the relation to this Peter sure. being Spider-Man? That, that was that was my second point. Is like It could be that, or it could be the other explanation as well. Yeah, I'd say it works both times, but I'm, I'm certainly not a fan of how it doesn't make sense. I don't know if we're... Because this is the thing. Electro literally doesn't know... So saying he's only here because he knows doesn't really line up, does it? Um, mm -hmm. In which case, just like, either that's inconsistent or Doctor Strange was rushing, just fought a giant lizard and is assuming that that's what's happening with the spell because uh, Lizard does know that Peter the Parker is fighting. Lizard does know, yeah. Well, that is your only point of reference, right? You haven't, you don't know yeah, that's Strange's, to Strange has only spoken ah, to him. Mm, mm, interesting. So why wouldn't Strange believe that at that point unless he gets to talk to more? And, um... Doc Ock knows, but should Doc Ock know at that point? I can't remember. Well, I guess you could argue that at least from a universe where he did just know at that point. I think he knew at that point, this... right? What did he? Uh, he did know at that just point. As yeah. he did, maybe. It just yeah. as he did. Because he said he had Peter I by think. the throat, um, which is in the the end of the Raimi movie, I think. I think so. Yeah. Because of course, oh, and I think because yeah, Peter intentionally unmasked and then he grabs him by the throat. I think that's how the events that's right. go. That's right. Yeah. So that's when he got pulled from. Wong is supposed to protect the universe. He knows the spell is dangerous, but he's okay letting Strange cast he's it anyway. Pleased. Rubbish writing. That is yeah. rubbish writing. That is yeah. That is bad yeah. writing. Yeah. Don't worry. We agree on that one. <laughs> um. Alrighty. Poor Wong. So. Yeah, we have um, MJ and Ned's jobs basically just to find evidence using the information Peter had of limited information of Goblin. They need to find him, bring him in. And they eventually find reports of someone, some monster flying around, which uh, spins oh, out. Can, can, we, can, we, can we mention the joke? I think we've gone past the joke. Uh, well, oh, the shit. shitty joke. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Wait, the shitty joke? Yeah. Scooby-Doo. Scooby-Doo joke. Do do oh, shit. we already we already did the equalizer one. We pat we just floated right past that. Yeah, the water reference, right? <laughs> well, I, I, I was talking about the elf joke. Ooh, Man. we well, got we have a bad yeah. joke method. Yeah, do them all. Do them all. No, I'm sorry. The elf joke was brilliant. Oh, oh, we talk about the elf one with uh, Green Goblin. Yeah, that one was good. Yeah. Hmm. Sure equalizer. What other what other what other elf yeah, joke? What other elf joke? Rags, I don't know, I, I, I guess there's a lot of elf jokes. Else, just, just, <laughs> I have, I've heard a lot of, Christmas, yeah, yeah. It's Christmas, so you hear a bunch of stuff about elves. It's it's elf joke season. <laughs> yeah, They're all, yeah. It, it's It's elf hunting season. It is elf oh, hunting no. season. Tis the season to be elfing. La 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 la. So what were the jokes, Jay? We, we just said um, both of them, I think. Okay. When yeah, but, when uh, Peter yeah. is describing Green Goblin, <laughs> um, and he says, "Yeah, there was this guy. He was like this scary, big, green elf." And he's just like, "Yeah, <laughs> 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 yeah, <laughs> he's an elf, you fool." Funny <laughs> joke. Then we got him being like, 
you screw up the spell. She's like, no, you did. And he's like, okay, well, Scooby do this shit. And then she says, say please. And he goes, please, Scooby do this shit. And it's like, <laughs> <laughs> moving on, moving on. Oh. So what this does, Mahler though, hates I don't comedy know. Confirmed. He does, but I think what this is is a <laughs> confirmation in the MCU that Scooby Doo does indeed either either oh this is where it gets fun either exists as a TV show or a property or that canonically Scooby Doo the Talking Great Dane does exist in the MCU. Can't wait, I'm pretty sure I can't it's just wait to see Santa though. and Scooby Doo in the next lineup of the Avengers. I think they were. That's the point it's making. This is a different universe where Scooby Doo was in the Avengers, uh, but he died. It was really well, sad. I think every universe has a Scooby Doo. That's that's how I interpret it. <laughs> he he got dusted. He was like, <laughs> oh. um, <laughs> Raggy. That was a, uh, <laughs> talk about like Alfred Molina being good. I like his delivery for a lot of the lines more than necessarily the lines, but I just like that when he brings uh, MJ and Ned down. They're talking for a little bit, and then Ark comes into focus. He goes, "Hey, who the hell are these two? <laughs> just like <laughs> <laughs> it's just a fun little commentator for all the events because he's uh... yeah. I, I did like all the reactions from the guys in the in the basement prison. I thought that was all pretty natural stuff. I thought it was like <laughs> all their interactions be very confusing. Yeah. yeah, they're pretty good. We turned really into lights. Good. Badass. <laughs> it's yeah. just a normal Doc, basement. Yeah, <laughs> Doc Ock doesn't have a. Oh yeah. Yeah, and he's like, oh, a torture a rack. This movie. No, he does not. <laughs> it's surprising how well he was utilized, considering how in danger we were of him just being here for like, look, it's Doc Ock, look how cool he is. Woo, Doc Ock. Yeah. But don't worry, guys, in the upcoming MCU projects that are just about this, it'll probably be the bad type, where it's there is no meaningful new context or further exploration of the character. It's just, hey, look, you remember him. It would just be member berries. This is good member remember. berries. I do, I it's not the... just remember, it's also, hey, here's a new context that's really cool and interesting. Yeah, here's the old character in a new context acting as he would in that context. And we're going to do a bit more with him. Uh, we're not just going to leave him totally static. I did feel well, like... Even if, I think even if he was static, it would still be better than a lot of what we got, you know? You, you... Yeah, I'm probably. perfectly happy to see a, an old character remaining static, but in a new context. Maybe yeah, like you don't, yeah. they can even remain static, but be explored in a way that we haven't seen them explored as well. Exactly. Like that's totally possible. Yeah. Fringy, would you say that a story requires character arcs? I no, I, I wouldn't. In fact, I did a whole video oh, okay. about right. it. <gasps> oh my goodness gracious! Hey, a video, uh, nice. Bye -bye. Hey, what do you know? I, I feel I had a weird. There's a lot of meta stuff going on in this movie because I think that a lot of the fact like the movie the expects elements... me to just know the English language before I even see it. Like, what the fuck's up with that? Jeez, talk about going <laughs> off of meta information, dude. I wa I watched Squid Game and it didn't make any fucking sense. <laughs> what do you mean? You watched the English my, stuff, my... didn't you? It was great. Well, that's well, well here. That's because that's because the the plot of that show is shit. I I did actually watch the English dub, dub of Squid Game. J just. Chat, calm down. I watched it with Chat. subtitles kill, first. Kill, for my kill. video, I watched the English dub kill. to see if there, were any, uh, if there were any funny moments to include. And there weren't any that were funny enough. Honestly, the English dub gets a lot of uh, bad rap. It's actually pretty good considering it could be a lot worse. But um, my, my point was is that is it, did anyone else get the idea that this movie kind of reveres the villains because the audience liked the villains? It kind of it kind of has like that sort of meta meta attitude. It definitely of, has of a level of toward... respect towards the previous franchises, though right. at the same time, but, but like, particular... but like why why yeah. would MCU Peter care about these villains so much? He's just met them yep. and for all yep, for all people. he knows, like, like, Peter's a good person. Green, Green Goblin, <laughs> like like. It kind of brushes over the fact that Green Glo Goblin is like a a murderer. And... Can you please can you please go back and call him Green Goblin? <laughs> <laughs> okay, Green Goblin. Uh, but like like he doesn't know all the th all the horrible things he's done. But we do. But at the same time, we like them because they're very charismatic villains. So like, there's this odd sort of uh, weird attachment to the villains that uh, uh -huh. I don't. Well, that I mean, it seems he's very, it the seems only. Very, 
Peter only gets attached to um, Norman after he sees him in his like other personality, right? With his... Right, right. He only sees him um, in his Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah and, and he's just got uh, a basic and... investment in them being that they're all victims of the different circumstances. None of them are just strictly evil. And he wants to give them a second chance. Right. Yeah, but at was one point I wanted to make, and this kind of gets toward the end, but at the same time, like, okay, let's say you took away... I mean, if it's literally just madness, or in the case of my, uh, Doc Ock, it's mind control, basically, uh, that's making him kind of go evil. What about Electro? You just took away his powers. If you took away the gun from his active shooter, does that make him good now? No, he's still a bad person. You just took uh, away his power. Thank you. You know I mean? Thank you. Means he doesn't necessarily have you? to die when he goes back. So that's right. Yeah, he so, didn't. So, so let me, the only one he psychologically I, I mean, changed I've, was uh, was Norman at the end. I've seen Tasm too, and I can explain that and if uh, Electro doesn't have his electric powers, he is inert. He's done. Yeah, all that happens to him that when he gets... That doesn't make him not that, bad. Okay, you're so saying that he gets he, made not bad. So, so you're saying so the, he must die? What are you suggesting? No, no, I'm not saying he shouldn't well, die. Well, so, like, so what, what are they doing here? They, they were committing crimes in other films where they eventually die, by their either by their own hubris or by Spider-Man's hand, whatever. Okay. So are we really demonizing the other Spider-Man now? For doing exactly that, like, is what are you talking about? Are, 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 no, wait, 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 wait. I really want to talk to you specifically about this. What, are you, what in the world are you talking <laughs> well, about? Demonizing the other Spider Man? <laughs> what are you talking because about? We're supposed to think what we're, we're supposed to think what, what Spider Man didn't kill Spider -Man their villains like that, like, 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 yeah, explicitly. They, they, they killed them themselves. Okay, so if Andrew Garfield, if Andrew Garfield, Spider Man. Was standing over a helpless electro and then like killed him with an axe. Then he would demonize him, <laughs> but he didn't do that. Yeah, yeah, I know. That's what I'm saying. I'm saying that. Yeah. So what, why are you saying yeah, they're getting demonized? What are you talking about? It, I'm not saying it knows it's doing it. I'm just saying, but like, no, it's not whole, doing it. Whole thing. Yeah. Where, well, yeah. Doing it. yeah. So, I don't see the. I don't think the Spider Man. The Spider Man are not demonized because Holland is deciding to cure these people. And this is the reason uh, no. why, yeah, like they, first of all, they didn't kill those villains, which we all know. They they basically all killed themselves. But secondly, yeah. at the end of the oh. film, they immediately start trying to save these villains once they Absolutely. have, like, once they, you know, they work together to try and save yeah. them. All, all that Tom has over the other Spider-Man is that the attack. more of an opportunity to save yeah. these guys. Better technology, more of an opportunity. And, and the other Spider-Man go with it. They yeah, agree they to help. The They're not demonized. Yeah. They did everything they could in yeah. their respective stories. They're treated and now they're giving a second chance to give the other guys a second chance at was, being it just, it just seems like, a cor like they're trying to make a correction no. from the other films. Like, okay, I don't, we're going to help them. We're, they're not going to die this time. We're gonna do it right this time. They no, do, it's an the opportunity they didn't have. He's giving them a film. second chance because of the technology he has. Yeah, cause... but then that didn't. But it, they didn't have that technology in the, the Raimiverse or the Webverse. Backfired. Yeah, I don't think anyone's. Yeah, the other Spider Men aren't demonized for making or They're for doing things not. they couldn't. They're possibly. heroes. They, they do everything they can. They did the best yeah. with the yeah. racket they have, and now we've been presented yeah. with a new opportunity to make things even better. Like that's not. And they jump on it without any discussion. They're just like, "Yes, let's do this. This is the right thing to yeah, do." No, yeah, we can do this now. Kind of, that, I know that's kind of silly. That's what I'm saying. Like they were what? just came from. A, they just came from a universe where they were, were in the like basically in the midst of battle with these with these villains. So like, yeah. why? Well, I'm saying why? I don't think they had any intention to, like, to kill them though. I know, but I'm just say, saying like, oh, there's no what? real. You want acknowledgement of how dangerous they are. Like, there's right, no discussion. That is. Yeah, wait, wait. This, they, what, we, but, they, what, but people die to, like, wait, no, I, I'm just kills uh, me. Maybe, maybe restate, I know. I'm confused now. Um, so, the, what is, like, what is the criticism overall here that you have? What, my I criticism, think. I don't, okay. Go for it. Oh, no, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. No, I just want to back you up. I just think my criticism is, like, oh, why, why are the, why why do these people require so much help when the multiverse is at stake and why are their crimes and previous deeds including murder completely brushed over neither of those things are, like the context yeah, added so uh, when, they have a choice to fix the happen? universe yes we're doing that kill them or not kill them too that's an additional choice he's choosing not kill them okay i mean he wants to take it, the it, opportunity it, to save them if possible which I believe is yeah. the decision that he would make, especially right. after his conversation with May. 
but Espe like a, especially when um, a lot of them, like a lot of them, are simply victims of circumstance. Like uh, like Doc Ock being the go-to example, he was mind controlled, right? Yeah. Um, essentially. Uh, yeah. I mean, I mean, Electra you know, he, he fell into a pool of eels. <laughs> <laughs> and also, yeah, this is, 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 I mean, this is a parallel with Captain America. Well, I feel like it's the standard meme that you see in a lot of Disney animated films, where like the villain is a bad guy, but the hero will still try to save their life a lot of the time. Yeah, like, I mean, it's tries to save Clayton. I just want to address the whole it's like the so reader. taking Electro's electric away doesn't make him not a murderer or whatever. It's like okay, so he can face justice for that back in his will, but he won't be killed now because his death yeah. is directly related to being electric person. He has a chance for redemption. Yeah. There is a possibility there. There is a path Look. forward. He'll just show back exactly up, and he'll be he'll be uh, 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 he'll just be a dude there, and like yeah, he'll and, probably get whipped up and arrested. Yeah, Andrew Garfield Spider Man will be like wait. You're just a guy now, and and he'll be like, yeah, um, yeah, uh, uh, there's a long story, and then Andrew Garfield will be like, okay, that's nice, and web, web him up. <laughs> yeah, I guess, I guess we, I guess we don't really see that. I, I we can, we can impl that it's, it's inferred, but I guess we don't really see that. It almost seems like they get a, uh, get out of jail free card because of. I mean, they're, they're probably going to jail. jail. They're probably going to jail. It's not a jail. <laughs> like, yeah. yeah. Also, yeah, they are literally put into things. like magic jail cells. I mean, like even even I do think Doc Ock even he should probably be going to jail for reckless endangerment before he was yeah, uh, taken over by the tentacles. Yeah, yeah probably. He kills, doesn't he kill people too? I know I know Green Goblin literally melts. Oh, people. Doc Ock kills yes people. The, yeah, we're, yeah, we're talking about like, like how uh, the, how the responsible are they for the kills when it's something like, that they were yeah. as well. Like you know, Green Goblin's like oh what. What did you do? Well, I killed some people. Like, well, I was, but I was under the influence of a a drug um, also did that, <laughs> that, that I made yeah. and put into myself. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think that puts you in the clear, to be honest. Absolutely, mate. yeah. I expect that a lot of them are probably going to jail, but that's you know that's better than dead, right? There, there's actually a real world parallel to this. A very kind of similar thing happened where a Google engineer, just some like nerd nerd programmer dude like got high on some really hard drugs one day and like killed like five people with his car and so it's like even a normal person under really bad circumstances can be extremely dangerous so but like he's absolutely responsible for that because he put them he put himself in that position so like i i yeah i i, I guess i guess it's just like at what point would would peter and especially the others like especially after aunt may what would they just pull the trigger like i say, think okay, that's kind of the point saving the people you'll go Every he'll go with the maximum distance he can, uh, and yeah. we've shown in this the, I guess the that uh, the cost the is, is, is on May, and I that think, he has trouble dealing with that as a cost. I think yeah, that Spider-Man would probably be uncomfortable with the concept of like just executing Thanos. Like, yeah, yeah, well, right. Well, I mean, but, but, we, in we in know that case, he doesn't not... really want to kill people. But yeah, like then in this case, they're not killing him. They're just like let, leaving him to their own their own fate and like you said in almost every single spider-man they end up doing themselves in the villains well yeah, yeah but, but remember in the film they acknowledge like when he says yeah that's that it's not my problem they're from another universe but like and, the point that aunt may makes is like well, no that's not the attitude to have and yeah. the nature of all of their deaths directly involves their antagonism towards spider-man and their power so maybe we can try and remove that antagonism let's try and save them you and, know? and yeah, remove the power he saved Vulture, someone mentioned in the chat. It's like, yes, he did. Spider-Man doesn't like killing people generally. Yeah, Mysterio That's shot himself. For him. Yeah, Myster wouldn't, it, exactly. wouldn't it be known that um Norman I'm just thinking, wouldn't it be known that Norman was Green Goblin? Because like what no, happened to no. his body? I feel like we talked about we this. Said no. a... Nobody knew. Did, there did... was a, there was a conversation where we said no because Harry didn't know. There's no way the world knows and Harry yeah, doesn't. I guess, yeah. Yeah. That's mm -hmm. true. Um, yeah, but yeah that so, was my point. I wanted to back that up, uh, Jay Longbone. But yeah, it just it just seemed like because I believe the earlier conversation we're jumping around now, but uh, a conversation when they basically they they had the button. They're like, okay, press it if things go wrong. At what point did all the villains breaking loose and May well, dying? She wanted to press it wrong. if you remember, but they wanted Peter's go ahead, and he didn't give it. Yeah, yeah and before they got, before they were able to get to go ahead, they got the other spandos. The other spiders. And then there was like, oh, we have another chance now. Now we can yeah. do yeah, the redemption for them, but with the other spando mans. 
but when they find Peter, he actually is at the point of like, I'm just going to press the button. I don't care yeah. anymore. Yeah, and he and says like the, the way it'll work is that they'll go back and you guys can sort them out however you want to sort them out. If you kill them, that's on you. Um, that's great stuff. <laughs> I think it's great stuff. Yeah. Uh, so, we got Sandman and Electro uh, introduced. And um, I think it's kind of neat that Flint Marco is clearly post Spider Man 3, so he's pro Spider Man. Um, yeah. And he's just like, hey, Spider Man, remember me? I'm, I'm, I'm Flint, I'm going to help you out with whatever's going on here. And he's like, okay, cool. I'm not your Peter, though. And he's like, um, what? What? <laughs> do you think it's a bit of an awkward line of dialogue that he explicitly says, remember me? I don't know. I feel like if it's been a while, I don't know how long <clears> how much time has passed. I, I guess maybe it could have been a while. Like, I feel like. No one's forgetting the giant man made of sand, to be Woo! honest. <laughs> like, probably, that's probably <laughs> fair, but uh, um, that's true. maybe there's, you could argue that goes both ways, that I am a moving piece of land with a face. I should probably immediately reassure him that we know each other. Especially true. not Just in true. case, you know, there's a bit of a scare factor, I don't know. In case there's another man made out of sand <laughs> In this universe, um, I, I, like I feel like I feel like I feel like you could just say, "Hey, Peter, it's me." You know, it, it would be a bit less me, clunky. Stand bad. Well, no, Flint. Marker. It is I, Flint Marker. <laughs> <laughs> Flint Marker. Uh, remember, we fought a bit. Yeah, no, I remember that. <laughs> yeah, the, so uh, it's cool they work together to bring Electro down, and they all just have a chat. And you have, um, I think Peter's like, "It's my fault you're here." And he goes, "The universe or the woods?" Because I hate the woods. And he goes, "I'm at the universe." I do. <laughs> like, no, I don't know. <laughs> just say like he doesn't want to be blamed for the woods. Um, yeah, then just y'all gonna stand water. there while I pretend I ain't butt ass naked. I will. <laughs> I am. <laughs> like, I, will. I am. <laughs> um. So, question: Did they? Um. Did I miss the explanation for how? Because uh, he he says, "Oh, I have my body back," but did they give an explanation for that, or did um, I just no, miss no. it? Uh, they said the well, I think it's pretty. I think it's implied that like the electricity in our universe hits different, and that's the reason. Yeah, and he's even he looks yeah, more like he would like to present himself uh, instead mm -hmm. of if you guys remember the monstrosity the from Tasm Two. Oh, yeah. the, the Dios mistake mio. was that was hey, the look, mistake they did the, the, they, did the uh, they did a bit of the electro music, but they didn't do the he hates me. <laughs> Just a, <laughs> they had the good Spider sense Man. that maybe not everything from the past. Maybe not everything. Be no, they didn't Doctor, do itsy Doctor bitsy Strange fucking spider dubstep. No, they didn't do Itsy Bitsy Spider Dubstep, and I, for one, am um, happy about that, because I was stupid. Um, so was it Flint is the one that kills him out. Uncle Ben, <laughs> so Peter should recognize him? It's like, we don't know who killed Uncle Ben in this universe. In this universe? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Sorry, you what? don't even... Well, I mean, I think based on the killed? events of this film... And also, not we everybody can... in the universes look the same. Like, look at I, all the I, people. I don't look yeah. so based on the events of this film, we could assume that Ben died if like in a non-traumatic way or when like peter was very Possibly. little because like it could doesn't be. seem he could have died in nam we, <laughs> we, could, um, we, could, we can assume because, that every because, single well, because um when may dies in this film um peter seems very new to the concept of grief um uh... to me he t as, as in trauma as in as in as in like this kind of like sudden unexpected grief right what not like tony stark i was gonna say you're not remembering well, no, tony stark's um, death it, or as in as in, that's a thing that hits different, right? Because Tony at least kind of died on his own terms, um, whereas May was very, like, rudely taken. May kind of did. Well, I mean, it's, it's worthwhile to note, by the way, Jay, that in Endgame, there, would not, there was not one chance to win that battle. Tony shouldn't have died. He should still be alive and well. Yeah. But Doctor Strange only saw one possibility, and it wasn't when he trapped Thanos in the mirror dimension. It was when he just let Tony die. <laughs> so that's yeah so in a in a sense tony was taken from us too soon <laughs> true but um i mean I, I i i just i get the sense that um peter's not been through an equivalent kind of rude awakening death before where he feels um, like it's all, do you mean hmm? where he feels like he, he is responsible. yeah that that, or... that that that's the kind of thing this the sort of um because even though Tony's is like traumatic for him, it's not the same kind of thing where it hits um, as this ma as massive fucking punch to the face. It's more so a just a, a tragedy rather than a fucking hell. Fuck this. 
Yeah, I, I think I think it's the anger that seems new to him. In this, well, point. yeah, yeah, because yeah, because, uh, because Tony Stark sacrificed himself. Yeah, well, so well, I, I get the sense executed. I get the sense that Ben probably yeah. didn't die under similar circumstances to his other deaths. Uh, because Maybe if he Ben had died even... in the same way, I feel like we'd probably get more on that from Peter. We'd probably see that in Peter's characterization. That's like, oh, it's just like how Ben died. You know, I get the sense that in this universe, Ben probably died either just naturally or like when Peter was small or something like that. Yeah, we can assume that nothing played out similar in any of these universes. They all had their own different. Uh, each version of Peter is different. Each version of Aunt May is different. Each version of Uncle Ben is different. They died in different ways. If they died at all you know, during his life. So yeah, it's, I, I don't think there's, I, I don't think Sandman should, fe uh, Sandman is not the person who killed uh, MCU Spider-Man's Uncle Ben. Yeah, well, yeah. it certainly wasn't Sandman. That's, if oh, it was yeah. Flint, it wasn't Sandman. Uh, for you, imagine like, remember, like, during the battlefield oh, on Endgame, they're like, you know, you, there's only one way, and then Tony just goes, can you cast a spell to make Thanos forget his motivation? <laughs> well, <laughs> I, I, oh, good I, idea. I think the best part is you say that, and it's like, well, this is still ignoring all of the many, many, yeah, many, 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 many <laughs> options available to the Avengers. Like, as soon as, like, I, we need to get the stones as far away as possible. No, we got to get them back where they came from. It's like, man, like you are not smart, Hulk. I'm, I'm so <laughs> you sorry. You are not smart. He's called, he's well, the Hulk. Hulk. That's By the way, thing, he's right? called Smart Hulk. His name is literally Smart Hulk in like subtitles. <laughs> It's smart. Captain <laughs> Marvel's not even a captain. No, she's she she is a cap. Is she a captain or? Uh, she, oh, I no, think that was a, it. Might have been a captain, rank right? in the um in the. I Air thought Force she was a rank or captain. something like that. Yeah. yeah. You know why they call it a cockpit, don't you? But wasn't that one uh, of those things that people brought up where it's like, are there many captains who are like thirty, or is it, I or is it really know. hard to be a captain that. by that age? Captain's she's like, really good, Fringy. Yeah, well, captain really is good. a lot because sergeant is below captain, right? Like, isn't isn't it like captain then lieutenant and then I get confused, especially with American know. versus Australian. Works, yeah, it, it probably works different in different militaries. Although, well, we know which one oh yeah, in, like so the navy and the air force is different than the marine corps, and yeah, I think well, it's in different yeah. countries as well. Well, different countries, different arms, uh, parts of the arms. She is only a second lieutenant. Ah, uh, that's still quite high. Um, <laughs> second lieutenant Marvel. Oh, and apparently Captain is attainable <laughs> by 30. Not that quite is as catchy, yeah. <laughs> Captain, did you say Captain is or isn't attainable by the time you're 30? Someone said that Captain is definitely attainable by 30. I mean, I, I have no idea, so I'm just going <laughs> I to have no that clue. that's true. Um, somebody how noticed... Guess, how do you guess... Go ahead. Oh, no, I was just going to uh, quickly ask before, uh, how do you feel about the contrivance of everybody kind of being at the same place at the same time. Sandman and Electro happen to be in the same forest. Green Goblin and Octo find Peter pretty much at the same time. I wonder it just, it, if we're supposed to think there little, could be more villains uh, elsewhere doing different things. Like, obviously, Venom is a... Yeah. You know, um, I think it's just we got a selection of them. We followed news reports, and we got the ones that were making the most noise, apparently. Um, I yeah, guess you have York, to argue that York Sandman York. was interested in, he was following Electro around because he saw him doing things. Yeah, uh, I mean, you could explain the way, again, it's kind of writing for the scriptwriters. I could kind of get the New York because both Green Goblin and uh, Oct were looking for Spider-Man in New York, so that kind of makes sense to me. The forest one's a little bit far-fetched, like, how do they, of all the places in the world, how, how did they just appear roughly in the same area? I don't know that they and, did. Uh, I, I don't know where they both would have started necessarily. But um, again, if you picture, let's just say for the sake of argument, there's like a hundred villains across Earth right now. We only get this selection. Yeah. It'd be like a world-sized battle royale. You'd be really... I don't know that. I don't know that a lot of the villains might go like chill. They might just like look at Venom. They might be okay, like, what, what the hell's what going on? For I have example, to assess... Like Fisk came through, right? If a, if a different universe's Fisk came through. One from well, Spider-Man like, the, the size of a house. The, <laughs> yeah. Like the Spider-Man PS4 villains came through. Like Mr. Negative from Spider-Man PS4 was like, I guess he'd just chill out, I think. He, and I mean, it is well, worthwhile to remember that, that, times. that they all are in New York, so they're all going to be on a relative scale of Earth. Like they're going to be in that general area, unless they right. can move what? super quick. But what about Electro though? Like, why did Electro appear way out in the in the woods? They had to like well, track yeah, yeah. Down so because their energy signature. 
Well, so he was apparently, he scared a whole bunch of people, so maybe he was like fleeing that area, presumably, and he went to a forest or a woods. But then he said he didn't know why he was Somewhere in the woods, so maybe he's just like energy looping around everywhere. I don't know trying to get control. I think I think we were seeing him actually first materialize right when. Well, I thought that he, he was appears. the reference. Yeah, he was like, "Oh, he's charging up." That's what he said. I, th I thought that he was the reference for flying monster. I thought that could have been Marco. Well, a flying monster wouldn't it have been more like green? Well, I thought that was yeah, the point. We're supposed to think it's green goblin, but then it's not. But it was. But I said, "Oh, never mind. It's just a black man." <laughs> no. <laughs> I think he you're right, Marlo. What are you talking they, about? They, they yeah, were right. they were tracking they were tracking what what people were reporting in a completely different area as a flying monster. Mm -hmm. And then when they when they when they get there, they realize it was not Green Goblin; it was Electro. I thought that's what happened. Yeah, yeah that's, that's what I thought well, I like as well. But but, well, so, but my my complaint was like, who decides or how does it decided where these people spawn? Is no it idea. Completely random. No it, like, idea. Yeah. Because if that's the case, then seventy-five percent of the villains would end up in the ocean. So, like, <laughs> I, I, are... they would end up in a lot of awkward. <laughs> I was gonna places. say, we, we, yeah, like, yeah. Well, maybe that, that is what happened. I, I, was, I was about to suggest, like, oh game. boy, what if that is what's happening? And then, if you're talking about like various time periods, like I, I don't know what the exact timeline uh, is, but if you're talking about you know uh, Peter Parker, it's got to be the same time, uh, same same uh, time. So, like, we're talking about events that happened 20 years ago in uh toby park uh, well toby surely we Parker's have to assume it isn't universe. the same timeline but like it toby parker is now older though that's so, why like, it can't be the same timeline but like yeah it, 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 I'm, I'm getting into like literally astronomical physics here but like at the same time oh, if boy. that's the case then how would tw uh 20 year ago earth correlate to where earth's position is now no i it, genuinely I, I got nothing for so, you this is the the, the yeah. it's not gonna they're not gonna answer it because they ain't exploring it yeah. that far that's too I, hard I mean, either either it's from a different version of earth or it's from um or, or doc Ock, like time traveled yeah Tip, pick yeah. your poison it's one and of I those two and i don't expect the movie to to tell that i just found it very convenient well, like, for guys to appear randomly in the same place really have to explain that does it like Luke no, I don't perfectly fine. It doesn't have to, but you know, like I don't know gotta, that it would hurt if you explained it. <laughs> a movie yeah. of the scale, you got to keep it moving. So I understand for brevity's sake. Oh, uh, two of them I guess I don't. But, I don't want to yeah. give it that point. I guess it's more just that, like, it's not necessarily broken. But they could like, have done a way better job. Would, yeah, exactly. It's contrived. I'll say that. That's a, um, I'll, I'll, It's a bit contrived. That's, they try that's to point. leave it as vague as they can so that we have to do the work as viewers of inference, just being like, I guess it works this way. And then someone goes, no, it can't because of that. Mm. Well, I guess that and, works that and, way. And, like, and Doctor yeah. Strange's line is basically the, the perfect like band-aid for it. At least that's what they thought. It was just like the metal. It's what, magic. What the, the, the metaverse, or sorry, the multiverse is uh, I, scarily... Unknown a concept about bit which we know frighteningly little yeah. frightening little yeah that that's the yeah. so that that's basically their go-to line to explain why no, none of this is particularly makes you wonder though why it, it would we why we why would we know frighteningly little about the multiverse if it's like well because it didn't exist yeah last well, year so, so the problem <laughs> is true. that loki doesn't, <laughs> loki doesn't make like loki makes it seem like all time from the beginning to the end is sprawled out so like to them it actually oh, yeah, would, uh, yeah. For the entirety of existence. No, I, I was doing a joke. This. No, I know you were doing a joke, but just to make it clear for everybody in the chatter, Rooney, multiverse has always been a part of the Marvel Universe, technically. Well, just because they're only acknowledging from... it now doesn't mean that it didn't exist. The ancient Whoa, one Doctor basically Strange. says it. Yeah, uh, that's right. There are infinite multi infinite universes, um, so yep. too bad, Kang. You you went first. Which means uh, that there should hey, be Hey, we need to fix the timelines, otherwise there are going to be alternate known. timelines. No, there aren't. I don't Go know for what it. either of you said. Rags, finish, th conclude your thought. So there should be an infinite amount of Spider-Man villains who know that Peter Parker is... Well, that's that's what they said at the end. Yeah, yeah that's, that's what, the that's what they say. Yeah, that. that's what happens at the end. Only, so how they, only a couple of them get through, and then, like... It he controls the spell right? oh, okay. after a couple got through from the initial break. Oh, okay, all right. All right. Like I, I feel like the little spell controlling part. That was the concern. That was the final stake. I was like, oh, no. So many evil wanna, men are coming. I don't want to sound like a conspiracy theorist, but only the villains that came through were the only ones that had a had a contract with Sony Pictures. Isn't that weird to you guys? <laughs> <laughs> mm. Did they all have? Huh. 
Okay. <laughs> wait, wait. I was, I what? Was, was joking. It was a joke. Well, no, no joke. Because... But the, the only the only oh. villains they got through were the ones that had but... contracts with Sony Pictures. My joke is that the only ones yes. that got through are the famous ones. Yeah. I guess what I'm now thinking, because you know that we had the Sinister Five, right? I'm surprised they didn't pull in a sixth one. They did just to get the number. Sinister oh, Six. Does that's sound right. Better. He just wasn't part of it. Yeah. <laughs> the the sixth one got part. lost along the way, and then just got drunk. Yeah, because yeah, because I was kind of hoping that they'd pull in like that uh, we would get like at least one villain from like the MCU Spider Man to kind of round it out. So we have like a couple from the Tasm films, a couple from the. I like, guess have Mysterio, maybe. Yeah, but yeah. like he, that, because he wouldn't be there for the same reason. It would just be like, also Mysterio is here. Like, <laughs> yeah. yeah, and Vulture I'm isn't going to be here because he's he's a good man we, well not a good man but he's he's on spider-man's side a bit. and we're already juggling quite a bit yeah yeah this, this could get to. really this could get really out of hand if they start doing that i mean the into the spider-verse introduced the spider pig i mean you, you can go crazy with it but i think that they probably wanted to trim the fat so to speak and just kind of make sure that they kind of keep it slim enough i mean so that they, they wanted to save their bacon that's... <laughs> yeah. I will say the film probably would have been it could have been improved if Spider Pig was there oh, yeah. swinging around helping out. <laughs> yes. Yes. Can well, you meet how let's, let's be Strange. honest live action Nicolas Cage played to our Spider Man? <laughs> Holy <laughs> shit. Oh, yes, that please. Cool. <laughs> I would love it. I, I, I want to, I'm I'm just hyped for Nicolas pa uh, Cage to play Dracula. The yeah, man, I'm ready. Born to play. <laughs> oh um, yeah. I don't know if any of you guys felt this, or if you felt that it worked with the character, but I felt like Flint was probably one of the weaker ones for acting, and um, the one that really stood out to me is when he, he gets teleported by Spider-Man, and like, the first thing he says is, Ah, what is this? <laughs> and it's like, <laughs> yeah. oh, god, that was... Yeah, that yeah. was a bit off for me, yeah. Yeah, he was a bit dull, uh, I felt, but I mean, he was, to be fair, he wasn't given a whole lot to do. So he was like, oh no, I'm trapped. This is annoying. He just felt like he was around. Yeah. A little yeah. bit. He yeah, was, I was about pretty to say. much just around well, for this film. Yeah. Compare that performance with Lizards, where every line is awesome to listen to, because it's like this yeah. verify. Well, Peter Parker. I, I love the lizard voice, uh, the actor, but I, I got to say, he is the most useless villain in the whole the whole gang. He, did, he had nothing to do. So, like, they tried to give him a little bit later on i like but... when he sits on the couch and he makes the couch messy and he's like sorry that's mudman that's not lizard. sorry that's yes. mudman. yeah oh 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 sorry yeah mudman. in the truck i Just thought we were still out. talking about i still sorry i thought we were still talking about mudman i wow. got confused again oh get this guy out of here fucking ban right now mudman and dirt boy yeah, uh, 11 month sub banned 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 ban. you don't ban anybody me? right ban. now caddy <laughs> you agree with me <laughs> So uh, the crazy thing is, is that now that Disney owns Fox and all the Spider-Man property stuff, uh, they could literally have a crossover movie with Anakin Skywalker versus Sandman, and that would be the most epic fight ever. But well, Disney doesn't own Spider-Man; it's just a still a licensing deal. Yeah. Well, we ignore. We have we have we Star Wars right Legos. Now, so so. Right, so, so oh, right. yeah, you know what? At this point, Disney owns the world. Like, who's going to stop them? <laughs> yeah. Who's they gonna control me. I'm going to use the your set, character. The court. It's not yours. <laughs> yeah, right. It's not ours. Whatever. They're too dangerous <laughs> to be left anyway. alive. You know, Disney. Um, I feel like uh, Anakin would like turn Sandman into glass, basically. Well, I, yeah, I'd probably. love to see that scene where it's like uh, Anakin's like, I don't like sand, and almost like in a Batman-like voice, is like, then you're going to love me. And then, just, like, <laughs> 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 and then like the, the Fuck sand. bombs to show the trailer title. Um, I really want to talk about it, so I'm just going to move on now without a sec. Uh, this movie, holy fuck, does it make fun of the Tasm films, and I enjoyed every minute of it. Uh, yes. So, <laughs> yes. first reference I'm thinking about is Electra sees Lizard, and he makes fun of him for his retarded motivation. <laughs> and I was like, yes! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what a it treats the, lizards. The, char <laughs> it treats the characters from the Tasm movies like they're victims of their own franchise. Yeah. Kind of. Yeah. <laughs> like it, it doesn't it doesn't blame the characters in this weird no, like does that make sense? Fault. It's not their fault. <laughs> yeah, it it's makes them aware of their it makes them aware of their existence, but I honestly I was shocked at how well they they handled uh Andrew Garfield's Spider Man. I I loved how they work they work with him personally. Oh, yeah. It just reminds me of how conversations would go when I was when I was talking about Tasm back in when it came out. It'd be like, 
Liz's motivation is so fucking bad, it like partially ruins the film. Not well, there's lots of ruins that film. But then they'd be like, uh, no, it doesn't. This is great motivation. Like, he just wants to turn everyone to lizards. They go, no, actually, he wants to make everybody evolved. And you're like, are you fu- he wants to turn everybody to lizards. Into lizards. Like, <laughs> into lizards. <laughs> Evolved into lizards. It's, like, it's fucking <laughs> stupid. And that's literally the dialogue. He wants to turn everyone to lizards. No, I wanted to evolve them to the next stage. <laughs> like, yeah, shut <laughs> the fuck up. <laughs> oh, it was He's like the lizard Oppenheimer. It's like, I'm become lizard, destroy the worlds. This is a whole uh, <laughs> <it's a> <laughs> motivation. And, uh, I'm become lizard. <laughs> I don't want to understate, by the way. Jamie Foxx's performance made him so much more charming. So much better. Electra. He's way better. Like, he was like, yeah. Um, oh yeah. Character. I think he says like, uh, when he tried, he tried to turn everybody to lizards. It was crazy. <laughs> like, just <laughs> crazy. Right I just the part his, when he... his reactions in general are really funny. Like yeah. when they come back to the dungeon and they start talking about stuff, and he's like, "Man, I love it here." <laughs> he just feels like I'm about like a to turn into person. pure energy. And yeah. Then, and then, uh, oh shit, I was about to die. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Electro is Electro is much, and that that's like a through line of this film. Characters who had nothing to work with, and characters who sucked, got salvaged. Oh, like, I, I would right say Electro salvaged. has been fixed by this film. He's been fixed, absolutely. Oh, he's yeah. been fixed. He's he's like a good character now. I like I'm, him a lot. I'm really I'm really sorry for Electro's like Amazing Spider-Man 2's Electro's one fan in the chat who's really <laughs> angry. Yeah. It was terrible. He was, fascinated, he was terrible. It was terrible. And then this movie and made something of it. it. Yeah. Yeah. They but, gave him a motivation. They gave him real goals. But his theme song tells him tells everybody his motives in the Yeah, lyrics. he lied to me. He hates me. Electricity. <laughs> and Spider-Man is my enemy. <laughs> what and, <laughs> and I don't still, I don't, everyone keeps referencing this and I don't remember it and I'm not sure that I want to, but it sounds so fucking cursed. It's the song that's <laughs> playing when he song. decides to, that he hates Spider-Man. Don't you know? I'm um, Electro. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> and by the way, fair dues to Lizard. He he basically says in response like, "Last time I saw you, you had bad teeth and like shitty hair. Did you get a makeover?" Like, it's, it's, it's <laughs> highlighting how dumb Jamie Fox looked as well. Just like, yep, yeah. this is fun. I'm like, hey, this look, a lot. I have crap teeth. <laughs> now they're not crap because I fell into a pool. And then of course later <laughs> in the movie, yeah, I mean, you guys, I, I want to fight an alien. I I like fought a, a lizard guy, a guy in like a a robotic rhino suit. <laughs> A Russian guy <laughs> in a mechanical rhino yeah, suit. <laughs> rhino suit. It's like, hey, you're amazing, all right? You're the negative self-talk, and it's like, it just feels like talking through the camera. It's like, hey, it's not your fault. It is, it is, <laughs> yeah. it is basically goodwill hunting yeah, we'll, Spider-Man. Um, it's not your fault. It's like, we'll, yeah, no, it's not your fault. <laughs> we'll highlight them as we go through, but I would argue it's very clear this film is not only trying to make up for some of the mistakes from the Tasm films, but also acknowledge, yes, they were shit, but Andrew, wa yeah. Andrew wasn't. But Andrew wasn't. It's not his fault. Yes. I mean, it having him appear fault. before Toby and kind of giving him that, you know, big giving him a meaningful moment. Giving him payoff with MJ, you know, and the Gwen Oh, yeah, thing. saving like, MJ. Oh, absolutely. I thought that was great. Payoff, dude. I, oh, that, I mean, that. there's, a, it's an, there's so many great payoffs in this film. Like, they do like, so much with such bad material able, to work with. Being able to do that for someone else when you fail to do it for yourself, but, but that other person is literally you. Like, what a... You don't yeah, get to give. Them. You don't get to deliver that payoff very often. Like no, that is a very took, strange situation it. to be in. Yeah, but they, they seized made it, it work. with both uh, with both hands. They did it. Yeah, because they the, cared. The the the, the uh, what? It, yeah, Tasm Sp Spider Man's are easily the worst movies, but I. I am like super, super happy with Andrew. Uh, well, we'll, arc, or Andrew we'll get there. this one. Don't get it. Dude, I mean. You don't get him. Well, yeah, I was about to say something else. I sh I shan't. Yeah. Um, my favorite scene. My favorite scenes with Andrew in this film. It's really, really good. So yeah. Someone uh, just asked me like, Jay, Day of the Doctor. Like, <laughs> what do you want? I'm not gonna derail the stream for that. Sorry. <laughs> uh, and it's, I think it's worth acknowledging that like that this very easily could have been a Last Jedi thing where like Toby's Spider Man had given up. And oh God, yeah. Ryan would have done it. <laughs> Ryan would have oh, yeah. fucking done it. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna yeah. deconstruct you, your heroes. You. This felt like the anti Last Jedi movie. Yeah, we're well, gonna respect kinda. the things that came before. Yeah, uh, we're not gonna shit on anyone except Doctor Strange, but they don't know they did. Um, <laughs> to to make all this stuff work, you know. Andrew would have been a psychopathic killer, and Toby would have given up. He would have been like, "There's no point. We have no, no right." That's not a point. 
be, I, I thought I could be a hero, but there are no heroes. There are only villains, and I'm one of them. And Andrew being like, <laughs> my will should be imposed yeah. on everyone. He, like, when they say, great power, great responsibility, that's what May told me. Yeah, and she's dead, isn't she? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> There is a world, there is a multi, because there's probably other universes. <laughs> there's a universe where that happens. <laughs> Um, Dude, I kind of want to. I kind of want to see the film where Toby <laughs> just looks him in the eye and goes, "Yeah, and she's fucking dead, isn't she?" Yeah. <laughs> and that someone, looking out for a bitch. Oh, welcome to the Dead Relative Club. <laughs> like, honestly, honestly, if I was ever making a film like this, I'd want to do like just a a worst possible line of dialogue take for a okay, like and just release that reel. It's like yeah. I could have done this, but I didn't. The curse and take. <laughs> Don't test Re me. Release, just release that version of the scene. I, I feel like that'd be a really fun way to promote <laughs> films like DVD yeah. release as well. <laughs> it's just Bully Maguire comes through the portal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hey, we, we gotta, we gotta, it. we gotta save these heroes. I missed the part. <laughs> That's my problem. <laughs> and then he throws the bomb at Peter and blows him off. <laughs> 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 like, <laughs> and starts dancing. He's like, yeah. Yeah. Um. So Peter gets a call saying, uh, from Aunt May. Just everything's chill over in her. Um. What? What is? What would you call what she's doing? Her. Uh, it's like a. Uh, wait, uh, May. Oh, it's feast. It's like shelter. Yeah, homeless shelter. Yeah, community shelter. center. Community center. Yeah. Yeah. Community yeah. Center stuff. It. Yeah. I remember it's, it's popped community. up before. I just couldn't quite remember what it was exactly. Um, you you got to play Spider-Man video game, and then it will all make sense. Oh. Well, because it's in Far From Home, well, isn't it? The first, the... comics and stuff. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah, Spider-Man video game is really good. Spider-Man's trying to... Uh, he's, like, promoting it almost to the beginning of Far From Home, and then we see it working that's there right. with Happy as well. Um, yeah. Yeah, that's how, how uh, he finds the, the place, I think. Well, yeah, because she's correctly. connected with Spider-Man, and so Norman went there. And I think... Uh, he, this is the thing about Norman is that um, the first information we get from him, or at least for us interacting with with Peter and May, is he says, um, "I need help. I don't know where to go. Someone's in my house. Oscorp doesn't exist." And then he just says, "My son," and it just trails off. Yeah. And it's just like, oh man, yeah. this poor guy. Yeah. 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 And then she says, like, he's yeah. he's lost, but not like just in the cosmos. And then she says, are they all like this? And Peter's like, it's not my problem. Their chance of getting help is sending them home. It's what's best for yeah. them. And then she's like, is that what's best for them or for you? And she says, this is what we do. We help people. Which uh, obviously sets in, in motion uh, a lot of what's going to happen next. Mm-hmm. I felt that uh, Willem Dafoe hadn't missed a beat in 20 years. He did a nope. fantastic. Oh, job. he was awesome. He was he was awesome in this exactly. movie. Yeah, absolutely. He was like, sorry? really good. I, I uh, like when 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 uh, uh, Aunt May and Peter were talking to each other. You could see uh, see him in the background just taking food, put him in the in his pocket. I didn't notice funny. that. Oh yeah, yeah, that was fun. <laughs> <laughs> Like my only critique of of of, of Goblin and Defoe um, in this movie, if you can even call it that, is I just wanted more. I wanted even more. I would have had three hours of Willem Defoe Green yeah, Goblin in that up. character. Yeah. I mean, I the don't think anyone, was just I don't think on. right any of us would complain if they released like a four hour cut of this movie, right? We the would Goblin all be cut, well yeah. on board with I, that. I, need it. I would I need it. On that. No, nice. except for <laughs> <laughs> except for Job. Uh. Yeah, and then so when she's dropping, uh, oh wait, because yeah, they all end up in the. Um, he takes him to the to the Sanctum Sanctorum, right? And uh, I think when she's dropping them off, she says, "Hey, he trusts you," um, which is just gonna help build up how much she's got invested in Norman as a result of probably hearing his whole story before Spider Man got there. Mm -hmm, um, yeah. Yeah, and then Doctor Strange turns up. I think. Am I missing anything? Oh wait! So they all uh, talk no, they're, about they're, they're... they all basically figure out they all died fighting Spider-Man. Um, mm. Yes, and that that's the yeah. fate they're returning to if they're mm. sent back. Um, but and, and and I think it's well prompted too because uh, Doc Ock is like, "Wait, Osborne, you're dead." And then Jamie Foxx is like, "Well, yeah. 
and then Sandman's like, well, no, Doc Ock, you're dead. Yeah. You died two years later. And he describes it as, like, the news report. It's like, uh, yeah. Green Goblin was impaled while fighting Spider-Man, and you drowned destroying your own machine or whatever. And it's like, they realize yeah. that's the positions they're almost in. And then Electro's like, nah, bullshit. You know, I was about to turn into energy. Oh, wait, no, I was about to die. <laughs> Whoops. Yeah. No, well. And then Lizard, uh, asks, and then like, I oh, think uh, Lizard's like, "Do I die? Like, what? What you? You know? Yeah, you he doesn't know. give him the answer for that. It's quite. Yeah. I like the delivery of it. I, I enjoy Lizard's dialogue. Where he's like, Max, do you it's know? Too... Do I die? He's got an awesome voice. Oh, he's got a fantastic voice. I really like the sort of reverence between the scientists, like how yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, how like Doc Ock really respected Norman Osborn and mm -hmm. everything like that. Like, yeah, they really kind of know about each other. It's really there cool is like no getting around the fact that it is really cool to see these characters interact because they never yeah. have before. It's fucking cool, especially like yeah. between universes as well. Yeah. yeah. Um. But also yeah, and I think um, when the plan is explained, he's like, we're going to send these guys back and you just hear Doc Ock say, and then what? We perish? Because he's like aware yeah. of it now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I like how they kind of pray the foreboding of like, that's impossible. That's not Norman. And it's like, you kind of, you can really get the idea. It's like, oh crap. Yeah, that it, that wouldn't work because he's dead. You know, even if I was about dead, to die. So, so yeah. it, was a, it was interesting to kind of build it up a little bit to kind of figure out the mystery. And you have um, Norman begging Peter to get him out of the cell as well after what we've just had, and it's just like, oh, this doesn't feel right. It feels... It feels bad, yeah. And I think that's what... Um, that's what, I mean, you combine all of these little bits and bobs with what Aunt May's just given him as well, and just his general character. And we're and again with Doctor Strange moving forward without necessarily explaining or talking about it, setting up the spell, it's moving. And I, I just quite liked it's it's almost crescendoing and then it just cuts as the web hits the box and he just goes don't and it's just like don't yeah. this, sorry this is the, the and it's the one thing that I think I think Doctor Strange would commit to doing that spell he'd be like I know that they can all die it doesn't matter we're saving the universe um, yeah. yeah yeah that's what very happy says. with that very happy with that quote that's like the only conflict. part yeah <laughs> where Doctor Strange it, feel, is it actually feels oddly being appropriate himself. I believe he would do that because that's the kind of person he is. Yeah, it's it's weird. It's it's strange in this film to be like, oh yeah, of and course that's what Doctor Strange would do. I think a lot of people here would probably do that as well. I actually, we, we yeah. talked about actually, this. Um, I think I might on the side... expertise, dep Yeah. Depending on our understanding of the situation, right? So, mm -hmm. like, we'd probably... Like, depending on our understanding of how much damage them being here could do to the universe or not, right? I think that's the important thing. How much damage are they going to cause? And, and well, and if Strange the, said the... we've got twenty hours until the spell becomes critical, yeah. I might even be like, uh, I don't know if we should even risk it if we're that close. But if there, if there's no time scale, if we seemingly have as much time as we want, then probably yeah, worth can... while. It's like yeah, yeah. Sure. if he's if he's like there's uh, twenty four hours before the spell goes critical and the universe is destroyed, I'm probably like, yeah, let's probably push that button. I guess fuck, yeah, let's not risk, can't risk it. Can't risk it. But I yeah. can also see someone being like, of like, course we'll risk it, we're saving lives. And you'd be like, Ugh. yeah, but I mean... Someone in the chat said she would murder us all. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Jay Long like that, has that, that... run out of time, I'm afraid. Um, oh, off she goes. Uh, but She's it's, gotta head off. It's been fun, sorry couldn't make it for the whole thing, but thank you very much for coming for three and yeah, hours thanks. and 40 minutes. Uh, yeah, it's a long what? time. Tell everybody what you're up to and where they can find you and stuff. Hello, um, uh, <laughs> I'm, <laughs> uh, I'm not good at these. Jesus Christ! I'm working on a yeah. I'm working on some movie reviews right now. Uh, the Batman, the Batwoman, the Batwoman reactions I'm doing will start back up pretty soon. Yay! Your Dracula. We gotta start ours. Uh, hilarious as fuck, by the way. I can't believe that exists. Oh, I gotta see that. Like Still the... gotta see it. Oh. I love that. Not the yeah, show. Absolutely. Fuck no, your videos. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, we do still have to watch the show. Uh, no, I'm talking about the Dracula. Dracula? Show. We're not talking. Oh, we're not fucking oh, watching no, that. No, no. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that shit's. Uh, if I needed any Sorry, reason not to watch that show, it was J Logbo's video. I, I, I have experienced enough. Enough. Uh, <laughs> horrifying. <laughs> so I would fully recommend that for anybody who hasn't seen it yet. That was a new video you popped out, and um, you said you got. Batwoman on the way, and any 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 other bigger projects in the in the works? Well, some I like I'm doing this thing now, where I'm gonna um 
like like basically talk shit about uh, movie reboots. I'm doing uh, the craft. I'm working on the craft re- legacy right now, and then I'm gonna do the uh, Candyman remake sequel, whatever the fuck they they fucking call it. And that I think that's gonna come a little bit afterwards. And then I'm gonna do um, the Space Jam Legacy movie, that oh. one, and just point out and just point out why they're all shit in comparison to the the OG movies. One thing I really hate about the Candyman remake is I really felt they sugarcoated his character. <laughs> Uh, I saw that one coming a mile yeah. away. <laughs> it was still good though. I gave him a thumbs up. Yeah, that joke made me. That joke made me want to leave faster. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Well, is uh, it's been fun. Thanks for coming. We always love you popping up, and um, good luck oh. with whatever you get up to. Bye, Thank Jill. You. Bye. Oh boy. Boy. Two to lose. See ya. And we, by the way, are like forty minutes into the film, and <laughs> oh Jesus. <laughs> Oh man, we're fast. There's so much to cover. Holy Okay, 50 minutes into the film. That's, sack. You know. See how fast we are? We just yeah, we're just 10 great. minutes like that. Um, Bam. We just did 10 minutes. Easy. <laughs> okay. so 60 much, minutes. We're almost done. So, as much as they kind of mess with Strange, I, I kind of get the both sides of the argument. It's kind of like, I, I don't know if there's like an official argument for this, but there's it's kind of like the idea like, okay, you're stuck in the control room of a nuclear submarine, you have access to the launch codes and everything to launch world war three and there's terrorists banging on the other door and the the rest of the entire submarine is compromised you have a grenade and nothing else what do you do do you kill everybody in the room with a grenade and thus deactivating the nukes or you know do you try to save everybody potentially letting the terrorists access the nukes and starting world war three like what's the you know it's kind of like the 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 train track thing do you for sure kill 10 people and maybe send uh, save 10 million or you know what like we, i guess they don't really have the stakes as clear as they could have in the multiverse at least not yet you know how much damage uh these these intruders into this multi uh, verse universe whatever uh can wreak we already know it can cause a lot of problems because there's literally spider-man villains but uh in a way like is strange is kind of right just wanting to say okay it's too dangerous to mess with the multiverse let's undo everything and put it back to normal yeah i mean so like the, yeah, yeah, it's straightforward point. to me that this is something they would clash on these two characters yeah, yeah. <clears throat> now yeah they fight uh oh, and they do yeah. my my quick assessment of this is it's not that i'm necessarily unsatisfied with the mechanics specifically that we see in this battle it's that I'm broadly unsatisfied that Strange doesn't know how to defeat Spider-Man. Especially yeah. in mirror verse where he says, he, I'm in control here, it's, and then he loses. Strange like, oh, should especially win. Especially because Strange is, like, Strange is fucking strange OP win. as hell. Like, He's super, yeah, yeah you're right. He it's, definitely should win. Super OP. Strange should, strange should never have lost any fight that he's ever been in. <laughs> I didn't like his <laughs> loss to Squidward in uh, Infinity War. He, um, he, if you guys remember, he wraps... He could have uh, teleported Squidward into the sun. He could have like, done a lot of things. So one of the things he does things. is wrap his, his little whips around Squidward and pull him into him, which is the worst fucking thing he could do. Like, yeah. come to I'm me. Pull him into you. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of little yeah. things. Made Squidward forget why he was there. There's a lot of little things uh-huh. I like in this, in this battle. Um, little touches. Now, I guess we'll go Yeah, there are, there are some things I like. Um, I mean, I like the fact, for example, Spider-Man goes to, you know, web a normal thing and port- he opens up a portal that makes him web himself and get caught in, like, a loop. It's yeah. like, that's cool. I like seeing stuff like that. Um, so. mm-hmm. Yeah. Question that's with neat. that. Shouldn't he be falling anyway, though? He should fall... Because, like, he is the thing that's suspending the himself. the bottom of the portal. Like, that doesn't, Un- well, like, doesn't unless, work. Have you ever... Unless it's taut like as fuck. Well, no, even then. <laughs> it, would, it should bounce yeah, on yeah, the... Yeah, like, it, would be it should bounce on the portal's edge. The bottom right? of the portal, yeah. yeah. But, yeah. like, what happens if you try to walk... Like, that, you've never seen someone go to, like, the portal's edge. What happens if you, like... Don't if know. you put yourself halfway in the portal and then go <laughs> out the other half, like, and then you walked into the side of the portal? Like, is it a physical edge, or do you get cut in half, or what happens... I'm guessing or does the portal just expand a, to accommodate you? It's a Would you call this act edging? <laughs> I'm, assuming, oh, no. like, I'm assuming you can grab onto it like it's a ledge. I'm not sure. Yeah. yeah well, it, it doesn't look like, like, like a physical an... thing. It looks like it has a little funny warpy edge. 
I don't know. Well, there's got to be a point where the portal starts and where it stops, right? Well, the, well, what definitely shouldn't be happening is he shouldn't just be suspended there because yeah, like mm-hmm. it's like it's like seeing someone it's like seeing someone floating in the air because they're holding on to their own feet. Like you that's done literally that what it is. Like imagine someone just grabbing their own foot and pulling themselves up, and they they pull themselves into the air like that. That doesn't work. Um, Hate to break that to you. Easy. You think you know hmm? more than Doctor Strange, Jay? Wow. Yes. So, he uh, grabs Peter and puts him into the astral form, which, uh, upon further inspection, Mel, you, you were right. There's little lines coming off of Peter's head to, I guess, signify yes, spider I, sense. Because I, I double-checked as well, and it's like little squiggly lines. And I'm pretty sure that's a, that's a reference to the video games, I think, because that's where I, I remember think a lot, them. A lot of um, I think that's from the comics originally, isn't it? Yeah. The squiggly lines? Uh, it was yeah, in Spider-Verse. So yeah, that's how it's signified in the comics, of, yeah. yeah. A lot of them do that, the squiggly lines, yeah. I just remember them specifically from some video game I played, like, years, well, they years were in, ago. They were in Spider-Man they, PS4, yeah. But they looked very, very similar. Oh, yeah, they that. were. They were in Spider-Verse as well. What, wait, um, Matt, are you saying an old video game? Yeah, I, I think they were like in I can PS2 believe they were in like Spider-Man games, too. even maybe not not like uh, transparent. I mean, if like they're that, from the comics, like that yellow. explains why they're in so much stuff, right? I mean, yeah, of course, of course. I just noticed that when when you got punched out, it's like, oh, there's like little squiggly lines. That's kind of neat. Are they like are they like very subtle? Because I didn't notice them. Yeah, they're like tr- transparent. You need, I think, you need to see them. You need to know about them. I think, unless you see them yourself, obviously. Because I immediately saw I feel like, Mel, do you want to try that again? Yeah, I just... <laughs> oh, yeah, look, memes is posted, and it's like... They're, they're like black squiggly lines. Yeah, they're, they're very... They're pretty subtle, I would say, for sure. Sometimes like, they're gold they're... as well. I think it just depends on the artist. Mm. Um, <clears throat> so then we get... Um, he's unable to grab the box from Peter because... Despite being in, a, in his astral form, his body is still reacting to avoiding someone grabbing the box with with his spider sense, I guess. Yeah, I think that's yes. the implication. A little yeah. bit weird. I don't know how weird yeah, that is. I don't know how that's meant to work. Because I thought that we were going to get like a larger explanation because sometimes Peter's powers are slightly mystical in nature, so that would allow, but we never really get more than just this display here, so I'm not yeah. sure. I thought that was a setup to some kind of explanation about something. Like maybe his connection to different Peters across the multiverse and ba- I don't know, some bullshit. I think that was just meant to be spider sense. Like, hey, look yeah, at how cool it is that he can avoid getting the thing grabbed. Um, yeah, I felt it was a bit weird, but I guess that's how that works. Like, okay then. Um, and then he sends the cape after him, which does tangle him up for a minute, and then he makes, like, he combines the cape throwing him into activating the mirror dimension, which is probably what I would have expected him to do first. It traps Peter in, in somewhere. And the yeah, choir just, sings just, 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 when it choir. smashes... And he's falling through the world with Doctor Strange chasing right after him. And for a moment there, I'm like, I am loving this. This is cool. <laughs> yeah, this is really <laughs> cool visuals really, here. This is really neat. Really man swinging through a New York that's a mirror dimension. It's awesome. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's so fucking cool. It's a soundtrack. Soundtrack is killer throughout this whole yeah. movie, by the way. <laughs> yeah, the soundtrack is quite good. So many little touches in there. I just love it. Also. Yeah. So... I love uh, little touches. Just quick tidbit. <laughs> me too. Yeah, go finish. Uh, Drinker just finished this film. Do you guys want me to read out his his small review of it? Sure. Uh, yes. Sure. Are we going to be upset or are we going to be pleased? Well, I'm just going to read it. <laughs> so, he said, holy Up, fucking please. shit, dude. You weren't kidding about Spider-Man. They nailed it. Brilliant film. I loved it. Yay. Yay. He was Yay. Really loved it. Back to positive review, everybody. <laughs> wow, what a cock. <laughs> spider cock. Spider cock. The newest spider character. I like how the in chat spider you got cock. like, yes, no, sigh. Yeah, so many yeah, people in chat are upset. <laughs> it's, it's it's a I guess you could call it a divisive film to some degree. A lot of people. Sure. Um, I got the impression Jay Lobo did not like this film at all. I think. Uh, you know, I got impression. <laughs> what gave it away? You know, listening, listening intently. Oh, okay. That's a. You need to learn. You need to learn to listen, guys. No, you must listen. Comprehension. You need to learn to listen to women. Um. Now, 
I actually, this is what I meant when we first talked about this scene, I actually think I like a lot of the choices Doc Strange makes in this battle in terms of approaches to getting the box off Spider-Man, but I guess I want him to do stuff that I don't think about. Like, that's the kind of character he is, where I go, oh shit, that's a really cool idea, using things I'm aware of. That's like the dream thing, but the thing is with Doctor Strange is sometimes mm -hmm. he just does stuff, and you're like, you can do, oh, okay, no, but no. Um, yeah. And like, the, my, my, sorry. Uh, you know the multiplying himself to like 100 Stranges and wrapping things around Thanos? Like, I don't know why he wouldn't have tried that on Spider-Man, for example. Even before the mirror dimension, he could have tried that when the hands were just dodging him repeatedly. Like, it's just like, one gets behind, need, the other one. We desperately I'll, I'll fucking it. need limitations for Doctor Strange, gang. Desperately. Well, in know, this film yes. does not help with establishing say, just limitations. Give him fucking, just give him mana. Give him, make him yeah. limited by mana. I can I only care. cast 12 spells per day. Three fourth level spells. It's worse Six than, third um, level spells. His limits are not only, like, basically, he's limitless in this film, he's also defeated... Uh, with what feels it's just a little too easy for me. It's like saying that he understands the geometry and math and thus can web him in a way that was surprising, I guess. Like, okay. I, I, uh, yeah, it, I was not keen on that. I was just like, no, you, no, no. My immediate thought was a, a line from Star Trek uh, Discovery where it's like, this is the power of math, people. And it's just yeah. like, okay. I made that exact joke in the theater. I was. Yes. Uh, yeah. No, it, it's irritating because, like, here they are in the mirror dimension. It, Bear in mind, this is the very first time that Peter Parker is even aware of the mirror dimension. And Strange not only uh, describes what he's in and essentially possibly giving him some sort of clue as to, you know, how it works. But like he says to himself, this is the mirror, din this is the mirror dimension. I'm in control here. So I don't see any way just, that uh, a, a spider boy can get out of that. I just don't think he should be able Doctor to Strange. beat Doctor Strange. I just don't think he should be able to. Yeah, no, I don't should think he, should, he could beat him in the real world, but in the mirror dimension, how the hell you beat yeah. him there? Just because they showed, just, just because they were like, just because they showed him webbing him up, doesn't mean he, that it's plausible. Like, yeah, like unfortunately, I, I, well, I mean, we, I guess um, the only way to do it is having to is like something that really depends on superior reaction times, right? Because that's the only real thing that Spider Man has over Strange. Yeah, like my immediate thought was, okay, he he is kind of clever at the beginning, uh, not the best move, but when Spidey jumps away, he does a, a portal, another bounce, and portal and bounces him back to exactly where he was before on the street. As soon as you get Spider-Man into one portal, you could teleport him anywhere in basically the universe, right? So you wouldn't be any universe. Him. Yeah, but the, not, the idea... He needs the so boss. the whole thing of oh you know what's better than magic math first off not true uh, but second off if we have <laughs> yeah, this should be this should be where math doesn't matter like all of your mathematical skills all of your incredible intellect and geometry that doesn't matter here we're in the magic no. bullshit realm this is this where is you're at your weakest this is literally Lovecraftian this is non Euclidean physics this is like beyond our understanding of math so for him just to like oh because there's so and so points. Let me just do some webs. I, I don't understand how his understanding of geometry helped instead of just webbing him up in general. He's like, I can now do yeah. geometry webbing. You're yeah. like, okay. <laughs> All right. What a, a, what a lame sequence of words. Yeah. But like, um, it should have it should have just been if if they really want Spider Man to defeat Strange, it should have just been Spider Man. Um, his reaction times are just too quick for Strange, and Strange can't deal with that. That's like explicitly the only thing that I mean, Spider-Man has over him. If he were Mephisto mm -hmm. and he deliberately loses because he wants Spider-Man to continue down this pathway, that fixes it, I think. You know, you're right. That does fix it. Take a Mephisto. I, 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 and like, it's, oh, it's I, not too. It's not too late to retcon, gang. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't see any conceivable way that uh, Spider-Man beats uh, Strange, but I did like that he immediately tried to use. Uh, Strange's teleport device into the prison and Strange was like WTF I created this prison just walks through the walls I did like that detail because it makes sense that none of his own effects would work on him basically but then not more than five minutes later he's trapped in the mirror dimension without a sling ring so well little... that that is something that's been established since yeah. Doctor Strange they can't change that if you don't have a sling ring you are trapped in the mirror dimension yeah so that makes enough sense to me I just don't like how how he was defeated in this in the mirror dimension because that would be extremely disorienting for First timer Spider Man to even navigate the world. Uh, like, what, what, 
And when I was watching the scene, I, I, I think I like the idea of Spider-Man using his intellect to defeat an opponent that is much stronger than him. But this is a mis mismatch for that concept, because even with his intellect, he should not be able to defeat Strange yeah. with the power he has on display. I don't like I don't believe that it it just I don't believe that the intellect helped here. I believe that this movie told me that the intellect yeah. helped here and I'm supposed to buy it. it's like uh it's like oh we're in a, a crazy Lovecraftian dimension. Well I know geometry. It's like that's cool, Peter. Thank <laughs> well done. Good, that's great, but you're not winning this fight. Sorry. He knows geometry in a universe he's never seen before that doesn't apply to earthian or even our universe universal yeah like geometry is kind of i mean i guess i guess he's implying oh fuck it i don't care there was no I, like, crazy shit he needed to there I was no Dr. crazy Strange. shit he god fucking damn it <laughs> <laughs> tried so many times now <laughs> go <laughs> What's ahead you saying that? go ahead uh, uh, the strange didn't even need any crazy shenanigans the first thing he should have done is just put him in one of the cells immediately Done. Yeah. 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 Was, yeah. yeah he sent him to hey, through honestly, teleports like um, twice, and then I just like yeah, sell. Be a GG. lot more satisfied if it was an incredibly quick fight. If it was literally um over and done in seconds, because Peter like very quickly takes his sling ring away and then uh like webs him up in a way that he can't move properly. But then you don't get the big action set piece. That's the thing, and I think Marvel wanted that. Sure. Yeah, of course. Yeah. It's good but I, I think I think that would be a much better battle. Um, I, I think you could do a lot more with that. And even and they, even then, like um, I think Doctor Strange being webbed up in the real world rather than the mirror dimension is better as well. I think that's an improvement. Hmm. The fact the fact that he's webbed up in the in the mirror world, completely unable to use a sling ring because he doesn't have it, that makes it easier to kind of completely discount him because yeah. you know he's not going to come back yeah so it's that's true that way but yeah just the fact the events lead, i wasn't i wasn't mad at the result i was mad at the events leading up to it because like there is a potential chance for peter to completely catch him off guard and take away his sling ring and maybe maybe defeat him but yeah, yeah. like that's the only way peter's defeating strange um yeah off guard um, but if like, they, the longer the battle goes on, the more likely Strange is to win, and the battle was quite long. Maybe yeah. right after he puts him into the, the spectral form, and he tries to get uh, grab the the box, he, Peter just like or, or Peter's body, uh, I should say, just goes out and knocks him out immediately because he didn't expect him to move at all. Just punches him in the face. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. and he, oh, Peter's dude. like, "What the fuck? <laughs> that was me." No. Now, was that the the uh, spider suit doing that, or was that Peter? Because they never explained why he was able to do that. That's weird, right? We talked I, about I it, think it we? was Peter, but um, yeah, we did. We, talk we about talked it. about it. Just the the the, the spider hands. Yeah, because we we had like the tingly lines and stuff above his head while he's in spectral form. Yeah, where were you? There's a whole conversation about it. Awful person. Yeah, <laughs> I, guess I guess I didn't. I guess I didn't didn't catch that. Band. But yeah, it, I I find that because like in the other in the other movies, isn't aren't his senses really heightened? It's not quite Daredevil mm -hmm. heightened, but like aren't his sense, senses and stuff kind of heightened in the other one? Here we only see a spider sense in particular, but I don't know. It's a, it was always a little little unclear as to what his abilities actually are in the MCU Spider-Man films. Well, I know in general, spider sense is supposed to just be is supposed to broadly be a heightened um, awareness of everything around him. So that's how he's <laughs> able to like attach web lines without looking at things, for example. Yeah, Wait, um, he's going to have something superhuman to be able to do anything close to what he does. Yeah. So, what I'm confused about is, uh, can spiders actually tell the future? Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, yeah, what a stupid question. Mm. Did I loop back in time? <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, so, moving on, he comes back and he says uh, he doesn't know how long before Doc Strange will be back, but um, their tech is advanced and he's pretty sure he can help these uh, assorted villains. And Norman mm -hmm. then says, hey, you know, I'm a, something of a scientist myself. <laughs> he says the thing. He says the thing. He did indeed oh say Oh my the god. Thing. Yeah. He says the 2016 meme from I Can Ask Cheeseburger. <laughs> <laughs> I was very pleased when he said the thing. I was very happy. The right. doggo was pleased. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, he, he said the thing, the and it was a good thing that he said. Uh, I mean, I, I I love him. I thought that was a little cringe, but I, I, I understand that that's the crowd pleaser thing to say, so he has to kind of say it. I like the part There's nothing cringe about it. It was glorious. He says, Trust me, Peter. When you try to fix people, there are always consequences. And then he goes, you don't have to come. And I didn't know you could talk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, do, I, do, I do like that they acknowledge that he never saw him talk before. That was that was good. He just smiles that's at him. A great, think, that's, the... that's a great line. It's just so casual. That's the thing that yeah. makes it. It's like, also, I, I didn't know, know you could talk, talk, but that's cool. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, and he says, if you stay here, you'll have to deal with the wizard. And then uh, Electra says, well, I don't want to be killed. So what's your plan? And so... Simple. The plan is to take the lot of them to Happy's apartment to use the expertise of Norman and Otto and the machine, the replicator, whatever you guys said it was, fabricator? Um, fabricator. To generate solutions for each of them that either depower them or, uh, well, remove their, like, assorted mindisms. Technological and about chemical cures. Um, and, of course, if they do anything, they will be sent back to their universes under the threat of That'll kill them. Like, that's how they under seem to understand it. Yep. Um, yeah. Uh, well, I, also, I, I, I think I, I didn't mention before, I think when they have the conversation, like, just coming back a little bit, uh, I think we get, like, a little bit of a sense where they were before they disappeared, at least for two of them. I think because Electra was about to become, like, the pure energy form, and then he vanished into this universe, and I think... Doc Ock was about to get his power Peter. done. Strangling yeah. Peter, yeah. So yeah, I think they give us a clue the, as my, to my where they were. Yeah, because my initial thought was like, man, if they got here right before they died, like there's like no point in helping them because yeah. they'll die well, no, anyways. Think about them. Um, then, uh, you have to think think no, about those then scenes. I listened. Yeah, yeah, that's what I was about to say because then I listened back to the uh, to the audio. It's like, oh wait, it's like before they die, and if they become good again, and even if they get brought back exactly where they were it's going to be different for them it, except maybe for electro because if he just gets teleported back into a electric current he's probably going to die immediately unless That's he's just teleported back and he lands on the floor and exactly because we, we exactly uh, yeah yeah uh what would be different about doc ox ending because he did kind of all, also do the reversion um you will have it, turned way scene. faster and so he might be able to get to the machine before it's gone critical and turn it off but no okay um i i found that that bringing like what four or five supervillains who've already tried to attack you into your own secure condo i obviously it doesn't work out but i found that incredibly naive i don't know how better to handle that scene but it obviously didn't work out but like they're they're like outnumbered two to one with supervillains inside of a, an enclosed space and i think doc ock was still like angry he was just being contained by uh stark tech nano machines to make sure his tentacles didn't do anything right well i mean th that's they the dangerous the part quick. of him but they, yeah and they, they have, have a, the well we had a conversation about this uh we did uh the other day we, they have um they have the kill switch and their motivation to stay alive and to go back to their worlds so it seems to follow and, and the threat I'd of rather... dr strange as well exactly yeah, if you stay there, that's the first place it's going to come back to. There is a risk, I and I think Peter understands that and takes it and then ends up thinking that he made a mistake when the movie's point is you didn't make a mistake because your motivation was to help and you did everything you could. And also, it's worth mentioning that because they have control over Doc Ock's tentacles, that's another layer of security um, there if one of the other villains decides to act up. And because people in chat are saying, why would you bring them all at the same time? Because if you leave some of them there, what happens if Doctor Strange comes back? They also leave then the those guys on, are just screwed. The they leave Lizard in a, in a in a box in a vein. Well, in doesn't the Doctor Strange? What does Doctor Strange do to them if he comes back and finds just a few of them in the uh, in the cells? What's see what's his plan going to be then? Well, so the concern is that he'll kill them via sending them back in some way, shape, or form. Does he not need the the magic box to do that? Well, he's Doctor Strange. He might be able to do it one by one. So we don't know if it's something it's something else he could do about it. We don't know if yeah he would just straight up execute them at this point. We don't know. I I'm kind of I think one thing could have fixed this for me. And again, this is my my take on it. 
I think there needed to be better communication between Peter Parker and MJ because MJ, MJ and uh, best friend guy, I forget his name right now. Ned. Ned. Like, Ned. Ned. Yes, Ned. They were waiting on Peter's signal. They should have had a live stream of everything that went on in that condo. You know, we have cell phones, we have all this kind of stuff. And if anything went wrong, as soon as anything went wrong, hit the button. That's my that's my take on it. Because right, like, how would they know it went wrong? They even um, when their entire the entire com, uh, condo complex blew up, they still didn't press. The I'm button. still not sure that Peter would push the button when they all start breaking out. I'm not sure. But he told him to say push the button. Yeah, he told him to do it once wrong. he sends them a text. Is that what he says? I think yeah, that's what he says. Goes wrong. Yeah, they were mm -hmm. saying they haven't heard from him, and MJ wanted to push it anyway. And uh, that's the thing, we have to, would Tom's Spider-Man have decided at any of these points to push that button and he comes very close to doing it after May dies? Uh, I don't know. I, I think I think that was pretty, pretty poor decision on Peter's part, just, just assume that he can, he can cure a lot of peas villains. There. What? Or a lot of peas there. It's just a pretty poor decision <laughs> on Peter's oh, part. Peas. Oh yeah, <laughs> it's alliteration. <laughs> Confused the fuck out of me when you said that. I was like, what was peas? Huh? I do love me some alliteration. <laughs> there are a lot of peas. <laughs> and and obviously it didn't work doesn't work out. So he learned he suffers and obviously there's a lot of consequences from it. So I'm not I'm not unhappy as it played out. I just think that was a poor decision to think that that would work. And with no no like immediate Like it um, did work. I think he it acted in accordance play. with his own priorities and ideals. And it did ultimately work. I don't think he, I don't think he did anything irrational um, or outside of his outside of his character. Okay, um. I think his motivation was mainly to keep them alive, and I think that that this plan was one of the best plans we can come up with with those parameters. We have to avoid the Sanctum Sanctorum. But it, it didn't work out, though. I mean, they they cured they cured Doc Ock, which was a great, which obviously paid off later, but. The rest of them, it went to hell. Well, it did, they managed, it did they work out. They all got all cured. Of the cures that they needed. Um, yeah. Um, yeah. It, 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 it we're up on the cosmic that. scale. We're up. We're not down because of just Aunt May. Aunt May makes that clear herself that she does not regret this having been the result. Yeah, I guess. I mean, it, it, if Goblin was going to turn either way, he would have done something sneaky, I guess. But had they been on like live stream, it's like, okay, as soon as you pull anything. MJ smacks the button, you're sent back to your own universe and you die. Like that that would be I think that might be enough for them to like, okay, we're well, basically a gun at this point. That's the thing, they always knew that that was a possibility. Um and if you remember Sandman wants that button pressed. Um but he accepts that it's not going to be pressed until the others have given been given their cures because he's not actually a villainous person. But when things fall apart, he's like, "Okay, just press the fucking button." Um you got Electro, who gives in to his desire for power. Um, it was close. We almost had him, but it was Norman's speech that pushed him over the edge. Yeah. Um, we were close. We were close to the whole thing. I was curious what they were going to do with him. Yeah, I was... I, it's nice to be kind of wondering, is he going to go bad? Is he going to turn good? What are they going to do? What's going to... Yeah, hmm? I, again, I have to praise mm -hmm. Willem Dafoe. As soon as, as soon as that whole Spider-Sense scene happens, and he realizes that... that uh, uh, Osborne is not Osborne, and and just like the grin, I was like, but damn, he just completely steals that whole scene. I loved his performance at that point when he when he the Goblin comes back, and he's like, that's a sneaky trick you got there. I mean, just like perfect. Like I'm pretty sure, like um, as for, I'm guessing that we're all going to align on this. I mean, Willem Dafoe, he does a you know he does a fun a fantastic job portraying Norman, right? Yeah. yeah. I don't he... know that he could have done that better. I don't know like if. I don't know that he could have done any if he could have changed anything to make it a better performance of Norman, but holy shit, him as the goblin! Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's like, amazing. That was next fucking level. Yeah, he was a little weak no, at times. Like, I can't Norman, but any goblin. other actor doing that as that well. Yeah, he had it was a, he has a sound a little weak a couple points as Norman, but Goblin like he it might as well have filmed uh, Spider Man one a year ago. He hasn't lost a beat. He was perfect. Was he? He was the aged as well, right? I think I think, I think they're all wrinkles, were. didn't they? 
he just he just Willem Dafoe is profoundly individual in his look. Okay, and I think mm -hmm. that that uh, he, he he has a unique appearance. He does indeed. He came out of his mother's womb looking like he was fifty. Because he went from like wrinkly forever. Yeah, he's like forty to sixty. <laughs> I think was the age. Oh no, an old man. Put him back. <laughs> <laughs> Ew, change it. Fix him. Oh, it's overdone. Um, <laughs> old people are overdone. <laughs> I like to. That in there yeah. too long. <laughs> I liked it when Aunt May said, "Do you want fresh water or salt water?" And <laughs> oh, I think that joke what? wouldn't have been perfect if not for his response, which was like like a pause. That he just goes, "Yeah," oh. <laughs> he he well, I didn't get it. I didn't get it. <laughs> fresh and water, it is. Like, yeah. <laughs> and the funny thing is, what makes that funny is that's not a particularly crazy idea compared to some of the weird villains and heroes in the world. <laughs> Yeah, and I, I just so, appreciate it as well. He's in evil mode, but he's still just like so confused by that question. Like, <laughs> what? what? <laughs> I, I prefer I prefer his reaction much more to much more than just the uh, the question in and itself being asked. Um, I feel that, like I I'm not sure that I buy Aunt May being that silly. Like, he's a dude. He just has arms on him. I don't know. Um, yeah, they I really leaned really heavy on the comedy this time. I'd almost say that they probably did more comedy in this one than the other two. I, was that a, is that a fair assessment, or am I just? I'm like, not sure. There really was a lot of comedy in all three of them. Yeah, I'm not sure I can yeah. call it. I need to rewatch the other two. And with a joke counter, I guess. Like I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> and we don't get to count flash bursting in as a joke. That's no, that's not allowed. Not For a second, I thought you were talking about DC Flash, and I got very confused. Just <laughs> that showing up out of nowhere. Hi guys, you I'm also here. Flash bursts in. I well. too know Peter Parker's secret identity. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I think Electro and Flint share like their investment and why they're here, and then they get into why. Like he's like, "How did this happen to you?" And he's like, "Fell into a vat of electric eels." He's like, oh, you're kidding. I fell into a super collider. He's like, huh. Gotta be careful we fall. What? Gotta be fall. Such a great fucking line. I just like the difference. Like, I fell into eels, you know, and I just dropped into a super collider. Like, oh. <laughs> okay. And then they go oh. a bit further with it later when Andrew Garfield shows up and he's just like, oh, Max was such a nice guy before he fell into a vat <laughs> that of electric eels. <laughs> that that yeah, honestly feels like a parody line almost. Yeah, then the, re yeah. the response is great too. He just says like, nah, that'll do the trick. Yeah, that'll do it. <laughs> yeah. It's like, that's how my boy Gary died, you know? It's like, right in the <laughs> <laughs> um, Small world. And yeah, then... Uh, Norman and Peter finish the um the inhibitor and Norman says like when all this is over you can have a job with me and if you're willing to commute universes like oh universes yeah. um and then something I appreciate in terms of getting us closer to pushing Norman over the edge which is um he's like you know don't worry Otto it'll work and then he says says the man who turned himself into a monster it's just like and it just shows him Oof. looking down like eh. yeah feels rude. And then you get it's a um, mean thing to say. Uh, a call from Happy This Mist where he's like, You let a cyborg with robot legs in my house and a guy made of mud? <laughs> Call me back. <laughs> Call me back. <laughs> <laughs> like they do, he's like, Damn it, I let these people in my house and now they're, they're doing all this with mud people and cyborgs. <laughs> I am curious what happened to Sandman in between films. Like, is it, is, it, is the implication that he's just like like his powers are becoming increasingly unstable over time or something like that? He just went to the beach. Hmm. Because he, he could go sand. back into human form, couldn't he? Even I after think he became Sandman. I think the idea yeah. in keeping him in sand for the whole movie outside of when he's cured was to make the cure a little bit more impactful oh, to yeah. the audience. It's yeah. like, look, he's not sand now. And you're like, oh. Um, yeah, it's all yeah. over now. It's all over now. I mean, I'm fine it's with the idea that, that, that the process that turned him into a sand creature may have, may like more and more uh, disintegrate him, his like human form more and more so that he's like permanently sand over time. But I just don't think there was any reference for that. In the no, I, like I, I said, guess. I think it's just to help people who don't even know who he is. Well, yeah. 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 Um, yeah then, then you get, uh, they've almost completed Norman's cure and uh, 
I just, I just quite like the dialogue where Otto is like, finally, you know, no more darker half, just you. And then you just hear it go, just me. Just me. And it's like, oh, he sounds oh, spooky. Oh, oh. <clears throat> oh, oh no. Oh no. I oh, my line no. sort of did give it away for a few people, you know. Oh, come. Um, and yeah, that's the spider sense scene. Oh, no, don't come. Where, it's too late. Uh, Holland Spider Man just sort of like he's working and then he just gets up and the camera follows him in what's, um, would you call it a second person view? I think. Is that what it's called? Kind of, yeah, I guess. It, it's mm. probably one of those, uh, steady cam mounts that kind of follow that. I, mm -hmm. I know that, uh, what's, what's that one director? The director of Snatch he likes to use it a lot. Um, I forget his name now, just now. Guy Ritchie. But, yeah, I know what you mean. Guy Ritchie, yeah, he does it a lot. He does it in the Sherlock movies too. And in Snatch, I think. Well, uh, the camera follows him out into the room and he's basically just staring with the, the sense, like, sounds going off at all of the villains. And they're all given, given some weird looks. He focuses up and realizes it's Norman. The <gasps> bastard! He's like, that's a <laughs> neat trick, that sense of yours. Norman's on sabbatical. Oh, what a good line, by the way. It's on sabbatical. Like, ah, oh, you bitch. You really think I'd let that happen? That's what Spider-Man should have said back. Ah, <laughs> oh, you bitch. I, I think, trusted um, you. And Otto is like, Norman, no. That He's like, shut up, lapdog. Which is cool, because he kept saying he doesn't want to be fixed like some dog earlier, Otto. Mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, oh, yeah. That. He, he made says, the snipping gesture when he said that too. And he says, We don't want to be fixed. These are not curses, they're gifts. And Electro starts looking down at his little thing. Like, mm, yeah, it was a little peen. Little peen. <laughs> and he says, You struggle to have everything you want while the world makes you choose. Gods don't choose, we take. Which is a pretty cool goblin line. I like that, yeah. Contributes so much to EFAP. <laughs> um. It will have the first card, if have. Oh, you yeah. Fuck yeah. <laughs> but only in Green Goblin character. He can, he can come on as himself if he wants to. I'm allow I will allow that. I guess. Gay. Green, but I guess. Um, but yeah, it, it all kicks gay. off. Green Goblin hits Peter into the staircase. Aunt May is running away with the, the cures that they had uh, as far as they created them. And Electro grabs the power source from the fabricator and blasts Doc Ock out of the apartment building, who is then seen by the uh, the helicopter outside and presumably chased off because he is currently at large for everything he did in the uh, in the freeway area. Motorway oh boy, they're coming! Oh boy! Yep. Um, and during all of the chaos, Lizard just jumps out of the the car. And J. Jonah <laughs> sees that, just goes, D "Did you see what that?" The heck? <laughs> <laughs> With everything else happening, there's just this dinosaur man yeah, running around. Like, <laughs> it's perfect. It's like, whoa, this guy's a oh a dinosaur man. Um, okay, <laughs> <laughs> that's happening too. Uh, yeah, and then we get the fight for Green Goblin and and Spooderman. Uh, well, the first fight, and man, is it just it just hits all of it's hitting so hard. All of their uh, yeah, got two powerful lads just fucking each other up. While Willem Dafoe, oh, yeah. not a lot of, yeah, is just it's one of the most awesome. violent feeling fights. Like it, 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 it does feels much, violent, much more like yeah. real violence than other yeah. Spider-Man fights, which are like you know pirouettes and cool acrobatics. This is more like oh, there's two dudes grappling grounded? each other and just punching yeah. each other in the fucking yeah, face. Yeah, ground bone just power bombs him through the floor. It's like Jesus. <laughs> yeah, like every hit you feel every hit without it like getting to like Zack Snyder Superman levels where there are like shock waves happening every punch. Well, that that you makes about. me honestly that makes you feel less of the hits because it's like it's an unbelievable amount of force at that point, and I don't. Yeah, exactly. You know, you know, the same way that if you showed someone like get hit by a plane and they're like, "Ow." I wouldn't feel that hit. <laughs> oh, and it's going to be worth mentioning because a lot of people want to bring it up. But yeah, Willem Dafoe said that the only way he'd do this is if he was going to be the one that's throwing the punches and involved in the scenes, even though he's like 600 million years old. I want to yeah. punch Tom Holland. That I want to punch punch children for money. <laughs> <laughs> it's the only reason he did it. He wanted to punch just gets um, him, It helps, just gets though. Way into uh, and just beats everyone up for real. 
I remember thinking, I mentioned this to you guys when I was watching it, I was like, man, I'm not seeing the stunt double very clearly, so this is great, you know, and it's like, it probably isn't him a stunt double for most of it, which is awesome. Or, like, yeah, yeah I'm not sure if they would have used a stunt double for him. I'm assuming when they do the flips, that's probably not Willem Dafoe. That's him. That's him. I don't, if it well, is he's awesome. Capable of flips, isn't he? Well, I mean, he's just sixty-one. I don't know if he's still if he's doing that at that age. <laughs> Probably. I'm gonna say yes. I'm sure he, he did it. I'm sure he was he was throwing the punches and faking taking them. I just the you remember the one? It's pretty awesome where um, Tom Holland he likes does spider webs at the top, pulls him up, they flip around, then he pull he fires him at the floor and pulls, and so it's like oh, this. Cool. Yeah, it's a really cool move. Uh, was that uh, yes. during the the second fight at the end, or this is That's the, the first fight? The first I assume one. that moment right there that was probably two stunt doubles. I'm not sure if either of them would have been on that one, but maybe. Hmm. Um, Epic and Poggers. And I, and when he's beating the fuck out of him, he's like strong enough to have it all, too weak to take it. It's just like, ah, oh, you're mm. you're fun. <laughs> like, <laughs> do it more. Um, yeah, we got a peek back into uh, Raimi Spider Man with that. I was like, yeah, okay, yeah, taunting your taunting the <laughs> Spider Man, your quirks, one liners. I like this. Can we just have you eat the villain in everything? Just have <laughs> his Green Goblin be every villain. <laughs> yeah, like, like a Bond, James Bond. Not for long, Bond man. <laughs> <laughs> Will Defoe's face on every villain. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Someone do that right now. I mean, like, yeah. If you if if anyone's cons like looking for villains, this is a fucking hell of an audition tape for Willem Dafoe, isn't it? Yeah. Um, and yeah, there's there's a part where he's getting punched by Peter over and over again, and he just smiles more and more as it's happening, which That's is laughing. fucking creepy. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> it's like, no, you're supposed to be hurt and stop it. He's, he's, They're <laughs> punching me, Spider Man. <laughs> Do it more. I'm a reckless fox. Like, okay, okay, you can leave. <laughs> it's kind of funny, right? Like, there was a whole other green goblin in uh, the Tazza movie. It's like nobody fucking cares. No, Bring there back wasn't. What... <laughs> yeah, this is... wait, there was. Yeah. Uh, I yeah, like, don't was, remember uh, that at all. He was, he was pretty Harry cringe. Was... Uh, pretty cringe. Yeah. Oh, I totally forgot about him. I completely forgot. I just, about I just him. remember him going. <laughs> Probably a reason. Peter. He was he. Uh, it, we don't talk about that, okay? Yeah. Willem Dafoe is just gonna like that. He's done this. It's like he's already solidified it again. Like it, it took twenty years to forget about it, maybe, but that'll be another twenty before anyone's allowed to try. <laughs> Peter, you didn't give me your blood, dude. I feel, 80... I feel like this is. I feel like this has cemented him as classic villain status, right? Whereas um, Doc Ock, um, like classic character status, but uh, you know, he 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 does he does lots of different things in this movie. Green Goblin is just like, yeah, I feel like, um, I feel like, you know, his first appearance, cool, right? Second appearance, very cool, but both of them in conjunction is just cementing him in, like, the, the fucking history of great villains. Yeah, I think he's fucking great. Um, his, his motivation in this seems to be to prove that, uh, Peter doesn't want what he's actually doing here, and that he should actually take what he wants, which is to use the power he has to do whatever the fuck he wants, because he's he, he actually Green Goblin's under the impression that he does only doing what he does because of Aunt May. Like the she's got him in. I think he says like uh, she suckered you into her moral mission. Uh, and obviously the gods, you should just take whatever you want. So he's he's trying to prove, much like he did in the first Spider-Man Raimi movie, you're not so different, you and I, you know. And uh, mm. he's, there's a Joker element here, I think. Um, yeah, he puts off of Joker vibes, sort of. Definitely given the impression, and um, I, you know, I'm, I'm just sick of Joker, honestly. Uh, I, I do kind of just, I want more Green Goblin. I, you know I, what would have improved yeah. um his character quite a lot, I think though, is if on his forehead. No. They had. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and worth mentioning, as someone just said in chat, getting rid of the Goblin mask that was a great choice. Yeah. It yeah. Was. Um, I don't yeah, hate the as, as much as I miss yeah. the ma as much as I miss the mask. I think it's really cool. Like, like I'd love I love seeing it. I love seeing yeah. his face a whole lot more. Yeah. Um. Especially as when he tosses he's the, emoting and the pumpkin bomb and the smile he makes with it. Like, little. It's, 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 oh, he's so great. I love seeing his face for a lot of the things he's up to. But um. It also. Go ahead. No, just saying it, it also probably lends itself to more live live action shots. 
because they want to have actual faces on there. Yeah. And the one thing I, I wasn't right. crazy about is when they go all CG, like a lot of the Spider-Man shots that go all CG. And so I get a little bit, I get, I feel a little bit less uh, connected to when it's just an all CG fight. So when they incorporate real actors into the fights a bit more, I think it feels well, a the, more grounded. The problem isn't when it's all CG, but it's when you can tell that it's all CG. That's when it's an issue. Yeah. Right? yeah. Um, but I, I, I do, I do feel like, especially later on in the film, when they've got all three uh, spider man whipping around, I can feel like the frustration that all of these characters are, wear masks regularly, because obviously you want both the actors' um, face on display, and you want to be able to easily tell them apart when they're yeah, wearing, wearing which very -Man similar is which, costumes. Yeah. And I, I can feel like um, the frustration there of just like clearly um yeah, yeah I, well, I actually don't want these characters to be wearing masks to be honest but, I, like general i i kind of it's weird in this instance I'm is, like, is it, I, I don't mean as, um well I as a general mean, trend let me I, tell I, you i just I'm want to clarify i don't mean that i don't want the characters to be wearing masks i can tell the filmmakers don't want the characters to be wearing masks okay yeah you can tell i was about to say because the thing that i find incredibly frustrating at this point about the mcu is like they always want to get the masks off all the time with these stupid nanotech Things like, hey, let's see their face all the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because, yeah. like, I mean, I feel like a good example is Infinity War. Why the fuck would Tony want to take off his fucking helmet when he's fight when he's you know in a standoff against um Peter Quill? Why would Peter Quill take off his mask so that he can talk? You can talk Spider -Man with a mask on. Well. Spider Man. It's like there's no. There are very few reasons for you to take off your mask, but they want to because they want you to see the actors' faces, and it feels like. Because you look at the Raimi films, it's like usually towards the end of the film, you either get the mask off or the mask has been destroyed so much that you can see his face. It's like that feels to me like a much more organic way to get what you want yeah. rather yeah. than, hey, stupid nanotech floop, the mask is off. We need to see their face. Yay. Um, yeah, no, I, I hate and that. Like, <laughs> early scenes, because like, like, honestly, the scene between Quill and, and Stark and Spider Man in Infinity War, it's not the most like emotionally like you know we really need to see the actor's performance for this one like it's just you the scene would be fine like honestly just as good if the all of them were wearing masks i mean you know that because they have no reason to take the masks off and it would make sense and it would be coherent with their characters more so yeah you want to take off your mask to be very personable in particular more charismatic or to express vulnerability to open yeah, up so like um it, like, well, I think this is one of the things that Tasm does do well is when um, Peter sees that a kid he's trying to save is scared of him and instantly takes off his mask. It's yeah. Like, yeah, that's a perfect reason to get your... Um, and that's character. The fact relate, that he took yeah. his mask off there is characterization for his character, right? You learn more about Spider-Man as you see him decide to take his mask off in that instance. You see what his, he prioritizes um, very quickly with that. Like, oh, this kid is in danger and he's scared. Okay. Well, my identity can wait, right? He's probably not going to go around telling people who I am. He probably won't recognize me. So, yeah, this is much more important in this moment. Um, and yeah, and that, but in scenes where it's just like, hey, we need to have a quick conversation. Mask off time. Mm -hmm. When Peter goes mask off, he says the N word. No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nice. And I mean, I like the masks that they have, you know, like, it's they cool masks a lot of the time, but they always want to get rid of them. Yeah. It's got to be very frustrating as a director to try to get emotion out of viewers with masks. So I yeah. can understand why they want to do that. But yeah, it is kind of a trope. It's like, okay, you're in the middle of a battlefield. You should probably have as much protection on as possible. So it's it's a bit of a one of those things that they have to kind of sacrifice realism for emotion i guess yeah. and also like the masks are not impossible to work with like you look at vader right he's you barely see him without the mask on at all yet they're able to communicate what he's feeling with subtleties in how the camera is oriented or in body language or um other other ways so i don't think it's as True. it's obvious challenge for subtler details but it's not impossible to work with either i will say that we just it's easier done, for villains too we just got mm -hmm. done saying that um it was a, an improvement to have Willem Dafoe's face as opposed to his mask in a lot of these scenes. Yeah, no, I know that's that's the interesting part. But I guess well, just, the thing is, I, um, he, he his mask was destroyed, though, reason. right? For well, so so it's like, he, he um, what I'm highlighting it. isn't yeah. the difference between justifying and not justifying. It's just that um, it seems that 
even though Vader is, we do get his, his emotions and stuff. It's like, well, in the instance of Willem Dafoe's Green Goblin, we want his mask off as much as possible and justified. We need to see his face. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's a challenge. Like I remember uh, in the Dread movie, the Carl Urban one, um, you could he never took his helmet off, so all you saw was like his mouth down. But he manages yep. to do a lot of emotions and actually, you know, convey what he's struggling with, with just the the you know the bottom third of his face. So there are ways you can work with it. But yeah, no, I I agree. I think I really like how they subtly built it up too, because Osborne basically he never got rid of his suit, but he broke his mask, and then eventually probably found some. Like I got some homeless clothes that he, you know, probably got at the shelter, and they just happened to be purple and green with like a like a hoodie, kind of like a homeless person would probably wear, right? Yeah. Something warm, comfortable, and then eventually that kind of flies up and it becomes like a hood, kind of like the comic book character. And I thought it yeah, was a really a, 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 comic a, look, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. It, it was a very, it was a very clever way of kind of organically setting up his new costume. He didn't do a, a costume montage over 10 minutes. Could you imagine <laughs> how happened. cringe that would be? <laughs> that would <have> really <laughs> but yeah, no, it, it worked out. It was, I, I liked how they did that. It was, it was subtle enough, but I could still tell like, oh, purple and green. You know, those are some interesting homeless colors. I wonder how that's going to play out. Homeless colors. Purple and green. Those are the, the yeah, the national flag, flag of, yeah, homelessness. <laughs> Um, yeah, anyway. yeah, I was gonna say one of the other cooler hits as well was um, when Lizard tosses Peter back in. Um, he's on the ground, I think, and Green Goblin smashes him up into the ceiling. And on his way back down, he like jumps into him to then smash him down through the floor and then through the floor, through the floor. I think he goes through like several stories. Uh, yeah, it's yeah, like a couple, four or five. It's a pretty cool. The, the, and yeah, after that, uh, Tom is basically like fucking ruined. Like, uh, Green Goblin's like annihilated him. <gasps> yeah. He's very weak. I suppose it's time to. Yeah, you, you feel. Yeah. You feel he's been battered and he's weak. Oh, well, okay. Yeah, let's talk about that first. So, one of the things he says when, when he's got Peter by the, like, the throat is, Your weakness, Peter, is morality. It's choking you. Can you feel it? Uh, it is really the line again. that we were taking the piss out of like, only weeks before. This is a line that was used in Doctor Who and it was horrible. Um, but to be fair, it's not as bad in this as Doctor Who. Doctor Who's is uh, your weakness is morality, and then who responds is like, no. In that, in that, um, so that one is um, the villain. The villain who's like basically not been characterized at all. To be clear, just looks at her and says, "Morality was always your flaw." To which she responds, "Morality is a strength, actually." Yeah, <laughs> it's uh, really crazy. That's worse. Meanwhile, in this, yeah, um, you've got two elements that I think work about it. One being that morality is like a a system we'll all have and use and stuff. And Goblin, I think, is genuinely advocating for how just go id, just just do whatever you want, fuck any kind of system. And then and so highlighting like your morality is a weakness and it's choking you while he's choking him. And um, you could argue that a lot of the everything in this trilogy for Spider-Man, it's his choices to do what is right is fucking up everything all the time, um, which is just Spider-Man in general. Um, mm -hmm. And then saying, can you feel it? Like, yeah, I, I can enjoy the performance. I think it's more relevant to say it, but I still don't like your weakness is morality. It's cringe. Yeah, that was a bit cringe. I'm glad you brought that up, Jay, because I, I immediately thought of that Doctor Who quote. I'm like, oh, it's, it's good that it's only coming from him. But it kind of makes sense that he, because that's his whole thing, like, he wants to kind of corrupt and, and pervert uh, the sense of justice that Peter Parker has, even if it's not his Peter Parker, he wants to just yeah. corrupt that. But my, instant, still... my instant thought in the, in the cinema, uh, listening to that line is, oh god, someone's already tweeted this at me, haven't they? <laughs> yeah. Someone's already, someone's already going to get mad that I like this, but not that other one. I'm going to have to explain context. To or, or I mean, well, someone's sort. I'm not going to have to, but someone's just going to demand that I explain why I think that one of these is much worse than the other. Mm -hmm. Jay, how response... dare you not have a broad standard that applies to every situation? How dare you have nuance? Yeah, fuck you. I, I fuck. think the the motivation and the response uh, is what really makes it much more cringe on Doctor Who than it is here. It's a little cringe here, but yeah. like, um, it it, it, it makes Man sense. The Goblin one as well. Yeah, but it's like but... um, it's well. I understand what um Goblin's motivations and beliefs are, and I believe that that is like 
something that he thinks is is worthwhile saying to Peter. Whereas um, Tech Tayun is just like, what does she like? What does she want? I don't really understand her oh, motives no. and how she thinks that. Okay, she's she thinks that morality is bad. Cool, she's a villain, I guess. It's like I. It's like um, Goblin. If you take out that line, you still understand that he believes that. If you take out that <laughs> line from her, it's like I don't know what she wants really. Mm -hmm. I don't. That is from her. That's the line where you believe, where you find out that she believes morality is bad. Yeah, it's it's set up a lot better because this whole thing was kind of hedonism, right? Goblin was like, "Why should we answer to others? Yeah. We we should live as gods, basically." So it makes sense. It makes more sense that. And also, like the imagery of him choking, like like Mueller said, him choking Peter. He's like choking on his his uh, morality or whatever aspirations. Like, oh God! <laughs> hey, Darth Vader again. But uh, I, yeah, it, it was a bit cringy. But I'm a, at the same time, I'm like, okay, no. I mean, honestly, there's no getting around it. Green Goblin was also pretty camp was always pretty campy, but we love yeah. him for it. So it kind of fits his character. And then, um. I'm. Uh, it'll be interesting to see what you guys think about it, right? So, like, like he's he's got Peter by the, like he's pulling him up, and it's clearly vulnerable as hell. And May is there. She um she injects Norman with something. Um, mm -hmm. I was curious, kind of mechanically, what's happening there because I think he said it didn't. He like immediately says it didn't work. So I was a little bit like, think, what's, what's happening there? Uh, Without having so, was it um, a, I think was, it fake, already... was it a fake serum that he gave to yeah, him? Yeah, so he sabotaged him. Right. Uh, yeah. Um well my interpretation was they were developing that counter serum, but um they got they fucked it up somehow. Um and it was only the Toby Maguire uh, uh, Spider Man who had been reflecting on it for years at this well, point who would have had I had a thought. It. I thought it was maybe that Norman had sabotaged it to the point where that injection makes it so that he's like full goblin rather than half Norman, half goblin. Oh uh, that's what I assumed it was. Yeah. And so her injecting yeah, that, that him makes yeah. actually makes him willing to do a lot more devious shit, which would explain what happens straight after, in a, in a sense. Wait, so, so that, wait, so no, that, that happens because they fucked up the ser well, so serum? So Norman or? would have been working I on think. the serum with them, but yeah. Goblin would have sabotaged it to the point where, remember, because he's like, uh, you know, it'll just be you, and then he's like, just me. I assume. But why would yeah. he say, but why would he say it didn't work then? That seems like a weird... Thing to well, say. because it didn't work well, it didn't with the work intentions. As they intended. Yeah, Norman and it didn't Norman. from their perspective, it didn't work, and he's taunting them with that. That's okay. why I assume. I'm pretty sure it's full. I'm pretty sure it's full Goblin mm. before that, and he just probably completely subconsciously uh, was unable to finish the serum, probably due to his Goblin, his Goblin side just kind of sabotaging him subconsciously, and so I think that the. I think that his specific uh, serum was just a dud. I think that's what that's what I got from it, at least. I, I don't think it was even making him more goblin, but maybe maybe you had a different read on it. Uh, I I, th I think you could say it could be either one. I I'm I'm not sure. I can't tell for sure which one we're supposed to think is happening there. Yeah, I wanted to go back and to kill look at the scene because so. in in my memory he looked kind of surprised it didn't work but that could just be my memory playing tricks on me i think um, he said I'm it's like, like oh it looks like the old man didn't Cheap have an enema German does memory like yeah doesn't he, doesn't he say like this it seemed like osborne had it in him or something didn't he say something like some side comment like that i don't have the movie in front of me but i thought he said something like that like basically oh, no. like uh, pathetic <laughs> pathetic uh norman couldn't actually make the cure didn't work haha i'm so goblin yeah and i think and he's like, that's the that's... and he says like i think he says something like he believed in her bullshit as well it's something like that he believed what she was yeah, saying i think that's mm -hmm, yeah, mm -hmm. that sounds right i'd have to rewatch it i'm so not 100 percent sure yeah i got the idea that it just norman failed to make a, a working serum and it, it wasn't until all the spider-mans kind of put their their spider heads together that they actually figured out okay um well either way uh, Aunt May grabs like a little thing. Just looks like some kind of debris, but it works as like a stick. And I thought it was a plunger at first. Tom Holland is it looks, like a, it looks like an a weapon. Yeah, from I, thought, I thought it was a plunger. Light. Yeah, that would be like hilarious. I said, it's, it's something that was hanging there. Um and yeah, uh Tom Holland's like run, please run. Please run. And then the glider bursts in and Fucking hits her pretty fast to the point where I don't know about you guys, but I was like, oh man. I think no. she should have died there. Yeah, that's 
That was oh, that's quite a hit. Oh, I'm, in my, that's, in my not my, that's not what I was going to say. But, uh, I, 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 I what were you going to say? say? So the, the movement I, of it means that she's probably going to have to have died from that, and if she doesn't, it's plot armor. And so when I saw that she was still breathing and got up, I was like, hey. And then I was like, oh. Oh, she's probably dead still. And I like that her wound was in her back, because that's where the glider hit her, rather than the bomb being the reason she died. I think the glider did kill her. And mm -hmm. it did. It, I it did. Yeah, I assume that. that's what... Yeah, it was, it was timed. Well, I th it sorry, did. I thought you were saying that she should have died the second it hit her. Yeah, I, I think it should have. I just the way, but it's not like a big deal because she does I mean, die from it. It's just delayed a bit. I was gonna say I've seen humans take harder hits than that and survive for a little bit. Like I, it doesn't sure. surprise me that she could. Uh, you know, she only struggles to get back up briefly and then she falls back down. Mm -hmm. yeah. and the first stage of grief is denial. Well, I was gonna say like <laughs> I mean, the imagine the adrenaline pump in and she just wants to make sure Peter's all right. But as soon as that's sort of dying down, it's just like blood loss. Blah, blah, blah. Going down. Yeah, my frustration with that scene wasn't her. It was Peter. Because I, 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 that scene didn't work for me, unfortunately. I really wanted it to. But all I thought was, you're Spider-Man. Get her to a hospital. Like, you're Spider-Man. Like, I, I, I probably, like, backseat writing. But I would probably either uh, have her die, like, much quicker. Or get pinned by the goblin mobile the, the goblin gl glider it probably like, would be stronger if she was pinned by it you're right yeah th then we know that we couldn't we couldn't um, easily get her out because because it kind of just let her die I unfortunately disagree because i definitely don't think i don't think it's let her out um it is in my it is in my mind thinking let me let me let me reward that let me reward that he makes no attempt he makes no attempt to to bring her to help he yells for help but otherwise just has her die in his arms. I know he obviously doesn't want her to die, but I kept... One of the most even dangerous he things he could potentially anyway. do is move her at that point. Yeah. Look, could you yeah. imagine grabbing her and swinging her around when she's got, like, a massive wound? That's what I was going to say. Like, I, I'm not trying to be antagonist like, or anything. Like, I completely her. disagree with the assessment, like, 100%. Yeah. I just, she I just even don't... if he tried, she's not going to... Especially if he's emotionally traumatized by her peril. Yeah, and it's like in the last third of her even ex existence that he acknowledge he's acknowledging that she's even dying. He's only seen her blood he didn't right even before realize she's, at first. she yeah. starts being incoherent once he sees the blood. Yep. Right, like there's just, there's something missing for me at least. Like maybe he tries to move her, and then she's like, "Oh, like like that causes a lot of pain." Then it's like, "Okay, I can't move her." That'd be enough for me. But he doesn't even attempt to move her. That's my that's my. Problem. Yeah, I don't think he I would. I mean, he knows not. moving her would be in great pain. Yeah, I'm very glad he didn't try to move her. Yeah, I probably would killed her faster. Right, Possible I've been, been swayed back. Too, like a lot of people, I don't know back. why you would think that though in the first place. Though, like she's very, very badly hurt to swing in her the around back specifically. Yeah. Like, god damn. And also, there were a bunch of police outside, too, with guns. And he did call for help the they second he realized she needs he it, which is the smartest help, yeah. thing you can do. Yeah. I thought the scene was excellent. I thought it was fucking fantastic. Yeah, yeah, I really liked it. I was yeah. I was really into it. I like, even when mm -hmm. I even when I was swung there, I wasn't I wasn't under the impression that the scene wasn't still excellent, but... Well, I could see how that would damage the scene All for right, you well... if, if you thought that he didn't do much to save it. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, uh, I, I, there I was know. there were moments where I was thinking, <clears throat> um, like where I was thinking, I'm not sure that like should he be prioritizing trying to save her life at this point? Uh, but I at yeah. no point was I really like he de he definitely needs to be doing this instead. Like that was my experience in the cinema. Yeah, I thought he behaved reaction. totally like someone in his situation would yep. behave. It's yeah. a hot take, yeah, and totally any comments aren't agreeing with me. But I uh, I think there should have been some attempt. And again, like. If That's pretty pinned, hot take, yeah. If she was pinned, 100% on board. I just, it, well, I, she wasn't, why would she was that, walking Why would around. that work better? Couldn't he just, like, pick, he's Spider-Man, he's really strong. That's true. And he but does like, lift like, up the glider at the like, end. Like, my, my, uh, like my, my, my immediate thought was, um, anybody seen uh, Signs? I know it's not a great movie, but have you ever, ever seen Signs? I, I, yeah, I know uh, what you're right. like, yeah. Yeah, like that scene, that scene worked for me because there's no way to get her out of being between the truck and, and the tree. So something like that 
would have worked for me. Like, and not to say you shouldn't rip off signs, but I'm just saying like some, some sort of obstacle where she, you know, the, 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 the goblin glider is holding her in, you know, holding her together or something or even even matrix revolutions if, you, if you've seen what, those if, you, what if she had a massive wound in her back but she was walking around for a second though so yeah, like yeah, you're, you're okay, right so and then she collapses have... yeah yeah i don't know uh it, for whatever reason didn't work for me and i hot take but yeah i i wish there was some some altered element to that where there wasn't an obvious way to get her help. I don't think there's her. an obvious there way. There wasn't to an help. obvious That's way at all. Thing. You keep saying, like, that, well, I'm confused. That it's Why isn't it enough for you that um, she's got the yeah. severe back wound and he wouldn't want to move her? I like, you wouldn't want to. Final yeah. cord injury as well, potentially. Yeah, if someone's got a broken neck, a broken spine, broken legs. And uh, also, just like, if I'm system. swimming her around, isn't that just going to make the fucking blood go everywhere and it's going to be really <laughs> yeah. painful? She's really badly hurt. Like, the best wow. he could do is, like, slowly lift her up and hand her over to the police and hope that they the call for an ambulance. The best he could do is put pressure on the bleeding and, wound, yeah. probably. Yeah. And he called for help. And even, and then again, if it's Spider Man putting pressure on also, the wound. Also, Peter's not like, a doctor? Yeah, and also he's fucking freaked out. I feel like that's Absolutely. the big thing that's being ignored again. And didn't, um, he didn't call nine one one. I mean, I, I just he called for help. There's police outside. What? He yelled out. Help. There's police he outside. Yelled out, he yelled for help once. I don't know. I I I, I well, he was I mean, probably can emotionally we, traumatized I, I say, watching we, his aunt we'll have, die in front of him. Yeah. Yeah. We need, we need to involve the context that he starts just asking her to stay awake and look at him. Because she's dying. Like I don't, I, ca I yeah. cannot understand how you would say that. Like, oh well, this you is, know. This is strange. Not gonna lie. Like this is okay. a kid yeah, with his mom dying. Like I, I, just, I, I don't understand why that wouldn't be one hundred percent in line with everything he values. He's just trying to keep her awake. No, I mean, I I like both the characters. I wanted to have a moment there. I just for didn't work for me for some reason. I thought that there were opportunities for her to get. So I'm just gonna. Better. <laughs> this isn't meant to be like. It, it feels awkward when you keep saying, like, I just felt that it didn't work, but then you go back to, like, the arguments that we keep talking about. I don't know. I, like, I, I don't know how, I don't know how she could possibly, like, what he could have done that would make more sense in this situation other than what he did, given who he is. I it burst into song. <laughs> When I was, <laughs> when Cell I was phone, in the nine one one, bring the car. Uh, he doesn't any have way, a phone any, on any, him, Maybe any way, any way possible to get your loved one to help. That's what I would do. Or at least that's what I'd like to help. Do. There's police outside. I don't he know why that is. Yeah, enough. he was clearly emotionally traumatized the, by the fact that someone he loved was dying right in front of him in a crisis like, situation like that, especially a medical one. When you can't just save someone with your normal set of skills, you are absolutely not going to just behave perfectly. And I don't, I, even I, think, like, I don't think, I don't even I don't feel think like he does behave that poorly. Be, I don't even think the perfect decision would be to move her. No, like, I'm very, I'm very anti her. that. I don't know like, why you'd be pro yeah. that. Yeah, anti moving. Yeah. So like maybe he could put some wet, as like he could web up the wound, but who knows what I kind don't of effect like that's that would have. Gonna work. <laughs> that would not happen. I don't, I don't think that's going to work. <laughs> no. I mean, if it stops the blood flow, that isn't a terrible idea, to be honest. I don't know. Uh, I, that, I wouldn't. Yeah, I mean, like, unless it's 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 severely have... hurt her inside of her body, and then she's just going to keep bleeding inside of her body, and then she's I dead. Mean, I mean, the first, the top priority is obviously stopping the blood loss. So let me know. turn I... you around and web you in the back <laughs> to try to fix you. I just that to me just I, feels really I, dumb. <laughs> like, I'm not. I'm not. Argue, I'm not arguing for that. I'm just saying that that it it seems like there were other options. To try to get her to help, other than yelling for help once. Sort of I don't think there up. was. She was clearly very injured. There was rubble. There was like policemen outside that he was aware of, Fires probably through his senses. Because there'd been explosions as well, because he blew up a whole bunch of stuff outside. And like I said, and I just don't see. The vast majority see the of world. the time after he realizes she's even dying is spent trying to make her stay awake and stay coherent. Yeah. But he fails, so she dies. And. And police outside doesn't e equate uh, EMTs outside. So I, I what? and what? Did he no, go, did he go no, no, no. Uh, so by asking police, the police for help, police by standard, 
mm. uh, by asking there's, there's a good chance there's uh, medical facilities coming in with them especially if an apartment building has exploded um, but calling to help for the police means the police then call the help instead of to help yes. that's, that's why uh, we're uh, saying uh, it's please police. Generally given medical training anyway, at least on a basic level. I would or assume they, they have wrong. at least one person there ready for medical in, in, with considering the situation. There's no, it wouldn't make any sense for no one there to be medically familiar. I feel like the fundamental is I believe that he did what he did. Like, I don't Absolutely. look at that thing and go, he's acting I think he better, did better than most. Yeah, yeah, a little bit. Um, and I feel like any other... And I guess, I'm not sure, like, how much this counts for, but, like, the scene where he webs her wound feels stupid to me. <laughs> like, I feel like that I, takes I away from I the... did not argue for that. I did not argue No, I'm, I'm just saying yeah. that, like, it's an example. Like, the scene where he does that, or the scene where he tries to swing her to a hospital, and then she's dead when, when she gets there. All of these feel to me like worse alternatives, there's, especially in terms of like an emotional impact. There's a guy in chat demanding we've shadow banned him because we won't address his argument, which is hilarious because I'm like, I'm just so focused <laughs> on our conversation, I don't even know what's like, okay, but he's saying like, what about the nano uh, tech's save move that Tony's suit has in Infinity War? It's like, first of all, uh, Tom Holland's suit's pretty compromised. Suit. We don't even know that he has that ability. And thirdly, they're not the same wound, my friend. No, they're different. Like all Tom has. Okay, yeah, like you've been unshadow banned. You've <laughs> unshadow <laughs> Welcome to the light. I remember all the nanotech he has on his body right now is that little golden emblem that's going across his regular suit. So I don't think he's going to have the healing. I don't think that's going to do thing. shit. Yeah, the healing thing would be like a a part of the Iron Man suit specifically. And even yeah. then, like. Because if he had that, he probably would have used that, but I don't think he did. Well, it's not even the full suit, the full... From what I can gather, no, it's, it's um... No, it's a little... This pieces, like, yeah, hey, the pieces on me? Ox's suit got moved back onto his current, uh, clean suit. That's what I got the impression it was. Yeah. Like, he's only got the logo at this point, meaning he might have a little bit more armor in that area, but there's no mm, nanotech yeah. abilities displayed. And that's probably it. I think the scene is excellent. So someone said it doesn't really matter if it ruins the emotional done. stakes. It's more logical to swing to an ambulance or hospital. No, it's not. It's, it, no, it isn't. I, it is it's not it's logical. This. That is we not have to, logical. To make, to make the point clear, it is not a better idea to swing her to a hospital. That's no. like, I, I can't think of many things that you could do that would be worse. Like, that's... Uh, that that might be the best way like, to kill could, her. I, I could yeah. th swing her to a, a fucking... Swing her to the ocean. That's worse. I guess that's worse. But like, <laughs> I feel like you guys need to remember. Have, have Maybe if we ejected her into the vacuum of space, have you seen the POV her her in the face? Have you seen the POV shots in this film of MJ swinging around with Peter? It ain't fun. No, it's it's not a fun experience, and she's bleeding and really hurt. <laughs> All right then. <laughs> I just I don't know. I feel like that's done. I I I, I don't have anything yeah, else. I, to I think so. I'm moving on. I'm fine. Um, no, I, I like I, the person in chat I, just saying woo. <laughs> so <laughs> we got uh, the dialogue. Shadow this band. Theme. I'm still on the shadow band part of my mind. This is insane. Yeah, Sorry, yeah. go ahead. <laughs> You shadow I just thought it was funny though. he kept repeating, I've been shadow banned because they're not addressing me specifically. <laughs> like, okay. No, 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 just... Just like we're going through addressing every other person in the chat, you know. <laughs> just making sure you're not shadow banned, uh, peoples. I've been shadow banned, he man. He man. <laughs> um, the dialogue. <sighs> oh, so much Norman has been shadow banned. Got, um, first thing he says, you know, this is before she's, uh, she falls over, he says, this is all my fault. And, like, she immediately, like, if you just keep an eye on everyone's expressions, wants to make sure he does not believe that. And she's like, you did the right thing. They would have been killed. Mm -hmm. You did the right thing. And he says, it's not my responsibility. And what he's referring to, because she makes that clear, is what Norman said about the humanitarian sort of project, meaning... What right does he, May, and anyone else have to decide who they, you know, like, I'm going to help these guys, I'm going to make a decision that goes against, because he says I should have listened to Doctor Strange, and he's like, he's arguing, it's not my responsibility to decide they deserve to be saved. To which she says, uh, you have a gift, you have power, and with great power must also come great responsibility, meaning that if you have the power to save these people, then you should use it. Uh, yep. 
Mm-hmm. And then this he, might and be my favorite usage of that line. And he, and he, um, and he just goes quiet and says, yeah, I know. Because that's has been his lesson consistently now since the moment we met him. It's, it's, it beautifully rounds out the trilogy as far as I'm concerned. That, that core of that basic line that what makes Spider-Man Spider-Man. Yeah. It's great. Yeah, I agree. Absolutely. I've, I've seen this lots really of people good. be hypercritical yeah. of this line being delivered in this harmless way. I don't know why. Uh, I thought it was fantastic. Well, well, if they're being hypercritical, surely if you don't know why, that's a failure on their part. That's like the whole job is communicating <laughs> that if they're being critical. So yeah, from I, memory, doesn't know. Um, I've seen people say that line's been stolen. It didn't belong to her. It belongs to Uncle Ben. <laughs> That's oh, a okay. weird that okay. It belongs to Ben. Not it May. belongs to yeah, fuck off. Belongs to as Spider-Man. if that hasn't been as if that hasn't just been advice given to countless people throughout all of humanity. That's... You should be responsible with your power. Uncle Ben invented that. <laughs> um I've seen people say it was incredibly forced and and I think Jay Longbow said it was really cringe. Uh I, the was, only reason that I think anybody would think it's cringe is because of the meta. I don't think you could say anything about it being like based on what's in the film itself. Yeah. There's definitely Let's look some at meta the references. Wikipedia page for with great power comes great responsibility. <laughs> Let's see. Hey, with great hey, power hey. <laughs> comes great okay. responsibility is an ancient adage at least as old as the fourth century BC in the illusion of the sword of Damocles. So. It was first said by Uncle Ben, and it belongs to him. <laughs> no. Uncle, I think you Uncle mean Benicles. Uncle Benicles. Yeah, um, Uncle Benicles. Benicles. <laughs> I'm, I'm, and I'm honestly, like, I'm hey, keeping an eye on chat. I'm trying to be fair here. Like some people have said, it is cringe. Like, what? What's the argument? Out of curiosity. Yeah. Yes. And that's please. like fan service or something. I feel. I, I feel I a lot of people say chat. it's cringe I'm because it's names. such a meme these days. Because I, 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 I couldn't get that thought out of my head while she said it. I was like, oh, this was good, but I just can't get the memes out of my head. I, for me, it was, I was just thinking about how much this trilogy took their time to earn that line as opposed to throwing it in because yeah. you're oh, supposed yeah, to throw it in. So, you know, how, you know, what would, um, you know, it would have been better if she, if she, uh, if she instead she'd said, I'm something of a scientist myself. I'm something of an aunt myself. <laughs> <laughs> no, it would have oh, been no. better if. If if Peter's dad was revealed to be alive the whole time, and then he said the line, um, that would have been the superior thing, I think. Then they wouldn't have. Yeah. St- or if Uncle Ben was actually alive this whole time, he faked his own death, and then he came back. <laughs> and then, back. Well, it's never even explicit sure. that he died, right? What if it? What if he just like? What if he just divorced Aunt May, and then he came back and was like, "Yeah, uh, power and responsibility and stuff," and then he dies. Uh, someone argued that. Um... It was a bit cringe because it's implied in Civil War that Uncle Ben had already said it. But if that's true, that, then that it still lines up that it's a it's a message they're that he's getting married, repeated. Right? They are together. Uh, well, yeah, the, you could you could definitely head canon it that way if you wanted to. That Uncle that's where she got the line from to deliver to Peter. That Peter may have heard it from Uncle Ben before. But the fact that he says "I know," like. That's what he's been learning over and over again. It's a really fucking hard lesson. It comes in loads of complicated ways. And that's, again, what I feel like the whole trilogy's been about. But um, the idea that he's heard this before doesn't make the delivery any less thoroughly meaningful because this is the hardest test yeah. that logic has gone through. Because he went with the, yeah. what he believes in the end and then everything just falls and apart. He, he's almost and lost he's... everything he's learned by saying it's not yeah. my responsibility to help these people. He's like, of course it fucking is. Yeah, I, I had no problem with that line because I think that established later on, there's almost sort of like a cosmic destiny for every Peter Parker or you know Spider-Man variant to always to always have their quote unquote Uncle Ben. In this case, it's an Aunt May to always have their MJ, or in some case, Gwen Stacy. Like it kind of seems like there's sort sort of like a pattern to that that Spider-Man and all and all of the multiverses basically. So I'm I'm okay with the idea in this case. Uh, Aunt May being the moral, the moral support for Spider-Man. I was yeah, I think per- that uh, perfectly fine with that. This yeah. film argues yeah, like, that she's the me, core for him in where it originally all started, and then other people have just been adding on to it. To, yeah. to me, um, people who are mad that it's like Aunt May instead of Uncle Ben, it's like missing the forest for the trees of adaptation. It's like okay, we've what we've got here is something that captures like the meaning of the original work very clearly um, and very profoundly and very 
meaningfully it captures the meaning very meaningfully uh, i'm great at speaking anyway um but oh but it wasn't uh the same it wasn't like the same character who said it so bad it's like I, I, do we really want to make that our standard guys do we want to make that the the the, the standard adaptation because like and, and and it's also kind of suck it kind of sucks but meme culture seeps into this if you put an uncle ben into spider-man homecoming we would just be counting the minutes until he dies that's yeah. how that's how memes work. So whereas um, Aunt May dying here is is a um is a like a shock is to yeah. a lot of people going to be oh shit they killed Aunt May. Yeah, that's a, it's surprising so they're able to add new uh, breathe new life into a story that's yeah, been told times It really adds weight to the death that it is unexpected. It, it put, lets you put yourself in Peter's shoes of like oh fuck I wasn't expecting her to die here. Um yeah. yeah. <clears throat> and, uh, and someone said, "Efap, then Spider-Man doesn't need that line to be Spider-Man, uh, implying we've somehow changed our position. That is still our position." Oh, um, he would still yeah, have been Spider-Man if, um, if Aunt May never what said this. What a stupid this. thing to oh, say! Oh, the bad face tried to choo choo. <laughs> we are we're we're fine with Spider-Man existing yeah, as Spider-Man with the without so that. Shit, you made Fringy do an impression yeah. of a train. <laughs> that's that's, Look, that's always that's about the execution. If you do it shit, it's shit. If you do the same thing and it's good, it's good. Was that clear what? enough? Do I need to come closer? Yeah. Is, is that? Okay. My <laughs> ear come, balls. Come closer, Metal. No. With no sex. <laughs> no. With or, with or without that line. Everyone else was doing it. <laughs> Everyone else was. Li- <laughs> with or without that line, that's practically Spider-Man's theme. It's like his entire point. That that yep. he's coming, he's coming to grips with the responsibility of having the this power point to, make is it to be. You don't, you don't need the line explicitly said to have that theme be in the work. But oh, yeah. it, no, you don't. You don't. It, but, but that, yeah, it, it that is the um, theme. Yeah. But the fact that they worked hard over the course of several movies to get there. Meanwhile, everybody was like, "Who's not Spider Man? He's just Stark Tech. He's not Spider Man. He's not swinging around in New York." It's no like, one says that. Patience. Yeah. I don't recall the last time I ever heard saying, yeah, Gandalf and Moria, he was being too explicit to Frodo. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's, I've never heard anyone say that. So. It, yeah. Well, now I've heard someone say it. Like, yeah, you just said it then, the idiot. Oh, no, gosh, no. darn. I, I ruined they that. The first person Up until in I had the mentioned no one had humanity, stuff. The first person to ever say that. <laughs> what have I done? Sword of Democles. So I've got to pop out for like just 10 minutes, so I'll just be right back. No, okay, bye. Good opportunity no. put a pizza in the oven as well. Shadow band. <laughs> <laughs> well, um... Yeah, and that, that actually reminds me, uh, Rags, of that quote from Gandalf, the, I wish it, uh, I wish it need not have happened in my time, said Frodo. So do I, said Gandalf, and so do all who live in to see such times. But that is not for them to this? decide. All we have to do, okay, all we have to decide is what to do with the time that's given to us it's a very similar kind of theme like yeah that's the thing that i was just talking about yeah 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 just the the yeah the quote that i, yeah. I guess you're referencing that quote but yeah it's like the motivational speech the yeah. the the morality that's instilled on the younger one by the wiser one you know it's i think that's yes the shorter whether, one by the taller one yes <laughs> whether you want to do it explicitly i think it was perfectly fine i, I think that like I said, yeah. it's sort of like a weird, like parallel cosmic destiny for all Spider-Mans to have that sort of character that instills that message to them. Maybe that's sometimes silly, but... people need to be told things explicitly, especially if you want the message to sink. Like, I... like if you want someone to really understand something, you don't use parables or metaphors or things. A lot of times, you just you tell you tell them the thing. Well, I was gonna say I don't even yeah. I, I, like I don't even know that this is an example of that compared to what it, it could have been much worse in terms of explicit dialogue. But like she she's prompted by him using the word responsibility, um. So that's where she throws it back in and back at him. Like he he has the power to save their lives, so he has the responsibility to do so in that uh, scenario. That's what she's arguing, and he he agrees with her. Obviously, and that reflects her whole job being. She's just trying to help people every day, and the fact that she's encouraged and worked with him to help them as well. She just she fully believes in this, and she wants him to take it forward because she knows she's dying. And uh, yeah, I like it. I I, I just I think it's excellent. No problems with it at all. That was quite a scene. Yeah, and then she just starts saying, "I need to catch my breath," over and over again. Like, you're dead. 
Yeah, well, surprised it, it, I've not seen more terrible arguments in the chat. Sorry, go. It was even uh, yeah, particularly no. sad when he gets her blood on his hand, lifts it up, and then she says, "Are you okay?" Yeah, she's like, not. Oh. She's not quite. Like I said, she starts just like I think she she starts just like drifting off. Mhm. Mm and uh, yeah, he's just saying, "Please wake up. Please talk to me." And it's really sad. And dear God, thank goodness they committed to it. They didn't pull some magic Doctor Strange spell bullshit to bring her back, you know? Yeah. Because that's always something that you worry about with this series. Oh, are they going to come back? Is some horseshit going to happen through something? Hey, and then hey it... Rags, it's no, never yes. too late. No one's ever really gone. <laughs> no one's ever real. No Let's one's ever speak. really late. <laughs> Um, it's also poetic, it's also poetic that she was the firmest believer in this, and she's the one who paid the the biggest price to it. Yeah, and that yeah. also like really drives him. It really, it really builds his motivation up. I mean, at first he doesn't accept that. At first he's kind of like, I don't care anymore. Like obviously that's a couple scenes later, but I I like his initial response where he's just like he doesn't care. He's like he's kind of lost his way for a bit, and yeah, he regains his purpose. And who better to bring him back? Uncle Ben. All, well, <laughs> Uncle, <laughs> Uncle Ben. Dude, two different Uncle Ben's just come back through. Home. <laughs> Uncle Ben. I'm still thinking about myself. <laughs> just comes swinging on webs like, <laughs> Peter. I don't know why we had the goblin voice. No, no, he, yeah, he, he, like, the goblin like, voice. Willem Dafoe's face. They're Uncle Ben. It's Spider-Man. It's Uncle Ben as Spider-Ben like, with like, a goblin voice. He like comes out of the corner. I'm something of a responsibility myself. Oh. <laughs> um... And then, yeah, we get uh, J. Jonah's speech while uh, Peter's watching it, and my god, the shots are pretty uh, suitable tonally for everything he's feeling, but um, there's a... Uh... I thought that was a... Wait, sorry, uh, you were talking about the scene where he's in front of J. Jonah Jameson's uh, talking? Yeah. Yeah, I really, really like that. I like the subtle music behind... His voice was very prominent, like it's the only thing he's hearing right now. Yeah, and it's um, it's a viewpoint. It makes runner. sense that it makes sense for J. Jonah to have, but it's also a viewpoint yeah. that Spider Man is currently considering, which is that everything he touches turns to shit. Yes, wherever he goes, chaos and calamity ensue. Everything Spider Man mm -hmm. comes to ruin, and we, the innocent, are left to pick up the pieces. Yeah. And this low point is the perfect time to hit him kind of with that message. It will compound yeah. his potential belief mm -hmm. that that really is indeed the case. Yeah, and this scene kind of, will it, directly it, inform one of the last scenes. It also was messed up because it really hits him hard because it's kind of true. Like the whole uh, Washington Monument scene in Homecoming is his fault. He told his, He told Ned to carry that device that was a bomb and it went off and nearly killed all of his friends. The whole uh, glasses and Mysterio thing was also his fault. He trusted somebody and he, he shirked his responsibility and gave the glasses to somebody else, which led to, you know, near cataclysm. So, like, in, in a lot of ways, like, he, he undoes the, the, the problem in the end, but in a lot of ways, it is it hits him really hard because that's a really valid critique in a lot of ways. He does make mistakes. He does uh, accidentally cause problems. So, yeah, I, th I think that was effective. Also, be right back. Gonna get a drink. Um, but yeah, so we're just we'll just be struggling at that point. Sad flisms. I'm strig. Aim and struggle, yeah. And then they we Damn. just enter in with <laughs> Ned and MJ talking about like their POV with a news report in the background, and then just a desperate desire to get to Peter, which eventually. <laughs> The portal starts to open, and they're like, ah, the sling ring is tied at least in part to, like, your, um, focus and desire. And so they start focusing up for Peter Parker. Get Peter Parker in here. The portal opens, and a Peter Parker and does come through. the is standing on the other side. But his eyes are much bigger than anything we typically see in the MCU. It's like, wait a hmm. minute. It's anime Peter Parker from the Spider-Man <laughs> anime. Spider-Man. Spider Peter Parker. <laughs> um, and yeah, so as Andrew Garfield arrives in this film, and pretty much everything to do with him is gold. Yep. It's oh, yeah. really good. Just like everything to do with Tom Holland is gold. And Tobey Maguire. Um, and Toby. 
Well, to I, be fair, I, I, I wasn't, agree I wasn't including Adelco. him just because he hadn't shown up yet. Yeah, true. And Electro. Um, <laughs> There's a lot of gold in them, their health. And, um, and Aunt May? Oh, yeah. And yeah. Dr. Strick, no. No. No, I, no. It's anti gold. Bridge too far. Poopy gold. I have returned. Uh, oh, hi. Uh, I guess I we'll was, just reference. Probably the biggest. He he. Uh, we're just we're just on Andrew Garfield coming in, and we're probably just gonna machine gun reference all the things he says and how they're really great. Uh, <laughs> yeah, he's yes. clearly invested I... in keeping them calm as well as because he's just in someone else's universe. <laughs> but at the same time, he's like annoyed that he has to prove anything because he feels like it's so <laughs> obvious. And so yeah. he, just, yeah. he just has these little. They all. It's hard to kind of say, but all of his acting comes across as incredibly genuine. Um, like he's just a real person yeah. dealing with this. He he feels very real. Like it's um, I don't, I want to describe his dialogue as diegetic, even though I'm not sure that's the right word. Um, Maybe naturalistic. Yeah, he organic. He and organic. he delivers his line. You know, he deliver he delivers his lines. <laughs> <laughs> he delivers his lines. Um, uh, you know, less like a theatrical performer, more like a dude who who has decided to say these things. You know, um. I, I really, really enjoy Andrew in this movie. I mean, I enjoy all of them, you know, but. Andrew was the biggest surprise for me because uh, I was surprised how much the, the, uh, the theater reacted to him coming on screen way more than uh, Tobey Maguire. I was actually. Well, I think, I think basically him coming on screen is confirmation that the, the other Spider-Men are coming, right? You know, yeah. for a lot of yeah. people, it's just. They've got to break the, oh, I've the spot. They've got to break the other Spider-Men, like seal i guess i think if toby yeah, come first like... and andrew second toby would have got the biggest cheer yeah, yeah. Um, I, I, I just got back what are you guys talking about the arrival the of the garfield the other the yeah. My, the that's the of loudest garfield. cheer that our uh theater got mine too yeah was when garfield popped up people were very pleased yeah, was, yeah. we were just saying uh, that if, if, if he and toby's introductions were switched it probably would have been toby with the biggest cheer just because it's uh, yes, it was like the confirmation mine, that the Spider Man is coming, you know. My yeah, my you my theater there. was making noise right as like as soon as the portal opened and they could see him in the distance. My 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 cinema was going, ooh, ooh like that. Ooh, ooh, mm. ooh. Uh, and I I was sick, they're going, What the fuck are they going on about? It's just he's Spider Man. <laughs> they're about to like you know, they're about to go and like they're about you to go say... and reunite with Peter and, and why are they why are they all agitated? What the fuck is but yeah, um, wasn't until um, we got like, oh fuck, oh fuck. Hmm? <laughs> well, I mean, my theater was actually the opposite, where it was kind of like an ooh when when Andrew showed up, and then Toby shows up, and then they lost their shit. So, I, um, maybe that maybe mine was an isolated incident though. Hmm. No, when when Andrew Garfield when Andrew Garfield came on screen, the entire audience did too. That's what happened to me. <laughs> Ew. <laughs> Whoa. That's nasty, bro. Uh, <laughs> no, I, for coming Sorry. coming from such a doomed series, I didn't <laughs> coming, to, to, uh, yeah, coming a little well, uh, from such a doomed <laughs> series as the Amazing Spider Man, I was shocked at how great Andrew was. They completely redeemed him in my in my view, like. He, he was. was never, he I don't was think never I was a weak part of those films. Yeah, like, we, 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 we got some references before you, we do conclusions. He's just a right. We haven't, uh, got, we haven't <laughs> explained anything yet, and everyone's wants to do okay. that. Okay, well, I, 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 you've slapped me a couple times because I jumped ahead, but I'll, I'll wait. But anyway, he was a good introduction. Really, like you said, really organic, natural acting. I like how he was like, "Hey, I'm Spider Man," and I love that he immediately got, "Oh, yeah, string theory, multiverse." Yeah, I get it. Like he immediately got it because he's he's like a nerd and he thinks about this stuff all the he, time. I think so of I all of the really Peters, he is that. the one characterized as the most academically, like, science-y smart. Yeah. Yeah. So um, I love the fact that he got it immediately. It was, that was great. I love that. Um, it's, like he, it's like a theory that he had had for years, and this just confirmed it. And so he was, like, immediately totally on board with multiverse. So I think that was a, a fun... Because you normally expect him to be weirded out. It's like, oh my god, who are you? I'm Spider Man. You're not Spider Man. Well, he, but... to be fair, he had already been there for like two days to figure it out. Yeah. So it, it wasn't. It, it wasn't necessarily instant. He was like, oh, I'm in the multiverse. Okay. Um. Someone said they hated how Ned was able to open portals without training. 
he has to try quite a few times, and uh, in yeah. Doctor Strange they do establish it's less to do with like some kind of mechanical muscle you're you're doing. It's more so it, like I can't remember what the ancient one says specifically, but much more about wanting it. Um, Which is that you have to let go or something, right? Yeah, because she yeah, puts him in like the Himalayas or some shit, so he has to open the portal to save his own life at that point. So that's how she gets him to do it. It's not like, you know, you you you're doing a punching bag for 10 weeks and then you can punch better. It's like literally just a matter of your mental state. And Ned really wants to well, see Peter. Well, Strange was skeptical, that's why. Where Ned wasn't skeptical at yeah. all. Like the um, magic. Well, why would he be, you know? Um, he's He knows yeah, exactly. Doctor Strange at this point. Because he already believes he's magical. Yeah, and he also already, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so um, listen, you're not actually I, arguing I, I, this point, I, are you? It's like, rewatch Doctor Strange, bitch. That's how it works. I'm just following the rules. <laughs> my, my, my thought was literally just, when I, when I saw this, it was... I'm not sure if Ned should be able to do that. I would have to rewatch Doctor Strange to check. That's how and I remember I'm it. I'm happy the... to trust Wumbo on this. Well, it's worth remembering that portals seem to be like the easiest thing you can do as a magician, you know? Yeah, it's, it's much more about having the yeah. sling ring than it is about having training. <laughs> no, let's stick Magic is not balanced. No, it, yeah, I agree that it should be balanced better, but it isn't. That's how it works in Doctor Strange. Night, thanks to Doctor yeah. Strange and all the other stuff, yeah. And, and there's, Remember, there's you can cast runes without even knowing what runes are, alright? And there's some references. <laughs> that's, that's, the only thing that Ned, that's the only thing Ned can do, he can't even close them by themselves. And he can't do them well, you know? Yeah. Like, it's not... No, I, I like, I like actually like how they built it up, because in the beginning, at one point, uh, Strange is like, you can't just do magic on your own, kind of thing, like, kind of dismissing Ned, and then Ned accidentally opens the portal, like, after a little bit of nudging from MJ, and then a bit of he doesn't nudging. know how to... Uh, nudging, yeah. I'm sorry. Uh, I'm, actually, I'm actually sorry. And yeah, you should be. Um, and then no, no, he, Jay, he hold the line. It, he doesn't, he doesn't... <laughs> <laughs> okay. After he manages to open it, he later on they they realize they have no idea how to close it. But then after all of that, they manage to get Strange back in. And then after that, Strange is like, "Wait, did you just open a portal?" And he's like, "Yeah." And he kind of gives like a slight. Great like, moment. That yeah. was that was like way harder. That was basically you get the the subtext like this is way harder for me to do. You you little yeah. Lucky, this is sort like, of like beginning hmm, luck kind of thing. Hmm, yeah, kind of thing from him. You know, <laughs> hmm, yeah. Interesting. Like a, about as much respect as you're gonna get from him, basically. Mm -hmm. Someone said so. It's it's not okay in Doctor Strange, but it's okay here. Okay. It's like so. That's not what we said. What? That's what we. That's what we <laughs> said. No, that's we definitely what we totally said. Were you listening to? You nailed it, commenter. So. The idea being, I don't even like portals. I think that once you introduce them, it's over because Doc Strange can kill everything. Yeah. Um, Chop everything. You gotta have some rules, yeah. motherfucker. Um, but we got them, okay? And so if you're like, okay, but how you use them, it's like, I want that a high fucking skill level. I want that top tier. And then Doc Strange went, no. I was like, Ugh. I guess that's just how it works then. And so the other films now have an obligation to follow those rules, unfortunately. Yeah. Now that that is established, either it could be it could be retconned, and that'd be neat, I guess. Um, but since it's been established that portals are pretty easy to create in Doctor Strange, um, then yeah, it's fine for a character to pick up a sling ring and be able to create a portal. The I think the probably the best way to do it now would be to say that like sling rings are like super valuable and super like difficult to create themselves. That's the hard part, right? And that anybody who has a sling ring can potentially use it oh email um, yeah so to highlight for the person who's very confused if ned couldn't do it whatsoever i'd be like uh pretty sure that's not how it works uh, no way home you're kind of breaking rules there well i don't know maybe because like it's still established that there are there are boundaries to casting portals right like it's not super easy it's not, but it's not super easy barely an inconvenience. you just have to put the sling ring on yeah. and then think hard about where you want to go everybody is capable uh, to some extent. As far as I know, yeah. Unless I misunderstood that entire scene from Doctor Strange. I thought that the, Well, that feels contradictory. Like, I don't feel like the point in Doctor Strange is, yeah, only some people can do this. Feels against the message of that film, you know? Or like, Yeah, just it's these, like, anyone can learn, but you have anybody to can be really want to learn. You gotta try with, hard. Yeah. But sling rings are not the one where you really have to try hard. Like... Sling rings is, yeah, it's about a frame of mind that you could be in naturally, but you also, if you're not in it naturally, you have to train yourself to learn it. But like, yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't know about you guys, but I just, I was like, oh, that is kind of neat. That probably would happen. Yeah. If he's fucking around with that sling ring and he really wants to find Peter and a portal opens, the only mechanical failure there is just the world assumed he was looking for a Peter Parker that wasn't the one he was looking for. 
uh, which is yeah, like so you literally like Di Diagon Alley in Harry Potter. You just yeah. not specific enough, I guess. Yeah. Um, I well, really... I guess I can see how the world would be confused about that. Well, there's as well, three Peter like, Parker. As far yeah. as the world is confused, that like yeah, that's the same person though. I I'm willing to forgive the universe for getting confused because the universe is literally confused right now. I yeah, know the MCU universe. The universe. I can I don't blame it for being fucking confused as to what the hell is <laughs> going on. Yeah. <laughs> um. Yeah. Like so, he's he's like I'm, I'm Spider Man. They're like I don't believe it. But then she says, "Prove it." Throws bread at him, and he just goes. <sighs> Why'd you do that? Yeah, he just like <laughs> lets it hit him because it's bread. You have the tingly thing? I do have the tingly thing, but not for bread. <laughs> That's great. Like, I love that. um, a little bit. I already noticed this later, but uh, when he says like, don't throw the bread again, later on when he's attached to the wall, she does casually throw it while someone else is talking yeah, and he's really... just he's just shaking his head at it. Like, <laughs> throwing that bread again. Craw crawl around. So, no, I think this is plenty. No, I think it's pretty, it's pretty good. It's pretty plenty. It's, 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 seriously, like, I, I don't want to under Cell, it's just such a great performance in the littlest of ways because she's like, crawl around, just really crawl is. around. No, <laughs> no, <laughs> and uh, yeah, uh, when, when they're sort of chill with him and, and they're like, What do we do? She's like, uh, create more portals until you find the real one. Yeah. He just goes, Ouch, <laughs> <laughs> ouch, <laughs> which to me, again, feels like kind of a meta line. Just, uh, he's, oh, he's, yeah, yeah, yeah. he's the ugly duckling. He's not a. He's not the Spider Man. <laughs> one. Just like, ah, oh, this geez. might be. Bro, he takes the piss out of himself a lot in the movie. I love it. This will probably be a film we reference a lot in the future when we talk about acknowledging metas in a good way. Uh huh. Yeah, but a lot of people are going to say that that's your bias speaking rags because you like this. But with the other ones, you didn't. So there must be an but, but it's good. So the, it, it, but it is good. You're right. The, but com the compliment is to dialogue that fits the characters and the situation, but also means something if you consider the meta. That's pretty cool. Well, yeah. I, I think uh, I think so. Yeah, because this this may be a topic, but um, so it's it's really bad when you look at like the Mandalorian the ending and you think that's yeah. just awesome just because they did the fan service thing. It is equally as bad to think that something sucks just because it also has fan service to it. There are, there's a right way and a wrong way to go about doing this type of thing. I think this is Absolutely. a good way of doing it, and I don't think that the other movies are going to do it well. No, I think that they're going to take the wrong message from this mm. film. I think they're going. Yeah, that is a big worry. Yeah, people Charles love Xavier, this movie. Exactly, and that maybe they don't even quite grasp that it's like, man, they actually worked really hard. To make it meaningful here, and I don't know that it's going to be meaningful elsewhere. It's like the opposite. Once they've seen they've seen the success, just do the thing. Just yeah, cameos exactly. everywhere, just multiverse. Bring money, them all in. So throw them in. It, bring them in. Yeah. Hey, look, we can even have maybe Chris Evans come back to play fucking uh, human Johnny torch. torch <laughs> human torch. That Johnny, cool, Johnny right? torch. Johnny, Johnny torch. Johnny torch. Yeah. Would be so cool Johnny if he Mr. met Fire. Captain America. Wouldn't that be great? That would exactly. be funny, funny, funny joke, funny. Like, so it's not that you're missing the fucking point. <laughs> like you are. Well, uh, yeah, because there's a reason these two Spider Men are here, well beyond fan service. Um, of course. It, it, it's yeah. a question of not. It, it it isn't a question of the what you're doing. It's the how you're doing it. It needs yeah, to all line up. Because I mean, you know, the reality is this film probably was like. The premise was probably cynically created. It's like, hey, wouldn't it be cool? You know, wouldn't it be cool if we had all three Spider Men? That'll make us a lot of money. But then someone got given that and tried to make it work, and they did. John Watts, John Watts did. He got handed this, and he made it work because he gives a shit. What, a, what would I know him for doing? I'm not good with director names. Spider Man. He, he did all the Spider Man <laughs> films in the MCU. All in this in this trilogy. Yeah, yeah. He made this trilogy. Okay. I got and now you, he's I got doing you. Fantastic Four, and I'm looking forward to that one now. Me too. I am. Yeah, I'm. Yeah. I want to see what he does with Fantastic Four. Here is his filmography. If you want to take a sneaky peek, I've charted his career on this filmograph. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he came from the Onion. He used to work on the Onion. That's crazy. Huh. Good for him. So then. Toby. Because the, oh yeah. my god! And, uh, Toby. It went pretty well in my cinema because the reactions from the audience oh. timed just right with how they all went like, oh, 
yeah, yeah, yeah. And then they, mm-hmm. yeah. they went silent mm-hmm. just right when that was like, oh, it's just some random guy. <laughs> <laughs> just, 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 just like, hey, oh nice. great it's just some random guy <laughs> hey i just stepped through this turns around the board was gone yeah <laughs> it's like actually a random guy yeah what i really liked about that is that they didn't realize that they are being called they they thought they were the ones that were intruding which i thought was kind of fun it's like sorry but i, I walked through this thing like yeah they thought they were the ones who kind of like overstepped their boundaries which i thought was a pretty fun natural reaction because they didn't know that they were being summoned through a sling ring or have any concept of what a sling ring was. That's right. The Avengers don't exist in their world as we later learn with the wonderful line. <laughs> I was part of the Avengers. The Avengers? Oh, that's, great. that's great. What is that? <laughs> Are you the band? band? I love that line. <laughs> Honestly, I kind of wanted... Uh, like if I wanted anything more from like Toby, I would almost want more reactions to like the existence of other superheroes and stuff like that. If only to to please that that very like the, that part of me that wanted Toby to join the Avengers back when the Nick Fury post credit scene happened all the way back when. Right. I mean, I guess I think it's a cool dynamic to have basically two out of three of them exist in universes where there is nobody else. Gives yeah. out Spidey in the MCU something that he can give to them that they don't have, which exactly, is the value yeah. of teamwork. That whole scene was really cool, though. Yeah. Could you imagine, like, if you if if you said even a couple of years ago, yes, yeah, so you're gonna watch a Spider Man film where all three of the Spider Man from the different films come together to like fight all of the villains from the old films. Yeah, it's like, yeah, right, nah, we are. No way. They're not Even do in that. the world of work. Avengers, even in that gonna world. going to be three Spider Men? Made... Yeah, I, I feel like it, it, it honestly feels like a, a more unlikely thing than uh, the Avengers as a, as a concept. Because it's like, well, they're all kind of connected together. They're all part of a shared universe, so that's something. But like from different films that are spread out over the course of 20 years, no way. Now the answer is yes, way. Now I get very worried about what's coming next. Yeah. Do you hear the rumor that they're going to bring Hugh Jackman back to play Wolverine? Oh, no, 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 no. He's no, no. done with that. I no, thought no. he was too, but I thought Patrick Stewart was done with it too, and it seems likely <laughs> that he's going to be in, in Doctor Strange. Cease and desist. Star Trek Picard didn't work out as well as he thought. <laughs> so he... <laughs> yeah, coming back, but if if the rumors are to be believed... Like, How can I ruin X-Men yeah. too? I... Well, I mean, again, if people in chat don't know, the reason why they've been doing these reshoots has been stated many times for more cameos to get more people in. Like, more Yay. references. Cause this, and apparently the cited yeah. reason was, well, look at Spider-Man and Loki. Look at the success that came from that. Now, I guess they've got more of a point for this, but from Loki, holy shit. Talk about a fucking bad influence. Yeah, but imagine, imagine oh, yeah. they shot this film and then they did reshoots <laughs> to include all characters. Like, imagine the fucking mess we'd have on our what hands if that's how this had been made. Yeah. Like, I mean, you know what? As, it's always possible that that could turn out well, right? As for, well, but, I mean, well, in the case of this film, I think it was talked about that they were like trying to figure out the script as they were shooting it. You could see traces of that. But goddamn, does this film hold be- together better than you would expect for a film that yeah. was not finished when they were? But and so is Mission Impossible Fallout too. Uh, yeah, isn't it weird that Mission Impossible and this like are better written than most films that are scripted well in advance? <laughs> well, I, it does seem just like goes to Marvel, show don't plan. Which no. it, it <laughs> yep. seems I like when you look at a lot of Marvel projects that like they don't know what, what they're doing. I think the most concerning thing is when the directors say, I don't know if that's canon or not. I didn't know about that. Yeah, I'm not sure what the answer is to this thing that was in my story. It's like, holy is, shit. Man. How much do you not know? Like, you how should know you more than anyone else in your film. Me? You're what, the god how, of this universe. You better you fucking are. know. Well, I mean, I'm, I'm pretty sure there was a, a, a person, one of the writers for Eternal was, like, said, yeah, I, I don't know, like, um, if they ever interacted with any other, like, Marvel heroes. It's like, what do you mean you don't know? You have to know. You wrote this. Just goes to <laughs> show that just give this money to just fucking everyone they want, every, every single person they well, want Well, then to. why haven't they given it to me? Dude, I, I well, feel like you didn't apply. I feel like you it's a, give a more shit. deeply ingrained problem of, like, this isn't storytelling, guys. Like, you're just... You approve the projects, then you get the people to come in to make the projects. 
and you don't yeah. tell them everything because if you tell them everything, then they might spoil something. So none of the actors know everything that's going on. None of the writers know everything that's going on or the directors. And it's meant to just like come together. How is it possible? How is that even remotely possible to I've do to so like many... consistently do well? Like I've how are you so meant many... to get constructive feedback if everyone is getting different pieces <laughs> of yeah. this jumbled whole? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Hollywood is weird that way. Like, I've read so many different uh, production stories of movies. Though sometimes a movie idea will sit on the shelf for like ten years, and then it's like, oh, we uh, we want to do this, revamp the script, and we'll shoot it and get it done this summer. It's like it, it goes <laughs> from like slow, slow, slow development hell to like, okay, we got to get this done right now. We're shooting in two months. Uh, get all the cast, crew, producers, whatever, whatever it takes, get it done, and because we, we need a uh, a Q four movie or whatever. It's like. It's weird how it, it can be extremely slow to get things done, but also incredibly rushed to get to get to the finish line. Sometimes, I so. guess that's the uh, the business part of show business, right? These yeah. are companies sounds like that IT need to work make money as well. It's like, it sounds like exactly like IT work. No, it's time. It's time. And then all of a sudden, ah, uh, we need to do it now. <laughs> well, <laughs> do it's, everything. It is- it is this situation with Marvel where it's like they probably are the envy of the entire industry that they just have like an assembly line that is consistently like every couple of months there's something new coming out and everybody really likes it for the most part because basically all, everything from phase four has been received pretty well yay, um, yay. You can especially just, about just, movie bob yeah like uh, it's well i mean you're yeah because yeah, he, he loves all of it and it's like man what a great <laughs> system from a monetary standpoint where you have like 10 projects all at once they don't really connect together that well, despite the fact that that's the whole selling point of this universe. But it comes out consistently, and everybody likes it. You make a bunch of money. Um, but guys- is this the best way to tell stories? Probably not. Yes. But if you, but if you consider that Rachel Weisz has pigs, though, yeah, no, that's, that's true. true. She does have pigs in her farm, and ain't that neat? And then she ki- she nearly chokes one to death because she's a horrible vo- monster. Um, <laughs> she's a bad person. I saw, oh yeah! I saw someone saying it's really sad to see Eve defending this movie. They're coping so hard, which sounds like a you're coping so hard the other really way around. Like a great argument. Just, I feel like that's coping. the immediate thing because you see people in chat. It's like ah, they're biased towards MC Spider Man. Man, you're biased against MC Spider Man. I'm no, sorry. Right. Right. <laughs> I mean, I enjoy the film, but I've been very critical of it this whole time mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. people are just yeah. making I've... arguments when people are just We've making critical arguments like <laughs> when, when people are just presenting arguments as to why it's good and you go oh wow they're coping so hard that's some of the actual <laughs> hardest cope i've ever heard like come but on like, it, I, it feels awkward because it's like it's not cope i really like this movie i'm not sure absolutely that you can talk, and we can identify can many reasons why out of the positions on uh on the writing as well it's like man this is some well, good because, stuff because it is it is often very well written. This film, like yeah, the character writing's really fucking good. So to, I don't know to talk you out of the position, you would have to change the film. You would need and to make present some really compelling arguments for why the character writing isn't good. It should not uh, be news to you, anybody that we value characters like... above everyone else. So if the characters are really good and... in something, you should think that we're gonna probably rate it pretty positively. Well, you saw what happened with the yeah. Suicide Squad. We haven't even gotten to numbers for this film yet. Absolutely, we'll get that to the end. That should be fresh in people's memory. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I guess that actually reminds me a lot of Suicide Squad in that uh, some of the arguments <laughs> are in terms of character gr- character is great, but you know some plot issues obviously with that film. So, but uh, this, you, why are you laughing? Is, I want to know. I've been bringing yeah. up problems all stream. What the fuck? It's like you just haven't been acknowledging them. I'm sorry that I haven't seen your specific things in chat throughout the whole fucking stream. There are two thousand people <laughs> There's watching. Two thousand people here. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, give us your biggest problem with the no, film. No, actually, yes, actually, yes, do that. Go now. on, let's do it. Oh, let's do wait, it. wait, problem. just and it better be one that we haven't already conceded. Yes, or <laughs> or not one that we've not got to yet. That's not allowed either, right? Yeah, that ain't allowed. The biggest thing that we've missed and, and coped over. <laughs> Please state a coping example. Hopefully, we'll uh, we'll temporarily. <laughs> spotlight, here you go. We'll temporarily unshadow ban all of you. <laughs> Grow up, friggin'. Oh, this is how Chad yeah. looks like with. If you unironically use the term cape shit to describe all like superhero films, <laughs> you're dumb. Oh. That is one of those things I hear from people. I'm like, eh, It's like, oh, look at me. I'm an elitist. I think I'm smart because I don't like superhero movies. Yes. 
I like boring films. Hassan would be proud. We're literally asking you to present your argument. <laughs> we haven't banned what? anybody. I haven't banned you. And you're not going to be banned for it. <laughs> what? I've been memeing about this bannable shit for like months now. It's like, oh, good. Fuck off. <laughs> Jesus. So, plot wise, um, we get both the other Peters and then they. Oh, wait, I, was there, I don't know if, would, would Jay and Frankie do anything with someone in chat? I don't know. They haven't yeah. responded yet, though. Well, <laughs> so, I don't know. Oh, they wanted the fucking spotlight. There we go, there we go. MIT girl never gets out of her car. Bomb goes off in Peter's face, and Strange doesn't grab the cube when he puts Peter in the astral room. So first of all, she tries to get out of her car, yeah. but it's locked, he and does. on the yeah. other side, she can't cement get out because the door is blocked I, by I wish wall. to deliver it. Mm-mm. That was wrong. Yeah. Next one. Bomb goes off in Peter's face. It's like, um, he is badly hurt. He talks about how he's got a fucking broken rib. But also, we know that people survived those because that same bomb was thrown at Harry, and he survived it. And he's human. Plus, Green and Goblin didn't want to kill oh, wait, him there. He wanted he to boosted. turn him evil. He was boosted, but still, it didn't kill him. So yeah. I guess all you can complain about is that well, it didn't horribly it also scar went his off... face, but he's got blood in his eye. Didn't one of them go off in um, Toby's face as well? I think it did, and it, it hurt yeah, him Yeah, it did. They it hurt, hurt him yeah. They don't kill you when they yeah, go off right. face. These, yeah. um, these yeah. bombs aren't, like, super deadly, super big bombs. They're yeah. little bombs that do and little And then the bangs. third one, Strange doesn't grab the cube when he puts Peter in the astral room. He tries, it doesn't yeah. work. Yeah, what do you mean? There's a, there's very I, I also, you, this. you typed in, and it mutilated Harry, and question mark and exclamation mark, so we addressed that. I guess you've moved past the first one that you were wrong on. <laughs> and on the third one, he tried to grab it, and it didn't work. And we were critical of that. Honestly, and we were even critical if, of even that. Even if all yeah. of these problems, like even if all of these problems were, does like, this destroy the true, movie? I don't <laughs> think it would take the. I don't think it would take the movie down even a point. Yeah, like these. These Man. are all just like kind of small things that you like. Well, I mean, I don't think. In the scope Most, of everything that's not even in this uh, film. accurate, I don't, I don't, and this is the problem. Um, well, look, if they were, oh, apparently, so. Harry had upgraded the bombs in Spider Man 3, so the ones in the first movie, I guess you didn't use the vaporizing one, but that it didn't vaporize, <laughs> it blew up. It wasn't that oh, yeah, one, it, wasn't it was not a vaporizing bomb. bomb. To be fair, Goblin Ooh, does honestly, we, the vaporizing, it was a vaporizing bombs, bomb, we saw, and Goblin doesn't want to kill Spider Man. We saw the <laughs> Goblin doesn't want to kill doesn't Peter kill in this Peter. scene, he doesn't want to kill him. No. Yeah, he wants to turn him evil. Man, swing and a miss. All right, moving on. <laughs> and and I that do was embarrassing. So oh, I do yeah. get a sense of that with with when I see people being like, "Wow, Longman should be tearing this apart, not praising." I'm like, I think you may be mistaken on what you think are flaws in this film. I've heard a lot of mistakes from a lot of people about what is wrong. I don't know. Talking about flaws in the film, I don't know what. Like, I'm not sure what else. Well, yeah, you're we're biased talking about the was biased against. You're biased towards MCU Spider-Man because you don't agree with my wrong arguments. <laughs> That's kind of how it feels sometimes. Um, and, and there's more film to go. Believe me, we've got more criticism to sorry. come. Did someone just say... Someone just, uh, just, said, just said lol and then in quotes, you're just wrong. We explained thoroughly... <laughs> <laughs> he explained thoroughly all of the reasons. Then end it with, you're just wrong. Like... I might oh. maybe even kind of bring up uh, original Spider-Man grenades, because we, we don't see those vaporizing grenades in this movie, so... We well, don't know if he has just, multiple we, grenades. I think we would have seen a different animation if it were the vaporizing grenades. So it's not yeah. the vaporizing yeah. grenade, you know? Yeah, we, like, he would have been vaporized. Probably. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We've, yeah, we've seen we've seen the explosive ones whenever Harry got his face blown up, like we said, and then so we know that when Spider Man got his first. face blown up in the first movie, yeah, Peter so did absolutely those. nothing to stop Strange from performing the spell. Shake my head. Okay, we're out. Let's let's just carry on now. Yeah. What? <laughs> 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 we, we already fucking discussed <laughs> this. We're just oh, gonna carry okay. on now. It's great. We're gonna carry well, on. Is everyone? Everyone has just come in late. Okay. Well, okay. While we're, while we're talking about fantasy, have you read uh, movie vibe reviews? <laughs> <laughs> By the way, oh, so, so said, your insistence on dunking on chat is probably why your audience is ever shrinking. Uh, it's bigger than it was when it started, and we're never changing that. You guys aren't safe here. I'm sorry. Why? What? What kind of standard is that? That you you can just shit on us? <laughs> we address that. Like we're not allowed to do that anymore. 
The... Have you seen how much people have been complaining that we've not been responding to their arguments? And then we as did, well? and like... now we get in trouble for it. Like the whole, the whole, like, like you know, never people... be critical of your audience thing. It's like that doesn't fly them. here. People were like complaining it's... that we shadow banned them because we weren't responding to their arguments. Like <laughs> the first what, what? time that we did, that like, was wrong, bro. Bro, like I, I feel like I feel like, and I, you know, what? I acknowledge it's probably it's not all this, the same person saying all of this stuff, but I feel like someone's probably there picturing like a world where when we don't immediately acknowledge and just agree with the thing they said, that we are doing something wrong. There's some deep insecurities here. <laughs> well, I, I think I think it's just I just I think it's that they, they they these people haven't conceived of a world in which they're wrong, so they're frustrated. I don't know. It, they're frustratedly just... typing the stuff in chat, and it's like, oh, if only they could, if only they were paying attention and seeing me, they would change their minds. It does it does feel a little bit like that, right? Because you're just like saying like, oh man, you're so fucking wrong. That shit. What a dumb argument. Jesus, you're being inconsistent. And then immediately someone's like, oh, you specifically like present your argument, and then you get like freaked out by that. And then they're but like, it's know. wrong like, to be critical like, of your okay, chat, by the way. It's, it's, yeah, it, and it's so, it's okay that, that you it's okay that you did bad arguments. That's fine. Well, you know what? We've all, it, it, we've it, all it, done them in our know, time. Well, I mean. It, you know, I'll just go, I got feelings too, you know? Like, I don't like when people are shitting on me. Like, that's not fun. So of course you're gonna oh, get man. your arguments addressed. Especially Bring out if you think you have feelings. No, what, you're saying plague doctors don't have feelings? Wow. Wow. How dare you. What a disgusting, despicable thing to say. Jeez. What are you gonna do? Cry? No, you're not. You oh. <laughs> Dude, Fringy's gonna put some dirt in your eye. I was about to say. <laughs> you're gonna so put some on your suit. <laughs> I've got a small critique coming up, chat, like a, a, a like a relatively minor one. So don't worry, we're still going to talk about Time flaws. To cope. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, that was well, a great soundbite. Someone just had a meme. So yeah, uh, well, uh, next up, I guess, is when the the Peters meet, or well, the meet is Pete. Yeah. Don't talk about Peters meet. Oh, I was, was just a few seconds away from that joke. Um, you gotta be quicker. Quick one. Very nicely done, quick. too. The... Really around here. No <laughs> sleeping around here. Uh, Ned and MJ give them a big ol' hug flumes first, and then they're like, there are other people here, and I, I kind of enjoy that Tom is just so fucking stressed out right now that even seeing them, he's just like, he almost thinks they're gonna be antagonistic in some way. Uh, mm. cause he's just so stressed the fuck out. And... Yeah. Uh, one of the first things Andrew tries to do is explain that they're like a, a good source of help here that they've happened to it too, and then Tom immediately is just like, please don't tell me you know what I'm going through. And, oh, Andrew's uh, face when he says that. Mm. To be fair, yeah, all of their Andrew, faces in the scene. Just, yeah. Oof. Fucking Andrew carries that scene. I love Andrew in that scene. It's my favorite scene of the movie. I'm, I, I'm, it, I'm willing to see that he was great. I ain't letting it stand that he carried the scene. I think all three of them brought that scene up to exactly where it was. Yeah. Yep. Um, I feel like to say any... To say any Spider-Man like, stole the show when all three of them are on screen, you just have to ignore the other two. Like, And I can I, understand anyone like focusing on their favorite Spider-Man. But just I because you are, I've seen a lot of that doesn't mean they stole the show. A lot of people are saying think, Andrew like, Garfield oh. has stole it from the other two, but I just don't agree. Uh, and ironically, I, I keep seeing people say, "Oh yeah, my favorite Spider-Man um, stole the show," and that proves that they are the best. It's like I think you were paying attention to them because they were your favorite. <laughs> Probably. Like, well, here's the thing: like I never watched the uh, Amazing Spider-Man movies. I never did, but that's why I was so surprised by how much I enjoyed Andrew Garfield on this movie. Like I was like, "God damn." he did so well considering the movies he came out of so i was just uh, probably the low expectations probably added to my uh, surprise of how well he works in this movie so well i already knew he was a really good actor and so i was, but i knew all three of them were so i was just happy to watch them do their thing yeah all three of yeah. them are phenomenal in this like like age off for something you need it, it almost all three of them stole the show and shared it amongst and themselves so green goblin <laughs> one for all and all for one <laughs> Probably a hot take, but I, I kind of felt that Toby was a little tired. Kind of like he wasn't fully fully into it. I think, in I think it was perfect. I, I think his tone yeah. with his experience and his delivery, especially how it paired with the other two, was just spot he, on. Was fucking brilliant. I think he, I think he came he really across as a very wise and elder Spider-Man that was trying to be more Definitely. shepherding of the other two. 
Yeah, I, 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 I like the and Elder Spider, the Oracle. Yes, they could have easily they could have easily done the kind of spry jokey was Spider-Man for all three of them. But I did I did appreciate that they kind of accentuated the difference between all three Spider-Man. Yeah, That's actually was was pretty cool. They're because, all unique. Yeah, you get the sort of spry, sort of uh, excitable Gar Andrew Garfield with a kind of a dark a dark streak underneath, and then you got the sort of really really currently emotionally just massacred Tom Holland Spider-Man right now, and then you have the sort of you know he's been through a lot of stuff so you can kind of see he's wiser but also got some got some hurt underneath uh sort of toby but i don't know i, I of all of the three i always definitely kind of felt that toby was a little little over it but i don't know it worked I, for the I role i think it's just because his performance called for the least sort of um it's just the most subtle energy the i suppose yeah he's, yeah he's too. Too that. his performance is yeah, it's just a his, he feels, his doesn't um, call for the same stuff as the other as as the other two. Like you got uh, Holland's one has a significant point in his life, but still so much of his life left. Garfield is like feels to me that he's uh, he's been Love through so much, Garfield. but still has so much to go and so much to prove. While Toby's feels like he's complete, and he's seeing these other two who are still yeah. in their journeys. Um, I think I think that's accentuated more so than in any other moment than in the moment where Toby, um, I guess if we do skip ahead, where he uh, stops Tom, and you just see his face and all of those emotions are in the face. It's like you you don't want to do this, man. Yeah, you know, you know what the right thing to do here is. We've we've talked about mm -hmm. this. We know what's happening here. He is he is complete Spider Man. He's Spider Man who's finished all his arcs. Yeah, and he's not and even. Now he's yeah, just helping he's not, other Spider Man make the right decision. And he's not ordering <laughs> Tom to do anything. He just knows he's going to make the right decision if he. Pauses him here, stops him from making that final yeah. decision. We'll talk about that a whole bunch. We'll get there. It's, but uh, yeah, the, keeping those things in mind, it, it informs a lot of everything they all say to each other as well. <laughs> my Aunt May and girlfriend are still alive, losers, Lamau. <laughs> oh, yeah, the the kind of monologue that Andrew hey, has. Well, I think it's an assumption that his Aunt May is still alive. When uh, Tom says that, like, you don't know what I'm feeling, I, and then, like, you kind of see that, like you said, that glimpse from Andrew, and then when he gets into the, like, kind of, kind of, like, starts opening up and says that there was something special for him, and that he couldn't save her, and, like, there's so much unsaid, but it's all just said on his face. I thought that was, like, yeah. oh, God, like, that was just really, really, really powerful, some of the best stuff, I and I I love, I've, whatever I've seen of Andrew, I think I've he's done really good, but that was, like, Damn, he does so much with so little. Like it wasn't bad writing, but it was very. It was he doesn't get into too many details. But I was really happy with that, and then how it pays off later. I was like really I think the surprised perfect, how well that worked. The perfect test for this is like, um, if you hadn't seen the Amazing Spider-Man movies, would the payoff where he saves MJ still hit it strong? I think it probably I think would. It does. Um, for me, I think it's. I don't know. It hits way stronger having seen that movie, which is funny for me to think about. <laughs> well, yes, I, yeah. I, I, I'll, I'll clarify. I never watched the movies. I did see the scene with uh, Gwen Stacy, though, so I, I know what happens, obviously. Mm -hmm. But like having not had a really strong emotional investment in the movies, because not really even watching the full things, having watched reviews and stuff like that. I think I watched a YMS or something like that. But like not having really truly experienced or been attached to them, the fact that Andrew stood out so strongly was very surprising. Uh, to me, considering how how I expected that to be the worst stuff, I expected Electra to be cringe. I expected all that stuff to be really bad, but I was like, "Wow, that is this actually works way better than I thought it would." So I'm not farting. I'm squeezing mayonnaise. If you no, can no, hear that, no, that's okay. I'm okay with you. <laughs> is that what they're calling it? That. that. <laughs> Ew. I don't know. I think I'd prefer if you were farting. Do you not like mayonnaise, Friggy? I really. What if don't I was? Like what if I was farting mayonnaise? No. I mean that's nice. That that seems like yellowish. in liquid form. That's not farting. That's shotting. <laughs> no, that's just that's just no. That there's there's no there's no Fucking fart. Fine. There's what no if I gas. Was farting I mayonnaise gas. <laughs> I don't know what. Oh, oh my goodness gracious! Is this a World War One battlefield? What is this? How hot would that have to be? Like, what is mayonnaise's boiling point? How hot? I don't oh, know. Yeah, it it'd probably it just, just be fart temperature, temperature, I suppose. Would it be? Yeah. I so I think it'd be I really hot. It. I doubt it. I would have to be mayonnaise gas. Rags, you do understand that, like, fart gas is not the same as, like, water vapor, right? They have different boiling points. 
Yeah. There Are we, we talking go. about the boiling points of farts? I'm talking oh, I, about the boiling think, points um, of, uh, of, of mayonnaise. I think the question we <laughs> have to ask here about. is mayonnaise... I think the, the important question we need to ask here is, is mayonnaise gas literally just um, mayonnaise that has uh, evaporated into gas? Or is it something else? Hmm. Is it just mayonnaise flavored gas? Um, but if it was ma flavored, I don't... It would it, so then it's not mayonnaise. It would be like some other compound. Yeah. Well, so does mayonnaise, mayonnaise even stay mayonnaise when you when you boil it into a gas? Um, I figure it would probably. Or or would it like div divide into its component parts or something? What what is mayonnaise like? What's it made out of? Uh, ninety percent vegetable oil. Okay, so what is vegetable oil's boiling point? Uh, so I, I I put the answer in the chat, so that's five okay. seventy degrees. Fahrenheit. This is the Ray Bradbury story we never got. Five seventy degrees Fahrenheit. So like, <laughs> that, so you 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 would need an ass that is as hot as an oven to. Have oh, so it. I could do it. I've I've got one of those. <laughs> an oven, man. That would like. I feel like that would set all your clothes on fire constantly. Your underpants would be on fire all the time. Oh, I get them made specially for my epically hot dump truck. Right. So, Spider-Man, doing this. Welcome yeah, we back. Recover. If you've just Total. tuned in, Total <laughs> shift much. <laughs> um. Uh, but yeah, so one of the first things Tom tells the others is, uh, "These guys are from your world, right? So you deal with them. If you kill them, that's on you. I'm done." Yeah. Uh, very it's close like, to pressing the button. And so they explain. Their stories, what led them to their darkest moments, and how they press came the mayonnaise back button. It's the mayonnaise button. It's like pressing the Whopper button. Um, We're really, really off, off. <laughs> now, aren't we? The uh, what, what? What? Andrew says the. Um, I tried to go on because I know that's what she would have wanted, but at some point I stopped pulling my punches. I got bitter. I don't want you to end up yeah. like me. I was like, oh shit. Yeah, that was really hard. I love I Good that shit. whole thing was like I, I it's weird because I really really wanted to um be in on the scene with Aunt Megan. I'm not gonna bring that up again, but that didn't hit me. But the scene hit me really hard. I was like fully in on Andrew, and I've only seen him on screen for like what five ten minutes at this point. Mm -hmm. I was very surprised. Just that that writing, that subtle, all the things that were unspoken. I think really made this performance by Andrew. Really, really top tier in my in my book. Um, John John Watts should make Amazing Spider Man three. Honestly, I mean, I'd be down yeah. for it. I'd be down for that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. This kind of well, makes me I mean, you know, what, you know, what would be even lovely. fucking spicier take is if um is if I were to say John Watts should make um Spider Man, Spider -Man 4. four, the Raby one. Um, yeah. Oh, you. But then it wouldn't be Raby Spider Man four. Right oh, imagine, yeah, imagine how. <laughs> No, what well, would even more to happen? <laughs> I would be very excited to see that film. Well, so something that... um, I think. Well, I think I would be very excited to see Sam Raimi Spider Man Four. I would be very excited to see John Watts make Raimi Spider Man Four. But I think I'd be most excited to see them co-do it together. Well, you know when Multiverse of Madness turns out to be god awful, I'm assuming when, no nobody's going to blame Sam Raimi. Everyone's going to blame the studio. No, it'll be the studio's fault. Yeah, because yeah. they. Well, apparently they well, they started shooting without well. Um, well, this film did that, but it, this is the exception. But uh, apparently, they didn't have the third act sorted out when they started shooting that. that one. I think based on based on the amount that's crammed into this movie, that was almost certainly all crammed in there by studios who wanted this stuff there, and how good it turned out. And based on how poorly uh, Spider Man Three turned out, I think we can just fairly confidently say, especially if Multiverse of Madness is terrible, it'll be even more confirmation that. Sam Raimi, yeah, while cool. a talented director, is probably not very good at working under studio limitations. Whereas John Watts, I think, is excellent at working under studio limitations. Interesting. Yeah. That's the less controversial. Yeah, I, I think that's the. Exactly <laughs> what I thought you were going to say. Well, like, yeah. unless people want to spend, defend Spider Man 3, which currently is our only piece of evidence, what did you think I was going to say, Fringy? I thought you were going to say that John Watts is a better director <clears throat> than Sam Raimi. 
Uh, I think they have different Ooh. skill sets. Yeah. See that? Yeah, because like, <laughs> that's uh, yeah. that. that would I know be which one I prefer. Spicy take. Yeah, you prefer Sam Raimi. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, 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 yeah. No, it's I also just Don Watts, uh, but <laughs> like, um, I I do think that like yeah, I I think it's pretty clear that like. What the, the studio limitations? What were the studio limitations for Spider-Man Three? That it had to have Venom in it. It had to have Venom. That was the limitation. Oh, what a fucking easy limitation to deal well, with. So that's yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's just something that's been talked about. This film had five villains. That one had three, and it didn't even need to have three. It just needed Venom. Um, yeah, but he wanted Sandman and Harry uh, Green Goblin, so he put Venom in as well. Um, but even with all three, it could have worked because it worked here. Though maybe you can make the argument that these ones rely on a level of history and establishment that we already well, they, have. They also rely um, on a shared um, purpose for being there. They, they you know, there's true. a shared thing That's between true. them. Whereas That's if uh, if you want to do like if you don't have that, then you've got to set up all the villains individually. Mm -hmm. um, well, I, so, so yeah, there are different circumstances, just, but yeah, holy shit, dude! Like, I had to put Venom in my film. It's not like. It, it, it's it's not bad because of studio interference, right? Well, it, it sucks that the limitation was imposed, but you could have made it work. I have well, to especially yeah. considering all the wrong that with that, that has nothing to do with Venom. Well, like, oh, yeah, I, I agree, right? Yeah, there's loads wrong with that film that Venom has like, exactly, yeah. yeah, nothing to do with, yeah, so that um, would have been bad, Venom or not. So, but like, what was that? How could you say, like, not like Spider Man 3, but like No Way Home? It's like. Well, oh, because uh, it's a better film. Good. It's, it's a much, much better, better film. film. Yeah. Pay attention it's... with your eyes and ears. It's so awkward it's like, to me. Glad like, I could clear that how, up. How many times have <laughs> seen like MCU shill stuff in there when it's like, dude, haven't we spent like, you know, we the think last, most of it's like crap? nine months just shitting yeah, on the you, MCU for real? Like... Like we don't even want to watch the shows because I like I don't want to watch the shows for the most part because I just fucking hate them. Yeah. I legit don't think that there was there's been a good film like a good film since it's, like it's just Ragnarok. <laughs> like I'm these, not even sure the Infinity War counts. These people, well, um, well, Ragnarok has issues, but like the thing is, yeah, um, does, I think I that these people's only defense against like seeing MCU Spider Man praised is to just dismiss the people praising as MCU shills. I like, guess, but like, sorry, I man. The, it was really. The, I mean, I find this one odd so, because they're saying like, "How could you like it?" It's like, dude, everyone in our sphere pretty much likes it except Shad and Jay Longbone, from what I've gathered so far. Mm -hmm. Because this is a ninety-nine percent like, on Rotten getting... Tomatoes. That's nuts. I mean, that's nuts. Really when like I found it. out Gary liked it, I was like, "That's the ultimate test." He fucking hates MCU Spider-Man. Like, oh yeah, I did. And if he's liking it, like you know, you know that there's something going on in this film that's can I at least say special. Something that resonates at the very least. Yeah. And um, that's not an argument for how it's good. That's just an argument for, like, you must have noticed, like, this is getting liked more so than Far From Home and Homecoming got. Mm -hmm. I've got, I've yeah. heard more praise for this film than the other two MCs. Definitely heard more. Yeah. yeah. Definitely heard more for this. And, like, over the course of this conversation, like, it's gone up for me. And I, I uh, friends I'm like it is the single film. most useless thing I've ever heard. It's the the point being if made we're saying is, that a lot of people like it, then it's that's not the, <laughs> the point being made is not that people like it so it's good or anything like that. I don't know what like I even accounted for that, and they still said that was my point. Maybe they'd already typed that out by the time that they they. But heard it wasn't that. my point um, to begin know. with because I was responding directly to people being like, "How could you like this?" It's like I mean, fucking everybody does. I don't know why that's shocking to you. I don't even know that that's really like much of a point at all. How could you? It's, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, it's like, how could how could you like this? Um, people like the Snyder Cut. Yeah. <laughs> and funnily <laughs> enough, the I mean, MCU shill argument. This is basically like the same argument from the opposite side of the coin. Where if you don't like Snyder Cut, you're an MCU shill. If you do like, um, if you do like this version of Spider Man, you're an MCU shill. You just can't win either way. Dude, like all I guess, I guess the lesson the whole of whole the story is if you're from, right, yeah. you're an MCU shill. I don't know. It's, it's, <laughs> it's console war arguments from like ten years ago. Yeah. Where if you ever said a single thing positive about PlayStation, you were a PlayStation fanboy. You ever said a positive thing about Xbox, 
then you're an Xbox fanboy and people would do these things like one day and then flip the next because it's not there's not really any interest in the arguments. It's just the position itself. Get better arguments. Yeah, um which I well we'll probably just push on, you know? Um Yeah. Let's do it. So we got uh he well, he says that and then we get from um Raimi Peter, which I, I adore the way that he delivers this. The I was I was thinking about this more because funnily enough, I was in a conversation with someone being very critical about this film, and the more I was talking about this scene, the more I was liking it when thinking about what it means with listening to everyone say their, their things. And um when uh, Toby explains his perception of that night with uh, Uncle Ben's killer in the first film. He specifically says, like, I wanted him dead, and I got what I wanted. Like, he doesn't he doesn't bother clarifying with them whether or not he killed him, because that's not the point. It's that that person died, that's what he wanted, and that didn't make things better. Um, yeah. And it's, yeah, it's so, like... Thing. Oh, so much to think about that he had that in his head for such a long time, like, then that's what's driving him. Like, he doesn't want these people dead, but you gotta stop them. Um, and he said it took time to get through that darkness, and yeah, you just get Holland saying, I wanna kill him, I wanna tear him apart, I can still hear his voice. And I was just thinking to myself, like, man, Green Goblin really has, like, solidified himself, and he was a fucking cameo in someone else's franchise. Like, He's one of the best MCU villains. I love Green Elf. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> love me some Green Elf. Um, There's some Green Elf pussy. No. Yeah, and he said that May died for nothing, and um, they clarify the great power, great responsibility, which Peter's telling them she was saying that even when she was dying. And then they said maybe she didn't die for nothing. Because that yeah. message is super yeah. important, as well as what it meant that she died in that scenario. Um, which is the the pickup he needs at least for getting on with this challenge of getting these villains cured. Um, and so they have all of the tools they had from the fabricator, but they're just damaged. He needs to. Uh, Holland's going to repair Sandman's one and Electro's one, while the serums will be made. The formulas, rather, like, solutions will be made by the other Spider-Men for their respective villains. Uh, Andrew Garfield argues that he's made the formula before. And Toby says that um, he'd been thinking about it for a long time. And I assume we're supposed to gather that he's always regretted that he could never save Norman. Or uh, mm -hmm. his son with getting an anti-serum and so, or anti-formula. And so he actually did look into it, I, I guess, is what they're trying to say. Which makes sense. There's something to work with and there. when Garfield says that he's got it when he just says, oh, yeah, I got the serum like it's almost like he's shocked. Everyone just says, yeah, like they believe him. They they, they trust him with that. Um, do you uh -oh. guys think it's a tad contrived that they have all the tools they need to make this stuff in the high school lab in the laboratory? Yeah, um, yeah. Um, yeah. Well, that, especially with the serum like, OK, you just need like some normal ass stuff that's just in here that's kind of yeah. weird the, the i, I think it was like something special you need for that i thought so too yeah the, I, I think it's a little bit extreme i think they what need do, what do yeah. they what do they make from scratch and what is it that they still so have they make, from um from, from the the last time that they repair well so the repair ones i'm willing to give them for sci-fi i still don't like it that much but i'm willing to give it to them um they make the formulas from scratch so dr connor's and dr osborne formulas mm -hmm. let's see um, I, mean, not, we, I feel like I feel like if I'd ever studied any kind of chemistry, I'd be able to like have a more a more a happier or an angrier reaction about that. As in, like, yeah, um, I don't know, I don't know what how how like I how much he, of chemistry is having resources and how much of chemistry is knowing well, what you can combine for need, certain results. Surely they don't have the chemicals they need there at a school laboratory. It, feel, yeah. it feels <laughs> like they would have when you to. Consider Oscorp made this, like this stuff, and they're a super multi-gajillion dollar umbrella yeah. level pharmacy. And maybe the yeah. solution and this is... is a shopping list, and then Toby and Andrew go get the those things while Holland has a moment yeah. with yeah. MJ or something. Yeah, yeah, you could split them up. Toby and uh, you know Andrew, they can have a back and forth, and you can have MJ and Peter get time. But there's they a could lot even of break do, into but... like a high end lab, you know, somewhere. Mm -hmm. Something like that. I just getting enrolled from a high school is like okay, all right then. 
I was lucky, I guess. It's all there. That can be in the four hour cut that we get to see. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, something else I want to highlight, this is not a huge deal, but it's something I noticed, is that um, Andrew Garfield Spider-Man does reference Connors by name, but we don't really get a reaction from Toby, despite Connors being a mentor figure to him in his series of films, so I just found that a bit odd that there wasn't even like a look of like, oh, that's, Doc that's Connors fair, went bad. Actually, yeah. That's something they might have missed. Because, yeah, um, something I was looking out for. He had for. a good relationship with Dr. Connors in the Raimi trilogy. Yeah, it's why I was I was kind of looking forward to him turning into the lizard eventually in those films if they had gotten more sequels because I think that would have been a good setup. Yeah, and how much fun would it have been if it wasn't really fully addressed other than Toby giving him a huge shock and like almost disgust look? Like the fuck, it was caught as it turns into that. Yeah, that would have been great. And why is he British now? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It's the it's like being lizard. I don't know. Maybe it comes with the lizard territory. Does he, ever say, does he ever say his full name, or does he just say Doctor Connors? Because like, I, don't know, I think he does say. I think I think he says Connors or Doctor Connors. But there might be enough. You, you know, it's one of those things where because we're dealing with multiple Peter yeah, Parkers, I'm not sure. Assumption there. I'm not sure what I would assume if I was in that situation and someone said Doctor Connors. If I would assume it's their version of. The same Dr. Khan as I know, or if I would assume well, it was different, I don't know. And someone has highlighted there's a chance it could have happened in Toby's universe, and so that's mundane information to him, but I think it deserves an acknowledgement of some kind, right? That's true. Yeah, I think so. Um, yeah, there's just that moment where, so they're all building their things, and then Ned is like, Peter, and they all go, yeah, yeah, and he goes, Peter Parker? <laughs> they go, yeah, all of us. Peter, Peter. Peter. Parker, yeah. yeah. <laughs> this I feel yeah. like I feel like that's the first joke that you've really not done justice. What do you mean? I don't you know. Mean, the the delivery like Mahler's is, done is, justice, or is very different in the movie, and I think it's it's a lot funnier in the in the movie the way they actually I, deliver it. I don't know how to do. Yeah, the Mahler wasn't as good as the yeah. Mahler wasn't yeah. as good um, as the the actual movie. The, oh, I no, got it. More so, as in more so, yeah. it's delivered with different lines. Big like, fan. Um, it's like well, there's more context to it. Are it's you like asking Peter... Mola to do all three voices? Like, yes. All at once? <laughs> was the, um, it's like uh, it's more so, you know, kind of Peter. Well, when, which Peter? You know, Peter. Uh, fuck, how do I do this? Uh, Peter. P P P Peter Parker. Uh, no, that's still a shit uh, job as well. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> um. Oh yeah, they have their um. The the web the web fluid moment, which I think everybody assumed would happen, uh, we're just waiting for it. But the uh, I I love what they do with with Andrew's reaction, where the the move the scene is kind of moving just forward, and uh, after he shows it's coming out of his arms, you just get this shot of him slowly moving toward it, going, "How on earth is that even?" And then it just goes to the next thing, like he's fully enthralled by it, but he doesn't get any answers. It's neat. Yeah, I do, they do a pretty good job of addressing all the major differences between the Spider-Mans and kind of natural reactions between them. Like the the natural web is like, what the hell is that all about, you know? Because the other two had to create the devices. So I, I do like those little interactions. It's kind of fan service, but it is also kind of... I wonder uh, about that. I don't, I don't know why we call it fan service when it's like, why in the world wouldn't they talk about that? That's like almost... Yeah. They have to talk about that, right? Because that's like a, a big difference between their approaches. Yeah, it, I guess it, it's it, possible they would just never notice that he's doing that the whole time, and they would assume he has web shooters. But well, they still, see it, like, right? The fact, <clears throat> well, like if um if they just got into the final fight and they'd never mentioned like web fluid, I guess they could have um never realized that he's just shooting it straight out of his arms instead of uh, shooting it from web shooters. Like they could have just never looked at him closely enough to see that. Yeah, I guess I was arguing so that, that they like, do. Uh, in the, like, well, I guess, yeah, it would just be up to you as a writer at that point. Yeah, like, they didn't need to do all the kind of interactions between the Spider-Man, uh, but at the same time, it does kind of solidify the world a bit and kind yeah. of make more sense, because they would be very curious about each other. Of course they would be. They'd want to know, you know, how they succeeded, how they failed, uh, what their, you know, how different their lives turned out. It'd be incredibly fascinating to find out uh, different variants of you and parallel universes and how it turned out, especially if you were all superheroes. So, oh, yeah, it'd be really interesting uh, to see how any character reacts in that situation to, 
as well, really. Like, yeah. you know, what would happen if or if Doctor Strange met two other Doctor Strangers from different universes? Well, yeah, I guess we're going to be seeing that happen in this movie. That's a good point. I've not even realized. I didn't even realize that. Yeah. I was I was picturing just like you know a world where we'd had three Doctor Strange franchi franchises all of them. <laughs> Um, it's like, you know, let's, let's imagine that Doctor Strange is the most popular like Marvel superhero, and he was the one who was getting 2002 movie, 2000, whenever <laughs> Amazing Spider-Man came out. The, uh, the the probably my favorite joke of the of the set of that scene is probably the end one where they go because they're all ready to go, and I think um, he's like, "Well, expect disappointment, and you won't be." Done. And she goes, "No, we're gonna kick some ass." And then Toby's like, cure. Mm -hmm. We're gonna cure, <laughs> cure some cure ass. Some ass. <laughs> gonna give a nice gap. And then Dad just goes, cure that ass. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's so awkward. I really liked Ned in this a lot. He was great. Yeah. yeah. It was really good delivery. Cure that ass. I, I hope this gets lots of roles for, well, all of them, to be honest. But uh, him in particular, because I've, I've never seen him in anything else, I guess. I don't know, he, he might be very busy, but I've just never seen him in anything else, Ned. And that That's was work. funny. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, that was funny. Yes. <laughs> that's why we. That's why we all laughed when we said it. Yeah. Like, yeah, that's why we were all laughing. We could explain <laughs> the joke, but I feel like that kind of ruins it. But I don't know. Like, just no, I refuse. All right. Um. Yeah, and so then we get to the scene, the wonderful scene that loads people pick for their favorite, where the three Spidermans are just having a chat about their exploits in the past. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the chemistry is really electric. Yeah, they have really good chemistry together. It's oh, yeah. insane. Fantastic. I just wanted them to talk for like ten more minutes. And it's like, no, go away, yeah. bad guys. Someone talk. What's for the craziest our thing you ever fought? Oh, I, I fought like a like a, a like a black alien goo thing. It's like, yeah, I fought <laughs> an alien in space and on Earth. He's purple. Man, I want to fight an alien. <laughs> <laughs> the fact that I'm just stuck on the fact that you fought him on Earth and in space. In space. <laughs> <laughs> and oh man, I fought like a Russian guy in a mechanical oh. rhino suit. Yeah, and it's someone in chat said Rags liked Ned. Lol, everyone on Friday Night Tight said Ned was the worst part. EFAP has gone insane carrying this movie. Okay. Disagreements are allowed, uh, you know. I, uh, yeah, even all the people well, on Friday Night Tights would be Friday like, it's Nights fine. The, 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 you felt like Ned. Why? I don't know why it would, it would be insane to like Ned. I, I don't know. Did they <laughs> say he was a bad character or did they just say that they don't like him? If they just didn't find his stuff funny, that's that's fine. You know, I, I, Dude, when I, he gets I, the cloak, <laughs> he looks so great. Well, the cloak. someone else uh, Mr. Cloak, what, sir. wanted us to mention as well him finding out that the best friend of Peter goes nuts in certain universes and becomes yeah. a supervillain. He's like, I'm oh, yeah. not going to become a supervillain. And he has this like super awkward <laughs> smile. <laughs> like, He's proud of himself for not being evil. Considering we know who he is. <laughs> yeah. Wait, well, how, how do you mean? Ned also goes crazy. Yep. Uh, like he's, he's the hobgoblin. Hob yep. yeah. yeah. So Ned does go crazy. Oh, well, I'm guessing in this uh, version he's not gonna, but yeah. It's... No, I, I, again, I, I hope that we'd never see them again. Um, not because okay. I don't like them, but just... S someone but was just we'll like, back in time. they probably don't like him because he's not white. All right, can we, everyone on both chill out. They probably didn't Let's find see. him funny. They probably I find him know. to be annoying. <laughs> relax. That's totally fine. Okay. We like Ned. That's, well... Yeah. I like Ned. I, I can, I can I empathize like with any lot. person who doesn't like Ned. I can see how I it would be very easy to be annoyed by him, right? I, I mean, I don't know. Like, he seems really inoffensive to me. He's just a um, bit of a goopster. Okay. I think, I think, I, I guess I can see it with pretty much any comic relief character that as soon as you yeah, don't like their true, jokes, true. they just become a fucking irritation that you wish would yeah, go away. Yeah. It's the challenge of comedy, right? Like, something that's bad that's trying to be really intelligent and smart, that's, like, hilarious, but bad comedy just sucks. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, uh, I, I was just amused by him, I care about him, and, um, if, he, if we don't see him again, then so be it. He was a, he was a fun addition to the trilogy. Yeah. Well, yeah. yeah, I liked him. I, liked I him believe that they're best friends. Yeah. That's I do. Oh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Fun, I really do believe that they're best friends. Oh, dude, their their last moments together are quite uh, sad as well. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, 
But yeah, they're asking him to explain his uh his web that he's like it's like breathing. I, I, just, I just I just I don't do breathing. I just do it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. It uh, it's funny is that when I squirt. When he like works his way through that explanation, which again the dialogue feels so genuine, it just cuts to Andrew and just goes, Wow. Yeah. <laughs> like, wow. <laughs> <laughs> And they both girls like I'm. I'm not like like teasing or anything. I was, I was just weird. Like I don't know how, yeah. how it works. Well, they're doing. Like, we obviously want to know how it works. <laughs> yeah, like like Tom says that. Then uh, Andrew is like, oh, I just you know, it just doesn't work. I think it's awesome. Like you know, just trying to reassure them. <laughs> and that dynamic is uh, it's just not typically. I don't even know. We've seen it before in like the MCU, which is all about teaming up. Uh, all these different people in the yeah, same people universe. Yeah, people who are the same person from different universes talking to each other. Not yeah. just that, but the respect the, the, the they dynamic, have for yeah. each other and the yeah, yeah, they don't they <laughs> don't want to hurt each other's feelings, but they, they are aware that they could. Like, yeah. there's a, it's an interesting. Mm. You're right um, because they do immediately get along, whereas other times they typically fight when people meet each other for the first time. Yeah, well, or you have get conflict of some um, kind. Tony's ego will clash with pretty much every character you ever meet met in the MCU. Uh, Steve is usually like Steve Rogers is oftentimes like you know all business, like you know making sure mm -hmm. we get everything right. You know, really having just fun times and 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 uh, whenever other people met each other. Like if Captain Marvel meets Spider Man, there's just like nothing there. Who cares? Uh, but well, these yeah, three... what do they have that's interesting? To say? Park, can you got something for me? Yeah. Well, after I feel this, like I, I almost just want a full first. film with uh, all three of them just bouncing off each other for two hours. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Well, four hour spot. cut. Four hour cut. <laughs> And again, so just yeah. I'm playing up as much as I can. The delivery is so good. Uh, these lines. The way that like uh, they all get them out, and for example, when he's like trying to argue why he's interested, and he's um, because I run out of webs all the time, and it's a hassle. Hassle. Like, the way that he delivers that. <laughs> I, you know, over, I, I uh, have that too. Oh, <laughs> why existential crisis? <laughs> I mean, don't get me started. Oh yeah, totally yeah. get it. <laughs> yeah. we, we've skipped over um, over Tom asking, the webs come out of, out of anywhere else. Yeah, the <laughs> come out of your come out of other places. <laughs> and just the fact that like, Toby's there, just like, hey, you're amazing, all right? You're amazing. So I think so, yeah, I needed that. Uh, I needed to hear that. Uh, that Andrew's, like, Andrew's face is so valuable in that moment. Yes, it is. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, then, and then you just know that everyone in the cinema is picturing Spider Man swinging through the city <laughs> from his dick. <laughs> Like, <laughs> you're, in a, you're in a room of people well, having now I am. that experience. Now I am, yeah. What like, would Jay, you know, Jameson say? Well, my, my favorite part of, of that is that I know for a fact, I'm, I'm one hundred, I'm, I know that I've drawn that exact image for uh, Champ Tough. <laughs> well, it's going to get drawn now, whenever we you do know, it. It was already been drawn. It was, it drawn. was already drawn. drawn. Oh, was it? I can't remember that. No, not Champ Tough, uh, TKO, before Champ Tough. I got that. See, that sounds like something I wouldn't forget, but I can't quite yeah. remember. And I can't, yeah, because I don't, I don't forget the the flying, the poop thing that shot off into yeah. space. Jay, are you sure you drew Spider Man oh, yeah, swinging sure through the city? Spider Man swinging through the it city. It does sound stop. like a Jay thing. To oh, draw. Okay. <laughs> all right. <laughs> that I was like making sure you weren't maybe confusing that with with something else potentially. Well, but. I'm less sure that it was with you. I'm pretty sure that it was, but, but maybe sure this that was happened. A yeah, I'm glad that you have another group of friends where that sort of thing is acceptable. Mm -hmm. Oh, I if I if it's not acceptable, we are not friends. Yeah, yeah, that's true. <laughs> All my friends, yeah, we're, we we understand. You know, we're on that level. Um, I really enjoyed the uh, the interactions between the Spider Men, but I did kind of feel a little bit of a groan coming on when the whole "You're amazing." You're amazing because he's the amazing Spider Man. I was like, uh, that's a little on the nose, but I'll I mean, let it, it pass, just, I guess. But... It means a lot more than just that as a reference. It's, it's literally it like giving Andrew Garfield what he deserves, meaning, yeah. which is recognition as a, as a great yeah. element of Spider Man, the amazing Spider Man movies that were terrible. Yeah, stop the negative self talk. You know, you gotta, you know, it's not your. Again, yeah, it, is, it is it is goodwill hunting. It's it's not your fault. That's what that whole scene is. It's I, I not do your really fault. love that a huge aspect of their characters is just reassuring each other emotionally. I can't, cool. yeah. I'm not sure. There's another character. There's another scene that I I have that uh, thought for, but it's not springing to mind which scene it is. What's another? 
but they they because they, they do just reassure each other emotionally not like i really like that um as a just a as a character dynamic between them because was it in the lab see. i think in the lab would they talk about how cool the stuff they're working on was or um maybe no that was on the that was on the scaffolding when he tells him that no 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 i know that but joe was saying there was another instance of that i don't know i don't know but <sighs> maybe i don't know maybe i am thinking of that scene but i don't know well um... oh, oh yeah we skipped over the back the, the, one of the best jokes in the movie you okay <laughs> oh it's my back <laughs> from all the all the swinging toby's back yeah and was, then uh, they crack his back, and it's like, man, yeah, it'd be really handy to have another Spider-Man to do that, because nobody else is strong enough to do that for you. By the way, the the amount of... Uh, look, the fangirls are going to be very happy with uh, two um, fully grown Spider-Man just getting very close, just... Um, humping. Hunging, humping. Doing a hump. Wait, hump. <laughs> fangirls. Oh, yeah. Uh, uh, pardon my uh, prejudice. And um, everyone. And people. Yeah, and I think everyone. I think goes. everyone, regardless of their fanery or girliness, are gonna. Fun fact: Andrew that. Garfield was the first man I was attracted to as Spider Man. That was <laughs> Spider Andrew Garfield as Spider Man was like, oh, I like men. Cool, that's neat. Maybe you just like superheroes. Maybe. Yeah. Do you like? No, are, I think. You, I, sure think he's, I think he's the. I think he's the only. Um, I don't know. I think he's one of the only superheroes where I've thought, wow, that guy's real hot. Fair enough. What are the, any others on that list? Willem Dafoe. Wait, the, I'm not the, sure. None of none, none springing sorry, to mind. The first or the only? No, the first. Oh. Uh, what? You, so when you watch like Wolverine, you weren't like, hey, this is like. I believe you, Jay, just for the record. Male. <laughs> well, I don't know. No, because I mean, he's not really my type, first of all. But like, secondly. Ah, okay. um, I, well, I was like thirteen when when that movie came out, so I was I was getting into my whole I, oh I feel attraction now that's neat. Hang on, when did that movie come out? That uh, two thousand twelve. Oh yeah, yeah, I would have been. Hang on, let's. God, I love my shitty like that. I have encyclopedic memory of like when films and games came out. But if you ask me for like yeah, other things, I, I got I, jack shits. <laughs> I'd recently turned thirteen when that movie came out. I feel like I feel like that's a good good age for your first first uh, attraction a to a Spider man. Man romance. Yeah, your first Spider Man romance. <laughs> so anyway, anyway, yeah. Um, Mayonnaise farts. They've got the yeah, the, the, the cures are scattered around the Statue of Liberty's scaffolding area where they're currently attaching a Captain America shield to a. Uh, the statue. Um, how how do you feel about the fact they're doing that? By the way, I don't know. I, I mean, I just, uh, I just don't buy that at all. Like, I don't, I don't like it. They're modifying the Statue of Liberty to commemorate Captain. Like, I feel like if Captain America is getting wrong, a monument, you know, it'll be his own <laughs> monument. Own, not the, sta yeah, well, yeah, the Statue of Liberty is the not about. He wouldn't cap in any way. That's the, it's a completely different thing. Yeah, he, he wouldn't. Like, he didn't not, want you know, that great monument to be fucked with, especially for his sake. Yeah. He'd be yeah. like, no. You'd give him another one. Pleased. You'd build a statue in, like, somewhere yeah, else. Yeah, a, a statue of Cap somewhere. But, in Brooklyn. I, yeah, I, I don't like that at all. Yeah. He doesn't, he wouldn't even want a statue, but no. he'd be like, uh, well, just don't, be pointed don't out ruin another. Sam Wilson shield. That's right, the <laughs> one he stole from Walker <laughs> when he broke his arm and took it from him. For no other reason hmm. than just wanting it. Yeah. God, I hate do that show. Better. Do better. <laughs> do now, better. What do you feel about them using uh, the Statue of Liberty as like a target to have the fight? Um, Obviously, they've got to find a the secluded area, is but super helpful. I think that's a big I aspect. Can. Nobody's there. Scaffolding means that you can duck and weave through things, which Spider Men are really good at. Surrounded by and a lot of water by, as well. I guess. Yeah. It's it secluded. Like I get it. Yeah. But... The safest and, um... place that is nearby. And well, the, another big element, of course, is that uh, it has to be instantly recognizable on the um, when he calls into Joe Jonah Jameson. Oh, true. Well, he could just say his address if he really wanted to, you know, like just, hey, true. yeah, we're at this building on on this street. Does it need to be the Statue of Liberty? Surely, does he not? Does it? Is there an element of he doesn't want it to be obvious that that is his motivation, or am I misremembering? Um. Oh, well, didn't he say that he wanted them to come and come? Then I'm come misremembering. I can't remember either. He wanted an obvious place to meet, 
and on easily recognizable on film. So I get it. I just it does seem like a pretty. Oh, it's for, it's uh, it's arena. because it's fucking Statue of Liberty. That's that's the reason why it's there because it's a movie. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So so what do you guys think of the criticism that they shouldn't have chosen the statue because it's made of copper and Electro would like fuck him up because of it? Well, he did. Well, I didn't know I that. Guess. I guess that's a fair point. Yeah. Um. I guess well, Electro's a problem regardless. He's a um, he's a tough boy to beat. So is Sandman, to be fair. Yeah. Um, lizard ain't so much. Yeah, lizard is just we need to get the gas on him. But you know, it's, it's complicated because like Electro could theoretically zap them all, regardless of a giant copper thing. Um, yeah. Electro, Electro also teleports in that fight, which really, really sent off some red flags in my brain. Did you see that? Well, yeah, that's Electro uh, teleports. Yeah. Teleporting is one of his established powers in this. Yeah, that becomes a big problem because does it? Well, so fortunately, it's teleporting and seemingly not just flat out intangibility like in um in Tasm. That was much more of a problem. Yeah, well, well, so, yeah but to like, be fair, what uh, what are you thinking about in terms of problems? How does he get caught in hit the uh, arc reactor, or whatever it is called, um, taken from him? If he can just well, Doc Ock gets him on surprise. I think is what that was yes, that's right. hence him pretending to be a villain and then just snatching it out of him. Yeah, but he could have just gone like, "Oops." Zip, zip away, right? He could have just. I'm assuming away. him grabbing it makes it so that the power level isn't currently uh, like uh, accessible so. as it were, because he seems to be uh, yeah. discomforted the second that it grabs it. Yeah. It's, well, the arc it's reactor really seems to be a big fixture of this uh, particular thing. I got the idea that the arc reactor kind of supercharged him, but the power just wouldn't immediately. Well, yeah. Go so away removing it right? staggers him for long enough that he can put the neutralizer thing on him. Mm-hmm. Which I think is fair. Yeah. Um, it's I don't I understand what you're saying. Uh, Electro is so powerful. Uh, yeah, <laughs> un- undeniably. Um, and yeah, that's that's that is the point in the film we're at now. So they have they're, at, they're doing their big fight, and it's uh it doesn't go quite well. They um they end up screwing each other over with their web, uh, hitting into yeah, each other, not working together, and um, coordinating. I think yeah. at one point, Garfield like shoots web into Toby's face. He's like, ew. Yeah. <laughs> Gross. <laughs> Please, can we just never stop calling him Garfield? <laughs> <laughs> can someone draw Spider Garfield, please, like the cat? Oh, I, I mean, let's hang on. Let's see if that already exists. First I call of all. him Andrew and Garfield. I call Tom, Tom, and Holland. I never call Toby's Maguire, like Maguire no, Spider Man. It's always Toby. Or Ray Spider Man. Which day. is funny because yeah. he's called Bully Maguire, yeah. not Bully Toby. <laughs> <laughs> well, Bully Maguire sounds better, better, I think. It does well, sound better. Yeah. Yeah. Spider Garfield. Sorry, uh, just to be clear, that's by far the least cursed image that comes up when you search oh, Spider no. Garfield. So, <laughs> does one of them have him shooting like lasagna beams instead of webbing? Oh, oh my oh, god. Oh my god. <laughs> I don't like that. <laughs> it's actual. Internet, why? Um, there's an Internet. entire. This, why? this apparently is a still from a full animation. What? No! No, this this one. This one oh, here. Oh, thank God. Oh, that's not I mean, much that's better. not better. <laughs> that's strange. That's odd. I did, John looks different. A little um, bit now. It looks like deranged? A little bit, yeah. Oh, this one's Lovecraftian. Yeah, there's a whole, like, a. Uh, uh community about making creepy images of Garfield. I, I don't know where it started, but I'm, it's pretty entertaining. I'm, I'm, mm-hmm. I'm sorry, John, is like the main way that they umbrella yeah. him. Right? <laughs> 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 the internet, we have to have a talk. All of it. Um, so yeah, they, 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 they be straggling and they say they don't know how to work as a team. Neither do I. And finally... Get something for Mr. Holland to offer these other two Spider Men who are more seasoned than he is in that he's worked with teams. And uh, the first thing they come up with is focusing on one person at a time, as well as just coordinating better, I guess. Um, yeah. And uh, just before they they go off, uh, Andrew is like, wait, 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 wait. I love you guys. 
Like they they both <laughs> yeah. react at the same time. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> thank, thank you. And then we get the cool shot of them jumping off the scaffolding and everybody like that. I figured it out. Everybody. I figured it out. Um, just when I was saying there was oh. another scene of emotional reassurance. Just I, fi I figured out which one it was. Okay. Um, okay. it's when um when 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 Toby has been stabbed and they're all going uh, and he asks um. Am I dying, or is that really happening? And that's just this very real. No, no don't worry. That's really happening. You're, you're good. Sorry, sorry to derail there. Um, I just... Sorry. Oh, I was just saying yeah. the the cool yeah. shot where they run off the scaffolding and swing around, and it's cool. Well, and it's very fun. Uh, and in the middle, yeah, of it, one true. one of the Spider Men like shoots the other two and pulls them so that they as a yeah. three are like yeah. dynamically yeah. swinging around. It's fucking just... awesome. It's awesome. It's the, it's the movie's money man. shot, yeah. really. It isn't is it? the movie's money shot. Mm. It's like, hey guys, <laughs> isn't this cool? Like, holy yeah, no, shit! You like. It's, it's just this. This, 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 this is really Holy happening. shit! Yeah, this is happening. This is yeah. like the fantasy movie that, like, that that, yeah, that the people would have peaks. called a fever dream for, like, you know, a pipe dream. Sorry, not a fever dream. Like, yeah, obviously that's never going to happen. That's like a fucking yeah. fan dream. Um, Here it is. You're watching it. And and I'm sure they debated putting that in the last trailer. That that shot. <laughs> They were probably like, should I'm we? I'm glad they didn't, because I really like seeing it. Yeah. So much restraint that they didn't, and I don't even understand why what their motivation is, because surely it would have made more money if they put it in the trailer. I I think that once the word gets out that they're dead, I think the speculation is going to help them, even though most people kind of like know at this point that they're in it. But I also think that uh, you got that like surprise word of mouth afterward. They're probably going to release a trailer that has all, uh, like a poster that has all three on them. That wouldn't surprise me. Yeah. Just be like, yeah, it's basically out now. Everybody knows. Um, well, it is. Yeah, well, it is out now. I'm half convinced that the leaks might have almost been part of a guerrilla marketing strategy at this point, considering how well they well, tie into the actual marketing. It's funny yeah, because um, Tom Holland said that originally the plan for marketing was to hide uh, Doc Ock and Electro and all that too. That it was meant to just be marketed as like a battle between him and Doctor Strange over something. But once it got out, they decided to go with the villains. But I mean, obviously, whatever strategy they did, it was effective. This film, from what I understand, is like, it doesn't even matter about pandemic stuff. It's like the third or fourth highest opening gross ever, well, I, I think. I think yes. this is one of them films as well, really, where people really are like, well. if I'm not seeing any, and there's only one, I'll make <laughs> this the one. Yeah. Yeah. This film's probably gonna, like, I wouldn't be surprised if it made over a billion dollars. Yeah, yeah, I, I, we're expecting. I'm, I'm curious what the results will be post weekend. It'll be interesting to see. Yeah, how many people come back to watch it again? I feel like this movie's going to have a high. Uh, oh, I, yeah, I want to do that. I doubt there'll be a drop. Uh, it's too big. Plus, I mean, it is now confirmed that the other two Spider Men are in it. So, of course, we are going to get like that. I mean that. The, the marketing, like, I, f I feel like I feel like we overestimate the number of people who actually were aware of the leaks, and I think a lot of probably the casual audience is going into this. We're just we're probably not expecting uh, other Spider Man. It'd be cool to poll all That's the audiences to know if if they had any clue that those Spider Man were going to be in it. Yeah, I guess the problem is that by polling mm. them beforehand, you know, you know, well, you can do it afterwards. Just after. <laughs> I guess the thing is, is afterward, are people going to trick themselves into thinking otherwise, you know? Like, oh, well, I kind of had a feeling. It's like, did you know? <laughs> well, I, I'd just be explicit. We, did you know that was happening before or after? Because I, I, right. I guess you can't say we knew, but I mean, we knew. But we were pretty sure. <laughs> it was like an open secret almost, I feel like. Yeah. Especially with the weird weird leaks with the lizard. With well, the lizard. the lizard was the thing that sealed yeah. the deal, yeah. for sure. Wait, how, how come, you think? The lizard got punched by nothing. <laughs> yeah. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See his neck twist and it's like well, I, mean, I saw that. Dude, in the movie I was, and so, I was like, ah, I, I thought the thing, it would have been yeah. so funny if um if the thing that they were hiding with that was Matt Murdock. <laughs> what? Oh, damn, Matt Murdock man. kicking lizard in the face. Yeah, yeah cuz okay. I mean like that was always possible. That right? was always the, possible. The, well, the, I mean that would probably break dead of his leg. I don't and know the, that he could fight. It was uh, Nicholas Cage Ghost Rider. Like, no <laughs> way. <Ghost Rider? laughs> They're probably going to get him back as well. That's just oh, they definitely oh. should do that. 
If you're gonna just go nuts, I guess. Um, yeah. But yeah, uh, they fight. They fight, 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 fight. Fight's pretty good. Fight, fight, fight. Fight, um, fight, fight. The itchy and scratchy show. Uh, Raimi, Boom. Raimi's food almost drowns in sand. But uh, they get the, the cure to them. And then we get the, the Raimi theme playing while he's like, It's gonna be okay, Flint. You're gonna, you're gonna get home. Don't worry about it. Mm -hmm. Um, I think then, then they cure uh, Electro with Doc Ock's help, as he comes back. Mm -hmm. And then Lizard. Yeah, and then Lizard, uh, they cure while Doctor Strange is very mysteriously returning in what looks to be where he wasn't. I have no idea how to explain what's happening. Ned opens a portal, Doctor Strange just falls through it. It's like, oh. Yeah. Okay. I don't, I don't know what's going on, honestly. Was he not trapped? Because he says, like, I was in, I was there for 12 hours. And you're like, so did you get out of it and then come here? Or did you, we, we, did, did Ned get you out of it? I don't understand. I don't know. Yeah, it was, it was a bit weird. Especially because the background doesn't fit for where, for where it was trapped before. It was, like, yeah. all dark. Yeah, I don't, uh, I don't know what's going on there. I mean, well, it I guess it must have... later, so it could have been dark in the mirror dimension, if that's a thing. Yeah, maybe. Well, but, the mirror dimension uh, would be based on the real life surroundings, so he should still be in the city. Or no? Were they in the, were they in the Grand Canyon at the end of the fight? I guess they were. Yeah, because because the yeah the the fight goes through the city, and then they are somehow in the Grand Canyon at the end. I guess it's the mind the reality bending warping of the mirror universe. So at that time, it was at nighttime in New York City, so it would have been at nighttime in the Grand Canyon too. So, or uh, approaching nighttime. So I guess yeah, I was more so referring later. to just dimensional flumps and the webbing and the rocks. Like we don't see any of that. Mm -hmm. We just see pretty dark, and that's dark. And like, okay. Yeah, they don't explain anything. You could you could uh, uh, potentially assume that he got out of the webbing eventually because they he said somewhere, what 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 Spider Man was that? Oh yeah, in the Homecoming, he says that the spider silk will in dissolve in two, two hours. hours. Yeah. Yeah. So you could assume that he gets out of the spider web, but he doesn't have a sling ring, so he's just kind of hanging out. He's stuck in the mirrorverse until yeah that portal opens. Just yeah, okay, I, that that makes more sense. Yeah, yeah. So based on what we know so far about the webbing and the mirror universe, if he doesn't have no sling ring, and the webbing will go away, but he has no way of getting out. So I, I guess it makes enough sense. Um. Yeah, and uh, when Electro is deactivated, he's like, "I'm back to being a nobody." Like you would never I feel like nobody. since he has no idea what's going on, he should be more worried and panicked when he, as soon as he steps out of the mirror dimension, like he thinks he needs to save the universe like right away. Yeah. Oh well, he does grab the box and it looks like he's ready to use it. And then he's told that uh, uh, Peter's cure plan is working, which is good news to hear when you have a panic in your in your right. Like if someone says the plan is working, you'd be like, huh, what plan? And then he sees that yeah, he's him curing lizard. Yep. Lizardman. <clears throat> um, Man of Lizard. Then you have uh, Electro explaining with all the all of what he knew about Spider Man. He said, I thought you were going to be black. And then Andrew Garfield <laughs> just says, Oh man, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm not black. <laughs> and then he says, Gotta be a black Spider Man somewhere. Oh, oh boy, Miles is coming yeah. soon to mm. a movie near you, maybe. Me less. Mila Jovovich. I was about to yeah. say that. Yeah. It's Spider Man. <laughs> <laughs> well, she could be Spider Woman, I guess. Mila Jovovich. And then we yeah. get a moment that is so casual and yet so meaningful when he's like, uh, Otto? That he's like, Peter, so good to see you, dear boy. And it's like, ah! Yeah. All grown up. The feels. Yeah. You're all grown up. How are you? And he's just trying to do better. Yeah. Ah, uh, it's nice. Yeah. That's really good. It is. Which is, um, it's almost like a, it's kind of like a, almost like, it's definitely a crowd pleaser, but like, it's really cool to see these characters. It's almost like an alternate universe where these characters get to see each other after the, after every event stage. You get to live and kind of see each other grow up. It's like, yeah, it, it, it's meant to uh, get people to cheer in the theaters, but it also is like a really cool idea to do that because we get to see Doc Ock live and see Peter grown up. Like, 
you don't really get to see that very much, very often in movies, you know, because they were friends before. It's just like, uh, it, it's, it's a, it's, it makes you warm and fuzzy, you know? Yeah. The, as we said, the core con conceit of all of this with the multiverse stuff is like, we can, ex you know, we, we've already decided Doc Strange was fucked by it, but like, okay, this is the scenario now. And then everything runs. And so those moments mean a lot more than if they were simply played out of context. You're like, oh, that's strange. But with with them here, they slot in. Because you're like, oh yeah, Otto's turned up, and Tobey Maguire is here. Oh shit. And now they can say hello to each other. Ah, my heart. Run. <laughs> run. Um, run, run, run. Yeah, and then we get a pretty cool moment where, uh... Well, I hope I'm not skipping over anything, but I was just gonna say, like, we hear the goblins coming. And uh, yeah. he f he throws a whole bunch of like the. Well, we're skipping over um, the Andrew payoff. No, we. No, we're not. Uh, no, uh, we're that's not. later. That's afterward. Yeah. yeah. So oh, yeah, okay. throws a bunch of goblin batarangs. Oh or no, something. you're right. Sorry. Yeah. And uh, it's just Gobble really it's really cool that uh, Doc Ock is the one that protects everybody from them. Um, yeah. and mm -hmm. the goblin grabs the box, and then Doc Ock grabs his glider. Well, Strange pulls the box back off him, and uh, then Goblin, I think, fucks off for a, for a minute after he cuts off uh, Ox's tentacle, and they get this moment of slow zooming into each of the Spider-Men, because they've all realized that Goblin dropped a bomb inside the box. Mm-hmm. It's pretty, like, oh shit, and that blows up. Causes a whole bunch of horribleness to happen, structurally. And uh, MJ falls off the scaffolding, the moment that everybody saw in the trailer and also assumed something about this scene. And despite the fact that everyone seemed to assume the same thing about it, it didn't make it any less meaningful. That was yeah. great. Um, Such uh, a nice... Really like that. Well, I, think, I like her I think that... expressions. And... Yeah. So yeah, I, mean, I, I won't cut you off, you go first. Well, do you want me to I, finish I... saying what happens mm -hmm. first? Or... <laughs> Yeah, sure. Yeah. yeah, like so Tom Holland tries to grab her, but the goblin tackles him out onto the glider. And so maybe for a moment the audience might think she's going to die. But then it shows uh, Garfield has noticed. And so he jumps straight after her, grabs her, and uh, starts tearing up while trying to ask her if she's okay, which it's just mm -hmm. it's literally just what happened in right acting. in Tasm 2, but this time he saved the girl. Yep. And then she asks him he if gets, he's okay. He gets to do the same thing yeah. for a different version of himself. It's, uh, yeah, it's it's pretty fantastic. Real yeah. good. Yeah, I, I'd say it's, um, it's a tough one I, to I talk about. I think while everyone was... Ex mm -hmm. I was going to say, it's a tough one to talk about because it's just excellent, like top-notch, one of the best payoffs in the MCU, probably, for the, the, the way that this works and everything to think about. And it's amazing Spider-Man. Like... Well, so when if someone says like, "Oh, one of the best payoffs is not even an MCU character," I'd be like, "Yeah, but it's oh, an no, MCU no, that's, content." That's, so that's not what I meant. Um, well, uh, you made me think of that. I, I, anyway. I just meant to say like, I just, I just meant to say like, it's strange that uh, the best one of the best payoffs in the MCU is for the Amazing Spider-Man. It's like in the MCU, he has like half an hour. And that's the thing. I just for me time. that just shows the talent at work at best here from John Watts. It's like nice fucking oh, yeah. work, man. I think yeah, between, um, while between the everyone, writers, the John Watts, and and, and the uh, acting, course, how yeah. little screen time, yeah, how little screen time Andrew, uh, not Andrew, is it Andrew Garfield? Yeah, uh, has like they do some fucking magic in this movie. Like they did really, really good job. And based on on what movies they did work off of, like Tasm Tasm Two is considered like the worst, even way worse than Spider Man Three in terms of just how clunky it is and how silly it is at times. Dude, I'll but go as far as saying they, this. Payoff was so good, people are rating Tasm 1 and 2 higher now, like, without even oh, yeah. having rewatched would... them. They're just rating it higher because of this payoff. Yeah, I, I, would, say yeah, it, it improves, I would say it improves both films a lot, because it has such a great payoff. It's really, really amazing work that they did. I think that um, while everyone probably like in, saw this in the trailer and did call this being what would happen here, um... That you know, it that was no guarantee it was gonna be so well built up to and so well paid off yep. and so well executed. Which is why I think it's still so meaningful, is that like, yeah, we knew that something like this was probably gonna happen. We knew that Andrew was probably gonna be the one to save her. 
but holy shit, it actually hits hard when they do it because it could have just been like soullessly Andrew saves the girl this time. Like, like it could have just been, yeah, he did it. Cool. Anyway. Um, and yeah, I, I would just argue that they, they did it really well with the first thing he wants to talk about is the loss he had from her and how he failed to save her. Then you watch him watching our Peter and MJ together. And uh, if you remember, Toby is like, oh, you got someone? And he's just like, nah. Because just that, that's, that's, that's what's on his mind. And then he says, um, maybe we're just, we're never going to get, never going to work out for people like us. Because it's just mm. on his mind. And uh, when she's fallen and, and Tom's knocked away, like he like fucking goes straight after it, shouting no, because of course he doesn't want that to happen to Tom. Not to mention saving a yeah, person's yeah. life anyway. Yeah, and, and it, are yeah. you okay? Yep. Are you? And then you just see the tears in his eyes of just like, I finally made up for my failure all those years ago by sparing someone else this pain. It's just beautiful stuff. But nevertheless, he's obviously still sad thinking about Gwen. Yeah, he's, he's still oh, yeah. thinking about how he lost her. It's, uh, it's really good. It's a life life defining defining moment that he would never ever wish on anyone else, and he was able to redeem some spark of himself by saving another version of himself from that that horrible fate. So it's like a lot of layers there for just a little bit of yeah, work. Yeah, you know, like a, I think it's like a lot of work. Obviously, it's, little, it's so hard. Yeah. It's so simple to understand, but it it works in so many ways. Okay. And the uh, soda chat said, "Jesus, the fanboys and just got dialed up to the max." Like we are big fans of good writing. <laughs> We do get very hard. Yeah. Good Ryan. Uh, the whole thing. I, very... I don't. I didn't even care about the the other Spider Mans. I watched them probably once when they came out. And that's yeah. all I got for them. But I watched this. I was like, man, this is really meaningful and good because it's been built up all the way since Garfield was there. Was like watching uh, MJ and Al uh, Peter <laughs> Parker just being together is like, oh man, that reminds me of all the <laughs> things. And then yeah. All that happened. Like, I, that we just I'm said. sorry. I'm just sorry. Like, yeah, this works really well. Mm -hmm. No, uh, go, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I'm done. But um, in the chat, I'm reading. They should have just invited just right to this stream today. All they praise today is payoffs, and someone else <laughs> then says they are just right. Like holy shit. Uh, wait. So just right's you problem like... is only praising payoffs. Cope. I don't. I don't even know That's... what that means. <laughs> <laughs> Just Right's uh, problem is that he made really shitty arguments. Yeah. That... <laughs> what? All the stuff that the we're trying to say is any good. We're trying to argue. It's all using stuff that's been established and then working with uh, dynamics that are very consistent and, and impressively so at times. Guys, we have seen them fail this so many times in so many properties now. Legacy. It's way more common to take a character you like and destroy them. We get that like 95% of the time. They manage to juggle all of... Fucking Green Goblin, Doc Ock, Toby, and Garfield. Like, any one of them just in this movie would have been a worry. You had all of them. How is this yeah. any different from and The if you, Force if Awakens? I cried when Luke turned around. So the big difference is there's actual <laughs> character work going on here. This is character <sighs> work. It isn't just a character existing. It isn't just a character doing something. Yeah, this isn't jangling keys. Like, it is a character... It is a character reacting and acting in accordance with, like, their beliefs, and then tying it to previous things that happened to them. I don't know, that's, like, fundamental... Like, how... I don't understand how you don't see that that's, like, what character What more writing. do you want? Like... like yeah, I guess that would be the... That would be a question in this case. Like, how... If that is not a payoff that you think is valuable and meaningful, what would you have preferred? Instead are you just of that? against... Are you just against, like, returning characters at this point? Because, like... It is exactly jangling keys. How is it jangling keys to put somebody in a different context and see how they react? Well, I guess at that point, so everything guys, so is jangling keys. Because, yeah, I, I don't yeah. know. Yeah, yeah. you guys are confusing why... having something return with jangling keys. Like, jangling keys is when it is hollow and meaningless and there's nothing to it. But it's like, hey, look, a thing you recognize. Get excited. Yeah. It's the way uh, we got really, here. It absolutely the, is the way we got here as well as the payoff. But when we talk about issues, it's like there are issues with plot for sure, but what are the issues with character that you can identify here? Yeah, the, the if the characters line... are reacting as they should, and there's a through line there, yeah, maybe the plot, like it's floopy how the plot gets them there. But I don't, 
I don't see well, how that's so to remind it's everybody. It's flumpy how the plot sets up this premise, but as soon as the premise starts, it's very solid. To remind everybody, the payoff in the Suicide Squad between Peacemaker and Bloodsport shooting each other, there's nothing not great about that moment. How they got there is it's dumb as fuck. But that's not on them yeah, as characters. But, yeah. but how the characters got there, in terms of the characters and what uh, the decisions they made that got them there, they were fine. Yeah, like the, we know what they it doesn't, believe. We know it's been established, and we see them conflict. If like the universe just teleports them to each other to have the conflicts, like that doesn't ruin them as characters at all. No. Um, which is essentially what happened yeah. in that. And and for this, like, what can you name about Andrew Garfield's through line from Tasm Two to here that damages the payoff at all? Because uh, we just named a whole bunch that bolsters it. So now I'd be curious. A payoff means they planned yeah. it. Uh, you think they planned this twenty years ago? That is irrelevant, my friend. It doesn't matter. Fucking doesn't. It doesn't matter. A payoff does not mean it. they planned if it. The payoff the pay the payoff requires setups that come before. If you set yeah. something up and you don't know where it's going, but then you figure it out later on, and then or even if you have a setup that isn't leading anywhere, like it was set up and it was payoff, and then you pay it off again later, it doesn't need to be planned right from the beginning to the end. Stories can be written as they go along and have payoffs that are really cool. Yeah. Set up a, a, a payoff. Payoff. A setup, payoff. That's it. A payoff can be used as setup for something for another yes, payoff for something else happening yeah. in the future. Because your story doesn't end just because the end credits roll. You keep going. Oh. I'll give you a great example. They set up the the they set up the whole slingling thing with uh, what's his name, uh, uh, Strange Strange talking to Ned. He said like, "Oh, not everybody can be a wizard," or whatever he said. And then Ned accidentally figures out how to use the sling ring and summons the Andrew, you know, Spider Man. So that was a payoff to a previous conversation, which led to a setup to Andrew's arc. And like, <clears throat> I could imagine like a, a, a Bizarro universe where. This movie exists, and all that happens is that uh, it's Tom Holland, Tom Holland, Tom Holland, and all of a sudden a portal comes through, and like another Spider-Man comes in, kicks everybody's asses, saves the girl, saves the world, and then he just takes off his mask and he's like, "Hey, I'm Andrew Garfield. See ya!" And then jumps away. That's basically what happened to Mandalore for the most part, right? Uh, with yeah. Luke. Yeah. So uh, well, with everybody, they, they, yeah. and then, and that, that was everybody. Yeah, and th and that would have yeah. been an easy way to get the people to clap, to cheer, or whatever, but it would have been completely hollow. You just I mean, bring in that character. Hey, you know, I'm I'm here. I save the day. Cool. Bye. I was talking with them, um, that... as and Gary about that particular one you were just mentioning, and like we're pretty much at the point where like I don't even know that Bo Boba's in character. I don't even know. I can't tell. Like it's kind of weird. Well, I, I like don't know that... much about his character. Yeah, it's. I feel like that's when you start to notice the problem when characters are behaving in ways that don't make sense. The way that they got here just feels really like there wasn't any thought put into it at all. It's, you know, like Luke, yeah, Luke at the end of Mando. Why is he here? Why is he doing this? And everyone's yeah, praising him spend... killing robots. It's like, oh. Yeah, it's, it's, it's nothing. Like, he's just chopping things up. It is purely spectacle. Whereas here, mm -hmm. you'd be like, is, this isn't purely spectacle. This is meaningful to the Having person, the people involved. The two Spider-Men explain their experiences with going to their darker sides and where it can lead them and how to avoid them after Holland just lost May. It's like, that is so meaningful. That's really good. You could have done a lot yep, worse yeah. than that. I could have given a lot of worse that, things. You could your have your done sense, that. your sense for key jangling is broken. To like they, like, yes, getting false it, positives it just based on like, senses. hey, there's a thing that people recognize. Therefore, it is key jangling. Mm -hmm. No, no, not at all. I think that Andrew is like probably a fantastic example of how like. The initial scene where he comes on and takes off his mask, he's like, hey, I'm, I'm Spider-Man. And like, that's the key jangling moment. But then we, over the next hour and a half, develop him so well that he basically, that partially repairs the two pre uh, previous movies he was in that were yeah. honestly pretty yeah. bad. And, 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 and he gives him, gives him like one of the best arcs. In the, I, I, the most impactful arc for me was Andrew Garfield. Like, no, and, and he yeah. got so little, so little screen time, but they earned that because they introduced him. They got all the introductions with him. You know, oh yeah, I am, I am Spider Man here. I can stand on the ceiling and prove it. But then he got into his, you know, character and says, "Don't be like me. Don't, don't go down that dark path where I didn't. I stopped pulling my punches." And he establishes that that loss. And I don't know. I, I've seen uh, bits and pieces of the previous movies, but I'm sure it probably would probably stand on its own without having seen Tasm one or two. Probably, I, I think it would have worked. 
I think so. Notice how our praise here isn't just, oh my god, Andrew Garfield is there, and so is to Toby Maguire. Oh my god. And they're not and ruined. Yes, Alfred Molino is there as well. I feel, like oh my I feel like the big example of that is at the end of the film when Toby stops him from uh, killing Green Goblin, and they just have that look. It's like, alright, so we got all of the character work that we've done for Peter throughout, not just this film, but the whole trilogy, as well as all of the character work that was done for Peter and the Raimi trilogy, in this moment, coming together to hammer home like a mm -hmm. fundamental point for this character's journey. It's, yeah. It is way more meaningful and thoughtful than just, hey, look, it's Toby Spider-Man and he's here and he's in his costume. Isn't that cool? Well, and remember, big, big praise for that. Luke was that he, wasn't, he just wasn't assassinated, right? He turned up and he wasn't assassinated. Yeah, like they didn't do anything with him. He was as he... Yeah. He was just as he is. There was, there was yeah. nothing there. He no didn't say anything, choices. and that was a point of praise because he didn't say anything stupid. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like if if you right. were just impressed because Andrew Garfield was there, why would we wait? Why would we have waited until this moment to gush? Surely that was we would bad. Have... Peter should have stopped himself, and Toby Peter should have trusted him to do that. Oh boy, we'll get to that. Wait, are we up to that part yet or not? No, 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 no. Not yet. Uh, yeah. yeah, all right. <laughs> Well, and, and here's, here's the thing, thing right? I, I I don't even classify, at least for myself, um, Andrew Garfield's appearance as key jangling because I'm not a fan of his Spider-Man as presented in his films. It is only this film that won yeah. me over to his side. Um, like, I always liked the actor as a choice. I just never thought he was directed correctly in those films. But now we get something that's both well-written and well-directed, and it shows what it could have been. Agreed. Yeah, absolutely. EFAP not addressing any major problems is kind of tough to listen to. Oh, We've addressed right, all the fucking major problems. Where have you been? Where have you been? Right you. No, wait, wait. Uh, it's, it's the same person who put up all their arguments earlier. Wait, we addressed <laughs> yours. We got this We're not addressing your imaginary problems. <laughs> yeah, we've like, done shadow. Right. We've, even we've, 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 addressed, we've addressed shit tons of problems that were we actually in the film. More specific ones that you brought up. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. I don't, yeah. I don't know what, what to do. Yeah, it's it's a there's a couple things going here. One, there's two thousand people watching, uh, criticizing a chat comment does not mean that we hate all two thousand people that are watching. That's <laughs> or even that's very clear. It doesn't that even you know what that like, doesn't even yeah. mean we hate the person who said the thing. No, no, no. We don't even hate the person that said the thing. But specifically, we're addressing that one criticism. And I'm in slow mode, uh, slow chat right now, and there are about one comment per second constantly there is no physical way we could address every single comment in real time well, let alone do that the whole the film. podcast yeah. <laughs> yeah not even just the chat you couldn't do the chat alone but let alone that plus actually yeah. talking about the film so there's going to be piecemeal criticisms here and there that we're going to pluck out of chat, like, but that's... this is not the first time we've had this fucking shit happen to it like there's so many chat has some hall of fame moments in the past the boys <laughs> too, for example <laughs> <laughs> or, uh, what was it? Yeah, Resident Evil 8. That was cringe. Oh, that was, yeah, that was, you had a fun too. time with that one, Rags, didn't you? <laughs> yes, we did. They had some, <laughs> we had some bad ones. Um, Don't worry, guys. I found the best critique from chat, though. All right. Let's do it. Let's see. Garfield right. Spiderman is such a dick to John. Like, having a rough life, just eat lasagna and shut up. Uh, <laughs> I hadn't considered it from that perspective, yeah. Um, From my point of view, the lasagna is evil. Garfield's uh, born after 1993. Oh, All they know is eat lasagna, <laughs> charge, hate Mondays, phone, hate Mondays, and lie. <laughs> <laughs> um. So yeah, Doctor Strange is is back. He's seeing the cures happening, and the, the explosion happened, and just just the, he's trying to contain the spell now because the box is but broken. They're coming through. But yeah, uh, um, and we catch up with uh, the Goblin Glider with the Holland on it. He breaks the front of it to get to a, a pumpkin bomb and detonates it on the glider. So they both fall to the... Um, brutal, by the way. Yeah, onto the they fall shield. onto the shield from... Yeah. Just probably, that's probably a video like, essay goldmine right there. <laughs> I'm sure there's something dramatic the about that. Yeah, there's blood on the shield. I'm proper, probably like, blood, blood on the shield now. Proper <laughs> like rage mode, Tom, for just these few moments where he he like he literally like he detonates a bomb and the thing that he is riding on 
Yeah, yeah, he is pretty fucking pissed at Goblin He's right now. Going fucking hard. Well, I mean, so yeah, the the lines we get are um, poor Peter, too weak to send me home to die. That he just says, "I just want to kill you myself." <laughs> and it's yeah, see that that on its own is already Goblin. just like fucking hell. And then you get to go back to Goblin. And he just says, "At a boy," and they fucking at a boy. So good. And they get to have their, again, just their raw battle vision 2.0, which, um... Yeah. You even, the... some of the, the hits, <laughs> you get them going like, ah, sort of thing. Yeah. Like hard hitting, it feels like. It's like, like really, really beefy. People. It's like, Ugh. It's good shit. Willem Dafoe's fucking beef. fantastic, as well as Tom Holland. Mm -hmm. And then he picks up the glider. He's about to well, do it. Well, he does that cool move first, though, right? The... Yes, he does, where he flips over him and then slams him into the the shield. Fucking wrecks him. Yeah, I think I think some of these yeah, moves the are actually from made. the PS4 oh, okay. game. I, he, he said they snuck some in there because they really liked the moveset in that game, so I think that might have been it. Oh, really? Okay. It looks like something from the game, yeah. But then... Yeah, yeah I was they... pretty pleased with a lot of the combat in this game when people are flipping around, fighting. Um, it, it was fun to watch the fights just sort of play out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then... um. But yeah, then uh, then they they're looking on from the side. Peter grabs the shield, uh, the the glider. He's about to bring it down, and then Toby stops him and just looks at him, and that's mm -hmm. wonderful. Yeah, it, it, it might the be my favorite really moment. makes it the silence and just the look. Absolutely, what, 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 it would what I really like worse for t if, with talking. I think. Yeah, what what Imagine. I really like as well is that uh, Holland Spider Man doesn't immediately stop. Like he actually tries to push. Toby down as well for a moment. Yeah. It's One like, get out of my way. And then yeah. he realizes what he's doing right now. It's like, oh shit, yeah, I should probably stop. Yeah. I, okay, stuff. I'm sorry. Two consecutive <laughs> moments in chat. I just don't understand Man. either of them. They're just chat's, chat set has contributed to this conversation. Why is Fringy <laughs> creating straw men? What? Straw man. SJW what? moment. What? <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> All right, so, I'm so confused. So it's the, the reason why this. <laughs> why don't you talk about the scene? I, to, to I mean, I just couldn't help but notice, but the Statue of Liberty was a brown woman. So, <laughs> oh no! <laughs> oh no! Really gonna... uh, Wait, so, are we talking about the scene now, or are we talking about comments? Yeah, let's talk let's about, yeah, about scene. the scene. Okay, so it's amazing. It's like one of the best parts yes. in the whole film. Yeah, if not the best part in the film. It's. It might be my favorite part. Toby's entire. Life and explanations and advice, it's all coming through that face to Tom. Tom knows this is the wrong yeah. thing to do. He desperately wants to do it, but it's wrong, but, and it's not going to make and, anything and, better. Like, they don't need to say anything, because they've already said it all to each other. They already yes. have that shared yeah. understanding. And all that Toby is doing is he doesn't need to say it. He's already said it. He just needs to be there to remind Tom of everything that they already share. Well, and I think he's created what happened for the other two Spider-Men that Tom didn't almost didn't get, which is Toby didn't get the chance to execute uh, the guy who killed Uncle Ben. The guy died. Um, he never made that choice, and he regretted. He got the experience of the person being dead. Uh, Garfield could never find the killer, so he never had the chance to kill him. Um, and then so Tom here has his chance, and he's taking it, and so... Toby's the one this time that's taking the chance Stop. away to give him more time because we to can't undo taking a life. Yeah. yeah, and also just the other meaningful thing, he gets to save Norman from yeah. his own glider. Yeah, yeah, yeah. With, it's, from it's, his own it's, glider, yeah. It's, so, it, it's equally for Norman as and for Tom. Like it, He's doing an act of generosity for both of them in this moment. Absolutely. He's not standing against Tom. He's standing with him right now. Yeah, um, I, could, I could totally imagine a, a version of this going differently where, you know, Tom stops himself or Andrew helps out or whatever, but it, it had to be Toby. Toby had yeah. to stop, stop mm -hmm. that, that killing because it was, it was his, it was his uh, Osborne and, he, and just that going full circle where he stops another Spider-Man from killing his first arch nemesis uh, from, with the same weapon, ironically. There's just a yeah. lot of meaning in that. It's some again, very, very simple, but so much meaning in it. 
Is the, is, do you think it's deliberate that it's the same weapon? Do you think there's a very clear choice there that it, it's the same weapon that Norm originally died with? Considering how much care has been put into the other other uh, character payoffs, I think it was absolutely intentional. I think I'll lean on it being purposeful. Yeah, mm -hmm. it was yeah. on purpose. It was on purpose. For well, sure. I mean, we've, it we've got both because like it's the only real weapon there, right? It but is. um. It's but the only it's deadly weapon, yeah. The it could have, they could have come up with some without any issues at all. Yeah, it yeah. could have been a green goblin knife. It could have been a piece of wreckage that was a sharp yeah. piece of metal. It could and have been, the, you know, it could have been other stuff. Just the shots leading up to it too are great because we saw we saw Tom had won, but then we see him like huffing and puffing. He's like worn out. He's defeated. But then he's like, then he grabs the bladed, the bladed glider. And he, we know it's like okay, he's going in for the kill. And that's that's yeah. Just that progression there was just so subtle but so great. Like you see that he's won. He could stop him now. He could web him up. He could do yeah. whatever. But then he then he grabs the bladed weapon, and we're like, okay, this is what's happening. And as someone in chat has and... pointed out, that is the weapon that Aunt May was killed by. Mm -hmm. Yep, the same weapon. So it's it's so many layers. She died of a broken heart. <laughs> and a this ain't revenge heart. of the Sith. <laughs> she died of saying <laughs> great power and great responsibility in a Spider-Man movie. That's true. If she there's died someone else, death sentence basically. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the universe is like, uh oh. She died uh, because she plagiarized. You're Uncle not ben. Uncle Ben. You die now. <laughs> also, the universe killed her for not being Uncle Ben. Whenever the visuals yeah. on screen stop, it ben shows being belted. a bunch of League of Legends videos. It's always like, you watch that still? It's like, that ain't my recommend. This, we're watched together is, I don't know, it's, oh. it's to do with this channel, I guess. I, I definitely don't watch I really watch want you to play League of Legends. You just yeah, I'll watch let chat game. know that yeah. you don't watch League of Legends. I, <laughs> well, I'm trying to, I, like, I don't know how Watch Together works. It seems to recommend from the channel the video is currently from, I think. I'm not sure. But it's uh, it's not something I recognize. I don't know who the guy is. Um, The only thing I didn't like about that last fight was that they kind of did the, oh, I can't cross the 30-foot gap to get to... Tom, and like Andrew was like, had to throw something eventually, but he couldn't get there. Like, that was the only well, thing. Well, like, I got there's going to be too many Spider Men in there and it's going to be messy. But Andrew definitely could have gotten to Tom and helped him. But I think it was, we, the, the payoff was worth it, but it did make, it did make that awkward moment where, uh, both, both Toby and Andrew were, were easily within closing distance to go help Tom. I don't, I think they were watching him pretty much not need any help i I, th I think they were looking at him like yeah he's he's basically he's got norman on the ground he's beating him up if we go over there it's going to have to be to stop him but they don't realize they're going to have to stop him yet yeah i'm okay with and this I, like, I there's, can... there's lots of reasons andrew might have hesitated to go forward as opposed to watching i can absolutely believe that toby was especially now with his you know he's more wise in his age and he's kind of the mentor spider-man it was a part of him that was looking at that and was like hmm hmm is he gonna do it do i need to be ready just in case you know that kind of mindfulness that he might have that maybe andrew garfield wouldn't and we both we both uh it's like also a payoff for both of them because they both said how they crossed the line they they got too they got too bitter they got too jaded and they started they stopped pulling the punches and and went to a dark place, and so they could they could identify that that moment in Tom. So I think that yeah, that and I think they do show Andrew is like stood in place when he sees that uh, Toby's been stabbed. Like he was heading there, but then he stops in shock, sort of thing, and then he throws it. I guess I I I I have to look at the geography again. It it seems like it's one web swing away to me. So it's a little. I, I understand, understand you don't want too many. You don't want too many bodies in there, like blocking up the shot and kind of mudding up what's happening. But yeah, it, I don't it, think Andrew anything would have changed uh, event-wise, though. Maybe not. And, and the, he does get over there and help Toby as soon as Toby stabs. So like, he's not he's not like assassinated or anything like that. But I I did I did note that I'm like, yeah, he could have gotten over there, but oh well, it's fine. And the, and Goblin just being like, I may have struck the blow, but you're the one that killed her. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, mm -hmm. you you're mean. You're meanie. And then he gets the... <laughs> that's, that's what Tom should have said to him. <laughs> you, you, you're, you're mean. You're a meanie one. You are. Uh, should have screamed that. 
was thrusting down the glider. You're me! <laughs> um, yeah, then Norman's cured, and he's like, what have I done? It's like, yeah, Norman's a pretty normal dude. So this has probably been a lot for him to absorb uh, coming out of that. He's the absorber off. Yeah. No. And yeah, uh, it's I not think... It's so bad being a ceiling tile or wherever the fuck I am. Uh, Jay brought it up earlier, but it is funny when... All of the cracks are appearing, it's all falling apart, then Toby just goes, Is that happening or am I dying? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's like it's not not only is it funny, it's also a great character moment, I think, of just this genuine reassurance between the Spider Man. Yeah. Um, of like Yeah, they I don't know, maybe maybe it felt a bit real for me because like um that's the kind of shit I just see when people have overdone it on whatever substance they're on. You get that kind of <laughs> shit. Um and, and I've been around that kind of stuff, uh, where people I would have done that. And y yeah, that felt very real to me that moment. Um, of that's the kind of reassurance that you give in that situation, and it, it, it did feel like very real emotional reassurance between these characters, who have been built up to care about each other, even though they've only just met, but you know have meaningful like connections already. I like that line from Andrew. It's like, you're in so much pain. It's like, yeah, I am. <laughs> like, yeah, I am. <laughs> like they've, been, they've all been there. So they, they kind of they have almost like a uh, an extra sense because they've, they've shared so many different universe but similar experiences. They've all been stabbed. They've all been, you know, probably shot at. They've all been hurt beyond, you know, what most people have endured. So I just like yeah. that little extra development. That a very... For how little screen time they actually share on screen, they they have a really good camaraderie. Oh yeah, it's, it's great. Um, it's nice to see instead of everybody trying to one up each other or be better than yeah. the other and that sort of thing. It's a cool dynamic. Like they're not in competition with one another. Yeah, it's nice to see people work together and actually want to achieve the same goal and try to like figure out tactics and plans and and everything. Literally, just care about it's each nice. other's well being. That's the thing I like. They, they they want each other to feel nice. Oh, mm -hmm. oh my! Um, feel nice. Hey, well, what is it? Is it is is it wrong if they fuck? No, no, no. Yes. Like it. no well, it. it's a sin against God. You know, I will allow permission. it. I will allow it. I will allow it. Is it no. is it wrong no. to fuck the multiverse version of yourself? Yes, that's uh, our sinuality. As, as Loki has established, <laughs> apparently, there's nothing at all that is like weird about this. Oh, that's true. Yeah, right. Do a little kissy. <laughs> Like what? What a what an ill-advised decision! <laughs> like in terms of just well, storytelling, your worst sex? advised is the stupidity from Cosmodor, where he was like, "Why is everyone talking about the morality of it when it's not possible?" Man, well, that's uh, uh, that's uh, what man. What a great. Can some statement. people just can't think of concepts? You know, <laughs> fiction. Some people are just not mentally prepared you know to it's entertain really hypotheticals. That... It's you, very you know, unlikely are... that you'll be in a situation where you could redirect a trolley to kill five, one person <laughs> instead of five people. You know? Why are we talking you know, about? I just it's like, do you know what a hypothetical is? Like some of them are never gonna happen. Did you know that sure. you know you know that yesterday everything you're doing today was hypothetical? Ah. That's true. Yesterday you said tomorrow. Or you said Did I? 2015 reference. I just I just watched that earlier today because it came up in my search results. Tomorrow. Um, Craig's flexing his 105 IQ. What? <laughs> Hell yeah, <laughs> bro. Average IQ. More like 105 well, sorry, K average. IQ. My right Snap. rags. I'm I'm a very I'm super I'm very very expert. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You've um, got lots of IQs. We, we're getting, I have much skills. We're getting close-ish to to the end, you know. I'm I'm, I'm a little bit. Oh yeah, yeah, we kind of are. We we sped up, or at least it feels like we did. We're at seven hours. I don't know if we it sped feels... up. <laughs> yeah, we're at seven. Well, hours. I, don't, I guess I don't know. It feels that way. Point. It 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 feels like we would, cause yeah, it. Eh, eh, eh. Um, that's all right. You know, strange yeah. being like they're all here because of you. Which, by the way, we do spot. I think from what I've seen online, it's it's Scorpion, Rhino, Craven, the Hunter, possibly someone else you see in the silhouettes. Spider-Man fans. I hope it. Oh my god! Imagine Rhino Weasel. was one of the ones who came through. <laughs> yeah. Paul Giamatti. Paul Giamatti. Yeah. That'd be great. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that, Dude, that, imagine um, imagine the same movie, through. but instead you get like uh, Amazing Spider-Man's fucking 
uh, Amazing Spider-Man's Green Goblin, Amazing Spider-Man's Rhino, and you get um, the Eddie Brock from Spider-Man uh, Three. Yeah, and the um, what is it? What, uh, Bone Young Saw? Green Goblin from Bring in Bone Saw. Who's Bone Saw? The first guy that's Spider-Man. Oh, the Bone Saw! Right, right, yes, okay. Yeah, the rest Bone Saw is ready. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, bone saw. I'd love to see that. Chat will, will be very disappointed. He's happily married to his husband. Bone saw. No, no, we need all the Bruce Campbells to come through. <laughs> I like that Bruce Campbell literally gave him his name. Where it's like, I'm the human spider. It's like that. That sucks. Spider Man. <laughs> yeah. Apparently, he was going to be Mysterio in um, yep. Raimi's Spider Man Four. That's right. Hey, it could still happen. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. I mean, happen. it's more likely now than ever, ever, right? I guess so, yeah. Um, well, unless Bruce Campbell shows up in a... Doctor Strange 2, right? <clears throat> I guess that would count. Um, yeah, he's like, uh, basically, like, they're all coming because of you. And then he's like, we'll make everyone forget me. And <laughs> then Doctor Strange says no. And then Peter's like, it would work though, wouldn't it? And then he says, everyone who knows and loves you will have no memory of you, as though you never existed. And then Peter's like, do it. And I, I'm i totally fine with everything Peter says in this scene, but it's all out of character for Strange as far as I'm concerned. First of all, yep, you would how immediately the fuck say... is Peter telling you about the spell that will work? How, how, yeah. <laughs> what? Um, secondly... Yeah, it should be Strange saying you're going to have to make this sacrifice. And, you know, like, because there's no way Strange ain't casting this spell. To be fair, he'd probably fucking cast it already without telling Peter because it's tearing the universe apart. Mm -hmm. I'm yeah. sure Strange yeah. does yeah. care that this will be this will be tough for Peter, but that pales in comparison to everybody being torn apart by Spider-Man villains forever. Yeah, it's like the, the right conversation, but they just have to swap the two, the who's saying what. Like, Strange should have the idea... Um, he should be, but, and the one, re, you know, resisting the idea should be, uh, should be Tom until he realizes, yes, this is the only way I've, you know, cause one of the, one of the long uh, standing themes has been, he's always about, uh, putting others before himself. Like even in homecoming, he would ruin his own personal life in order to potentially save a few people. So he's always, that's always been him. So when it comes down to like him or the world, he would choose the world, of course. So. I'm not sure that um, he should even be um, fighting back at all. I think uh, I think it should just be a shared understanding of this is what needs to be done. Yeah, dude, having him say no to Peter, I was like, what the fuck? He would never say that. I, I <laughs> meant Peter saying no to Strange is that uh, in that hypothetical. I don't think that Peter should say no to the idea either. I think they should just both be like, yep. I, yeah, I know. I, wanna, I get this needs to be done. Happening. I think sucks, you're right, but this is happening. I think that's the solution. It should have just been a conversation where they both realize that's the solution. They both understand it's a huge sacrifice, but it has to be done. It also doesn't yeah. really make sense um, as a solution. <laughs> Someone called like, him Doctor String. Doctor String. <laughs> I mean, why is that I, funny? <laughs> why is that funny? Doctor String. I don't know. <laughs> that's not his name. That's My mind goes to Mouse Hunt for whatever reason. Um, yeah, I agree. I don't really understand like why that spell is going to fix anything, um, but it's a meaningful choice for sure. Mm. Yeah, I mean, plot-wise, I don't think it makes sense, but the characters understand this to be the solution, and they know what's at risk, and they choose to do it, which is very meaningful. It's incredibly meaningful for Peter to make a decision yeah. to us. He because the whole reason that the plot happens is because he wanted to pr like <clears throat> preserve this life, and now he makes the choice to give it up willingly in order to well, save everybody I mean, else. He, he also another a huge main factor for him is um, wanting to get his friends to go uh, the opportunity to get to MIT. Like that's the thing that drives him over the edge. Well, uh, and they actually do get this in the in this conclusion, but he is basically sacrificing the life he's built up so far. Like he's sacrificing his life for throughout this. the trilogy. Yeah, yeah. Not only is he sacrificing his life, he is sacrificing anyone ever knowing that he sacrificed. He'll get no recognition whatsoever yeah. from anyone for everything. It's thankless, and it only detriments him. Well, it, it covers all three of the main lessons from the trilogy. Homecoming being, it was never about the glory. He's giving up all the glory. 
Far From Home being, it's not about comparing yourself or how people see you compared to other people. It's like he's erased people's knowledge of him, like being compared to other heroes. It's not even like a factor anymore because he's yeah. unknown. And then the third being, good deeds have great cost. Which... Yeah. Yeah, it's, um, it's pretty excellent. <laughs> like, in terms of just tying everything together from a character perspective, anyway. Well, I mean, that's why we we feel that Tom Holland's Spider Man has uh, just excellent right now position. We haven't even gotten yep. to the uh, the additional choice he makes. Yeah, mm -hmm. but he he's in such a fantastic position that um, if ever he's ruined in future stuff, I'm just like I'm just gonna hug the trilogy. Trilogy's mine. Can't take it away. <laughs> no, we got, <laughs> we got this thing. Trilogy. This then, then the other got movie it. comes along. It's a magnum monstrosity. You grab the little spray can. No, it's get away. No, go away. <laughs> I have my things. I have my old. Th I'm gonna sit on my porch yeah. with my things that I like, and I'm gonna yell at those damn kids. <laughs> and I'm just gonna be one of those people that I. I'm just gonna be one of them. Eventually, you're all gonna turn into those people. Oh, oh right. as someone's put out in chat. They'll never know what you sacrifice for them, but unironically. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> and it's funny you bring that up because yeah, someone just said true. Doctor Strange is ruined beyond repair if he's going to be chill with what Wanda did. It's like he's been ruined beyond repair post pretty much Endgame. Uh, as soon as Dude, we found yeah. out in Endgame that his one working plan was not a single working plan at all, he was pretty much ruined. Was not to put Thanos in the mirror dimension and then he's responsible for so much bad shit at the end of Endgame. And then this <sighs> film has absolutely just made him a fucking clown. <laughs> So the and it sucks the people... because that's what I liked about his movie. When Doctor Strange came out, I liked Doctor Strange. Yeah. I wanted to see more of him. And now it's like, go away. Well, the uh, fact that he's chill with so, Wanda is um, like, oh, fuck off, whatever then. Someone, so, well, no, no, so, someone, one of the same people who's been complaining the whole time just said, want a prediction? In a year, AFAP e e will say that plot doesn't matter. Yeah, no, we've been no, complaining no, no. about the, we've been complaining Sorry. about the plot this whole fucking time. <laughs> Go away. I think you are. I think like, you're gonna have to. You gotta wait for the actual number scores. Yeah, yeah, but still the got some writing numbers yet. It's great. The character writing is great. I'm sorry that us praising one aspect of the film makes you irrationally yeah. angry that we don't just hate it entirely because one of the other aspects of the film is weak. Well, I feel like I'm sorry that we're able to appreciate the film strength the it. when it's like, when it has flaws. Because they're not they're actually sorry. I'm being sarcastic. You're being well, dumb. Yeah, sure. Stop it. <laughs> <laughs> Stop it. I, I I do I do think that some of you guys are going to be surprised. <laughs> like I I do think that maybe maybe not. I mean, if the, if they watched our the Suicide Squad coverage, they should be prepared for what's going to happen. Yeah. Yeah. Like there's still a lot wrong with the film. It's just the things that it really needed to get right. It uh, outside of Doctor Strange, it fucking nailed. Like the only complaint I really have with the characters outside of Doctor Strange is I want more. I'm greedy. I want my four hour cut. Greedy. My <laughs> uh, yeah, the other spell. Oh well, I guess I don't want to skip over. Uh, I I really like his last interaction with the other Spider Men. Like he just gets an urge yeah. to hug them, and so it's just yeah, they meant a lot to each He's other. He's come across as very normal people. You know, yeah. like, yeah, they, yeah. I know the they're famous I. actors and I know that they're, but they just come across as people you'd meet who are in this really, situation, you know, they really plucked very them out relatable. of the very, yeah, they plucked them out of the very cinematic universes they came from and humanized them. Like you actually got, kind of got how uh, Electro feels, you know, how the kind of little personal problems and sort of things that they, the Spider-Man worry about, like they did a really good job of just making them into humans you care about. That's, yeah. that's they went through the best. good filter. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah it's really good. And uh, yeah, the, the hug out thing, like there's so much that they, between helping them save and undo everything and, and save the world again, but also particularly for Tom, helping him stop making, stop Tom uh, from making the biggest mistake of his life and killing Goblin. Like that would have, it's like, you can't really express that in words, but they do it really well. Just like, thank you so much. And they like, they're like immediate best friends, but they know that they don't belong here. So it's like a lot of things that you go over in such a smart, short amount of time. But like in previous time, uh, previous things we talked about, simple, but executed really well. So, uh, like so 
his final conversation with Ned and MJ is basically explaining to them that there's no other choice, gotta forget them. And they both are very adamant that he get them back in his life. But, um... They do the little, uh, the little secret handshake as well, which is... It, it genuinely, I had a moment of like, oh man, I remember when I first saw that in Homecoming. It's actually like, it feels like it was a while ago. Mm. These, uh, <laughs> these two lads... Uh, so it's been a fun ride, but yeah, that's uh, about to erase all of that. And of course, him hey, and this, MJ. by the way, the, this is why a, a lot of why it's, he doesn't want them to forget that he's Spider Man. Yes. Because it's a bit like this. And yeah, he's 100% definitely going to get that back sorted. And then we get a little like thing from J. Jonah about. He's like complaining about Spider Man, and then they sort of do it in a way where, he, like, the second half of his complaints are about how he's anonymous, and you're like, oh, yeah, so the spells. Mm -hmm. Now, you know, and so that's like yeah, the, that's the part of the. In terms of the choice, the spell part's really cool. In terms of how it affects the world mechanically, I have no idea. No, how no, that's that, yeah. no idea how that makes any sense. Uh, like, so many how much about spell it needs spell. to be erased, like, it's digitally, all the like, memory, you know, government. It's hard to erase people. It's very like, hard to man. erase all traces of people, like with everything that's documented, birth certificate, um, driver, yeah. well, I guess you know, I have a driver's license, school en enrollment, you know, like census stuff, just his online accounts, anything well, just like that's stuff that he him. did, stuff that's like, oh, wait, uh, you, you know, like, let, let's say like uh, two people met because like they were both friends of his. And it's like, oh, how did we meet? I well, I don't know. Like, I think, uh, mm -hmm. I think I think it would just be imagine if Brad Pitt, like the person, just got erased from like existence in terms of memories <laughs> and like who is in the movies with him in the footage. Yeah, exactly. Like, what about right. everything that has to do with the role that he's played? Yeah, and what about how if exactly we do you account a, for that? We met and did a Brad Pitt marathon, and that's how we became really good friends or something. Like, what? Yeah. Does it become a? Mm. Like, what? Do, do you? Be does it become like a Tom Cruise marathon instead? Yeah. <laughs> like, how do you I guess, account I guess for that's, all of this? I guess that is actually the the the, the least. It has to be thing. that, or it's broken. I think that's. I think that's. Yeah. Uh, and well, I, I, think I think it is broken know, anyway. I think it's broken but no still, what. that's yeah. the least broken thing. <laughs> like, mechanically, like, it's pretty bad. It, it, but, it replaces uh, him with someone else in in people's memories. I guess so. It's, it's almost astronomical because you think about like they just wrote a book about his exploits with Spider Man. Is that now every single page of every single copy of that book now magically rewritten? The ebook, mm. the audiobook, spoken. Well, like, like that's, that's so <laughs> universal. Dude, the amount of what digital and physical information that has to be changed at this point is just like strange. Are you well, God? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Are you God? <laughs> like, every like, there's a villain thing. idea in that with, with someone not being able to reconcile the memories of their own life with what they actually know about reality. There's something there. And I, I get the impression they don't want to tell us, which is kind of annoying, but I, I don't even know how you begin to explain how yeah. this works. It's one of those things you just got to kind of like, uh, don't think about it too much. <laughs> which is not good. Um, yeah. I would oh. better be able to think about these things. Yeah, Can we answer who cares, about, who cares about character work when the film is broken? Well, the character work isn't broken. There you oh. go. No, the character decision <laughs> is still really we, meaningful in terms yeah. of uh, what it means to Peter. It means a lot. It's 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 one of the greatest sacrifices that you can make, short of like giving your life. Yeah, the idea that Actually, there is absolutely no recognition from anybody that you just did what you did. No one will ever know. And he has no support base anymore. He has no, no friends, no family. He's on his own, having to make his own way in a, quite an unfeeling universe, you know? It's it's a very compromising position to be in. Yep. The one that suggested it, and he gave it all up, and then we get to him beginning to, you know, make, make the situation go back to normal, at least to some degree, with getting back to MJ and Ned. He's got his little notes planned out. I'm sure he's thought about this for a while, that what he'll say, how he'll say it. He knows that he can probably regain the relationship with those two pretty quickly. Um, mm -hmm. Right in, you'll know the references. He knows what they care about, all that stuff. And so he's uh, ordering his drink from MJ, and he's uh, it's just noting that they, they got into MIT. Um, I think... He doesn't go in to order a drink. 
Doesn't he orders a drink? Doesn't he? he orders a drink though because yeah, oh, yeah, he, he, got, he he goes in saying, "Hi, uh, I'm here. I've got uh, I'm Peter Parker." And then he goes to read, and he's and then she's like, "Yeah," and he's like, "And I would like to order a coffee, please." Like it, 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 him ordering the drink is him copping out of it. Um, no, he hasn't copped out no. yet. He's buying himself some time. No, yeah, the drink oh, is just—it's okay, okay. just him getting the gap because it's going to be really awkward to walk in and just start talking to her about stuff instead of ordering something. And mm -hmm. um, yeah, he's—he's he's, he's almost just enthralled by how they are as they are. Gets the drink and then he starts asking her just normal person questions and she answers them in ways that you can already start learning about her, and their relationship is already developing. It's going pretty well actually. And he even does the connection on the, um, if you're prepared to be disappointed. Yeah, and she's even impressed, it's like, oh shit, yeah, that, that's, I, I, yeah. Um, and then she brushes her hair aside as she's handing the drink over, at least I think that's it, and uh, he sees the wound, and he asks her if, so, you know, is she okay, and she yeah. says it doesn't hurt anymore. And, uh, mm -hmm. and he freezes for a little bit, and then he puts his notes away. Because he just made a choice, and John Watts didn't make it explicit, yeah. which I'm very thankful for, because it wouldn't be. It would be like that. Yeah. Uh, I mean, like, why, <sighs> why, would, why would he say out loud the choice he's making here? For people who don't understand exactly characters, Jay, of which there's many, <laughs> unfortunately. Really? There are people out there who way prefer it when characters I'm are explicit about how they feel, about the, how the characters feel, even if it's at the cost of them sounding like people. Um... Yeah, so he's noted that his influence on her life and Ned's is damage to them, or at least puts them in serious lack of safety. Combine that mm -hmm. with his thoughts from Goblin about how he killed Aunt May. Combine that with how even Doctor Strange told him, like, a lot of this is his fault. Just knowing the repercussions of all of his actions from the trilogy. And, um... Just, just knowing that his life is going to be pursuing that of helping people, and the more he does that, the more he puts people he loves at risk, so he's not going to regain that relationship. He's going to leave them be. Gotta be. That's, that's what tough. A, that's what, a big choice, man. what a choice to make. It's almost like he's going on a character arc. <laughs> oh my god. I was it's so like impressed. Uh, just yeah. thoroughly impressed when I saw this. I was just like, you yep. actually had him do that. You had him make it so that those two will be safe by never talking to them again. Yeah, and yeah, then it's... Peter gets into his dank apartment and makes his new homemade suit. Which I love the look of. What I like it. There's one scene before yeah. that, though, just the one nice. happy. Oh, is it? There oh is yeah, indeed, yeah, of and course. I really right. like to see whether that we can't. That's some oh, yeah, the other, the grave. Yeah, we're, uh, which I think is the thesis of the whole trilogy at this point. Happy saying that he lost a friend a while back, and that he was thinking that when they're gone, is everything they stood for gone with them? And, the scene uh, kind of fucks with plot even more, though. Uh, do you mean because he says, how did you know May, and he says through Spider-Man? I, knew, I knew her through Spider-Man, and ha they, they com Happy confirms that he knew May through Spider-Man, so it's like, so... Does that mean? You know May through... Yeah. You knew May because you knew that Spider-Man was Peter Parker, so how does that work? There is now. either. So are we... I guess it depends on how this. That yeah, go ahead. Is it just supposed to be that nobody ever knew that Peter Parker was Spider Man? They don't even know that he's. They don't know who Peter Parker. <sighs> is. Yeah, because Happy it, does not know that person standing next to him is even called Peter Parker, right? Or is Peter Parker? Yeah. yeah. The Peter Parker that was with Aunt May. Was there a Peter Parker with Aunt May now? I I think I don't think there. I don't know. Are we like, supposed I to don't... think that Spider-Man worked with Aunt May and it had nothing to do with them as family or blood or anything? I guess so, I guess but so. then at that point it makes you wonder what that what Happy's memories are, because goddamn. Like, yeah, well, we know that Happy can't just we know that, just know that like memories erased. He has to have fake memories now, like for yeah, that to does. work. Yeah. Because if there's just Holy gaps, shit, people strange. will explore those gaps. Yeah, no, this is why it's unethical <laughs> as fuck what Strange is doing with these yeah. memory spells. Yep. Yeah. Because when Peter does it, you're like, well, he's got his motivations, he hasn't thought through this all the way, he doesn't understand it from that perspective, you know, he is young, and there's reasons, you know, why he might not, you know, consider that sort of thing. But Strange just, like, would call? understand Jesus it. Christ, uh. Strange would understand it perfectly, and he just does it anyway, and you're like, cool. Um, 
Uh, but yeah, so I'm not sure that that's just it's the same point we made earlier. Just I don't understand mechanically how any of it makes sense. Uh, yeah, with the memories, but yeah, yeah. I mean, it has to be blood, right? Because uh, just Aunt Aunt May, I'm assuming that's a blood relation. So like, how how is he? How are they both familiar with Aunt May, but not? Yeah, it's, that's complicated. Just He's just kind of completely erased as a nephew. You I might suppose. be able to come up with something after a long time of thinking about it, but I, I don't. I'm, I just, I don't think it's, it's just bad. <laughs> like it's... And they provide no explanations, so it's like, that's just video SAS territory kind of thing. So, yeah. And um, uh, I've seen it noted that uh, she should be buried next to Uncle Ben, I guess. I, I, I don't even know. He might be on that plot. I don't know. I actually thought they were going to do that. Uh, show hmm. the grave there. They don't show it, but like, I, you know, he could be there. Um, I mean, that would have actually sure. made a lot more sense if it, if they showed a grave there, actually. That would have tied things up quite a bit, actually. I'm surprised they didn't do that. Yeah, I, I am slightly I think, confused I wonder about... if um, they would have had to show the date of death, and that's something they want to leave ambiguous. Well, they didn't show her date of death either. They had flowers in oh, front of true. it. Yeah, I guess because I, mean, I don't it. think that the MCU even knows at this point what year it is. Yeah, that's I don't, I don't, <laughs> and I don't know if the MCU knows what they've done with Uncle Ben yet. I'm not sure they know what canon is for this universe, Uncle yeah. Ben. Well, I think I think John Watts should be would be allowed to to make something though with that if he wanted to. I think he would absolutely but, have permission to confirm a story for that, Uncle Ben. But Falcon the Winter Soldier did not have permission to confirm Captain America's status. Though they are making Spider-Man freshman year or whatever the hell it's called, which is going to be like the MCU, an animated series that shows the MCU origin story or whatever. Uh, oh, yes. oh. We'll see about that. You know, a great, oh, oh. You know what a great excuse would be? Uh, here lies Peter Parker, lost after the blip, never recovered, you know, so-and-so. I don't know. That'd be a, it's a pretty good excuse. I'm sure there's a lot of confusion after the blip. A lot of people probably lost their lives. But then people would know who he was, and they would be able to see him still there. Peter Parker wasn't uh, revealed as Spider-Man until after he wasn't. Oh, uh, but was the only... spell erases all knowledge of Peter Parker from the universe. Yeah, so like his friends would still know oh, who he yeah. was, but then they'd just That's be like, true. "Going, That's... hey, you died ages ago. What the fuck? You what?" Well, yeah, I guess he has he has to be completely erased from memory. So I guess I guess we're supposed to assume that Peter Parker never existed, according to everybody. Yeah. So, Aunt May, Aunt May just, so yeah, Spider Man is just this hero that exists and nobody knows the identity of. No. Yeah. Okay. I don't know how the, the Avengers can square that away, but it, whatever. There's no point in thinking about how any of it works, really. Because it don't. Yeah. Yeah. Because it's yeah. just fundamentally broken. Um, He says. It's such uh, an insanely powerful spell. It's insane. It is, yeah. Uh, yeah so he says. Is it all gone with them for the, what stand, they stand for? And uh, Peter says, everybody she helped, they'll keep it going. And he says, you think so? And he says, I know. And I think that's supposed to reflect on everything Peter's picked up across the trilogy from all of his different mm -hmm. influences. Everybody from Tony, Aunt May, Even the villains. Ben. Yeah. Um, he is filled with experience, and it's, it's just going to be what he's going to take with him now. It's a... As a lot of people point out, some people point this out derogatorily, I certainly don't. We've completed what makes a boy become Spider-Man. He's got all of his tools. Uh, how how do you point yeah. that out derogatorily? You say it derogatorily. You say this was a just this was just an origin story for Spider-Man. That's, oh, no. That's how you do it. <laughs> oh no. Oh no. Uh, I don't yeah, how I don't know they? I don't know why that's a problem, but some people see it as a problem. Um I mean, it's some, amazing. Some people that, are dumb. We ends up kind of in really his... interesting about the character. Oh, well, I was just going to finish Sorry. it off and just say he ends up in his sure. small apartment. He's got very little money to his name. He's got to get his rent in, and he's listening to a police scanner, and he crafts his own suit to go out there and a fight that suit. crime. Seemingly based and inspired by the other Spider-Man. Which is also with perfectly that Spider-Man 2 apartment. Is that the Spider-Man 2 apartment? I, it looks very similar, so I'm it wondering if that similar, was intentional. Yeah. I think it was a bit bigger than the Spider-Man 2 apartment. Yeah, that's a different one. Hmm. I have no clue. <laughs> yeah, I hope they yeah. fix his damn door. Yeah. Fix his damn door. 
Yeah, I mean, it's it's quite quite impressive because that's one thing that I always felt was weird is that they didn't really do his origin story. In uh, the MCU, they they kind of throw him in right in the middle of Civil War, and then kind of he, he he's like they kind of it's almost it's almost comical how they say like oh remember that spider you got bitten by and it's like yeah well spider's dead now I'm sorry you can't become Spider Man as well well but like it's 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 almost like really aware that it it didn't have like a, a superhero origin story but when you realize it and kind of put it that way this is like a superhero origin trilogy of yeah and he's now all of his values yeah. which is the important part not i want to see how he was bitten i want to see uncle ben get shot 10 times in the face because that's the, it's you gotta actually see like it. really it's incredibly unique that way because it doesn't actually show any of the actual superhero power origins but it thoroughly develops his character it's really interesting yeah um like this does leave me wanting more if i didn't have the larger existential knowledge of how rare good films are it would this would leave me wanting so like i would want to see like like the logan equivalent for toby mcguire like continuing to explore his story I'd, i i want to see like whatever they want wherever tom holland's story goes next i'd even want to see what the hell um andrew garfield's up to i wouldn't even mind like an anthology film that kind of checks in with different points in the various timelines because they've just done such a great job of investing me in all three of these series and i fucking hated the uh well i still hate the films individually but um i really uh like the fact that i went that i hate the amazing spider-man films and these films still manage to really invest me in those characters i i just cannot I'm back. i can't understate how impressive that is well, yeah. Right, what are you say, guys? Uh, the, what are you guys on? Sorry, we're on credits. On it's done. You are now oh, free for all. I, say whatever like you want. I liked the credits. Yeah, they were cool. I mean, we've got. I, I uh, oh yeah, they, they were cool. I like the I like the song and I like the visuals. Uh, I guess we've got an end credit scene to discuss. Um, well, to I don't care about no, either the, uh, of the, Venom one. I don't care about either of the end yeah, credits. Yeah, I didn't see it. I guess the second one, the first one, is just oh, maybe there'll be Venom. Uh, yeah, and the second one is "Hey, Doctor Strange 2. So, oh, hey. And that trailer, I'm just, I was like, what the fuck ever. Nothing's gonna make any <laughs> sense. I don't even care about him because he's an asshole at this point, and Wanda's not gonna be. She's not gonna be punished for West for you. Man, so... you are such an MCU shill, Mola. Jesus. Yeah, I know. Right? <laughs> yeah. What the hell? I know. So, some people would be like, like, "Well, it's Sam Raimi." I'd be like, "I don't. Do you think Sam Raimi can rescue Doctor Strange at this point?" <laughs> Sam, Sam Raimi couldn't deal with put Venom in it as a studio requirement. <laughs> think oh, about everything. No. Oh, think, no. about, no. think about all of the studio requirements he's dealing with here. Yeah, your hot takes. You're gonna burn the EFAP. Your hot takes are like black goo from outer space. They ruin third. In films. what way are they like black goo from outer space rags? I think it's self-evident. Um, so that, I mean, if there's any other subjects you guys wanted to cover before we essentially get to conclusions. Uh, I, mean, I feel like we covered everything. Yeah, I think I that think was the so goal. I mean, we kind of did it. Then it will be Woody's roundup, basically, now. <laughs> well, um... I'm... Uh, yeah, I don't know what we what I could add that hasn't already really been said. It's got yeah. problems. We lost Doctor Strange. <laughs> but I really, really love the well, movie. What if we uh what if everybody says their score and then we, we go from there like all right, uh, well we'll go left to right the number. That's it out of just 10. say the number and, and this, this this number is what you believed it to be in terms of its craft out of ten. No none of your emotions, all right? Get them out of here. Mm -hmm. We did that already. Go go away, emotions. So um you're, you're I, like I, it. just to check, Skipper, are you still alive? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> excellent. Uh, we will start with you. We'll do this quick, okay, everybody? You get ready. You're gonna go left to right and just say a number out of ten that you think this film is in terms of what it achieves writing wise. Go. Uh, seven. I think I am at a five, maybe a six, but probably a five. Wow. <laughs> Uh, the premise is really flawed. I won't go over it. Um, say the fucking number. Fucking... Everyone, pay attention to the rules. <laughs> uh, seven. Six point five. Five. 
Six. Five point five. I'm also going to give it a five point five. You know, am I the lowest score? I yeah. think I said probably a five. Oh, okay. So that makes you the lowest. <laughs> That's I guess. hilarious. I-, <laughs> I feel like us two, me and you, are the ones people probably expect the highest score from. Yeah, it's real yeah, awkward, um, man. Especially if you tweeted, they all said they love it. Uh, Nine point five out of ten it. incoming, man. Yeah, that's super awkward, though. Like, if you can I say that, I, I think like a, a, a single number score for this film is pretty meaningless, right? Because it knocks so much shit out of the yeah. park and then fucks so much other stuff up. Like, that's, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Suicide Squad kind of thing. The yeah. Suicide Squad. It's team. definitely a sui- uh, the Suicide Squad That's actually situation. M- my logic is like that uh, the character work they achieve more and a lot m- higher points and more than Suicide Squad does, but the Suicide Squad didn't destroy yeah. a character. Yeah, yeah. So it kind of levels out. Like, but and, 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 and in terms of, of plot, in know. terms of plot, I think the Suicide Squad is just like a garbled the mess. Suicide the whole Squad way through, doesn't break reality. Like, Spider Man. <laughs> Spider Man breaks reality. Yeah, that's fair. But the, but once it's broken reality to get the story going, it's fine until the at end. At least it when doesn't it fucks waste it again. break. Yeah, at least it doesn't waste breaking reality. It doesn't waste I guess. The break. Yes, that's, <laughs> no, I think that's a good way to put it. It breaks yeah, the universe that's a bit a good of one. I because I think I've said it a couple of times. Doctor Strange was sacrificed so that the three Spider Men may live. <laughs> Like and one photo for the, Doctor Strange onto the cross, please. If uh, just because I think people will be curious, uh, if we could just go left to right quick as well. But what is your number for emotional flumps? And remember that one's subject to all kinds of change. I imagine generally how you feel on the time of day. But I'm just curious uh, as an emotional experience watching this thing. How did it rank for you? And I guess maybe we'll go right to left this time, just to shake it up with meme going oh first. Oh and I just want a number. I don't want any rationalization. I'm gonna say. An 8.5. 8. 8. About 8.5, yeah. 9. Whoa! 8.5. I think I'm at a... I, I think I'm at an 8. Yeah. 2. No, I'm just kidding, mate. <laughs> <laughs> wow, Alvin, come on. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, I think that's super interesting to think about that uh, it is scoring so high on enjoyment levels with so many people. Yeah. Yeah. I was yeah. not satisfied by a movie like that in a long time. I feel that I just. Oh, it's. it's I loved it. I loved watching it. I loved the feeling I had when I walked out of the theater. I enjoyed mm-hmm. talking with the people about it. Um,. And I'm so, like I said before, many hours ago, it's like a weight is lifted off my shoulders that they stuck the landing with uh, Tom Holland, Spider-Man. And yeah. the, the trilogy we got was so, so well realized in terms of his character and his development. And if it ended here, I would be super satisfied. I'd be totally mm-hmm. fine if this was the end. I think, um, I think that we've basically got a trilogy that is the strongest in the MCU because like, I th- I think Far From Home uh, would be the weakest um, because it doesn't achieve as many character highs and it's still got tons of plot issues. Um, but you compare it to like the other MCU like trilogies, mm. like I you know there's Iron Man three, there's Winter Soldier, <laughs> Thor two, <laughs> nervously and Thor one I guess as well. Um, it it feels like a. Uh, it, I am super happy with the character writing throughout this whole series. It feels like um. The plans definitely changed. They obviously changed. Um, but they still managed to achieve a surprisingly cohesive, like, central arc. Um, what it's, what it's do you mean great. the plans obviously changed? Dude, that, there was no way that the third movie was meant to be, like, a multiverse movie. When that they, was absolutely yeah, yeah. different. It was meant to be crazy. Um, that was the original plan. All the contracts with Sony, well, well, Spider-Man, I mean, and everything else changed, have been probably very floaty throughout all of this. Through? But yeah. I think that the uh, I think that the arc uh, was probably planned. Um, that, well, that's what in, I'm getting at. Is that I think that uh, I think that a lot of things changed, but they didn't lose sight of what they were going for as a story. It feels too, it feels too well aligned, and it all just slots in so well that I can't help but feel like it was the plan from the beginning. That by the end, we basically do get to the Spider-Man that people are more familiar with on his own doing his own thing, having learned his lessons, and kind of ready at this point, like in the next trilogy, to take on the role of a mentor. 
Mm-hmm. There we have it. Spider yeah, no was, way uh, oh, by the way, was, uh, I love the title because at the end, there's no way he can get back to what he knew as his safety yeah. nets. No way uh, home at all now. Yeah. And yeah, on, on May yeah. being dead and all the memory being wiped, he's just nowhere is safe for him. He's, he's on his own now. Yes. I, I wouldn't tell in. someone I like a movie and thought it was good and then rate it a five. Welcome to EFA. That's laughable. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck's sake! You clearly I, haven't I been paying attention. Really I wasn't not. as. So I wasn't you should as see how many films have been rated clear? a three. <laughs> I think this film is very good, but I also think this film is very bad. Um, <laughs> right? I, feel, I, I feel like every time that that if any of us, because we might have said it, that it was good, we probably were just saying characters specifically, not overall. Yeah. yeah like we, we well, got like, the I, I think. I think that, like, that I'm happy to on. say that this film is good because to me, characters are like. Very character important. is the most so, important part for sure. And, I guess and a I lot of this, wanna... a lot of the stuff is also very meaningful, and the, it's just the plot and the world building that is a pretty broken. And not, the plot isn't even broken throughout. The premise is like it, it forces the premise with broken shit. But yeah, the stuff that works within the premise is fine. Well, it's not. It's not just fine. It's it's good. It's just um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I guess the problem is that I don't want to like plot matters. <laughs> it's uh. I would prefer. I, I would be happier if this film had a better plot. Um, yeah, yeah, and but, the ways I, in which the plot breaks break the fucking universe. Like that's but, the issue as well. But if if it's a good plot, I, I guess the problem is good plot, bad characters. I don't know what that looks like. Usually, if the plot is good, it means that the character work is good. Um, I guess I'm happy more so with No Way Home and the Suicide Squad. Like I can I can take that. Oh, okay dude, I, dude, I'd be happy um, if we just got these movies all the time. I, I'd be, yeah, it'd be fun yeah. to talk about I was about to say it. that. Damn it. <laughs> yeah. I, think that's, I think that's kind it's of reflecting really... the score when you think about it, because like a 10 out of 10 character work and 1 out of 10 plot, that's that's a 5. Really I guess I wouldn't I, give I, it a 10 out of 10 in character work because of Doctor Strange. Well, um, to, I, think so that, uh, I guess to clarify my score, it's that um, if the character's are, score is like is almost like an 11 out of 10 for the impre- the good parts, but then we get negative scores for Doctor Strange. We got, the theme is doing great, as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. Yes. Um, yeah. Especially in conjunction with the trilogy. It's like, fuck, that was, that was this top scores as well. But plot is like a mixed bag. There's some horrendously bad stuff, but then there's some stuff that is working. It's like a weak, really weak, like lower end of the scale. And then world building, I feel like we're uh, really bad rock bottom i guess yeah. the problem is yeah. the mcu was already fucked anyway in terms of like world building so it's like i guess just another one to add to the yeah no I, I think it is unique in how it's yeah. destroyed the world building so there's that um it's just the the mcu's world building is is some of the worst it's now ever yeah like for for any ip is there something that has worse build world building at this point than the mcu like it's just not nah, because star wars has better world building it doesn't break time <laughs> like <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. DCEU hasn't gotten there yet as far as the world building, right? Um, like it's... They haven't, well, Flash ran back in time somehow. Yeah, so. that's, that's what I'm thinking, but it's just like, <laughs> how does that scale to, like, the spell that erases... Yeah. And, uh, yeah. and yeah. Endgame, Endgame just is completely and utterly dysfunctional um, in terms of world building. Uh, there's some people no, so not... confused about, I guess, the 5 out of 10 being average. It's like, yeah, we don't do the the like grading scores of like five is a fail we you know also in australia yeah. five isn't a fail five is a pass why would we have why what what's the point of having like seven fucking degrees of failure and three degrees of success yeah i i that's so not just, the system the system i'm willing i'm system, just willing to clarify that's just not what we do that's not how we do it no I was like, I, I, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm happy, I'm whole... fine with people using that system i just it feels very pointless to me um, it well, just shows just, you how, how stupid ahead, the whole number thing is in, 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 in like overall because yeah. everyone like just uses different well, metrics. I, I don't think it's overall. stupid. It, 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 for people who are fans of EFAB, they know exactly what it means, where it sits. And it's, oh, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. I mean, we just, when, when you l- look around the internet, like a lot of people just say, yeah, there was an all right movie. Seven out of ten. It's like, huh? No, no, yeah, that's because um, I think that, that's what I mean. I, Maybe maybe you guys would disagree, but usually the way that it works for me is like one is catastrophic, breaks Dude. time or space. Mm. Someone what? said you're all parroting Waller. I was the fifth oh, rating, you, the fifth one. Do you have? But, but also, <laughs> but uh, also, but, what about the story from uh, from yesterday though? After after Rags had seen the film. Well, I, oh yeah. 
I'm just, I just, I, and I said, like, again, I disagree. It's pretty simple. If someone tells me it's a five, it's an easy pass. It's like, not in EFAP's world, man. Five is, all, like, no, that means no. that there's a lot well, okay. that was achieved. And did you, did you not hear, okay. like, what we were saying as well? Fives. It's like, oh, there's really fucking excellent stuff in this, but it's dragged down by some stuff that's really yeah, shit. I, like, I, I feel I like they don't. infographic, I swear to God. I feel like a lot of that has been forgotten. That it's like, there were parts in this where we just, like, all agreed that that was bad. Like, Dr. Strange yeah. got no pushback. Yeah. Everybody agreed with that. Yes, everybody everyone agrees with that. I don't with see. I spell. don't see how. Uh, like, I, I don't see how. Like, it's like if I only. Feel, I feel like people here just don't understand that nuance is a thing. Like, well, do, do I you just, know that I there just can think... be films that uh, I've got have got loads of stuff in them that's really worth seeing, but also got trash in them as well. Like, I, I mm -hmm. think I just feel like it is a situation of there are a lot of people who will see the stuff that they like and then completely ignore the bad, especially in situations where yeah. like, the bad. The bad seeps into the good, like it taints the good. Um, you can also have the opposite, where like you can't appreciate anything that's just working because like you're still stuck on something that is yeah, a problem. We've sort of seen both in relevant. chat, haven't we? I think I um, think we got I get more of that in chat than the other one, but yeah, we do we do get people in chat who like have spotted one flaw and then like, aha, I've I I have now concluded that the film is terrible. And you guys are ignoring the flaw by saying good things about it. We've been getting a lot of that. Um, but I guess I guess maybe to clear it up, in terms of like the system, five basically means like as much good as bad, in in, in like very reductive, simplistic terms. Uh, you have to be yeah, a little reductive when you're more than bad. you know when you're summing up the quality of something to a number a between number. Yeah. one and ten then it's not going to translate perfectly. It's just to be used as a general guideline. And yeah, I think and it's like, one that we're pretty darn consistent with. When, uh, when I was you. getting ready to rate it, I was considering just like opting out and being like, yeah, I don't think a number rating is meaningful for this film. And I don't think it's meaningful for this film. Like, I, know I was mean. considering though, just being like, no, I'm not going to give this one a number. Like, it's a nine, but also it's a one. I mean, that's the... That is what it, that's what is labeled on the tin. That's what those those scores do. If anybody got confused by that, that's on them because that's what they're supposed to be. Yeah. They're just summaries. Well, yeah. they're not meant to be taken as like the the most important part. It's the same as like when you watch a review for a video game. Number well, doesn't tell you much. It is funny to be like, what even? What does it mean? I wouldn't even. Write. It's like you just list to what eight hours of us giving you the context for our score. Like, come on. You, 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 yeah, a little <laughs> bit. I mean, you can go and watch, and you can go watch some video essayist ramble for ten minutes about bullshit nonsense, and then slap an eight on it, and you can feel like you're smart and fulfilled. Or you can listen to us. It's a bad writing system. I don't know, man. Can you give us a better one? It's okay for the purpose. I was that, say, yeah, it, like it, yeah, like I feel like um, the only way to improve it is to make it more um, nuanced. Make I it. Feel like, um, Give well, it yeah, more well, so the new ones was the first right? eight hours, okay? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so like, yeah. uh, I guess, I guess a, a system where we give it a number for character and a number for plot and a number, yeah. But even then, it's like, oh, character. Well, like, I mean, the Spider Man nine, Doctor Strange two. Yeah, I mean, you have to really break um, it down. Like the two. main character's journey, you're like the main character's journey was really high in this one, but subsidiary characters like Doctor Strange were very, very low. Uh, the plot uh, that thrust the story forward is really good except for the fact that it completely destroys the world with magic so you're like how do you break that down to a way where you can you can both praise the good things and and criticize the bad things like it's it's really tough because like I, I i wasn't nearly as uh keen on the uh mcu spider-man films as you guys were for the most part uh when i was walking into this one and i was like oh man this is going to be the end game of of uh <laughs> the of the spider-man uh trilogy and at uh, as of like the first half hour i was pretty much thinking that i would pretty much hate the the film but once goblin turns and things start getting interesting and then especially when they start interweaving and setting up all these great great uh arcs for all the spider-man characters it's like wow this really it it broke its neck like i said broke its neck on the starting line but ran really hard to the finish like it did yeah, way third more than neck. Too. third act yeah. was very good in terms of salvaging uh the premise and tapping it for all it's worth yeah absolutely. so it's a rag seemed confused he thinks we like this movie lol i don't know you should look at that poll uh yeah the poll says you guys liked it that, uh, yeah the poll says y'all liked it <laughs> 
and I would yeah. be surprised because I, guess, I, re- I love this movie. Yeah. Well, this is I an guess, 8 out of 10 uh, for me and feels. Because t- t- usually when something is like a 5 or above, it that's that's generally like a good thing. It means like, the good you, justifies you, or at least equals or outweighs the bad. It's it, I feel the like good is worthwhile. Is definitely good. Um, it's just varying degrees of good. Like six is as as you know as as close to not being good as is possible, and then like ten, if that exists, is like this hypothetical, uh, incredible, near flawless. I still movie. that's the one thing about your guys' rating system that I disagree with is that ten is like excluded for literal perfection that's like i'm happy with that personally well it's like okay so what you've done there is you've made a what you've done there is you've made a number in your rating system useless why not just have 10 it's not useless there is a hypothetical 10 out there no no no. there's a 10 out of 10 it's it's batwoman suit that's true (laughs) as far as i'm concerned 10 should just be um like the top dollar like top you know, zero point one percent, but not necessarily perfection. You can round it up if this, you want to say that, but it wouldn't be a ten. Right? <laughs> well, yeah. So, so I think that I think that if I think that yeah, basically ten should be rounding rounding up anything that is above a nine point five. You're welcome to do nah, that, but it wouldn't 10. be a true ten at that uh, point, would it? Yeah, you're a pretender. Uh, but Jay, <laughs> let me ask you this: Can you have can you have a zero out of ten? Yeah, well, you've not seen Flux. <laughs> the closest um, you can get. I'm scared. Oh, no. can, can, but, but do you think? Do you actually think you could have a zero out of ten? Yes, I don't think yeah. so. I don't I think, think you're gonna a ever get a zero out of ten. Yeah, like, I think things that are zero out of ten are like a toaster. You're like, huh? Well, you go, well, yeah, yeah, it's, it's just not a film. Movie. It's not a story. Let's put it this way: Bob walked to the Bob store. He had no legs, which is my go-to example of just like broken storytelling. I don't think that's a zero. Yeah, there's still something in there. This... It's, it's still there is still I don't know how you get in. there is but yeah how do you get between are... zero and one if one is breaking like space time and logic then how do you go zero, oh, how does how um, can you go worse so than that? flux breaks space time and logic and then while it's doing it yeah, it barely one. even resembles a fucking story it's uh, like it's just it's just a series of scenes that sort of happen to exist too dissimilar from the infinity tisms we've been through it with that the same thing really. It's, yeah, it's more fun with funny. infinity tisms though because it's all superheroes it's just it's just thing incoherent screaming is a zero out of ten <laughs> i feel like that's even a one because i still understand the notion of <laughs> this progression <laughs> there I, still, I, I know what <laughs> screaming <laughs> is uh, well because somebody said like zero out of ten for a video game would be like unplayable it's like yeah basically like yeah. as soon as i put the disc in my console explodes that's like a zero <laughs> out of ten but i don't know what that looks like as a film um, yeah, a if a film is a story, um, I think that a zero would be something that simply isn't a story. Yeah, it is a sequence. Because if, if a one would have to is... be the bare minimum for what something is to technically constitute a series of events, right? Yeah, but I, I think so. Um, it just it's just like the bare minimum definition wise. Like it technic this is technically a story. One out of ten. Well, and that's why you know ten being a hard one to reach is why if if EFAP says something's like an eight, it's like you're probably dealing with something that's pretty fucking good. At least I try to reserve times. eights and above to be more exclusive. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. A, that's a nice happy <laughs> club where everything is great. Like Misfits series two episode one. Also um, the... maybe yeah. I yeah maybe. Um. Go ahead. <laughs> it's just the lost so much respect for you guys shilling at this point. I would be surprised if you guys rewatch Lost Jedi and start clapping your hands like you are with this film. It just reminds me of The Last of Us 2 I... when the guy in my chat Man. was like, I've lost so much respect for you criticizing The Last of Us 2. How could you? Why, why, does it, <laughs> why does it have to be so disingenuous? It's like, oh, now you're shills because you like this one. Why I so bet melodramatic? you're going to love yeah, like we I, talked for eight hours about the movie. We talked about this movie. Find on, someone else who at bring, least cared up, enough to talk about find, it for eight hours. Find the flaws that we missed. Go on, do it. Um, yeah, I mean, go for it. Um, I mean, I'm sorry cause, cause that what I'm, we cause, like, yeah, just find the flaws that we missed. Because when you when you without citing flaws, when you say I've lost respect for you guys because you said this, what I'm hearing is I ir- irrationally hate this movie so much. <laughs> that you what? that you just seeing like the events that happen in it. It also feels weird to be so Angus like me deeply, like so aggressive about it. When I gave it a five, 
And I guess also, just keeping in mind, like, oh yeah, MCU shills coming from the group that has been hypercritical of, like, basically every MCU even, thing for the last few years. I haven't seen Hawkeye. I don't care. I didn't see a Turtles because I didn't no. care anymore. Just, we, we don't even have to branch out from this movie. We're glad that Peter is away from all of those fuckers yeah. in the MCU right now. <laughs> yeah. Yep. <laughs> right? We're glad he glad. escaped. He Get out of there, Pete. Never look back. Because that, that whole mind eraser thing is basically as a backdoor reboot in case the contracts don't get renewed and they can still use that version of Spider-Man um, independent of the MCU because no one remembers who the fuck he is. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, I, yeah. Spider-Man No Way Home. We did it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Spider-Man Spider guys no made up home. all of Spider-Man in the MCU. <laughs> yeah, it's good. In fairness, you guys have eaten up all of the Spider-Man in the MCU. I'm pretty... I, I think Far From Home is like a four. Yeah. I think that's what it was put on, so... Yeah, that's not exactly... Yeah. Yeah. Something like, like the that, characters, yeah. The character writing is excellent in all of these films. The plot is garbage in, <laughs> two, in one and a half of them. Um... Yeah I, yeah, I don't know what I'm meant to do with that. Like, it just doesn't... Yeah, are you just, are you just mad because Uncle Ben is not in it? Like... What was I mean, like arguments, man. Counter, Give right? us arguments. Give us please. arguments. Please, you have enough characters in your chat thingy to give an argument. Well, or at least like start we, off with we, one. We ate them up. It's like, you understand our perspective is that a lot of people very much harshly hate these films unfairly. Like, we'll just do the opposite of what you said, basically. Like, what, what is the opposite of eating it all up? It's like, you just poop all over it. There is, there is a, a spectrum here. You know, like it's not it's not all great or shit. Well, just like if it's a waste of chat to just be like, you guys are biased. Like, okay, you're biased. Next. Yeah, like, that's you, not productive. All you're doing is being inflammatory at that point. Yeah. Argued for Far From Home last time. I did because I think that film is over hated. That doesn't mean that I think. Well, that yeah, film specifically, is great. we said it's better than Winter Soldier, which was one of the Winter most Soldier. unpopular things you could say on the internet, and we managed yeah. to fucking successfully argue that. I think anyway. I, I think so. I am, I am thoroughly confident that the Winter Soldier is bad. <laughs> like that's as not... the moderator for that debate, I can confirm that it does seem that uh, Far From Home definitely turned out to be better than Winter Soldier. Winter Soldier if... falls apart at practically every level upon examination. I, I don't know if they're talking to us or the people in chat, but I'm just I enjoying the person who said Crymore Kumi. <laughs> Kumi. I enjoyed the alliteration there. That was that was lovely. Well, that's, I found that funny with like when we were having arguments in the earlier parts of this, and so it was like wow, coping. And I was just like, which side? Who are we talking about? I can't tell. <laughs> yeah. Are you just uh, describing uh, your experience right now? Just like man, coping with this. Man, sucks. I am coping. Yeah. <laughs> I'm really coping. Still, oh, what a useful. Still, Winter Soldier is way more fun. Thanks. That's really helpful. I, what, oh, yes, you're, what you're saying there is, I enjoyed it more, <laughs> which is cool. That's allowed. Well done. But that's all you've said. I shall allow. I enjoyed I... Far From Home way more than Winter Soldier. Oh, see now they'll be like, now you're lying. Oh boy. Because In fact, I, I enjoyed Far From Home. Home way more than Homecoming, even though I think Homecoming wow. is the far superior film. Now that. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, Homecoming is because you might have deduced from the number scores. Homecoming is the strongest as a as a story overall. I think um, I liked No Way Home the most, though. Yeah, I, I like, like No Way Home, Home the most out of the three. I think I like No yeah, Way yeah, Home yeah. the most, mm -hmm. um, but Homecoming is the stronger overall movie because it's it's got like a yeah. pretty sound plot. Yeah, to be fair, I just I like, like when no they way misspell Home. it as coop. Honestly, though, I think it's sorry. I like No Way Home more than a lot of movies that are better than it. Yeah. I think it's just the, the without the other Spider Man, I would like Far From Home more, but uh, the other Spider Man push it to the top for me. It's a lot like the Star Wars trilogy, actually, because like Star Wars, the original, is by far the most like coherent, uh, close to airtight plot of them of the three, but and stands alone the best. But like the payoffs in Return of the Jedi, by despite far. it being, but Return of the Jedi probably being the easily the most flawed film in the, in the Wait, trilogy. Do you mean Empire is the Those most payoffs. sound plot? Um. I mean, I, I like Empire the most, but I would say Star, War, Star Wars, the original, keeps it simple, keeps it uh, yeah. air, airtight. Quick, like, I think A New Hope the most, does. Uh, wow, I'm not sure. I can't remember. 
It might. It might. Jay, be. I'm making yeah. a new film where I jangle car keys. Your favorite type of. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Uh, <laughs> anyway, my my point was that despite oh he's being, the guy we left really really, really stupid stuff in Return of the Jedi, it has that like amazing throne room scene and payoffs that make the whole trilogy amazing so it's like despite it being one of the more the flawed the most flawed of the three it's got the best payoffs um so, someone said when fun. when far from home released you guys said it was possibly better than homecoming you guys are going to turn around on this movie too it's like maybe we might yeah we well, maybe we, we've done the best we can to get all the arguments we've been watching chat for them as well we have had people well, who we've had many disagreements it's like until we find more things like endgame i think the original rating we gave it was it three I think it might have been a three or a four. It's, it's, trust me, chat, it. it's gone down since then. <laughs> it has gone down. Oh, oh and, one, and are we looking at one two territory now? I feel like it's man, like it probably is a one. I think it is <laughs> I, a one, yeah. I don't, I don't know how it can with all of the time travel stuff. It's utterly broken. Um and the, the characters MCU broke are all compromised. Thanos destroyed the stones and they broke the timeline with Captain Marvel. And I don't know if that's when the MCU broke, but they certainly fiddled with the timeline with captain marvel you know they did do that well t uh, captain marvel was more of like a thing of hmm does she really slot in here does she i feel like well they, told me that she existed but she didn't they change um the how it was captain marvel and the events of captain marvel that let humans know oh true the avengers the named after when her. it used to be yeah. Thor. they did yeah. they fiddled with that that's yeah, true, they did but i guess that's that less fiddling. than time and space that's yeah more like it's not a right huge shit. break yeah, but it's still like, oh, what are you doing? Stop. Stop retconning to make her special. She sucks. Um, I guess I'll end the poll. Feels like it's been long enough. Oh, boy. Or what do you give Spundo? What do you give yes. Spundo No Way Home? And looks like the chat, have spoken. the chat have, on average, I'd say, rated it higher than we have. Well, five yeah. to six is the most popular, and then seven to eight is the next one. Oh, god saying. damn! Maybe it was just the loud minority this time around. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and I guess seven like, to eight would also it does seem that way as well. Which further yeah, that closer minority matches allowed. what I have seen of the discourse of this film. Yes, uh, people love this film, and it didn't surprise me that they would because of like it's not just about having Raimi and Web Spider Man's in there; it's that they were handled with care. Very well. And this was this other... was a love letter to the trilogies. It was a respectful send off to the characters. It was handled very well, and it should be used as a model to it to emulate in a way. Hopefully, like we'll they... get that. But uh... mm. they they made their right. respective um, uh, franchises better for this film. I which am is really impressive. Exhausted, and I would like to hop out here, gang. Jay, do you want oh, to mention what you. you do in your flimmy flams and where everyone can find your glorms? Um, what I do in my flimmy flams is private. Oh, well, that's up to you. I, I offer it to everyone. What about your glorms? Oh, my glorms? Uh, I make YouTube videos. Ah, uh, good. Uh, uh, you guys know what I do. I'm working on a video about Hassan. You guys, you guys will eat that <laughs> up. You love that shit. Yes. We'll watch it live and leave. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Anyway. It's been real, real fun, fun, fun. It's been fun. real, bro. Gay. Gay. <laughs> my boy. Oh. Well, I, so I was are gonna you? say like anyone else wanted, like, but we're actually gonna we're gonna stop around here. It makes the most sense. Uh, oh, okay. Eight hours. I got gotcha. you. Yeah. You got eight hours of us dancing for you, right? <laughs> yeah. Were and, you and, eight hours of a uh... and shouting at them. Don't forget. <laughs> Not true, I. Yeah. In retrospect, too, I am glad. I think we were on a call when I did it, Mahler. Um, when I reserved the ticket for this movie, I went to a ten fifteen p.m. showing of this. Uh -huh. So I got back today uh, from seeing it. I got perfect seat, best seat in the house. I was the first one to reserve a spot, and when I went to that theater, it was packed. Oh, this film's gonna make tons of money. Yeah, it will. Well, and and I'm assuming all of our audiences they were making noises. There were, there were there were noises all over the place. Yeah. That to me is yeah, like, yeah, oh, we got some emotion come out here. Word of mouth advertising, ho. Yeah, even here <laughs> yeah, in German land, the... they normally don't do any noises while the movie is going, but in this one, it's like, ooh, ah. Mm. 
<laughs> yeah, I forgot I forgot how much like audience reaction can be a thing with a movie where people clap, people react, people cheer, like definitely a crowd pleaser. So I see this doing really well. I'm gonna clap I am... really a lot here. Um and I wasn't like... upset when everyone clapped around me. Uh, I generally don't care too much for that in movie theater settings, but there was a part of me that was like, I'm I'm really well, no. glad that people seem to like this and they're clapping at like when Daredevil showed up and there was, you know, there was some clapping people like people were like, oh wow, ooh, uh, and I was like, hey, you know, I'm I'm glad people, you know, see that and recognize it. And I like it, you know, when Garfield shows up. Everyone's like, woohoo, yeah, all right. I don't know. It's it's kind of felt good to get that kind of cheering at that Damn. sort of thing. SK right, in chat just... saying he cried a few times watching it. Look at that. Might I'm not gonna lie, soul. I got teary eyed through I a got, lot of it. I I uh Aunt May got me. <clears throat> it was the Spider Man that got me, man. I might just have having them all there together. Here and there, fluids that you know, pipes were broken in some way, I guess. I need maintenance. I was, I, was, to get the that spider yeah. I was just gonna say though, Rags, you reminded me of uh you know how like because there's always someone who's at the movies and they talk. Um you, you know how like when you go to movies there's there's usually that guy who it feels like everything that they say, the 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 subtext is, hey, I know a lot about like how this movie was made and the matter. There was a guy sitting next to me who kept making observations about the meta. I'm like, oh, so I guess that confirms that, like, you know, Daredevil is now canon in the MCU. Um, I got like, very yes, close thank you. To, We're looking at I, him. Go away. I, I got Shut very up. close to getting mad at that guy. He he got quieter later on, which was good. But my God, yeah. just reminded me of the shitty aspects of going to the movies. Like, yeah. Yeah. The I, next to you I really, I like the movies, but... Man, I really like being home with my stuff and my food and my bathroom and my pause button and my <laughs> no distractions. It's really nice to have those things. It is and good my friends who know when to shut the fuck up instead of people be like. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, a, I'm sitting there in my chair, and I got, I like, I can't drink a soda in the theater because I'm like, I'll have to, I'll just have to pee. I, I, I got a weird. Stuff. I got a weird I uh, showing. I had so much going on on Friday um, that I end up getting like a, the the earliest matinee showing around at ten twenty a.m. and I and I was that like, okay, I don't I don't want anybody around me. So I got the very very back row uh, with like two or four like four unoccupied uh, disabled seats around me. I'm like, okay, nobody's gonna be around me. I'm not gonna hear any chewing. A little bit far away from the screen, but it actually paid off really well. I could get I could relax. I had one of those like you know recliners. And I was just like, okay, this is pretty close to being at home. Can't pause, whatever. But, you know, it's good. It was actually pretty fun. But for me, it's always interesting because I, I have to look for the original versions. So I get the English-speaking stuff, you know? Send the German most of the... dub. Yeah. Is that how theaters work. are over there? They offer English-speaking movies? Yeah. There's, like, uh, a couple of showings in the week where they have, like, the OV version. Uh... And then I have to look out for those. So those are mostly not okay. super full. I didn't but this know one that. was like half full, even like at the late screening I did. It was like, oh, that's, people want to see their movie. That's pretty interesting. Because normally that these ones are... That. You shouldn't have lost man, that World War, man. I, yeah, I, I all right. I'm just sitting there, though. It's like when I watch foreign films, I want to watch them in their native language. I'm happy with yeah. subtitles. <clears throat> yeah, yeah I, I must... it makes total sense that you do that. I guess I just never thought about um, it. I guess I'm not sure, because I, I feel like I've seen a movie in theaters before that had subtitles. I feel like I have, but maybe I haven't. I watched uh, Crutch and Tiger, Hidden Dragon in the theater like three times with subtitles. I loved it. It made right. it so much more genuine to have it them speaking Mandarin. I, yeah, I, 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 I prefer it personally I as well. I don't yeah. like the dubs so much, yeah. So yeah. Oh, well, any, any upcoming movies that you guys are interested in seeing or... Uh... Uh, you know, they're on your radar to watch that you're interested in. I'm gonna watch mm. Sonic the Hedgehog too. <laughs> <laughs> I'll see Idris Elba um, Knuckle. I'm gonna see Matrix Four, I guess, but not because I'm excited. Oh to. right, right. It's like yeah, week, me too. No, this it's for, shit. It's for it's for work. Is that that's coming out on uh, HBO though? So we can we can uh, we can watch it digitally, right? I think so. Yes, it is on HBO. Yeah, You're right. I don't okay. care about seeing it. that in theaters at all. <laughs> no, me neither. I'm a big, I'm a really, really big Matrix fan. Oh, the Batman, I, of course. 
I'm looking forward to Batman. Batman. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Something Morbius, Batman. I would like to see the Batman. I would like to see that. Uh, let me see. <laughs> Shame Jay is gone. <laughs> <laughs> I wish Jay wasn't gone. <laughs> I, I requested that one from the Discord, and they did not disappoint. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> maybe... Maybe... <laughs> Maybe Thor, Love and Thunder, Thunder could be could could be fun. I, I guess I'm looking forward to that. Um, yeah. Also, Mission oh, yeah. Impossible oh, Guardians is out 3. Next year. Yeah. yeah. Mission, Mission Impossible, Impossible Seven is finally coming out. Anything else that's not superheroes? God, <laughs> superheroes uh, are like so much hmm. everywhere. Uh, I'm sure that there yeah. is something that's coming out, but I can't think of it right now. Moonfall. Oh, it's is that next year? I think it is early next year, like You're February. excited for Moonfall, Roland Emmerich? Well, my dad is. He wants to go see it. And we yeah, like those popcorn, year. crunchy, funzy theater movies where it's just all awful. So, <laughs> we, you know, we, we like it's it. We I hear that. Well, so oh, now oh, you just, because oh. uh, I think the last film that Roland Emmerich made was about Midway, and that was independently financed. And it was a movie hmm. you wanted to do for a long time. And I hear that it ain't bad. Uh, and that, like, compared to other Roland Emmerich films, it actually is not bad at all. Interesting. Didn't he do uh, The Patriot? Or was that... He did The Patriot, remember? That, that was one of the good. things when we watched that film where I'm like, I struggled to get over it for a while. <laughs> <clears throat> that was a good movie. I like it. I think it is a good movie, actually. I don't know why I said it like that. <laughs> I think that movie <laughs> well, you, well you, can, you can do both. I liked it, and it was a good movie. Independence Day is one of the stupidest movies ever, but I love it. <laughs> I like Independence Day a lot too, yeah. Um I think I think so, yeah. But the fact that they beat the aliens by using a flash drive on an <laughs> alien they, computer. They hack the aliens with a MacBook. Yep, that that, that feels one. like one of the earlier examples of online discourse about plot holes. Like it feels like one of those movies where technology is kind of entering into plots in its own particular way, and it's just you get this a lot in the eighties with hacking, yeah. right? You can just hack anything, you know, communicate. It's just, it's just what it, computers can just sort of solve whatever is fine. Just, just hack the thing, do it. Boop, 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 boom. We hacked. We're in. Access the mainframe. My favorite uh, fact about that movie is that they actually got a technical consultant on there. Uh, Christopher <laughs> Weaver, who is the founder of Bethesda Softworks. <laughs> For Independence oh. Day. <laughs> yeah, for Independence Day. Yeah. And they actually okay. based, uh, they based, um, oh, what's his name? Uh, the the guy, the hacker guy, Jeffrey Goldblum's character, oh, they based him on Jeffrey Weaver. Sorry, uh, Christopher Weaver. Okay. So, yeah, but it, I don't know what kind of consulting he did or what they listened to because that movie does not have any sort of sense of computer technologies and what they're what they're capable of. It feels like the common thing where it's like they got the consultant and then they're like, yeah, but we want to tell this story. So, <laughs> sorry. Yeah. Yeah, it's like we know it's what, like, what uh, computers are now, but we don't want to do this because it's fucking awesome. <laughs> yeah. Like a lore advisor for a Star Wars film. It's like, fuck. yeah, a bit. Yeah. I don't even know why. You're here to say that we had you. Yeah, that's pretty funny. Well, fun times. Um, should we do should we do exits for everybody then? Seems like the thing I to do. You know what? Well, I think we can do that. All right. Well, you know, let's start with uh, we'll just go left to right. I figured. But excluding the people who are here all the time, because you know, <laughs> we've, we've talked more than enough. You know, would... <laughs> <laughs> wow, wow. Doctor oh, Skipper, have, we have you've been you've been on EFAP now for eight oh. hours and twenty minutes. How's it feel? Dang, these things it doesn't even really feel like it. Wow. <laughs> oh my gosh! That's what happens my when you have it's dark fun. outside. Holy shit! Yeah, we'll, we'll do that. Uh, it's it's Heart been attack. fun. Chatting with you, maybe, uh, maybe we'll chat again sometime on a different topic or something. Because I, I, I know there's a lot of yeah, people I, here. Yeah, I, I apologize. I didn't speak too much. Um, it just everyone was already saying what I was thinking, so I was just. It was intrigued. crowded for your first one. Yeah, that's yeah. A, that's a okay. That's a okay. Always. Yeah. Get you. What are you working but, on though? Yeah. What are you up to? Yeah. Why should just people subscribe to your disgusting channel? Uh, I'm pretty much up to nothing. I just got on. I'm I'm a college student, so it's winter break. Yeah, like second day. So I'm just 
Yeah, I'm gonna start something. Wow, you really sold yourself so well. I, I can't <laughs> talk to anybody wouldn't subscribe. I just, it's incredible. Uh, well, yeah, I, got, I got nothing in the works so far. I guess I should. Well, I should future, probably future ice bigs, so. maybe or definitely not. Oh, <laughs> oh no, <laughs> probably not. Um, what about um? How's how is Back for Blood and Halo still games you don't like? Oh, no, definitely. Oh, no. Okay, that is true. I'm going to make a Halo video. That's something I want to do. On the campaign? Or? Oh, by the way, I, yeah, I played campaign. the Back for Blood update. The game's a whole lot better now. What are they adding? Well, they updated a whole bunch of stuff um, for the difficulty and a lot of balance changes, a lot of uh, bug fixes that were screwing around with the difficulty. Um, I was, our, our, my friends and I, we were just, we just gave up on it until it was patched and that patch came out the other day and we played it and we liked it quite a bit. We were having fun. Yeah. That's nice. been my biggest complaint about that game. You either breeze through fights or they just completely crush you. The Definitely the... worth a look at now that it's been yeah. uh, updated because yeah. they took a lot of the complaints to heart and they fixed a lot of specific, uh, specific problems. Uh, so I would I would highly recommend it. I w I recommended it at first, and then we saw what the issues were, and then I kind of withdrew that recommendation based on that. And so now that that's been resolved, I I will now re recommend Back for Blood. It's a great co op game. Mm, Not great. It is it is definitely a worthwhile co op game that is fun to play with your friends. Well, get ready to change your score again because they just got bought out by ten cents. So <laughs> yeah, I'm sure they'll try to monitor. That's it. Mono yeah, we go again. Yes. Well, alrighty then. Uh, Indigo Gaben, what are you up to? Why should people subscribe? Uh, well, I just released um a video. I've spent I estimated fourteen hundred hours on uh, cool. like Damn. just a shitload of writing, research, uh, editing, whatnot. Uh, two hour, fifteen minute, um, third. Uh, episode of my ongoing cyberpunk uh, genre documentary this one's focused on kind of wrapping up the 90s i talk about so many things uh i can't list them all here but basically if you like the matrix you know existence hacking culture vr the revolution of the 90s uh strange days uh virtuosity virtual boy um cyberpunk uh themed music gattaca uh, and Flux, Batman Beyond, Marvel 29. We get it. You watch um, movies. Yeah, literally. <laughs> like, I, I, ha I have like, I'm probably covering like 30 to 40 different media in, in this two Damn. hour plus video. So it's like, it's basically like a documentary movie. Um, so yeah, all sorts of things, books, comics, movies, uh, TV mm -hmm. shows, animation, anime, all that kind of stuff. So like, if you like kind of cyberpunk genre stuff, I recommend starting at part one, but I kind of wrote them all that they're not completely undigestible if you watch them out of order. So that's what I just finished, um, I think, last month. And now I'm doing something completely different, which I'm getting into uh, covering in a RPG developer for the Super Nintendo in the 90s. So, yeah, I, very, very different, I but remember, I, I need a break. Because I, what's that? Um, I remember very little about Existence, but I do remember the, the like meat gun, the flash gun or whatever. Yeah was weird yeah yeah it's like it's like a cronenberg nightmare where yeah. like uh vr is like little fleshy pods made from made from mutant frogs and like everybody uses an umbilical cord in the back of their spine to connect is this to is a hideo game. kojima uh, game <laughs> no but it mm. uh yeah it's 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 memorable most memorable for it's like biotechnology it's like super creepy and weird but yeah it's very memorable for that aspect and for like simulation theory and stuff. But yeah, the last 20 minutes or so is basically all about The Matrix, uh, the original film, completely divorced from the sequels and everything that happened after the movie, just the movie. So if you like that, give it a watch. Otherwise, I'm doing something completely different next time, but it'll be fun, I'm sure. Sweet. All righty. Uh, meme repository, what are you up to? What's going on with you, bruh? Well, um, I've. Uh, I've seemingly been dead to the world the last uh, couple of months uh, outside of a few shit posts on Twitter. And that's because I've been deep, deep into, um, well, it's actually been a lot of pre-production uh, for this uh, Mandalorian video that I've been working on for quite a bit now. I've been just putting some time aside to get it out. I know you're making one of those. I, I'll have one out too eventually, I promise. 
Yeah. And I'll be curious to watch yours. There's a lot. There was a there was a shocking amount to talk about with that, as oh, you're probably yeah. discovering. Oh god, yeah. Like this this started off as just talking about the the issues with the stormtrooper aim, and it's blown up into like a 90 page script um that not only that kind of uses the empire as a focal point but then starts to branch off into other criticisms of the show um so i'm gonna be splitting that one into three parts because i begin by going over like how the empire performs in the original trilogy and kind of uh setting a like a benchmark there and then comparing and then I, in the next couple of parts i'll um i'll probably go over season one stormtrooper stuff in the second part and then the monster that is season two stormtrooper shittery in um season uh, in in part three and uh, doing the gonna... whole both have both seasons yeah uh but only focusing on the empire i'm uh i'm i'm trying to try um, that's how i'm focusing it um so i'm mainly focusing on that and then sneaking in other criticisms um along the way and kind of using the empire as the ex as an example of a much lot of much larger um problems with the show so at the moment, I'm uh, organizing my workstation so I can get them out relatively quickly without them dig around for clips and everything. Uh, but uh, yeah, it's uh, it's gonna be a it's gonna be an interesting one when I can find when it's finally um, all all said and done. So I'm I'm looking forward to that. Um, so I'm hoping um, uh, it's becoming increasingly not a possibility, but I'm hoping I can get the first part out by the end of the month. But uh, we will see because I've got a little bit of it edited, um, but um, uh, it's 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 going to be touch and go if I do get it out. But uh, we'll see what happens. But yeah, that's what's going on now. Fair enough. Sounds good. Uh, Mattel, what are you doing? That's me. Hello. Free. I don't know. I'm just ch sitting here chilling. Oh, you mean YouTube? Oh, right. Yeah. Uh, uh, no, I'm I'm actually I'm I'm on vacation now, which means I'll, I'll have a bunch of time to do stuff. Are you uh, doing something or going someplace for your vacation? Or is it no, not at all. I'm at having home vacation. Yeah, I'm just going to be at home. Poland, maybe France, Paris. <laughs> no, maybe uh, very fast. Uh, Blitz, if you uh, anyway. Uh, yeah, I'm going to start with some 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 good old Gartic phone on on the on the Twitch on Monday. Yeet. That's a guns. A, a bunch of the masses going to be there. That should be good fun. You know, drinks, stuff, things, gonna be great. But also, I started uh, a, a weekly thing, which is now called Metal's Forge, uh, which is just me talking about a movie, or me and a guest talking about a movie. Uh, and that that's actually on the other channel that I don't think a lot of people know about yet. Uh, I think I can grab a link here. Uh, <coughs> yeah, th th there you go. That's the link to the other channel. That's that's where I do the Metals Forge. Uh, I had to skip this one this week because work was a piece of shit. And I had to watch the Spundo and had to prepare for that. So I was busy with that shit. So yeah, next week I'm going to do one. I'm not sure what I'm going to watch yet. I, I haven't even decided if I should watch something good or bad or possibly good or bad. We'll we'll see, but that's that's what I'm gonna that's what I'm gonna do in in the in the future. Hopefully weekly. That's the idea, and also gonna get some some nice graphics soon. Hopefully, I don't know how long that's gonna take, but yeah, that's that's basically it. And getting back into the John Wick video now that I have a bunch of time on my hands. Sweet. Um. Yes, yeah. uh, Fringy and Rags, do you want to talk about anything before? No, uh, I, I, uh, stuff will be out when it's out. I'm excited to get to work. I'm almost at the stage where I can make use of a bunch of new stuff, <clears throat> and you'll be glad when it's out, and I'll be glad to be using them. I got a, got a new video coming out tomorrow. It's not Endgame, but it's something that I think is neat, I think you're going to like it. <laughs> new video tomorrow. It's, it's good. Check it out. Sweet. Hog. Well, links to everybody you heard from tonight are in the description. Yeah. And, uh, well, I hope everyone enjoyed. Thank you so much. We'll be dealing with the... these. The Super Chats from this stream will be the first now that we, we tackle on probably Wednesday. I can't remember what the plan right now is, because I was thinking that 
Originally, we were going to put out an episode on Wednesday because we were doing one that Saturday, but then I remembered Christmas as a thing. I often forget <laughs> it as a as a nightmare creature. So now I'm like, wait, when should we put that? Because we probably shouldn't premiere an EFAB on Christmas Day. That would be bad for a lot of people to be able to watch it premiere, right? I or, won't be watching it. So I'm, so I'm assuming that. Premier. So should it be Wednesday then? Probably. I think I think that'll idea. work. Well, it'll have to be the Christmas. Wed it'll it'll be the Christmas Eve app now. And uh, if you guys were annoyed at us tonight, oh boy, <laughs> it's gonna be great. <laughs> um, Stay tuned. Yeah. Fuckers. Um, and Boom. we will get uh, we'll, we'll get all the super chats answered. So thank you for joining us. Thank you for for hanging out and for the donations, and we'll uh, we'll see you next time, I suppose. Good night. Bye bye. Good. Bye everybody. Bye. 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 Bye.